Miami and New England could well be fighting for first place in the AFC East. Most of the country will see that one. Others will see Oakland, New York, as you saw the lineup. And the second half of the doubleheader, most of you will see San Diego and Los Angeles at the Coliseum. Merlin and I will be there. Houston, Seattle, the other late game. A big, big NFL doubleheader on NBC. We are at the halfway point in this NFL season and in the Central Division. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers face the Green Bay Packers in a pivotal contest. Tampa Bay has lost two in a row after winning their first five, and Green Bay, after beating Detroit last week, can move to within one game of the lead in the Central Division. And we have a beautiful afternoon for football in sold-out Tampa Stadium here in Tampa, Florida, as the Green Bay Packers go against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton with John Madden. The Green Bay Packers have lost Eddie Lee Ivory, Steve Atkins, and Barty Smith, all gone because of knee surgery. They're going with some backup backs. They did the job last week, John. They did the job last week, and if Green Bay is going to be successful today, they're going to have to do the job again this week against the Buccaneers. Simpson gained 121 yards. Landers a touchdown, 55, and that's a factor. We've talked about the quarterbacks and the running backs, but what do you think is the focal point in this game? I think the biggest thing will be turnovers or lack of turnovers. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers in their last two games have had seven turnovers, and they've lost both of those games. And I think they want to eliminate those. I also know that the Green Bay Packers want to eliminate turnovers. And I think the ratio of turnovers will be a big point in determining the winner of this game. All right, right now let's go down to the field. And we have a beautiful afternoon and no threat of rain where it has rained from time to time here in Tampa, Florida. You're looking at Steve Odom, who is standing at the two-yard line ready to receive the kickoff. And Neil O'Donohue will kick off for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In their earlier meeting, the Green Bay Packers were beaten 21 to 10 at Green Bay. And a line drive kick starts it off. It's fumbled at the 15-yard line and picked up there and taken up to the 28-yard line by Sammy Johnson, the former Minnesota and San Francisco running back. And so the Packers will take over there. David Whitehurst is the quarterback. Nate Simpson and Walt Landers, who did the job last week. Simpson with 121 yards of the running backs. James Lofton shut out last week. And Andra Thompson of the wide receivers and Paul Kaufman doing a superb job are the, is the tight end. The offensive line, Tim Stokes, is playing in place of the injured Mark Conkar, who's out with an ankle injury. So at the 28-yard line, first and 10 for the Green Bay Packers. They're in white. And the give goes to Nate Simpson, and he's piled up just beyond the 30-yard line. On defense for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they go with the 3-4. Leroy Selman, all pro. Bill Kohler, a key man at nose tackle. John will talk more about him later. And Wally Chambers, the veteran who has been injury riddled. The linebackers are the key on this team, and Lewis has been outstanding. Nafziger, number 51, a free agent, is in there in place of Cecil Johnson. Second and six at the 32-yard line. Gain of four. Nate Simpson. Can't find an opening, and he loses yardage. Back inside the 30, the defensive secondary for Tampa Bay. Mark Cotney has appeared in every one of Tampa Bay's games since the very start. He's number 33. Jarris White has been outstanding at cornerback number 45. It's a secondary that likes to keep the play in front of them. They like to force the play. They're not exceptionally fast or quick but they can hit. So we have third and eight now following that loss at the 30-yard line. Curtis Jordan, number 25, in as a fifth defensive back. Two wide receivers out to the left. Whitehurst has time, and his pass is complete to James Lofton at the 42-yard line, enough for a Green Bay first down. Now, is that a new formation, John? That was a new formation, Dick. It was very interesting in that they put James Lofton in the backfield. He started out in the halfback position. Then he shifted out to wide receiver on the right side. And as we see here, he ran an out pattern and was, and was open and made a nice comeback and, and reception on that play. But I think that was probably the first time that they did that this year. 13-yard play, James Lofton, who had a string of 22 straight games in which he had caught a pass broken last week. First and 10 at the 43. And the give is to Walt Landers, who gets free for the moment and picks up 
Yards to about the 47-yard line. Gain of about four on the play. Cedric Brown, number 34, the free safety makes the tackle. We're going to see Cedric Brown making a lot of tackles. He was uh, a safety that I had in Oakland years ago and that, and that we uh, traded to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. John McKay said last week's effort against New Orleans, the 42-14 loss was the worst showing of the team, and that includes 1976, the first year. Second and six now at the 47. Second back, Simpson. Diagnosed that well in the linebacker, number 57, David Lewis, his third year from USC, makes the stop. That's the cornerstone of the defense, those four linebackers. Well, it sure is, and that's true in a three-man line, but in addition to that, Leroy Selman is one of the finest defensive linemen in the National Football League today. Third and five, Curtis Jordan, number 25, is in in a nickel defense for Tampa Bay. The Buccaneers, number one in the NFC overall in defense and number one in the NFL in pass defense. And that's what Whitehurst has done this year. He has six touchdown passes. Third and five. He'll have time. And his pass is complete to Andra Thompson, number 89. It'll be good enough for another Packer first down. Mike Washington makes the tackle. Mixing the plays well is Whitehurst. He is mixing the plays well. It was interesting that on the third down, they didn't go again to the third wide receiver. They stayed with their normal formation. Thompson ran a, a good hooking pattern. He, he pushed the corner deep and worked back and worked in front of him. And Tampa really didn't have anyone out there underneath him. So the ball now at the 43-yard line. As you look at Andre Thompson, a converted running back. At the 43, it's first and 10. Green Bay in Tampa Bay territory, opening minutes. Kind of a play action. And the flip goes out to Nate Simpson. Driven out of bounds. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. He perhaps could have lost a yard where Davis Lewis makes the tackle. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, and it's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the National Football League is prohibited. We spent a lot of time with that man, John McKay. He's a fine man. I've known John for 25 years. As, as a matter of fact, I went to the University of Oregon for one year, and, and John McKay was my coach. Second and 10 at the 43. In motion and a pitch to Walt Landers going wide, and he's going to get trapped for a loss. Wally Chambers, number 60, who's had that arthritic knee but may have found a home at left defensive end in the 3 4 storm the play. The thing that he did is he got penetration on it, and that's the that's the biggest thing on, on defense. If they can get across the line of scrimmage and make something happen in the backfield before they get the ball turned up, before the running back gets his, his shoulder squared, as we see here. See, he's still running lateral when Chambers was there. Third and 14, and this is a situation the Bucks want to see Green Bay in. Walter Tullis, number 87. Now we have three wide receivers just to the far left. Under a Thompson is a wing back. Third and 14. Pass intercepted. It looks it is intercepted. Might have been Cedric Brown. It is Cedric Brown, who is a number 12 draft choice by Madden's Oakland Raiders, picks that one off. It was five defensive backs on the on the other side. It looked like where they had the advantage. They had a linebacker out on one of the receivers on the right side, and I'm sure they're going to see that in the sideline of change. From RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C., CBS Sports presents the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Washington Redskins. Hi, everybody. I'm Vin Scully, along with George Allen. Going into the ball game, the quarterbacks would be almost even, but there's one great running back out there by the name of Wilbert Montgomery. Well, that's the Redskins' job to try to stop Montgomery. The Eagles are going to run that football, whether it's Montgomery or Harris or Campbell. The Redskins have to stop the Eagles' rushing attack if they have a chance. Now, the field goal kicking would appear to be almost even because the Eagles suddenly come in here with a marvelous barefoot kicker by the name of Tony Franklin. I'd give the Redskins the edge because of Mark Mosley's experience and also Mike 
Bragg's ability to kick out of bounds on this particular field. Going into the ball game, Jack Pardee was quoted the other day as accusing Philadelphia of holding in the line, and Dick Vermeil was a little bit angry and said, I thought Pardee had more class. What do you think Jack was trying to do? Well, Ben, every, every team in the league does a certain amount of holding. I think that's more strategy than anything else. All right, it's the Eagles and the Redskins, a big one, and let's go down to the field and await the opening kickoff. And down on the field just a moment ago the Eagles won the toss they have elected to receive they'll be going left to right on your screen and that means Ron Jaworski Wilbert Montgomery and company fresh from a beating giving Washington by 11 points two weeks ago and the Eagles have won two straight against the skins and they will put it in play from the kickoff the Washington Redskins coming home from a road trip where they won three out of four and now they'll settle in Mark Mosley will be kicking off and of course deep for the Eagles Wally Henry number 89 he'll be a man to really watch along with Louis Jamona So Mosley teeing it up on the 35 the weather is magnificent in fact they are expecting the temperature to go somewhere between 80 and 85 degrees an hour ago it was 76 there you see Wally Henry three year man out of UCLA and look at his numbers he was a free agent picked up by Philadelphia two years ago and he has been outstanding but when he returns today he'll be returning against the number one club as far as punts and kickoff coverage is concerned so Wally Henry is the deep man he will be flanked by Camfield on his left and Jamona on his right and Mark Mosley about ready before a full house 92 consecutive sellouts at RFK Stadium. All right, Mosley says he is ready. The official says it's time, and here we go. The Eagles are six and one, Washington five and two, so it's a particularly big game for the Skins. Mosley's kick is high but not deep, and it'll be Camfield on the eighth. Camfield to the 15, to the 20, still on his feet across the 25, decked at the 27 yard line. Now let's take a look. Quarterback Ron Jaworski. He'll be testing his ankle with Wilbert Montgomery and Leroy Harris, the running backs. The wide receivers, Harold Carmichael. He's caught a pass in 103 consecutive games. Keith Prefley, the tight end, and a wide receiver, Charlie Smith, number 85. Up front, Walters Payroll, Morris Peoples, and Sizemore. First and ten from the 26 of the Eagles. Smith goes wide left and Carmichael right and Montgomery deep man out of the eye. Montgomery and Dushak picked him up and down he went with Dave Butts making sure he stayed down. Well today today then the Redskin middle line linebacker number 52 Okowitz will get a real test against this good Eagle running attack. That time the Eagles shifted and ended up in an eye formation. And number 52, Okowitz, will have to stay at home and not overrun, over, not over pursue. So it is second and nine on the Eagle 27 as Montgomery picked up one yard. Remember, he scored nine touchdowns in three games against the Redskins. Lamar Paris picking up Smith, the wide receiver, and as a little release to Wilbert Montgomery, boxed in and slips at the 30. Pete Wysocki, number 50, making his first start in eight and a half years in the league, and he wouldn't go for the juke, and Montgomery went down. Let's take a look at the Redskins defensively. Lorch, Butts, Talbert, and Bacon. The linebackers, Dusek Olkowitz, the rookie, the middle linebacker starting over Don Hover, and Pete Wysocki starting over Rich Milotta was a broken wrist. Parrish, Lavender, Houston, and Murphy in the secondary, and Parrish coming in has been responsible for nine turnovers in his last eight games. So Jaworski now has the third and four from the 32. Carmichael in a slot right inside Smith. Jaworski ducks under some pressure. Bad ankle or no, he is out racing Dusak and goes down with a slide at the 45-yard line to pick up the first down. And it looks like Jaworski's ankle's okay. Yes, he, if he had any hesitation, he didn't show it there. He ran, picked up a big first down. Everybody was covered. The Redskins are playing number 69, Perry Brooks. He, he didn't face the Eagles before. He was on the injured list, and he's a fine pass rusher. They got a good rush on him. Butch is right in there. Now watch Jaworski put that ball away, make sure he has the first down, 
So it is first and 10 on Eagle 45. They've moved 19 yards in the first sequence. A pitch back to Montgomery with Harris blocking for him along with Walters. And he is just shy of midfield. Wilbert Montgomery, number 31, and all eyes will be on him today. He gained 127 yards when last these teams met two weeks ago. It's his second straight 100-yard game against the Redskins. And so far, both times, he's carried the ball from the eye. Pretty good defense by the Redskins. They're penetrating, getting across. Second and seven on the Eagle 48. And here comes Montgomery again. He just did dodge a tackle as he gets across the 50 and stacked up. Coy Bacon had a shot at him behind the line of scrimmage, and he was able to fake Bacon out, and that made the play. That's the difference between a, a good back and an average back. An average back would have been hit for a four-yard loss. Montgomery turned that into a three-yard game. Picked up, up seven the, yards. To the Redskin 49-yard line, and it will be third and four. Here are Montgomery's numbers. They're out of sight, aren't they? Nine touchdowns, and that's over three games. So third and four on the Skins 49. Carmichael on a wing this time, and Montgomery is following Carmichael, still on his feet, fumbled. The Redskins are on the ball, but the fumble was after the whistle. Whistle blew. So Montgomery does not turn the ball over. Lamar Parrish, you'll notice, knocking the ball loose. Here he comes. That's Parrish, number 24, spun him around, and then Tony Peters dives on him, and he leaves the ball on the ground, but the whistle has blown, even though Peters goes back to fall on it. You know, Ben, the interesting thing is the Redskins are defense in Montgomery every down, and he's still making yardage. He's making some of it on his own. Wilbert Montgomery picked up 117 last week. That's the 10th. 100 yard game and you see how much now Philadelphia needs to keep the drive alive and the question is would they gamble and the answer is no Max right, Runniger yeah. is going to punt it's so tempting to go for it the smart thing to do is what Dick is doing punt the football Max Runniger rookie out of South Carolina he's averaging a little under 38 yards but what's important he has kicked nine out of 29 OB his longest 57 yards and deep is Hardeman standing inside the skins 10 yard line 11 minutes and seven seconds left in the first quarter so pull up a chair we're just getting this thing underway Jerry Robinson very wide for Philadelphia looks like he's the man who's going to try and get down under the punt and the skins are trying to pick him up and jam him on the line and that's the reason for the delay here they come and running it gets the kick away and Hardiman will allow it to hit and it drops flat and it hit him Hardeman scrambling with Jerry Robinson. Oh, we got a fight over here. And there's a fight on the field already, so let's wait and see. Some bad blood. Redskins got there. The ball hit Hardeman, and he recovered it. Watch the ball bounce, and this is part of the turf here, George, yes. isn't it? No, no crowd on this field. The grass is kind of high. It's great to lay a ball down and not have it roll out of bounds. So Tampa Bay breaks the huddle following that interception by Brown. First and 10 on their own 32-yard line. 9.41 remaining in the first quarter. No score. Quarterback is Doug Williams, number 12. Ricky Bell, number 42, is starting in the backfield along with Jerry Eckwood, 43. Rich Wingo, the middle linebacker, makes the tackle. Eckwood has had problems uh, fumbling as of late. He has a broken bone in his wrist and has had a cast there, and there was a question as to whether he would start. Ricky Bell had over 100 yards last week. Higgins has really emerged as a top pass receiver for Tampa Bay, and Jimmy Giles is the man they like to go to, number 88, the tight end. Second and seven. In motion is Morris Owens. And the give now is to Bell. He breaks it. Ricky Bell forwards. Forward. Stopped by Rich Wingo. And a first down for Tampa Bay. Second time in his career, over 100 yards rushing last week, and he breaks this for a first down. I think we're going to watch, if we watch the, the lead back here, uh, uh, Ricky Bell, he did a great job of blocking on that corner and, and, and kicking him out. 
Offensive line, Greg Roberts, the Outland Trophy winner from Oklahoma, starts at right guard. Charlie Hanna was converted from the defensive line. So in essence, they have two rookies on the right side. First and 10 at the 46, following a 19-yard pickup. Here is Eckwood going wide. Runs out of bounds, picks up about three yards on the play. Estes Hood, number 38, the left cornerback, makes the tackle. Green Bay Packers on defense. And Ezra Johnson did not dress. Robert Barber, who has started at both end positions, number 70, is out there. Earl Edwards, number 73, who was a free agent pickup this year. And Charles Johnson, the rookie from Maryland, number 99, the tackles. Mike Douglas has been a revelation for the Packers at number 53. And Wingo is a rookie from Alabama at the middle, number 50. Second and seven now. Tampa Bay at the Packers, 43. No score. Morris again in motion. And the give is to R Ricky Bell. Bell inside the 40, short of a first down by about two yards. And Mike Douglas, the right linebacker, makes the tackle. So they're going off the left side thus far in the running game. They are, and I think more important what they're doing is they're going away from motion. I think they have a lot of respect for this Green Bay secondary and their ability to, to tackle and to fill. And what they're doing is they're putting motion one way, getting the Green Bay secondary to adjust, and then they're coming back with the, the run away from the side of motion. And you look at the secondary with Luke and Gray, some tough hitters in the safety position. Third and one, two tight ends are in there now for Tampa Bay, Jim Obradovich, 86. Eckwood goes in motion, the pitch to Ricky Bell. He has the first down, and more. Ricky Bell down the sidelines is brought down inside the 10 yard line and it was the free safety Johnny Gray who prevented him from scoring all the way in. So this could be Ricky Bell's day. He gained over 90 yards last time against the Packers. That was a fine play there. We're going to see that Eckwood comes across in motion and then he leads Ricky Bell and that's what two backs have to do. You get a great running back but to really be great he has to have someone leading. Ricky Bell is a great running back and the block that Eckwood put on in leading him was a very important block. So Bell second to Eckwood in rushing coming into this game. Scored two touchdowns against the Packers. That was a 26 yard game. First and 10 at the 11th. And Eckwood gets the call and just gets back inside the 10 yard line. Maybe two yards as the strong safety Steve Luke comes up to hit him. That's one thing that Jerry Eckwood, a rookie, will learn that when you have an inside running play to the strong side, you really have to keep it inside because you can't bounce it outside because you don't have a blocker for the strong safety. There is no lead blocker on Luke, and that's what happened. Gordon Jones, number 84, rookie from Pitt, who has been uh, hampered with injury, comes into the game, replaces Morris Owen, second and eight at the nine yard line. Williams will throw. Touchdown, Ricky Bell. All alone, Ricky Bell out of the backfield. And Tampa Bay makes it look easy on their first drive. That was a great, that was a great drive. And it was a great reception by Ricky Bell and a throw by Doug Williams. The Green Bay Packers were in a double zone. They doubled both outside receivers. And there was really no one left for Ricky Bell. They both ran out to the outside receivers on their respective side. It was a great read by quarterback Doug Williams. Second touchdown reception of the year for Ricky Bell, who had gains of 19 and 26 yards on the ground in the drive. Neil O'Donohue to attempt the point after touchdown. And Tampa Bay near perfect. After that interception by Cedric Brown, they drive the field and draw first blood in this important Central Division battle. So we have exactly six minutes to play in the first quarter. Tampa Bay leads Green Bay 7-0. Max Runniger's kick, pinning the skins back to their own two-yard line, watching and putting it in play first and ten from the two. Let's see, then, if Riggins carries the ball here. John Riggins, number 44, along with Harmon and Malone. And Harmon now comes outside the tight end, Don Warren. It'll be Benny Malone, and he is stacked up by Hairston right about at the two-yard line, so no gain. It'll be second and ten. Riggins blocked for Malone. Malone has had a very rough time carrying the ball. He's averaging less than two yards a carry over the last three games. In fact, he's failed to gain 10 yards or more in any of his 30 carries during that period. Then he's doing a fine job of blocking, so those stats are a little bit deceiving. So they give it to Malone first time out. We'll see now. 
second and almost ten. The ball may be moved out to the three yard line. And this time it's Riggins and Riggins is stacked up. Randy Logan came up and took the block from Benny Malone and was still able to turn the play in and stop him. We talked about the Redskins stopping Montgomery. The Eagles have to stop Riggins. And Randy Logan certainly stopped him that time. A big defensive play. I think Randy's one of the better safeties in all of football. He, he plays consistent game, doesn't make mistakes. He's very physical. Seven years out of Michigan, he was a third round draft choice for the Eagles. It really paid off. So it is third and about three, and they've moved the ball out to the nine yard line. Harmon is all alone now behind Thiesman. And here comes Harmon. And he's got the 15 and across the 20 yard line up to about the 23 yard line Lamaster and Totolo making the tackle now all of the plays are called for Joe Theismann they're sent in by Joe Walton this was what we call a sprint draw Joe sprints out to his right Harmon is a fine football player underrated an excellent receiver a free agent out of Mississippi State Harmon last year was the first rookie to start a game for the Redskins since Mike Thomas back in 75 so you know he has to be good. So it is first and 10 from the 23 in motion is Thompson wide to the left and it's John Riggins and Riggins has daylight across the 35 to the 39 yard line uh, Herman Edwards and Randy Logan brought him down and by the way George you mentioned something before the game. You said it is extremely difficult for one pro team to beat another team twice. Why? Good, good question. And no matter how superior you are in the National Football League, that second game, it seems the underdog, the team that lost the first one, is fired up. The other team seems to be just a little complacent. And very Neal trying to fight that complacency if there be any. First and ten on the skin, 38. Riggin. And they stack him up across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Franklin Master who had 12 solo tackles when last these two teams met two weeks ago as usual had his nose right in the middle of that play. Now the Philadelphia Eagles are a 34 team three down linemen four linebackers they feature the zone Marion Campbell uh, does an excellent job of coaching their defense. It'll be second and six on the 42 the skin started on their own two yard line so they chewed up 40 yards. Bugs is left and Thompson is right. And Thompson in motion, so they'll load up the left side. Theismann to Malone with Riggins and Williams blocking, and somebody got him from the neck. I think it was Lamaster, and just jerked him backwards. Frank Lamaster almost ruining Malone's jersey that time. Oh, what a pull. Well, the, the Redskins' running game is John Riggins, basically, with that offensive lineup. Joe Theismann, as the skins come in, and calling his signs this club is ninth in total offense seventh rushing ninth in passing they've only had four fumbles all year and no fumbles in the last five games so that's a big plus for the skins third and three on their own 45 and Theismann going to put it up for the first time today and it is deflected and busted up and kicked off at the last minute Bobby Howard speared the ball at his own 46 yard line and Bobby Howard 13 years out of San Diego State makes a key interception for the Eagles. <laughs> and the Eagles getting a big combination play the pass deflected at the line of scrimmage by Dennis Harrison who is six feet eight inches tall and picked off by Bobby Howard so it's first and ten on the Eagle 47 the first key break of the game Carmichael is left Spagnola is on a wing right and here comes Wilbert Montgomery inside a Harris block but he couldn't get much Tony Peters and Harris have a few words 
Let's watch 52 Okowitz on this play. The big thing he has to be careful of is not overrunning the play. He came in and stood the guard up. Did a good job. Didn't make the play, but he took the guard out. Second and eight. The ball is just shy of midfield for the Eagles. Carmichael going wide left. And Jaworski limping back slightly, setting up, and down he goes. Coy Bacon wrapped him up at the 40-yard line. You know, there's tremendous feeling in this yes. game. We've already had punches yeah. thrown on two occasions, and Pardee summed it up. He said, we're going to do this game as uh, if we're playing Dallas, and we hate Dallas. It's uh, They sure do hate Dallas. It looks like the Redskins are a little more fired up than the Eagles. Now, that's a good matchup, Coy Bacon versus Walters. And Walters, uh, I think, He's doing a fine job. He was in the Pro Bowl last year. Bacon's a, a better pass rusher than he is a, a run defender. And that'll be a good matchup this afternoon. Dick Vermeil, who at one time coached Jack Pardee and the Rams, and now they meet. When Dick Vermeil came to the Rams, he was a special team coach, and evidently yeah. a delay of game or a timeout. A timeout, Ti timeout. for Philadelphia. So with 5.22 in the first quarter, no score. Tampa Bay fans enjoying it so far. The Bucks lead seven to nothing. That was the drive. Seven plays, 68 yards, and Ricky Bell a nine-yard touchdown reception. It was Williams' 12th touchdown pass of the year. You saw Odom deep for Green Bay. A line drive sails out of the end zone, and the Packers will take over at the 20-yard line. In the first quarter, the Miami Dolphins lead New England three to nothing. Uva von Schaman kicked a 53-yard field goal for the Dolphins to give them the lead with 11 minutes to go in the first quarter. Very good start for the state of Florida. <laughs> and the winner of that game will take over sole possession to first place in the AFC Eastern Division. Two big games, that one and this one. So David Whitehurst going back to work. His interception uh, was the seventh of the year. He has been sacked 24 times coming into this game. First and 10 at the 20 out of the I formation. The up back Walt Landers 42. But it's Simpson, the second back, who barrels ahead and gets good yardage straight ahead. More than five, perhaps six yards on the play. That's really what you want to do against a three-man line, and it's what everyone tries to do. You don't want to run right and left and laterally against it. You want to run straight at it and just get them pushed back off the line, cut off pursuit, and make your yardage that way. Picked up seven, second and three at the 27. Now Landers, same place up the middle, but Leroy Selman was right there to bring him down. Number 63, fine play by Leroy Selman who diagnosed it perfectly. So they're short of a first down. Landers was going to cut that back, and that's one thing about hustling defensive linemen. They don't allow any cutbacks. You see, he started there, there was no hole, he stopped and he started to cut back, and there's Leroy Selman right there meeting him from the backside. So now it's third and one, and John Thompson, the rookie tight end from Utah State, number 83, is in there. Third and one at the 30-yard line. Landers doesn't make it. Push back, and Bill Kohler, number 77, the nose tackle. And we're going to talk about that deal that sent Dave Pear to the Oakland Raiders that opened things up and allowed Tampa Bay to draft a couple of people. Kohler has done a great job. Kohler has done a great job. I know John McKay is very happy with the play of Kohler. I'll tell you, that was great short yardage defense. Green Bay just ran the fullback in straight ahead with no lead. Dave Beverly averaging over 40 yards a kick. And Danny Reese, number 46, is back at the 21. Gets to the 35. And Jim Gano, number 51, makes the tackle. So Green Bay thus far have been stymied in their attempts to move the ball. They had a couple of first downs on passes, but then the interception and Tampa Bay has the lead. We'll return in a moment. 522 left in the first, and you can see scores of other games now. Tampa Bay seven and Green Bay nothing in the first quarter. A pass from Doug Williams to Ricky Bell. Cincinnati seven nothing over Cleveland. Miami leading New England three nothing early in the first. 
Third and 16 on the Eagle 41. Carmichael goes wide left. Smith is in a slot right. Inside Fitzky. Harris trying to block for Jaworski, who's deep down the middle. No good. It was intended for Charlie Smith. Lamar Parrish right there to defend. Well, the Eagles, this is what the Eagles can't stand. They can't have the Redskins and the nickel and dime defenses. They have to be able to run that football. This is a high percentage pass. Charlie Smith was covered by Parrish. He was covered long and short. Max Runniger will be back to kick. And going back, you have Hardeman flanked by Forte, number 30, and Harmon, 38. And Runniger kicking from his 30, and the skins are going back to block. This one angling over to the right to Hardeman. He'll take it at the 16, and he is just missed by John Shara, and is finally knocked out of bounds, and there's a flag on the play. That was John Shara who went flying through the air, missing Hardeman. You know, Vince, sometimes even though he misses them, he sets them up for somebody else. And we always like to tell him, get down there, take a shot at him. Whether you get him or not, you're doing your job. It'll be a clip, and the clip will be against the Redskin. That would be the preliminary signal. Hardeman has done an excellent job for the Redskins this year. Receiving, returning kicks, he's been a real plus for them. Take another look and see, here comes... Hardeman now on the return, and you can see that would appear to be the hit from behind. Well, that that, would, that rule then has hurt punt returns and kickoff returns. There. Here's the referee. Personal foul, clipping number 51 on the return team. First down. That's Monty Coleman. So Coleman is picked off clipping. And with five minutes and six seconds left, it'll be first and ten for the Skins on their 11. No score. <laughs> Doug Williams had a rough week, both on the field and off, but he kind of... Smooth things out with the fans after having some remarks about them last week. They're on his side now, especially after that drive. First and 10 at the 34. Pitch back to Eckwood. Rich Wingo, middle linebacker, stops Jerry Eckwood. And there's a flare up there. Gain of three, second down and seven at the 32 yard line. As we watch Jerry Eckwood walk back to the huddle, we see on the on his wrist that he, he has both wrist tape. He had a, a broken bone in there, and that's been bothering him some. Make it the 37. Jerry Eckwood, the rookie from Arkansas, came on with a splash in the opening game against Detroit. Second and seven. Bell hit at the 40. It'll be third and four. Stop by the middle of the line. John McKay said his team gave about 110% in the first five games and maybe 75%. And as you pointed out, are they the 5-0 team or the two-loss team the past two weeks? And I guess we'll find out something of that today. I think we will. And that's what John McKay is wondering. We talked with John yesterday, and he was saying that <clears throat> he hopes that they can play like they did today and that they like they played the first five games. Third and four at the 40-yard line. 235 remaining in the first quarter. Williams will throw and it's incomplete. He's had a tendency to drill the ball hard. And uh, Isaac Higgins was his intended receiver and I guess finesse is something it takes a little while to learn. He's only in his second year. That takes a little while but I like I like to see a quarterback drill the ball anyway. You don't want that ball in the air a long time and I think if it's downfield that the receivers should adjust to the velocity of the ball not the quarterback. Odom is deep. At the 20 yard line for Green Bay. Tom Blanchard with a fine punt sends Odin back inside the 15, back to the 10 yard line. Watch out from behind and great pursuit. Curtis Jordan, one of them involved, number 25, a 49 yard punt by Tom Blanchard, who has punted for the Giants and the Saints. So Tampa Bay is doing it all right thus far with 2.21 to go in the first quarter. 
No score. Five minutes and six seconds left in the first quarter. And the Skins put it in play. First and ten from their 11. The first time they had the ball, it was first and ten on their twos. So they certainly haven't had field position. John Riggins on a play action fake. Theismann setting up and going deep down the middle for Danny Buggs. Broken up. He was double teamed by Wilson and Herman Edwards. And Herman Edwards, three years out of San Diego State, was the man who broke it up. Now, the reason this is a good call is they fake to Riggins, and he's the guy that they have to stop. The fake freezes the defense. Joe has plenty of time. The Eagles do not get fooled. The ball hangs a little bit. Good defense came in over the top. Edwards did, knocked it away. You know, Theismann is only one of four quarterbacks to complete at least half of his passes in all seven games. Tommy Kramer, Steve DeBerg, and Dan Fouts. And you look at Carl Lorch, number 71. Go to second and 10 from the 11. Second man is Malone trying to cut back. Johnson got him at the 15, and he fell forward to about the 17-yard line. Charlie Johnson, a big man, as you look at Joe Theismann. What the Redskins are doing, they're, they're breaking. There's Pete Wysocki out of the wilds of Canada. Breaking their tendencies from that last set, that's Riggins' set. They're using Riggins as a blocker and Malone as a runner. They're trying to break their tendencies so the Eagles don't overcompensate and stop number 44, John Riggins. A study of the coaches, Dick Vermeil studying his boards. Jack Pardee sweating out his own particular thoughts. Third and five on the 16-yard line. Harmon and Hardeman are in there now. Has been setting up on an outside rush, and he's got Warren, the tight end, at the 25-yard line, and that's enough for a first down. Well, you know, Ben, the Redskins have their passing personnel in here, and what Joe is doing is going to a possession-type passing, and that's what he did last week against Cleveland. Smart football, get the first down. That's the expression you use there, get the first down, just get enough yards to get the first down. That's Don Warren, the rookie out of San Diego State, who is playing for Gene Fugit, who is out with a sprained knee, on the sideline, and he figures prominently Mike Bragg, the marvelous punter for Washington. John Riggins trying to get outside. Wilk slowed him up, and then Howard came along to bring him down, along with Wilson. And it's not much of a game, more a lateral run than anything else for Big John. And he's big. Yes, he is. And he has enough speed to get outside. People don't realize that. John can run inside and outside. Now, that formation was what we call a blue formation. It's still a John Reagan set. It's the same as the, the brown formation. He lines up at fullback in both sets. And he's the big guy you have to stop. The Eagles haven't put much pressure on Joe. That's Coy Bacon taking a respite and the skins trying to keep the ball buys and calling the signals second and 11 from the 24. Theismann looking left, now scurrying, chased by LeMaster, and releases to Malone, and Malone is decked by Totolo at about the 27-yard line. Watch how the middle linebacker, 58, Totolo, plays this play. He doesn't get too deep. He's watching the quarterback. Now he comes up. Makes a good tackle on Malone. Good solid tackle. The ball on the 29-yard line of the Skins. It is third and six. They've moved at 18 yards. Theismann with a slot right. Thompson is inside bug. And Gene Fugit is the tight end on the left side. Long side, I believe, and it'll be against Philadelphia. The pass is broken up. That, that ball was almost intercepted. Joe, like several quarterbacks, does a good job of bobbing his head and using inflection in his voice, Ben, to draw him offside. I think it was Dennis Harrison, the big fella who... Oh, oh and he's drawn him. It was Joe Theismann then who well, drew big Dennis Harrison off. I wonder if we can see that again. Guess Theismann is furious yeah. as he comes off the field. Joe does an excellent job on that. Now, right, now watch, watch, watch Joe's head. So he's, he's, pu he's pulling away in the head box. That's what we said. So the camera picked it up, wow. even though Theismann doesn't believe it. And good work by the officials there. Very good work by the officials. Fourth and six on the 29. And there is Wally Henry, number 89, back on his own 32-yard line. And there is Mike Bragg. Well, here's Anna Richmond. Michael, keep that ball up. It'll be difficult for Wally Henry to return it. Bragg will be playing from his own 20-yard line. It's not the ball, eh? 
Don Hover is back there to pick up Strays trying to come in the block. They're not coming and Bragg as you said George just hangs it up and a fair catch by Henry and the skins will surround it and let it drop and it'll roll dead on the 37 yard line. So the Eagles will put it in play first and 10 on their own 37 and to give you an idea the Eagles have had the ball starting off on their own 26 their own 47 and their own 37 but Joe Theismann whom you're looking at has started on his own two and on his own 11. Yes he has. We felt we always felt that we'd rather get 40 yards and no return than a longer punt and the possibility of bringing it back and that's what Mike Bragg uh, did in that last kick. First and 10 on the 37 for Ron Jaworski Carmichael wide left but the workhorse play action fake to Montgomery and Jaworski deep for Smith and he overthrows him Lamar Parrish right there running stride for stride a reminder this telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Washington Redskins and the National Football League is prohibited. Danny Bugs, you'll see that 88 all yes. over the place today. Joe likes Danny, and Danny has done a good job since he came over from the Jets. We can also duck in a score. The Jets are leading Oakland 7 to nothing. Richard Tard to Wesley Walker, 21 yards for the score. Second and 10 from the 37. Now Jaworski only threw the ball 12 times the last time the teams met. And he's going down. Who sacks him at the 30-yard line? I, I'm surprised the Eagles. Uh, the Eagles are playing into the Redskins' strength, throwing the ball. The Redskins' strength is their secondary, and then their pass rush, and then their linebackers next. For Jaworski, a bitter pill. He had been sacked only once in his last three games. That's the 15th time that the Eagle quarterback has been sacked this year. But only once in the last three, but Darren Calvert breaks through to pick him off. Miami leading New England 10 nothing with four left in the first quarter. So it is third and 17 from the 30. Slot left formation. And Jaworski low and away for Keith Prepley, the tight end, but he never had a chance. You know, making studies with our nickel defense, if they allow 16 to 17 percent of their of completions, it's a lot. Many times it would be 11, 12, 13 percent. When you get a quarterback in that situation, you have him on defense. Max Runniger will be in to kick. Hardeman is deep, standing on his own 30. Forte up in front on his left, and Harmon on his right. The skins go back to block, and Runniger boots one deep to the right, and Hardeman will take it on his own 22. And a great tackle oh, by Jerry Robinson. Great Boy, play by marvelous. Robinson. Great play by Robinson. Jerry Robinson, number 56, Gee. a rookie out of UCLA, a first-round draft choice. He took the blocker on, held his ground, and made the tackle one-on-one -on, -one on Hardeman. That's real fine defensive football. Watch him right in there. That's a great play. 4.3 in that hang time. Pretty and good. Now as Ike Forte comes off, the skins get a little bit of better field position first and 10 on their own 30 yard line. In motion goes Thompson wide right. Second man is John Reagan. And big Harrison number 68 and I mean big 6 8 275 pounds two years out of Vanderbilt and he's playing on the left side instead of Claude Humphrey. Well, that's that same formation where Riggins is lined up at fullback. He starts weak and cuts back, and, and the linebackers have to stay at home. He makes his yards on cutting back, hoping they will over-pursue, and he cuts back. The skin bench is alive. They're certainly up for this one, having lost to Philadelphia two weeks ago. Second and eight from the 32. Riggins and Malone, the running back. McDaniel is wide left and Thompson right. And here comes Riggins on the first cut. Dragged down by LeMaster as he crossed the 45-yard line. First down, Washington. Uh, again, that's what we call the Brown set. Reagan's at fullback. A weak side play. Reagan's did that quite a bit on his own. He started wide and cut back. He's a tremendous cutback runner. Good blocking by Terry Hermeling. Riggins, by the way, gained 115 yards two weeks ago against the Eagles. His only 100-yard game this year. The quarter has run out. Philadelphia nothing, Washington nothing. 
So Tampa Bay will be at Minnesota. Green Bay is back in Florida against Miami. Games you'll see next week on CBS. First and 10 now at the 14-yard line. Tampa Bay's defense has been outstanding thus far. And a loss on the play. Nate Simpson behind the line. Now you're looking at the number one defense in the NFC. Overall, they have not given Green Bay much room here. They sure haven't. And again, that was caused by penetration. The inside linebacker came up over uh, the guard and, and, and made something happen in the backfield. And it's very difficult to run the ball when defensive players are in the offensive backfield. Randy Crowder, number 71, was in there as a fourth lineman. And Nafziger, 51, is back in at linebacker. We're back to 3-4. Second and 10. No gain on the play. Whitehurst chased out. His pass is complete, and we'll have a first down. Paul Kaufman, the tight end, has dragged several bucks with him. And a fine play for the free agent from Kansas who won the job in camp. A good catch and a good play after the catch. He's a that was a good play after the catch. He reminded me of Dave Casper, where he's not going to let one defender bring him down. We see Whitehurst scramble here, and then he's going to find Kaufman across the field and makes a nice throw. Now watch Kaufman right here. He takes one, two, a third misses, and now they come back a third. It's on him, and finally, uh, uh, it takes three or four to get him down, and, and his own man may have helped a little. Cotney. And Curtis Brown had to come in on the play. And number 87, Walter Tullis, is in at wide receiver for the Packers. First and 10. Looked like he was going for the ball. Number 42, Walt Landers carried for a couple. Make it Nate Simpson. Bart Starr is calling the plays and sending him out to Whitehurst, who has some plays taped to his wrist. What he does, Bart Starr gives the, the play to Zeke Bartkowski, who then signals it to Dave Whitehurst, and then he calls it in the huddle. Second and six at the 39, so it's like a third base coach giving a sign to a batter, whether to sacrifice or not. Second down and six out of the eye. Simpson carried last time, and he has it again. Maybe a yard and a half, that's all. David Lewis, number 57, who has been brilliant against the run. He has been the best linebacker for Tampa Bay, although Dewey Selman is considered the quarterback out there. Clock runs down, and there's the gun, and Tampa Bay should be very happy indeed because they've dominated the game. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Bucks seven, the Packers nothing. I'm Vin Scully along with George Allen. Welcome back to RFK Stadium in Washington, the start of the second quarter, no score. That first quarter went flying by. We had a lot of running plays, 16 running plays to only nine passes for both sides. Washington first and 10 from their own 46. Geisman to Malone, and he is tied up behind the line of scrimmage. Charlie Johnson coming in to dump him. Well, I think Benny in the first quarter, the Eagles threw the ball a little more than we anticipated. Their strength is to run the football first and throw second. Now, on Malone going to the weak side of the formation, I don't think he has the speed to go wide. You're not going to make many yards on that. In fact, they lost six to the Skins. They're back in their own 41, second and 16. And they bring in Buddy Hardiman now to spell Malone. Danny Bugs wide left. Warren, the tight end, is on the right side. Hardiman is on a wing. That puts Riggins all alone behind Theisman. And Joe going over the middle to Hardiman. Bunting grabs him. He fumbles. And it's picked up by Charlie Johnson. And Johnson recovers it for the Eagles. And that's the second big turnover by Washington. Yes, and the Eagles have not taken advantage of the field position they have had. They've had excellent field position. Well, the start of the second quarter, the Eagles get a turnover, but there's still no score. <laughs> Start of the second quarter here in Tampa, Florida. This is Dick Stockton along with John Madden. The Bucks lead at seven to nothing. They're the third down conversion so far. The Packers have a third and five at their own 40-yard line, and three wide receivers are in the game. Kaufman, the tight end, now moves over to the left. So it's strong side left. And in motion comes Andre Thompson. 
Whitehurst is going for Lofton, and he overthrows him. Jerris White was covering on the play. So it's fourth down, and he'll punt. That's the one we were talking about. The Buccaneers went to their five defensive backs. The last time they had all their defensive secondary strength towards the tight end, and this time the Green Bay Packers went away from that strength. And it, <coughs> we see here uh, uh, he was open on that play. You saw Danny Reese deep for Tampa Bay at the 10, and Dave Beverly is kicking on a low snap. And they'll down it there at the 17 yard line. So Tampa Bay will take over there. Mike Wellman, number 65, was covering. Well, tonight on CBS starts with the award winning 60 minutes. Then the laughs are on the house at Archie Bunker's place, followed by One Day at a Time. The comedy continues on Alice, followed by the Jeffersons. And don't miss Pernell Roberts as Trapper John M.T. Fine shows on tonight on CBS. 42-yard punt for David Beverly, who's had his highs and lows this year. First and 10 at the 18. For Tampa Bay, they lead it 7 to nothing. The lone setback is Ricky Bell, 42. Bell. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Robert Barber, number 70, originally with Pittsburgh, makes the tackle. Well, the Dolphins now lead it 10 nothing. Bob Greasy has thrown a 13-yard touchdown pass to tight end Bruce Hardy. And Miami is off and running against the Patriots. You saw where Cincinnati was leading 7 to nothing, And the New York Jets leading Oakland 7 to nothing as well as Richard Todd hit Wesley Walker 21 yards. That's one we didn't talk about earlier. For good reason, John. Right. Second out and eight. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> At the 20. In motion is Morris Owens. Williams throws complete to Giles, a tight end, a first down. As Wingo and Gary Weaver combine to make the stop on Jimmy Giles, the man the Buccaneers like to go to in key situations. He is their second leading receiver. People talk about throwing the ball too hard or too fast or too much velocity. There's no way you can. And I think Doug Williams showed it that time. He zipped it into Giles. They, they had motion. They doubled the motion man, and Giles worked in the middle, and Williams zipped it in there. 18-yard pickup, first down at the 38-yard line. Owens comes in motion once again. Pitch goes to Eckwood. Packers come in and force the play with Rich Wingo, number 50, in the middle, and Charles Johnson, number 99. Wingo's played tremendous football for a team that lost John Anderson and Michael Hunt from the linebacker position. And Wingo and Douglas have been admirable at that spot. There's Wingo, a number seven draft choice from Alabama. I'm very impressed with Rich Wingo. I've, I've watched him in a couple games this year, and, and he's a very aggressive player. He's in on everything. Second and 11 at the 37 now. Bell finds a hole up the middle. Finally, Barber brings him down. He found a, a hole, which, which in turn happened to be a cutback hole, as we'll see here on the replay. It starts off strong side. He's going to run. Then he bounces back uh, uh, to the weak side or away from the side he started. And again, there wasn't good pursuit or hold there. We saw that earlier where Leroy Selman came across and made a great play. The Packers didn't do that, and they're in a three-man line also now. You saw Bell, six carries, 65 yards. He came into the game averaging nearly five yards a rush. Tony Davis, number 27, is in the game. Williams under pressure, being chased by Barber. He completes the pass to Jimmy Giles, and a superb catch. Jimmy Giles on a good low catch. And another first down for Tampa Bay. Giles had a great secondary reaction on that. He was running a hook in the middle. And we'll see here, he'll be in the middle. Doug Williams was looking. He was covered. Then Giles worked back to the outside. It was a great read between the quarterback and the tight end because that wasn't his original pattern. First and 10 at the 45. Eckwood and Bell are the setbacks. Morris will come in motion 85. Bell. Almost brought down from behind, and it took number 46, Steve Luke, to bring him down. 
It was Earl Edwards who had a grab on Bell. They took Ricky Bell over Tony Dorsett. Ricky Bell looks like he's telling the official he thought it was a, a face mask, and it maybe it could have been, but Ricky Bell is a great cutback runner. That was the thing that he learned at USC from that eye formation. You start one way and you cut back, and we'll see if it was a face mask. Here we see him cutting back to the middle, and it looked like something did make his head go back a little. Johnny Davis, number 38, second year back in a bull of a Bruiser from Alabama carries at second and four and picks up a couple. Charles Johnson, the rookie, makes the tackle straight up. Williams has been sacked only one time this year. He has now 12 touchdown passes, but coming into the game had completed only 37%, which is awfully low. It's low, but I also think it's misleading because Doug Williams doesn't throw that short stuff, and John McKay doesn't want him to. John Miskay says if we're going to throw it, get it up the field and throw it. We don't have to throw it in our own backfield. Ricky Bell is now a tailback, number 42. Davis, 38, the up back. And Ricky Bell piled on immediately by Earl Edwards. Trying to get that first down, and they have it. So the Bucks have opened it up when they've had to, and they've run inside, and good cutback running by Ricky Bell has marked this first half. They sure have. They put rookie Johnny Davis in there uh, again, and he he led for the play. And Coach McKay likes Davis, and I think we're going to see more and more of him today. And I think as the season goes on, the Buccaneer fans are going to see more and more of him playing along with Ricky Bell. Well, he can block. He can get a tough couple of yards when you need it. Ricky Bell. And a fine play by Wingo, the linebacker, at the 30. Three yard line. Wingo's been all over the place, and I understand that he was almost cut. He was worried that he might have been cut before the season started. As you look at Bart Starr and Zeke Bratkowski. Terry Jones, number 63, who came off of injured reserve last week and performed superbly against Detroit, replaces Earl Edwards at left tackle. Bart Starr in his fifth year. Second and eight at the 33. Eckwood back in there, 43 for Tampa Bay. He flips it out to Eckwood. Eckwood at the inside the 30. Eckwood still going. And Jerry Eckwood fighting for the goal line. Penalty marker down. Our first penalty of the game as Eckwood is out of bounds, short of the goal line. Mike McCoy, the right cornerback, finally brought him down. And we'll have a clip against Tampa Bay, so nullify it. There, there was a great block out in front initially that, that sprung Eckwood right here. Right after he catches the ball, we're going to see the block right there on Douglas. And that was a block that, that sprung him by Greg Horton as he led out there. Now the clip must have occurred down there towards the goal line. Pick it up from oh, Fritz. Personal foul, clipping. Number 88. First down. It's on the tight end, Jimmy Giles. Fred Silver, our referee. That was away from the play because it was a weak side screen. So Jimmy Giles had to come all the way across the field to get into it to clip someone because the onside blocking was great. There's Giles, first and 10 at the 17, but Tampa Bay was within a yard of the goal line. They're still threatening, 8.22 to go in the half. Morris Owens in motion. Look out. Look out. Bell. Gets a couple inside the 15. Wingo again, the middle linebacker, makes the play. Wingo again, Tampa's trying to use that motion to get the, the shift of the secondary and then come back against it, but they haven't done anything yet to take care of Wingo. Jim Gano, number 51, comes in as a fourth linebacker now for Green Bay as Charles Johnson goes out. Second and seven at the 14. Johnny Davis, number 38, enters the ball game. And Ricky Bell gets a breather. 7-0, Tampa Bay leading second quarter. Eckwood gets by one man and wins his way to the 10-yard line. Robert Barber makes the tackle. So it'll be third and three now at the 10. Certainly Tampa Bay in solid field goal position. 
know, Eckwood has had had some fumbling problems this year. He's a rookie. Of course, he has the cast on his wrist. But the other thing is, he really fights for yardage. And I would take that anytime. Sometimes you're going to get some fumbles. But when a guy will twist and turn and fight and get that extra yards, sometimes it's worth it. Ricky Bell comes back in with 10 carries, 77 yards, third and three at the 10. And the pitch is to Bell. And Bell inside. Does he get to the goal line? Penalty marker down. Penalty marker thrown right at the play. Did not go over. Johnny Gray finally tackled him. He did not go over. Giles did a great job of blocking on that play. He really stayed with his man and took him all the way downfield towards the towards the goal line. It's a face mask call against Green Bay, and it really doesn't matter because they'd have first and goal anyway. They'll just move it half the distance. Jim Gano might have been the guilty party. Let's pick it up. Here we see the play again. We see we see Giles pushing out and staying with his man all the way to the sideline, and then it gets to be a one-on-one -on -one situation on the goal line. It was Gano who was guilty. Johnny Davis and now Ricky Bell in motion. First and goal at the one. Touchdown. Doug Williams carries himself. And Doug Williams has scored a touchdown to give Tampa Bay a 13 to nothing lead. His first touchdown rushing this year. We'll see here the last time they had a, a short yardage play. They put it back in motion and then they ran to that side on a sweep. This time they got in a goal line play. They went to motion. And Doug said, I'll just keep it myself and take it in. Not bad. O'Donohue at the point after 651 remaining in the first half. And it's 14 to nothing in favor of the Bucks. We have a backfield in motion call, and they may have to do it again. Illegal procedure. His legal procedure, the left guard moved. I saw that. I don't know what he was moving for. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> There's no reason for him to move. All he has to see, all he has to do is sit there. That was a, a silly penalty. You know, I met Doug Williams at the airport the other night, and I was amazed and impressed how big he was. I mean, he is really something. He is really a physical quarterback. He's solid. And, yeah, and he impressed me standing in the airport. Now he's impressing me out here. Ball start. Center. It was a left guard, Fred. All right. Horton's the left guard. Wilson, the man he called it on, is the center. So now they're going to try the point after from the 14. Makes it a 24 yard kick for O'Donoghue. It's perfect. Kick is good and it's now officially 14 to nothing in favor of Tampa Bay. They have played it perfectly on defense. They have moved the ball when they've had to on offense. And Green Bay right now is in trouble. For the second time, the sun shines on Dick Vermeil. Earlier it was Howard's interception after a pass was deflected by Dennis Harrison. Now Vermeil sees Charlie Johnson recover the fumble. And Wilbert Montgomery ready to go into high gear first and 10 on the Eagle 49. Jaworski, however, goes to Harris, who is buried at midfield. That fumble, by the way, was forced by Tatoro. 50. The Eagles well, going over some defensive that's strategy. That's Marion Campbell, their defensive coordinator, who has done an excellent job since he came over from Atlanta. But he come here and he come here now. That, that, that's the play that uh, Riggins hurt him on, pulling the guard and the tackle. You got to stay at home. But that flow is coming to you. So you can't follow that pursuit, is what he's saying. He's saying that flow is coming to you. Second and eight now on the skins 49, and Jaworski with Harrison Montgomery flaring out. Bad ankle or no, he's running. And he has spun down. And Coy Bacon picked it up. Coy Bacon. Picks the loose ball up. Neil Okowitz gave the hit. And the ball and came loose and Big Coy found it. And Jaworski is limping. He hurt his ankle on that. That's. So 
the second time that Jaworski has run today and that's Okowitz 52 spinning him around the ball flying into Coy Bacon's hands and the veteran at 12 years out of Jackson State makes the recovery and Dick Vermeil is now cut by his own sword and he wants to find out about Jaworski's ankle. Well, he's limping pretty pretty severely. That's the last thing Dick wants is Jaworski to run the football. First and ten on the Redskin 43. Bugs right and Thompson left. With Malone and Riggins behind Beisman. And it's John Riggins. And he has some daylight. Gets across midfield. Down right. to the skin. And on the move into the Eagle 48-yard line. Then at the top of the show, we said the Redskins have to stop Montgomery. The Eagles have to stop Riggins. And yeah. we have a look at Ron Jaworski because the Philadelphia story rests on that bad ankle. You see him shaking his head. And of course, all eyes will be on Jaworski and can he make it? Yeah, he's he's real tough. If he can make it, he will. So they move the ball to the Eagle 49. It'll be second and two. They picked up eight on that run by Reagan. That's Thompson in motion to the left to go slot left. Inside McDaniel. Benny Malone trying to climb a skyscraper at the 45 yard line. Well, Benny's doing the right thing. The first down. short yards go over the top. Give the ball to the second back. Riggins blocking and watch Benny go over the top. And he picks up the first down at the 45. Meanwhile on the other side of the field they're working feverishly on Ron Jaworski's right leg and there is the guilty party that right ankle that he hurt last week and they're going to put extra taping on to try and give him some more support. First and ten on the Eagle 46. McDaniel is in motion to go slot left. Theismann is going to go left and he's got McDaniel at the 40 and he's dragged out of bounds by Bernard Wilson at the 37 yard line. The other Eagle quarterback standing in the shadows of Ron Jaworski is veteran number 10 John Walden five years out of Elizabeth City State a free agent with the Rams and then a free agent with Philadelphia he spent two years in the World Football League and he might have to play. He can do the job then. He's a good man. He, he has the experience. He can run. He's got a strong arm and he's an intelligent quarterback. Second and two on the Eagle 38 yard line. Bugs wide right. And the skins are on the move thanks to the recovery by Coy Bacon of the fumble. Second man Benny Malone tried to get out of a blocker's way and down he goes. He was trying to get around Bob Kuzil. And Kuzil, the center, was down, and as he was trying to get around Kuzil, Terry Tortolo came up and made the tackle. It'll be second down, and they're going to measure. Here comes Hardeman and Clarence Harmon in. And that much to go for the first down. So that makes third. And about six inches from here. You know, Harmon can play fullback and halfback. He's very valuable. He's big enough to play fullback. He's fast enough to play halfback. Well, we'll see Theismann now and what play he calls. And there's Ron Jaworski in some pain on the sideline. Third and one from the 37. Full house in the backfield, and now they split Harmon to go up on a wing. Hardeman and Riggins are running back, and it'll be Riggins straight ahead. Riggins would appear to have picked up the first down. Dick Vermeil, of course, is not worried about the field for the moment. He wants to see Jaworski. And that right yeah. leg is getting bigger and bigger. And, of course, John Walden is getting closer and closer to coming into the game. First down for Washington. Picked up the first down. As you can see, Washington has moved the ball. Six first downs to Philadelphia. One, but no score. First and ten on the Eagle 35-yard line. Harmon and Hardeman are the running backs behind Thiesman. Bugs is left. Thompson is right. Play action fake. And all alone is Danny Bugs. And he is finally dragged down by Herman Edwards at the 22-yard line. You know, that when they bring in Hardeman and Harmon, it usually equals pass. Some form of pass. Play action, screen, possibility of a draw. And that's what they did on that down. Now Ron Jaworski is up on his feet helmet on and about 50 pounds of tape on his right ankle but evidently Ron is telling his coach Dick Vermeil that 
he's going to give it his best shot and be back in there. But they have to get the ball. It's first and ten Redskins on the Eagle 21. In motion is John McDaniel to the right. Here comes Benny Malone inside John Bunting and gets across the 20. Pretty good block by Harmon on Bunting, and that made the play work. LeMaster making the tackle. Harmon's a good blocker. They had Harmon at fullback and Malone at halfback on this play. Here it is. Hand off to Malone. There's the block on Bunting. Malone cut, cuts back. Malone is a cutback runner. Malone doesn't have the blazing speed to turn the corner and go outside. The ball is on the Eagle 18 yard line. The Redskins started on their own 43. The motion is Malone to the left to go outside McDaniel. And there goes Harmon and he had a pretty good opening as he spins to the 15 yard line. He has to get to about the 12 for a first down. Wilbert Montgomery impatiently waiting to get his hands on the football for Montgomery. He has carried five times for only 13 yards, and he is certainly not accustomed to that pace. Now here comes Danny Bugs in with Hardiman. Out comes Malone. And McDaniel. Third and four on the 15-yard line. And look at Tampa Bay. As Doug Williams has him on the board twice, 14 to nothing. Williams running it over for the second touchdown. They split Harmon and Hardiman. And well, timeout Washington down on the field because Joe Theismann on a third and four wants to talk to Jack Pardee. What happened is Marion Campbell sent in a running defense. Joe had to play before called an audible. Next Sunday, it's a CBS NFL doubleheader. Check local listings for the games and times in your area. A super Sunday of football. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. Washington showing signs of keeping the ball as you can see their conversions three out of five to Philadelphia's one for four and this is another one third and fourth Eisman asking for quiet Hardiman and Harmon and a slot left goes Thompson inside bud Eisman looking left and it is broken up by Claude Humphrey number right. 87 Humphrey who is six five got his hands in the air well, remember he was a free agent right. from Atlanta but now with Marion Campbell he's coming back this is the second batted ball watch how high he jumps and the receiver was open now Joe sometimes throws line drives you got to try to throw around those people throw through alleys that was a big play for the Eagles Wade Key who was just activated by the Eagles yesterday morning a veteran back with the Eagles again and with the spot will be at the 24 yard line and hold there'll be a flag on the play Latimer came breaking through to crunch Mike Mosley and let's see they hit they hit uh, Theismann on that Theismann was hit Mark Mosley with the hole by Theismann It'll be five yards on a kickoff running into the kicker. The so Latimer is guilty of running into the kicker. Al Latimer. And for Mark Mosley, he is now 14 out of 17 in successful field goals. And if he gets a point after, he has 45 straight. And for the Eagles, they will be penalized five yards on the next kickoff. But Pardee is happy because the Redskins are out in front, three to nothing. The key there is that Tampa Bay used up almost eight minutes on the clock in their second touchdown drive. And so now, John Madden, we have to look at a situation in which Green Bay has fallen behind. We have seen some of a three wide receiver offense. What do you think? I think we're probably going to see more of that. And I think we may start seeing it some on first and second down. Odom now cuts away. He's got one man and cuts inside and is down at the 31 yard line. He said, oops, I'm going the other way. And Odom gets to the 31 yard line. So let's see whether they open the ball, or open the offense more. Of course, Bart Starr did that against the Patriots, and it resulted in a resounding victory over New England 27 to 14 on Monday night a few weeks ago. And he was very successful with it. And as we look at Bart now, they've been starting where they've been running on the first and second down, putting the third wide receiver in on third. And maybe they may start putting that third wide receiver in on first or second down. Right now they're going with two wide receivers. 
with Lofton number 80 to the top, Undra Thompson 89. Randy Crowder 71 is in there, a four down lineman off the defense for Tampa Bay. First and 10 at the 31. A keeper for Whitehurst, and he's down for a loss. That looked to be a broken play. Mike Washington brought him down. I'm sure it was a broken play. You know, the plays are called from the sideline, and it looked like it was supposed to be a, a trap to the left. The, the Buccaneers were in a four-man line, and they were shifted to the weak side. Green Bay was going to trap or one run back to the strong side, and everyone knew it except the halfback. That's what Whitehurst has done thus far in this game. Curtis Jordan, number 25, is in as a fifth defensive back. Both wide receivers, Thompson and Lofton, now split to the left, second and 14 at the 27. Whitehurst, he'll have time. Out to the side to the running back, Nate Simpson. So he went kind of cross field and did not pick up much, if anything. No, and he's not satisfied with that either. Really, you know, if, if you're going to throw the ball, you want to get it up the field and make something out of it. You don't want to be making a yard or two. And I'm sure that he he was looking downfield. He was throwing against five defensive backs. He was trying to find something open downfield. He couldn't. It was really fine coverage by the Bucks. Now they're going with the three wide receivers as Walter Tullis, 87, replaces Simpson. But you expect it on third and long. Right. Got to do it on first down. 28-yard line. Green Bay shut out thus far. They haven't moved it except for one instance in the first series. Penalty marker down. I think Tampa Bay was really ready to come on that one. Well, it was Harris. against Green Bay. Yeah, they, they, the linebackers were jumping in there, and Leotis Harris just flinched. And, of course, that, that then is against the offense. Offense number 69. Ball start. He you saw it. <clears throat> what the rule is there that if the offensive man is is pulled offside, if he moves backwards, then it's against the offense. And that's what Leotis Harris did. Third and 18 at the 23. Tullis and Thompson out to the left. Loft into the right. A blitz. He gets rid of it in a hurry. Lofton has one man to beat. James Lofton at midfield. And Lofton is finally out of bounds at the 32-yard line. He is out of bounds at the 32. He was out of bounds. He was just getting a little practice. But that was a great read by David Whitehurst. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers were in their five defensive back. They blitzed. They brought the safeties. And, and Whitehurst just dropped back to and hit Lofton as we look at it again. Isolated one-on-one -on -one here. You see, they knew exactly what to expect when they saw that safety come in. They knew that Lofton was going to be one-on-one -on -one with no help to the inside. So he just came back and popped him, gave him the ball, and it was a, it was a good play for the Green Bay Packers. He was up against Jerris White, a 44-yard play for the Pack. First and 10 at Tampa Bay's 33. Trailing 14 to nothing are Green Bay. Nate Simpson moving in front for a couple of yards. They have not had any success rushing straight ahead thus far. No, and they haven't had a lot of success on their first down plays. And I think that pretty soon they'll get to a mixture of, of running and pa passing, maybe some three wide receivers on first down, maybe a little more play pass on first down. Cleveland Cincinnati are tied seven and seven. Brian Seip, a six yard touchdown pass to Reggie Rucker in that AFC Central scrap. Gain of two, second and eight at the 31. Packers have to get on the board sooner or later. 420 to go in the first half. Whitehurst fakes and he flips. It's complete inside the 30 yard line. Good quick thinking by David Whitehurst to Nate Simpson on the receiving end there. Let's see Simpson. going to see here he he comes out of the backfield and just turns but Whitehurst had a had a run again and scrambled to his side and we see Simpson making the same adjustment that Giles had made for Tampa Bay earlier they run one pattern the quarterback has to scramble the receiver scrambles with him Nafziger the linebacker comes out and Curtis Jordan 25 is in as a fifth defensive back three wide receivers now for Green Bay third and six at the 29. 
He goes to Landers. Landers driving and has a first down. Walt Landers keeps the drive going as he is brought down at the 22-yard line. That was a good call and good mixture by the Packers there. They they had been going the three wide receivers and going downfield with the ball. This time they ran them off with the wide receivers and threw a screen out there to the right. There was only one Tampa Bay man there. They missed him and he made the tackle out there. That was a great defensive play also. One of your former players Rick Bonas number 53 is in at linebacker. And Randy Crowder, 71, is in there as a fourth down lineman. First and 10 at the 22 for the white shirted Packers. And the pitch goes to Simpson. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Good pursuit by David Lewis, number 57, the left outside linebacker. Corner Jarris White was up in the backfield also, and that's what's been giving Green Bay more problems than anything in their running game is that on each running play they've had penetration. They've never been able to seal off the line of scrimmage and the corner. They've always been in a position where there's been a Tampa Bay Buccaneer in their backfield on running play. Former Miami Dolphin acquired in a trade by Tampa Bay. They've made some important and sometimes controversial trades to build up. Second and 10 now, 22, and the whistle blows. And the clock may have run down. The two-minute warning. We have a two-minute warning as John McKay on the sideline gets set to talk to his defense. We'll be back in a moment. Washington has taken points off the board because of the running into the kicker. They have a first down, and Malone is going to go. Touchdown. Straight up the middle. Nice run. Here's Malone right up the gut. Good blocking. Look at that hole. Bob Kuzil and Jeff Williams opening it up for Malone. Remember, Mosley had kicked a 34 yard field goal and they went off the field. But when Party realized it could be a first down, they took the points off and increased them. So Mosley now has kicked 46 straight. Benny Malone picks up a touchdown. And it is Washington 7, Philadelphia nothing. That's a good decision by Pardee. There are some coaches who hate to take points down from the scoreboard, but Jack had it first and 10 from the 10 and took advantage. Benny Malone, an eight-yard touchdown run. Washington leads Philadelphia. Eagles off to a great start. They beat Washington in their earlier clash. Tampa Bay back to the 3-4. Oakland is on the board. Jets still lead 7-3, second quarter. But right here, Green Bay is trying to move closer. They're trailing 14 nothing second and 10 at the 22. Strong side is left. That's where Kaufman lines up the tight end. Whitehurst deep drop up the middle almost intercepted. The linebacker number 57 David Lewis had it and dropped it. It was not a good pass by Whitehurst intended for the tight end Kaufman. Again, that was really good coverage by the by the Buck defense. They had everyone doubled, uh, and you know, and Whitehurst just had to pick one that was open the most. And of course, he really didn't have anything downfield. He had three receivers downfield, and they were all doubled, and it all looked like that. I think that they're having more success when they're in the three wide receiver, and they spread that Buck defense out. Which well, they're going to do on this play. Right, they are. Curtis Jordan, the fifth defensive back for Tampa Bay. Landers, 42, the one setback. And it passes over the head of Landers, out of bounds. Fourth down. Whitehurst had Landers and just threw it over. And so Chester Markle is entering the game right now. He has had the rough going. He has hit on only three of seven attempts this season. They tried the same thing on that play. They put in their three wide wide receivers, ran them, ran them all deep, and then tried to get a screen. The first time they did it to the right, that time to the left. I like to throw the ball down the field on third down. We have a penalty here, and let's see what Fred Silva tells us. 
Maybe against Green Bay, and it is, and that's tough as far as the field goal attempt is concerned. Offense, number 54, illegally downfield. Larry McCarron, the center. That'll happen <clears throat> on a screen pass where he's blocking and he starts out and he's leading the screen. Sometimes as he comes out to get into the screen, he gains ground instead of staying behind the line of scrimmage. Is that a timing situation? It is a timing situation, and they can't get upfield. Third and 20 now at the 32-yard line, and we have another <clears throat> whistle. They're having a little conference there. Oops. Now, is that an obvious call to take the penalty in a situation like this? Giving Whitehurst another shot. You're yes, to give him nothing. another shot and get him out of field goal range. I think that's what they were trying to do is get is get rid of that possible field goal. But what McCarron uh, did on that play, my center Dave Dalby used to do that a lot. We used to have to run him against a fence so he wouldn't get upfield <laughs> as he went laterally. You know, I'd say lateral doesn't do mean up. <laughs> Third and twenty at the thirty-two. Whitehurst wants to pick up some yardage now so Marco can have a decent shot. Whitehurst fires. It's caught at the 15 yard line by Walter Tullis, number 87. They're short of a first down by four yards, but Marco will have a great shot now compared to what he had before. I'll tell you a thing we're going to see here again is where Whitehurst scrambles. The, the Bucks had great secondary coverage, as we'll see on all the Green Bay Packer receivers. They were all covered. Now, as Whitehurst starts to scramble, Tullis scrambled too, and then was able to get in position to make a reception. A 33-yard attempt by uh, Marco. He's two for five from this distance this season. And Marco's kick is up. It is no good off to the right. So despite having the best shot, Mark Cole missed. And he's now three for eight on the year. And so all of that work by the Green Bay Packers goes for naught. And with one minute and one second to go in the first half, the Bucks retain their 14 to nothing lead. So Washington took a field goal down off the boards when it gave them a first down on the running into the kicker and parlayed it into a 10 yard touchdown run from Benny Malone. Washington seven Philadelphia nothing and the skins kicking off deep as Wally Henry on the goal line and the kick will not quite get there. Henry's going to have to back into the end zone and take it out and he's to the 10 to the 15 a little guy at the 20 and goes forward to about the 23 yard line. It'll be first and 10 George. The field goal appeared to have been accepted. The team started to come off the field. Is there a bottom line? How long you can wait before realizing yes. it gave you a first down? They automatically thought that the Redskins would accept the, the three points. The coach, the head coach, has the option of taking the points or taking the first down. I once lost a game against New England by taking points off of the board, and on the next play, we threw an interception. <laughs> First and 10 from the 23 and the quarterback heavily taped is Ron Jaworski with Harrison Montgomery out of the eye and it's Wilbert Montgomery following Harris outside now cutting inside and Mark Murphy finally Harris doing a good job of blocking big Carl Lord. As I mentioned the party made the right decision if you don't take the first down it shows you don't have confidence in your offense. And then if you if you don't make it, you still have a chance to kick that field goal later on. Second and four from the Eagle 29. And Jaworski finding himself down 7-0. Has Carmichael wide right, Smith left. His tight end Cuffley is on the left side. Wilbert Montgomery trying to climb over people. And he goes down at the 34-yard line. Woody Peoples doing the job. Woody Peoples coming over from San Francisco is going to find job to strengthen this offensive line. Now watch 69 pulling going through the hole going down trying to make a block. He and Guy Morris look like they were hooked up the way they worked together but the skins working well defensively. It's enough however first and ten on the Eagle 34. 
Play action fake. Jaworski looping it high. Montgomery making the catch. And he gets to the 43. Fumbles. Carmichael picks it up. And the big man is off to the races. Dragged down from behind by Tony Peters. Well, uh, that, uh, they're ruling that. If that's that's correct, only the guy that fumbles the ball can recover his own fumble. On a pass, first and ten. Now watch this. He's hit and fumbles. Carmichael picks it up. Well, he that play covered 44 yards as big Harold Carmichael dragged down by Tony Peters from behind. That puts the ball at the Redskin 23-yard line. In fact, make it the 23, first and ten, and the Eagles down. On a drive, get a big break on a fumble recovery. Jaworski to Montgomery. He fumbles again. And oh, apparently recovered yeah. it. You know, some of this fumbling is not due to improper carrying the ball. There's hard hitting in there. These teams are, are playing football. Let's watch the contact. That's Kenny Houston, Kenny Houston. one of your favorites. Oh, Kenny. The Crefley, the tight end, went down to get it ahead of Lamar Paris and Dick Vermeil wondering what's going on with my man Montgomery. Meanwhile, barefoot Tony Franklin. Loosening up, we might see him in a moment. Second and eight from the 21 of Washington. Jaworski under a rush. Gets rid of the ball in the end zone. No good for Carmichael. Coy Bacon came charging in. Tony Peters was defending. They dogged him on that. The Eagles couldn't pick it up. Jaworski did a good job of getting it off. Could have been sacked on it. So it'll be third and eight. Excuse me, Vinny. The Redskin defense to date have dictated to the Eagle offense. I don't know whether it's the fact that the game is in Washington or the fact that Washington lost two weeks ago or even the fact that the Skins are home for the first time in five games, but they would appear to have more fire and more emotion, at least up to this stage, yes, than they have. Philadelphia. So it is third and eight on the Skins' 21-yard line. Big play for Jaworski. The Skins trying to get through. Jaworski high and deep and over the head of the tight end, Crefley. Yeah. Once again, it was Tony Peters picking him up. He had a throw in high. Peters was right on him, and the Redskins are putting out a pretty good rush. Watch, he's got him covered all the way. It's no accident that Washington has held four of its last five opponents under the 10-point mark, and the only exception was that game two weeks ago against Philadelphia. So Jaworski is frustrated the ball at the 21 and Tony Franklin who has kicked nine out of 11 the only two he has missed this year from the 52 and the 50 he's already kicked more field goals than Philadelphia made all last year the spot at the 27 a 37 yard kick is no good so even Franklin comes up short and the Eagles can't get off the ground with five minutes and 23 seconds left to the half, you can see Franklin and apparently slicing it, hitting it inside out. He didn't. He didn't follow through, Ben. He he kicked it. The ball went exactly the way he kicked it. He kicked it to the right, and it goes to the right. And Franklin, a rookie out of Texas A&M, who had kicked them in college, 64 and 65, missed that one by plenty. It just got away from him. So now the line of scrimmage remains at 21, so the Skins pick up a yard. Tyson setting up a screen to Danny Bugs, and they stack him up. It didn't work. 5.15 left to the half. Seven to nothing in favor of Washington, and they have just stiffened after the Eagles had taken over on their own 23 and moved to the Washington 21, and Vermeil has to be a little frustrated. That last call is a good first down play. It's almost as safe as a running play. You throw a quick screen to your flanker, let the blocker set up, and he cuts back underneath. It's very safe. Second and nine from the 22-yard line, a full house backfield, but now Thompson goes in motion to the left. Second man, Benny Malone, and is he ever buried? and buried by Carl Hairston and Claude Humphrey. Now, they're two guys who really make a sandwich out of it. Yes, they do. Uh, they didn't go for the fake. They faked to Riggins. They've been worried about stopping Riggins and give it to the second man through. They weren't fooled. 
So Wonder Malone didn't fumble the ball. Humphrey is 265. Hairston is 260. And Malone is 190. Eagles, so it is third and ten. Eagles did a good, made a good trade when they brought in Claude Humphrey. Miami leading New England 13 to nothing in the second quarter. The ball back where it started on the 21. McDaniel in a slot left inside Bud. Theismann under no pressure to Harmon. He juggled and is on his way. Harmon down the sidelines being chased by Wilson and is pushed out of bounds but they're going to call the play back I believe. He stepped out of bounds in the vicinity Boy. of the 40 yard okay. line. Ben you know we were talking about Harmon before the game. This guy is a tremendous football player. He'll stay with the ball. He'll get a deflected ball. He doesn't make mistakes. Let's see if he steps out of bounds there. Right yeah, there. He was pushed out of bounds. He, a lot of receivers would not follow this in. Harmon did the same thing one year when the Redskins beat the Rams. Same type of a ball. Watch this catch. Looked it right in. Now he puts it away. He's got excellent speed for a 211 pound play you know been over the years when uh, we would complain about something on the opposition we'd say those guys are holding they'd call on our ball club in so case you're not aware <laughs> of what George means Jack Pardee this week blistered Philadelphia for their illegal holding Vermeil was quite angry at the charge and now don't you know it's Washington guilty of the infraction so we got so we, we wouldn't complain about anything holding offense number 54 first down that's Bob Cuzil the center Five years out of Pittsburgh, who was guilty of the infraction. So one minute, Washington had the big play, but now they're back on their own 30-yard line where it is first and 20. Thompson in motion to the right, and you have Riggins and Malone behind him, and Malone in motion to the left, going outside McDaniel. No rush, really, by the Eagles. Theismann with a lot of time, and he hits Thompson. Randy Logan brings him down, but it's a first down. I'll tell you, then, what you just said, the Eagles have yet to rush Theismann. They've had two deflected balls. Unless they can put a little more pressure on him with the Redskins' running game with Riggins and his ability to pick up the short passing game, the possession-type passing, they're going to be in trouble. Theismann... Theismann too much time to throw is eight for 12 and now with that he is nine for 13 so Theismann having a big day it is seven to nothing Redskins we have 305 to the half and it's first and 10 now on the Eagle 48 and it'll be John Riggins grab from behind Big Dennis Harrison, number 68, fell on top of him. At the bottom is Frank LeMaster. You know, all that shifting really shouldn't bother you. you. You wait until they get it in the final set, and you tee off and you play football. You're not concerned what the preliminary set should be. If you're concerned about that, Ben, then you're hesitating, and you're not playing good defensive football. Let them shift. That's the way we always used to play Dallas. And that's really Washington's feeling right now. They think they're playing Dallas. Even though it is Philadelphia, second and eight on the Eagle 46. Bugs is right. Thompson is left. Malone in motion, so Riggins is the sole setback. Theismann down the middle. It's off. And it is Bernard Wilson who made the reception. So there's another costly Washington turnoff as it went over the hands of Bugs and picked off by Bernard Wilson. The ball was a little high, and it was thrown with velocity there's a clash on that type of thing tipped up ball that's that's what you practice deflected balls to pick them up the Eagles are very fortunate to date that they aren't behind by 10 14 points and the Redskins have to be thoroughly frustrated that they're only leading seven to nothing it is first and ten for the Eagles the ball on the Eagle 34 yard line and Jaworski is back in there bad ankle and all he has Harris on a wing and Montgomery now they're both set back. And it'll be Harris grabbed by Butts. Got away from Butts for the moment. Still didn't pick up more than a yard or so. And we get to the two-minute warning. Paul Smith making the tackle. So two minutes to go to the half. The Washington Redskins, who took three off the boards, went back and got seven. And they're leading Philadelphia 7-0. 
We'll talk more about that man uh, very distressed right now Chester Markle right after this play first and 10 at the 20 yard line in motion comes Morris Owens about a minute to go in the first half Ricky Bell hemmed in cuts inside for a couple of yards and that's all you got to figure after all of that yardage with your chance to get on the board you got to make that field goal. John. That's the thing you know we always talk about momentum and I'm not sure exactly what it is but when you do get the ball you're driving down the field you get an opportunity to finally put something on board you have to do it and if you don't it comes back to haunt. All right let's do it. <laughs> This is the Louisiana Superdome, the home of the New Orleans Saints, where today the Saints come in with a three and four record playing host to the Detroit Lions who are one and six in 1979. And you're watching the opening of our show from the TV screen 92 feet above the 50 yard line. I'm Gary Bender along with Sonny Jurgensen. And Sonny, this New Orleans team has won three of their last four. They could be tied for first place in the NFC West before this day is over. And Archie Manning felt that last week's win over Tampa Bay was a turning point of the season. No question this is a great offensive football team. They have proven that in the past. They've scored more touchdowns than anybody in the league. But there's one thing about it. The big improvement for them has been defensively. And they, and they credit it to the play of their strong safety of all people. Ray Brown has come in and done a tremendous job. You have to have good play out of a strong safety when you play the flex defense, and that's what they're getting. The Lions are trying to avoid their worst start since 1949, and they're shaking it up at quarterback today. They're going to start Jerry Goldstein. Well, when you're one in six, Gary, you got to do something. And Goldstein, I'm concerned about Ger Jerry Goldstein coming in here. Has not thrown a pass since last year. He's got to be very rusty, but they got to make the change there. And Monty Clark, that's what he wants to do. And they figure if they can shake up this team, they got a chance. All right, let's go now, as this will be the fourth appearance for the Detroit Lions in New Orleans. Detroit has won the toss, and the Lions have never won here. <laughs> Kicking off number one, and a number one that well, you've seen around the league for quite a while, but with a different team, Garrow Premium, who was signed after Russell Erksleben hurt his leg. And he has come in and kicked all three field goal attempts. He has 19 in a row, which is an NFL record. Back deep, Ken Calicut along with Luther Blue. Calicut will take it at the seven yard line. He's to the 20, to the 25, and oh, is he hit at the 25 yard line. And so now let's set it offensively for the Detroit Lions. Dexter Bussey and Horace King. King going to place a Bo Robinson, the rookie who's hurt. Fred Scott is back. He's been having some he's, injury problems. Yes, he has a, an arm problem. His wrist is bothering him, but he's going to start today. At offensive line, the best players on that right side, Bollinger and Dorney. Well, they really like their rookie and Keith Dorney from Penn State. By the way, we had a flag on that last play way back near the kickoff point. I believe they're going to have to kick off again. So they start this game out with a penalty. <laughs> it's going to be one of those days again, huh? Ben Dreif, number 12, First will be the referee. Foul. 79 on the white, 56 on this team. Wipe them out. Well, we have offsetting penalties. Boy, they're often uh, getting after each other, aren't they, in the well, first play? I tell you what, these fans at the Superdome here are a little concerned about that. They make a lot of noise. This is a loud place, isn't it? It really is. They've sold out the Superdome twice this year. There's a lot of excitement about this Saints team. They were three and four at this stage in 1978. Went on to go five and four. They feel that they can go at the 500 mark and then move to Washington next week. They're very, very much in the picture. They really feel that you know that if their defense can play good football, that they do have an opportunity to win their division, and that's what they're shooting for. Here's they have Jerry. to get their defense to play that. Excuse me, Sonny. Here's Jerry Goldstein. Twelfth round draft pick of the Giants in 1976. He's going to throw his first pass since the sixth game of 1978. David Hill, the tight end's got it, but there's another flag <laughs> on the play. That would be about a yard short of the first down. Ray Brown, the strong safety, making the tackle. Up front now, Derlin Moore, possibly playing as consistently as he's played in his career. And Don Reese coming in. He's a tough one at defensive end and has done a tremendous job for him. And the linebacking core, Fetterspiel, boy, is he some player. He's led them in tackles the last four years and is doing it again this year. And Brown is back. He missed the first three games with a fractured wrist. And Tommy Myers, well, he'll just go after you all the time. 
They like that, you know, the fact that they got Felton and Chapman back now, too. They're helping. Offensive holding, number 73. Well, they're off on shaky footing. Ross <laughs> Bollinger, Russ Bollinger was the guy that was holding the right side offensive guard. Pretty good call, though, coming out, throwing the ball. I'm sure that they, you know, Goldstein wanted to get a completion under his belt. Throw the ball the first time. He did, and he threw it well. First and 20 now. Operating from the 15-yard line. Just underway. Goldstein back to throw again. Over the middle. He's got his man. This is Fred Scott. And Scott is out at the 30-yard line. Clarence Chapman over there. That'll still be five yards short of the first down. But they pick up 15 of those 20. I like the call again. He came right back and threw the ball again. He's going to find out. He's going to get that rustiness off to begin with. Fred Scott now with 21 catches for the year. He broke the bone in his left arm. You can see the cast right there on his left arm. He was five for 63 last week in that game against Green Bay. Five yards to go. Second down from the 30. A give and trying to pick up the first down and having a difficult time is Dexter Bussey. He's going to be a couple yards short. It'll bring up third down. This football team, Detroit, has really been plagued with mistakes, penalties. They found ways to lose football games. In fact, Sonny, you saw them earlier this year. They had a 12th man on the field. It cost them a game against Washington. Exactly right. Against the field goal, they lined up with 12 and uh, just let this pass week, uh, you know, in their loss. Uh, they ended up uh, with a man short for an extra point drive. Third down, two yards to go. A minute gone by here in this first quarter. Goldstein back. Protection is there. And Horace King can't hang on. That would have been enough for the first down grab. And that will bring up fourth down. So Goldstein comes out throwing the football. Well, he made a good throw here. He hit him right in the, on the numbers. He just didn't come up with a catch. He makes an excellent throw. Had enough for the first down. Good pass protection. You can see the delivery right there. Only got one hand up. But he had enough for the first down. He should have caught the football. That's Larry Swider kicking now for the Lions. Rich Motti has it for the Saints. He's to the 40 and dropped there. Motti, an outstanding special teams performer out of Penn State, a third-year man. A 35-yard kick. Offensively, there's Muncie and Galbraith, the numbers 5 and 10 rushers in the NFC. And we'll check that further. But right now, we have a timeout at the 1347 mark. No score. From Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, Minnesota, the NFL on CBS presents the Chicago Bears and the Minnesota Vikings. Hello, everyone. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris here in Bloomington, Minnesota. You might call it a typical November day in this city. It is cold, wet, and windy. And I would think that it's Viking weather. It also means, Johnny, that we'll see a lot of Walter Payton doing his thing. Yes, we will, Tim. I think for several reasons. Walter Payton has always rushed well against the Minnesota Vikings. He got 182 yards the last time out. And the Vikings are susceptible to the run. And the Bears like to run in this kind of weather. They'll do it. But sooner or later, they've got to face up to the fact that they've got to get that added dimension. They've got to throw the ball. Whether they'll do it today, we'll find out. Vikings have been throwing the ball with young Tommy. Kramer, but they've had problems with the run. They do have their fine rookie running back back, Ted Brown, today. Yes, the Vikings have had problems running uh, about two and a half, three yards per carry. That's not very much. Ted Brown's been out for two weeks with a bad knee, but he's the man who can go outside for him. He's the man that can show him the speed, and that's what the Vikings want to increase to their offensive output, and let's see how they do that today with Ted Brown. All right, John, the Vikings will receive to our right. The Bears kicking off Bob Thomas. The Bears in white to our left. And it's taken by Jimmy Edwards at the six-yard line of Minnesota. Edwards has running room. Edwards all the way out to the 46-yard line of the Vikings. And Minnesota gets off well. Steve Schubert, number 85, made the tackle. Uh, Jimmy Edwards, the return man who had his problems on Monday night against the New York Jets. And he has gotten himself started well here today. Tommy Kramer, the young quarterback from Rice, and the running backs, Chuck Foreman and Ricky Young, 44 and 34. The wide receivers, Ahmad Rashad. Sammy White, the tight end, is Bob Tucker. First down, Vikings. In your basic excellent field position. In motion, Boyd was the starter at tight end, number 83, rather than Tucker. And uh, Ricky Young carries for the first play, a gain of about two yards. The rest of that Vikings offensive front, Steve Riley, Charles Goodrum on the left side, Wes Hamilton, Ron Yeri on the right side, and young Dennis Swilly is the center. 
Swilly taking over from the retired Mick Tinglehoff, converted from guard, and Bud Grant happy with his play. Second and eight, Vikings. Wide left comes Rashad, wide right is Sammy White. Foreman the lead back in the eye. Play action. Kramer, deep sideline, two men over there. And is it out of bounds? Evidently, incomplete. Schmidt over on the coverage. Fensick was there doubling, and Sammy White had no chance to catch that ball. Actually, I think Fensick intercepted the ball, but intercepted it out of bounds as we look at the Chicago Bear defense, the linebackers. Doug Buffone starting at middle linebacker after a great game last week when he had two interceptions, substituting for Tom Hicks, and Buffone has earned another start with Hicks still recovering from a bad case of the flu. Duncan Sturm and Campbell are the linebackers left and right. It is third and eight for Minnesota. Kramer has the time. Incomplete for Rashad. Hit by Terry Schmidt just as the ball arrived, could not hold on, and the Vikings will have to punt. That ball might be a little bit slippery. Rashad actually could have made the grab, but he juggled it, and when the ball was slightly in the air, Schmidt came up with a hit to force Minnesota into a punting situation, and I'm sure that the kicking game is going to determine the outcome of this game. It always does between the Vikings and the Chicago Bears. Great Coleman standing at his own 31, prepared to punt for Minnesota. The deep man is Steve Schubert. Short punt from Coleman. Lands at the 30. Viking bounce. Will be down at the 16-yard line, and that turned out well for Greg Coleman. Darrell Luce was down there to cover for Minnesota, and the Bears will have their first offensive opportunity. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Minnesota Vikings and the National Football League is prohibited. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris here just underway on a very wet and windy day in Bloomington, although it does look like it could clear. There's a lot of gray around, but there's also some light sky. On first down, Avellini incomplete intercept. On the tip, it's picked off by Kurt Knopf. Number 25, Kurt Knopf, takes it all the way into the 20-yard line of Chicago. Let's see it again. And what do you know about that? The first play of the game, the Bears come out throwing, something they haven't done on first down very often. And there was a lot of people there. The collision, right as the ball got there, the ball went into the air, and there was not for the interception. It looked like Bobby Bryant and Hannon were both there to knock the ball up in the air, and the Vikings have gotten the first break of the game. It was intended for James Scott. He went high in the air, nearly made a real good catch, but could not hold it. Busted play, Kramer with Alan Page in pursuit, and he has him at the 25 for a sack. There was a mistake there. I think he was trying to hand off to Foreman. They got mixed up on their signals, so Kramer did the only thing he could do was run, and here comes Alan Page, number 82, who runs a lot. He runs marathons, and this is where the speed helped out right there. Great play by Alan Page, as you know. Everybody knows he used to play for the Minnesota Vikings for so long, did so well, and then things went a little bit awry with Coach Bud Grant, and the Bears picked him up on waivers for absolutely nothing, and he's been one of their finest defensive linemen. Second and 15. Kramer has lots of time. For White, almost intercepted. That was Virgil Livers, number 24 on the coverage. And he nearly got it right back for the Bears. And you have to credit Sammy White with a pretty good job of stopping Livers from intercepting. Livers played the pass real well. He gets right in front, and then Sammy White just kind of pulls down on him and prevents him from intercepting the ball. Good play by defense and a good play by White to prevent the interception. As both teams come out throwing the ball, it's not a surprise with Minnesota, but it's a little bit of a surprise as far as the Bears are concerned. Let's see what they do in their second series of downs as the Vikings have it. Five defensive backs in for the... Chicago Bears, wide right goes Rashad for Minnesota. Sammy White is in the slot. Kramer, deep for Sammy White. It's out of bounds and incomplete. Vikings had two men in that area, but the pass was thrown out of bounds in any event. White was open as the shorter man on the pattern, and it brings up fourth down, so the Vikings will have to get a field goal to get something out of this, having made that interception. Kurt Knopf taking it into the Bears 20, and now they will attempt the field goal. Dan Meyer, the ball spotted at the 33-yard line for a 43-yard attempt. The win is against him. But 
but it's good. And Denmeyer gets Minnesota on the scoreboard with the opening three points of the game following the interception by Kurt Knopf. And so the Vikings with 13.02 remaining first period lead it three to nothing. Game as a tight end. That's quite a record. That group of receivers and backs are perhaps unmatched throughout the league. Tony Hill and Drew Pearson wide. Roger Straubach, Tony Dorsett. A great speedy threat. And Robert Newhouse will operate alongside him. First and ten Cowboys, no score. First play from scrimmage. Stone and he saved it all. They were waiting for it to break, and he almost did. What a reaction from the crowd. This is one of the best rushing defenses in the league, second in the NFC. Watch Dorsett go against that 34 defense, get some over linebackers overplaying it, and now it's a sprint. And I'll tell you, Kenny Stone takes a long angle but runs very well. The young man from Vandermilk does save a touchdown. Well, that's scary when Dorsett breaks out on his first play. He was the only man who had a chance. Ken Stone, watch him cut him off. Great tackle. Scott Laidlaw has brought in a play from the bench, and he is in the backfield with Dorsett now. Newhouse out. And Scott Laidlaw gets the call and gets about six. Good block by Fitzgerald, the offensive center. Here's that defense they're working on, a very good one against the run. At least we thought so. Pollard, the best pass rusher, Big Davis in the middle, and Dawson from Arizona at the left end. The linebackers, Niels, Allerman, Williams, and Favron, who's playing very well. And they miss Carney a lot. Secondary, Allen, the veteran Roger Worley, Ken Green, and Ken Stone. Second and six, four-yard pickup by Laidlaw. At the St. Louis 35, they operate. Dorsett will operate. Looking for some place to go, and this time the pursuit does take care of his cutback. Mike Dawson made the tackle. We have Roger Staubach's first throw. There's Dorsett's numbers. Incredible to think that in a few years he will eclipse the old 100 yard rushing mark that Calvin Hill set, huh? Here's that last defense by That's a 34. Now, the nose man is very important. That's Davis. Everybody reads, straightens up, and actually outfights that. Dallas offensive line on the line of scrimmage and TD had nowhere to go. Dorsett ducked for a yard, so it's third and five. And Stavak has Preston Pearson in the backfield with him. Dave Saldi is also there. Stavak fires. He had it right on the money to Butch Johnson. Butch was a little bit off balance. Will we see Septian or Danny White? Good play by Nelson over there as soon as the ball was bobbled inside man on the nickel and that time the Cowboys did not go to the shotgun they moved the double wing with Staubach under it'll be Raphael Septien to try a field goal of perhaps a little bit more than 50 yards about 51 he's hit one from that range already this year I noticed that Ben Agajanian <laughs> was working with Raphael Septien before the game he's two for five over 40 so he has the range and he did kick that 51 yarder this was about 51 and a half Good snap. Might get there. It does. Ricky Bell drives short of a first down. Terry Jones makes the tackle as the clock stops with 45 seconds to go. Green Bay had taken that timeout previously. And Bell with a couple of yards. And now we have another timeout as. Williams goes to talk to John McKay. Miami on the strength of another Von Schaumann field goal. This from 39 yards out, leading New England 13 to nothing. Both of those teams 5 and 2 coming into this contest at New England to break the tie in the AFC Eastern Division. Of course, viewers of this game will be most interested in the contest between the Bears and the Vikings, also 3 and 4, and also two games behind Tampa Bay. I'm sure John McKay is telling Doug Williams a running play that that he wants to run. They'll probably get in some type short yardage offense to pick up the first down. Those are the standing shows tonight on CBS. Colonel Roberts stars in Trapper John M.D. 
and 60 minutes leads it off tonight on CBS. Third and two now at the 28 yard line for Tampa Bay. 45 seconds remaining as you see in this first half. If Tampa Bay doesn't pick up a first down on this play then I'm sure that Green Bay will use their third timeout and try and get one more shot at some type of score before they go in at halftime. Packers have one timeout left. Two tight ends in there Obradovich 86 along with the starter Giles 88. Eckwood or Bell tripped up short of a first down. Clock continues to run. Rich Wingo has forced the play for the Packers. He has had an outstanding first half on defense. Well, he's an outstanding player, and he's one of those players that plays a run from sideline to sideline, not the inside or from tackle to tackle or, or handles the middle. He plays from sideline to sideline, and that's what the great ones do. And I, I say that someday that's what he's going to be. Green Bay has called their last time out. Don't forget next Saturday at 4.30 from Aqueduct Racetrack live the Turf Classic. So the Packers have used their final time out of this first half and on fourth down Tampa Bay will kick and Green Bay hopes to generate something. They trail 14 to nothing. Odom will be deep for the Packers at his 35 yard line. There's Steve. Tom Blanchard will kick inside the 15. Ricky Bell has gained 94 yards and 14 carries in this first half. Odom calls for a fair catch at the 34. Penalty marker down. You know, an interesting thing that I always wanted to do in this situation is after a fair catch, you can have a free kick. And I've always wanted in my 10 years of coaching to get that, to get that fair catch, take the 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 time to change of possession when we get a time out here kick and kick goal? the free kick. Yeah. I think the Bears once did that, didn't they, in the late 60s? The Bears did it. Cincinnati did it with Paul Brown not too many years ago, but after the clip, there's no possibility. Of course, there wasn't a possibility before. Run back. Number 20, personal foul. Clipping. Wiley Turner, the five non rookie, a five non rookie from Angelo State, was clipping on the play. So it's first down at the 20 yard line for David Whitehurst with 25 seconds to go and no timeouts remaining as you look at some of the beautiful people here at Tampa Stadium this afternoon. Tullus 87 split to the left. There are three wide receivers. Up the middle comes Landers for a couple of yards. Block running down and Packers are out of timeouts lining up without the huddle. Best thing to do here is just to go long and hope for the best maybe. Huh? That'll just run out the clock. I think we're going to see more of this formation and what they did on first down in the second half. Should be the last play of the first half and the pass is complete to Kaufman and he's out of bounds and that'll do it for the first half. So it's been Tampa Bay on offense and defense. That's the end of the first half of the score. The Buccaneers 14 and the Packers nothing. The number of plays it took Dallas to get three points on the board were five. 51 yard field goal by Raphael Septien who is about to kick off. Good kick. Willard Harrell feels it at the two and he's got some room. Heard it out by Dennis Thurman. What a place to come and try to win a football game, though. The Cowboys are, what, 50 and 8 in this ball yard? Since they opened Texas Stadium, they've won 50 and lost but 8. They're 20 of their last 22, huh? Yes. St. Louis beat them two years ago and Minnesota, Minnesota last year, and the rest of it's all W's. That is amazing. Tonight on CBS... 60 minutes first, the award-winning one, Archie Bunker's place. One day at a time, Alice, the Jeffersons, and Fernell Roberts as Trapper John. There's Otis Anderson Otis getting outside. Anderson outside and out of bounds finally by Cliff Harris. And Benny Barnes, remember he had that tremendous day, opening day, uh, against Dallas. And what they say about this 215-pounder is he'll start inside. He's always thinking outside. Look at the dip. That's Bob Young, the big 200 and 90 pound offensive left guard pulling and blocking and somebody in the Dallas defense didn't get to the outside at all. No containment. 
Bob Young, who came into the game with a pulled hamstring muscle, is out now. His place taken by George Collins in the Cardinal offensive picture. They're in Dallas territory at the Cowboy 49. Pitch out to Morris. And he struggles for two or three. Great play there by Bruni, who is, of course, the leading tackler for Dallas with 39 solos. How about those two opening plays by the running backs? Dorsett almost goes all the way, and Anderson comes right back. And almost goes all the way. Cardinal offensive line now is Workman, George Collins, Banks, Terry, Steve, and Joe Bostic. That's the interior lineman. The armbands worn by the Red St. Louis Cardinals in the memory of J.B. Kane. As caught by Dave Stipe. Or Steve, I believe it is. Steve made a real good move, and it looks to me like they're telling Benny Barnes, Benny, you're a great player, and we love you, but today's going to be rough. Now, Hart has that foot all wrapped up his left one, so he doesn't have to push off of it, and he was throwing rather easily, I thought, in practice. And he's always had the good zinger, the good arm. He said before that the only thing that really bothered him was when he had to pivot to make a handoff quickly. There's the throwing motion. Us old folks have been wearing those kind of supporters in our arches for years. <laughs> Hurts me to pivot, too. <laughs> there is Anderson from behind by Randy White. Just as he got back to the line of scrimmage, that was the Cardinal first down. Watch Randy. Number 54 draws the double T block. Let's see what happens to Randy now. He, he just flat beats the block on the inside. Of course, that is not Bob Young. He and Young on opening day uh, had quite a battle. Watch the left part of your screen. They try to bring Banks the center over on him, and he's simply he's too fast. Again, uh, the Manster is about a, a 4 6 40 guy. Just so quick off the ball. It'll be second down. He picked up a yard, perhaps make it second and nine. Hart takes to Anderson. Had a man in the person of Mel Gray open, but it was thrown a little low. Benny Barnes on the coverage. Looks like that's where they've decided to go. Big thing that the Cardinals have had a problem with this year are turnovers. They're the worst in the NS NFC with 22 turnovers, and that's hard even for a great quarterback like Hart to overcome. That statistic you just saw in the, your picture was obviously incorrect. He's not that good. He's a fine passer, but he's not that good. He actually has three touchdowns and 11 interceptions. This is not Jimmy Hart's best year. So it's third down. A rather long yardage. Still nine. Cat Tilly comes in motion. Throws in the direction of Tilly. Cliff Harris, the cruncher, did his job. And Tilly is small but nifty. That time, a heart kept his back in and doubled on both Randy White and Harvey Martin and still didn't have a lot of time. We saw a 51-yard field goal by Raphael Septien. We're going to see a 51-yard attempt by Steve Little. He's four out of six, but none of them have been longer than 30 yards. That's right. He's over for 2, over 30. But he does have a powerful leg, the Arkansas Razorback, huh? Proud day for him. That's got plenty of distance. Woo! And that's good. What a kick. That cleared by 10 yards. Steve Little from 51 yards. Just short of the 40-yard line, the Saints have the football. A 35-yard kick that time by Swider. And New Orleans, well, they have scored more touchdowns than any team in the NFL. 23 coming into today. And a team that got 42 points in the second half of last week's game. They can't explode. Archie Manning, he has 1,605 yards already passing. Gives to Galbraith. Nothing doing on that play. Good reaction by Doug English, number 78. Here's a guy that's had some injury problems. Let's check it now. Here's Muncie and Galbraith again. A great one-two punch. Chandler's leading the NFL in reception yardage. Outstanding receiver. Outstanding. Childs leading all tight ends and catches, too. Now, J.T. Taylor, the second-year man from Missouri, was a little shaken up. They were concerned about him, but he is starting up front with a man by the name of Dobler. It's good to see him again, isn't it? Second down now. 12 yards to go. A loss of two. Archie Manning dumps it off to... Tony Galbraith, Galbraith to the 40-yard line. He's going to make it to the 45, and that'll be four yards short of the first down. And Tony Galbraith, who already has 24 catches on the year, did a pretty good job running the football. Pretty good play here, too. A little screen, really, to the second back out. Galbraith takes a pass. You see he had blocking already out in front of him. Then it's just 
Good running then because he cut back against the grain and picked up a lot of yardage. Picked up eight yards to be exact. Third and four from the 45 of New Orleans. Yeah. Set that you don't see very often. Back to throw Manning. Got time. Throws it to Galbraith. First down catch. Galbraith is in. The New Orleans should say Detroit into the field at the 48-yard line. Let's set now defensively Detroit. Cleveland Elam is back after having some hand surgery. Great pass rushes, all of them. They love to rush the passer and get to that quarterback. I Line think this is their problem, though, Gary. Linebacking position has been a problem for them. Ed O'Neill, a veteran in the middle. Charlie Weaver, probably the best of the three. And look at that secondary. They've really changed <laughs> it up. Well, they have, and I think it's because of Walt Williams, their regular strong uh, uh, cornerback. He is out. They've had to juggle it. They put Hunter at cornerback. They put uh, Allen at free safety. They've done a lot of things. Here's Manning throwing on a first down to West Chandler. And Chandler moving around. Is inside the 45 to the 44. Ken Fantetti making the stop the rookie out of Wyoming. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast of the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New Orleans Saints and the National Football League is prohibited. Second down now, five yards to go. Boy, you can really look at Archie Manning and see how he's developed. You can see how confidently he is throwing the football every time he delivers it. He does it with such ease. The NFC Player of the Year, 1978. On a second and five, this is Chuck Muncie. Muncie to the 40, he's to the 35, he has a first down. Chuck Muncie, who's averaging 5.2 per carry, which is the best in the NFC, already with 527 yards. You can see the offensive threat of this New Orleans Saints football team. A pitch back to Muncie, cuts around, gets good blocking, picks up enough for the first down. Good run, 14 uh, four, yards. 14 yarder just inside the 30 yard line and the Saints moving the football and that's no surprise to anyone as they come in here third in the NFC in rushing, second overall and first in passing. You can't do much better than that. This is Muncie again, and Muncie slides off the tacklers inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Ed O'Neill, the middle linebacker, he just kind of took his time that time going up the middle. He did. He kind of hesitated somewhat, and then you saw him break the break a little tackle and get some yardage. But you know the Saints, such an explosive offensive football team. The Lions, on the other hand, vulnerable to the run. They're last in the conference against the run. Both these teams have had a tough time with their rushing defense. Second down, three yards to go. Muncie again to the 20. He has a first down short of the 18-yard line. Doug English rides him down, and the Saints, knowing that the Lions are vulnerable against the run, and they're going right after him. Hey, Tampa Bay trying to break that two-game losing streak. <laughs> they got it started, haven't they? And Washington leads Philadelphia. What a big game that is in the NFC East. Well, they're playing for first place. And Cincinnati, well, they got some new confidence after their win last week. Cleveland trying to break a three-game losing streak. First down now. The ball at the 19-yard line. In motion, that's I. Harris. Muncie hit instantly by Doug English, but he gets away from him. He gets away again. <laughs> and he's finally dropped at the 25. William Gay was the second guy that had a crack at him. But Muncie eventually losing yardage back to the 25-yard line. Well, they obviously defeated the play defensively here. They overshifted. You see coming right through there, Doug English makes a play. He slides off. Now other people are getting a shot at him. William Gay comes in. He can't time down. Everybody, tell you what, you draw a crowd in a hurry behind the line of scrimmage with the football. Don Klosterman of the Rams said earlier this year he's never seen a guy run harder than Chuck Muncie did against them. Lots of five, second and 15. A little delay, no, play action by Manning. Beautiful fake, Chandler with the touchdown. Archie Manning with a sensational play action fake. He really throws that secondary. It certainly did. This team might be second against the pass, but you can see the offensive weapons of this football team. Watch Manning, how cool he is throwing the football. He throws it off balance. He finds Chandler coming across and made it look easy. Take a look at it again. You see the fake here, the hand fake. 
Watch him. He kind of moves out of the pocket right here. He's getting chased from behind. But you see how easily and confidently he threw the football. Nothing and difficult about that, well, was it? I guess not. Chandler's fourth touchdown catch of the year. Garrow, your premium. They add the point after. And it's a 7 to nothing game. The Saints with the lead. New Orleans on a 60-yard drive and nine plays. Capped on that touchdown pass to Wes Chandler. All right, back at Tampa Stadium, Dick Stockton and John Madden. That's our score, 14 to nothing, Tampa Bay leading Green Bay. A lot of things to talk about, and you talk about third down conversion. We splash it on the screen, what's important, but what we've seen today is the importance of a first down, and I think that's hurt Green Bay, their lack of moving the ball on first down. I think that's true, Dick. It doesn't seem like they're able to get anything going on first down. They're always fighting the second and long and third and long syndrome. All right, let's take a look at the highlights that uh, made it what it was in this first half. Actually, the Green Bay Packers were moving the ball in the first series. David Whitehurst had a couple of first downs on passes, but this one was picked off by Cedric Brown. This is what we talked about earlier, the turnover, and this was the first turnover and only turnover of the game, and it resulted in a subsequent Tampa Bay touchdown. Ricky Bell scored two touchdowns in the first game against this club. Here he is on a pitch and a good block here, and he gets good yardage to set up their first score. That was a good run by Ricky Bell and a very good lead block by rookie Jerry Eckwood. Doug Williams is really having a turnabout game, and this is the first Tampa touchdown. This was the play where they double Green Bay, doubled both outside receivers. Doug Williams read it well, went to Ricky Bell, who was not covered. What about the block that really helped Eckwood on a screen? We're going to see as Eckwood comes out of the backfield to set up the second score. This was a screen to the weak side. Guard Greg Horton pulls out to the left side, as we see right there, makes a good lead block on Douglas, and that's it to the goal line for Jerry Eckwood. Let me ask you this, John. Do you think we will see considerably more of the three wide receiver offense for Green Bay? Now, we're going to take a look against the Tampa Bay drive and Ricky Bell once again. This again here, the thing that Ricky Bell has gotten and Jerry Eckwood is the Tampa Bay offensive line has stopped penetration, and they've had good lead blocks on the corners. And Williams took it in himself here. As you see, Bell went in motion away from the play. And Doug Williams carried it himself from the one yard line for the second score. But what about that third wide receiver offense that seems to be the best thing that the Packers have done? Well, of course, the Green Bay Packers have injuries in their offensive backfield. I think they're going to have to adjust by using more of the three wide receivers this half. Yes, today's game is sponsored by. Ford and your Ford dealer who bring you the better idea, cars and trucks for the 80s. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. And by Kmart Automotive Service Centers, where quality car products are Kmart priced. Two weeks ago, the Philadelphia Eagles scored 28 points and gained 209 yards rushing against Washington. Today, Washington is leading seven to nothing. Jaworski has already passed seven times. Two weeks ago, he passed only a total of 12. And the big story, Wilbert Montgomery has been bottled up for only an average of three yards in eight carries. So the Eagles have it second and six on their own 38, trying to generate a drive. Jaworski chased by Bacon, and of course on that bad ankle, and it appeared to be very evident well, that time. He couldn't take a quick drop, and Bacon just ate him up. Yeah, they were. Then they were trying to set up a screen pass, and the blockers didn't stay with their men long enough, and Jaworski didn't have a chance. And as here it is, he's going back to pass. He is limping a little bit. Bacon's right in there. Nobody would have had a chance in that. By the way, Lavender is not playing. 23 Peters is playing the corner in place of Joe Lavender. Good trade the Redskins made with Cleveland to get Peters. Lavender has a bad knee, in case you're wondering. It is third and 13 on the Eagle 31. He just lost seven yards on the sack. Jaworski over the middle. A great catch by the tight end Keith Crefley, who was guarded by Tony Peters. But Crefley picks up the first down. You know, we the talk is stopped at 123. We, Timeout Philadelphia. Then we talk about players that are underrated or overrated. 
Crepley is an overachiever. He doesn't have all of the qualities, physical qualities you want in a receiver, but he's a big play guy. He's always hustling. He gets everything out of himself. He just got 17 yards for the first down. You're going to get a lot more than 17 yards if you tune in and look at this winner's lineup tonight on CBS. 60 minutes starts with the award winner. And then the laughs are on the house at Archie Bunker's place. One day at a time. Alice, the Jefferson, and concluded with Fernell Roberts as Trapper John M.D. Meanwhile, it's Redskins football. The NFL on CBS. The Redskins leading the Eagles 7 0, 123 to the half. One advantage the Eagles have in this two minute drill is a six foot eight guy like Carmichael, where they can lay it up and let him take the ball away from a defender. It's interesting to note the only time Carmichael has had his hands on the ball is when he picked up a fumble after a pass reception. So it is first and 10 from the 48. Jaworski with a little time this time, but overshoots Charlie Smith down the left side. Lamar Harris is right there defending with him. Kenny Houston is covering Carmichael man for man. See, Carmichael is, has the size of a tight end. Kenny Houston is the strong safety. Usually you put your strong safety on a guy like that. Kenny Houston 6'3", and he's tough. It's a good matchup. Carmichael has caught at least one pass in 103 consecutive games. The streak, oddly enough, began against Washington October the 8th, 1972. But he hasn't touched one today. Go to second and 10 on the Eagle 48. Jaworski is going to be buried. Coming in a hurry with double sevens. Wow. And that's Joe Jones along with Coy wow. Bacon. Now that offensive. The Redskins got their pass rushing personnel in there. Turkey Jones runs a stunt. Fool the Eagles. Ron didn't have a chance. Bacon in there with him. They have to protect him better than that, even if he were 100%. So Jaworski with that right ankle heavily taped and he's unable really to move around at all. He can drop straight back but even then it takes him time to get back and they oh. almost knocked him right out of his left shoe. He has to tie the laces and so they oh, ate him up. The, the Redskins are playing the type of football they want. They got the Eagles playing their game. They want to pass rush and cover and come in with nickel defenses and dime defenses six defensive backs. The Eagles haven't run the football effectively so they're playing right into the Redskins defensive strength. The Redskins had 14 sacks going into this game and they have sacked Jaworski four times for a loss of 36 yards and they put Ron in a hole now third and 22. And of course the Redskin defensive squad has given up only 104 points. They're number one. Lamar Parrish of course has had a lot to do with that. We mentioned Parrish playing his cornerback position has been responsible for nine turnovers and four sacks today and Jaworski has been unable to get his men on the ground. Well, in fact in passing it's a minus three yards George. Well Lamar's an all pro uh, real addition of this ball club. Third and twenty two from the Eagle thirty six. Fitzke wide left and Smith in the slot left Carmichael wide right. Jaworski looking right, throwing high, caught, but out of bounds. Kenny Houston was there along with Harris. They were double well, teaming the big man, but he was out of bounds. Here's, here's Houston and Carmichael, one on one. Now Jaworski put the ball up high to use his height. Now he's got help from Harris, 26 also. Had the ball. But out of bounds. Nice catch by Carmichael. Out of bounds. So fourth down and Max Runniger will be kicking it from his own 25. Fakes a pass. Now drills it. Hardeman backtracking on the six yard line. With Forte and Harmon trying to block John Chiara closing in and they take him out. And he is finally knocked out of bounds by Runniger the punter. Number four. So um, Max Runniger did a good job. What Hardeman tried to do was very difficult. Catch the ball on the opposite side of the field and run way across and turn the corner. He did the smart thing, get out of bounds with 54 seconds. So with 54 seconds left to the half, and you can see the timeouts, they each have one. 
And there was a flag on the play. So I would assume because of that fake pass by Runniger that there was an illegal uh, man downfield. Anytime you take an extra second, it costs you. Right, then with this present rule, if there's any delay, any fumbling of the ball, somebody's going to be downfield. Oh, Max will have to kick again, and we'll get the call now from referee Chuck Heverling. Ineligible man downfield, number 88 on a kicking team. Fourth down. So Spagnola getting downfield much too early, but it was all set up because Runniger faked that pass and it gave him that extra three beats before he got the punt away. So Max will have to try it again. The ball on the 31 yard line. I, you know, I, this is a good time to go for a block right here. Go after that ball. Go after that kicker. The skins are on the line. We'll see if they're coming. They have not tried Runniger so far today. Long count. They can't get in and Runniger arrows one deep and hard him in with his right hand in the air calling fair catch at the 22. They went after him. They had the punt block on. The Eagles picked it up very well. He had time to run it back. Usually when you have the punt block on with no protection back there, you signal for a fair catch. Just to the right of your screen, however, was John Shara, number 21, and he was battling Ray Waddy. And I think had Hardiman elected to run, Shara was right there. Joe did a great job in a two-minute drill last week against the Cleveland Browns. Let's see what he does. First and 10 on the Redskin 24. Heisman setting up, going low, and he's gotten his man, Harmon. Not well, quite enough for a first down, but he spotted at about the 33-yard line. One yard and time going. 33 seconds to the half. Theismann trying to get close for at least a field goal attempt. Over the middle to Hardeman, and they'll bring him down as he gets out to the 45-yard line. And we have 23 seconds and time called. John Shara, number 21, was in there to make the tackle. Smart football, Ben. Possession, passing. You don't need much protection. You get six, seven yards. Let the receiver run with the ball. By the way, Mark Mosley is 13 out of 16 in field goals. Twice he has led the National Football League in field goals. His longest are 53 and 54. You might keep that in mind. Also keep in mind Monday night. Look at this. The great pumpkin Charlie Brown. Then you have Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids Halloween special. Then it's man. Followed by WKRP in Cincinnati and Lou Grant. Holy mackerel. Halloween is upon us. Right here on CBS. A couple of numbers for you just for a moment. To give you an idea, Theismann is 10 for 15 for 109. However, he has had two interceptions. Jaworski is three for ten for 33 yards and he's been sacked four times. Riggins has been the big runner nine times for 53 yards. Montgomery has been pretty well shut down. Eight carries for 24 yards. With 23 seconds to go first and ten from the 45 quick release to Harmon. He's the midfield head down and he goes down and the clock continues to run and they have used up their timeout. They're going to have to hurry up to throw the ball out of bounds. Time for one play. The clock running out. Theismann rolling. Two seconds, and he throws it, OB. However, the clock says we've run out. So Washington appeared to waste too much time, George. Yes, they did. Uh, but the Eagles, again, are very fortunate to only be behind 7 and nothing. Washington has dominated this ball game. So it's halftime at RFK Stadium in Washington. With Washington seven, Philadelphia nothing. Washington had evidently kicked a field goal, but a running into the kicker penalty gave Washington a first down on the Philadelphia 10 yard line, so they took the three points down. Benny Malone scored from 10 yards out, and it's seven nothing skins at the half. Well, the Vikings on a 43 yard field goal by Rick Danmeyer have a three nothing lead. And the deep man for the Chicago Bears is Lenny Waldershy. Awaiting Dan Myers kickoff and he takes it at the six yard line. Waldershy over the 30 to the 31. Pretty good return. He's stopped by Robert Miller number 35. And the Bears who on their first offensive play 
Lost the ball on an interception. We'll try again. Avellini at quarterback. Dave Williams, the free agent running back, starting for the injured Roland Harper and Walter Payton, of course. Wide receivers, James Scott, Brian Bashnagel for the injured Golden Richards. Mike Cobb is the tight end. First down, Bears from their own 31. Williams straight ahead to the 35, picked up five, maybe six yards on the play. McNeil and Seaman, the linebackers combining to stop him. Williams, a third-year man from Colorado, picked up when the injury struck Harper and Skabinski. There is the Chicago offensive line, Ted Albrecht, Dennis Licker, the tackles, Noah Jackson, Revi Sori, the guards, Dan Neal at center. Second and five, Chicago, they come out in the eye. Bashnagel wide left. Hit by Seaman. Loose ball. Seaman tackled him right at the ball. Did Chicago maintain possession? Looks like Peyton held onto the ball. Let's take another look as they go with the draw play. Seaman stays right in there. Dave Williams, number 22, has two men to block. He takes one of them, and there's Seaman as Peyton is trying to pick his way. And he fumbled last week. This time the ball is jarred loose a little bit late, but the Bears, actually not late, huh? That the Bears uh, have had a a situation where they don't fumble very much, especially Peyton, and now he's fumbled uh, two or three times in the last game and this game. He made a great effort to get that ball back. The Vikings missed a golden opportunity to recover. Tom Hannon missed it. Williams has the first down. Williams out to the 44-yard line, and the Bears have their first first down of the afternoon. Tom Hannon made the tackle with help from Matt Blair. Miami in front of New England, 13 to seven. Big AFC game there in the second period. Both of those teams have 5-2 records going into this game. Kurt Knopf has started in place of the veteran Paul Krause at safety. We're awaiting a report on a reason, if any. Avellini wants to throw. Up the middle, Bashnagel incomplete. Bashnagel slipped, but the ball appeared to be off mark anyway. He was stretching back for the ball. And so it is second down. Bashner on the coverage. Bashnagel is starting, of course, for Golden Richards, who has gone to Salt Lake City to have his knee checked out. He could possibly be out for the season, depending on, on how that examination goes. So the Bears have had their share of injuries, but most teams along the way in the NFL have uh, key personnel out at one time or another. In this series, the Vikings lead 19 to 15 with two ties. They've won. The last seven in a row here at the Met, however. Incomplete, intended for Williams. Flag down, first of the day. Blair on the coverage. Turner was there, and we'll see who the infraction is against. Against the Chicago Bears. The referee today is Fred Wyant, the umpire Tom Hensley. The headlinesman Leo Miles, the line judge Gene Carabine, the back judge Jimmy Rosser, the side judge Bob Rice, and the field judge Fred Swearingen. Fred Wyant will mark it off, an apparent holding penalty against the Bears. Minnesota leads it three to nothing. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris here on a rainy, windy day. Offense, second down. Did he say number 34? Walter Payton. Walter Payton. Greg Latta has come in at tight end for Cobb. Ricky Watts is in at wide receiver. Make it one tight end, and now three wide receivers in on second and 20 for the Bears. Good catch by Dave Williams out of the backfield. Picked up about seven yards on the play before Tom Hannon pulled him down. One-handed grab by Dave Williams. Colorado free agent picked up from San Francisco. They brought both backs out of the backfield with Peyton going out to the left side and Williams over the middle. And the Vikings immediately had their tendency towards Walter Peyton because they're afraid of him. You know, if he catches those passes out in the flat, it's like getting around the horn on an end run. So they're, uh, they're concentrating on him and Williams may catch a lot of passes out of the backfield today. Third and long, five defensive backs in for Minnesota. Nate Wright replacing Jeff Seaman, the linebacker. Wide right is Bashnagel. Split left is Scott Avellini. For the short man, Scott, and he's hit. The pass is incomplete. Real tough hit from number 27, Johnny Turner, the second-year man from Miami, their number two pick a year ago. 
That was a nice hit by Turner as, as Peyton and Latta crisscrossed right there. They were both together, and just a good solid hit by Turner uh, caused the incompletion, and the Bears will be forced to punt. Let's take a look at it. You're going to see there's Latta going across the screen. You see Peyton coming from the other way, and there's the hit by Turner. Good defensive play. Parsons. Good punt. Backing up Edwards to the eight-yard line of Minnesota. Edwards running hard. Flag down. Out of bounds at the 44-yard line. A flag down back at the 20. Brian Bashnagel was the man to knock him out of bounds. Now we see a pair of flags down, and they're coming back near that spot, indicating a, an infraction against the Vikings on the return. Probably some kind of clipping or hitting somebody low because, uh, as you know, the new rule this year on those return things, you cannot cut anybody. You've got to hit them high. 51-yard punt by Parsons. Clipping, number 47, receiving team. First down. Clipping call against Tim Baylor, reserve safety, number 47. First down, Vikings at their own 10-yard line. We'll see it again. 51 remaining here in the first period. The Minnesota Vikings three, the Chicago Bears nothing. Deep for Dallas. Little doesn't catch this one. It's going to be Wilson up the far sideline now, cutting back to the middle of the field. And Wilson stumbles at about the 28. Tries to get a little extra yard there with those arms. And the ball out. Charlie, uh, Bob Rozier and Charlie Davis were the leading tacklers for St. Louis. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys and the National Football League is prohibited. Let's see how this Cardinal defense now, if they begin to read a little bit more, uh, more and not overcommit against uh, that Dallas rushing game. 3-3, the score is Drew Pearson comes in motion wide to the right. Oh, yes. Salvak sends both backs out in the direction of Billy Joe Dupree, who had it and couldn't hold it. Cardinals are saying he had possession, and I don't see any indication that that's incorrect. The Cardinals do have it. Charlie Davis made the recovery, and we'll see if Billy Joe had possession. Watch Roger now swing the backs out of the backfield and hook them up so he has three short receivers in that 10 to 12 yard area. And Dupree, of course, at over 6'5", is a good target. Looks like he does get it put away. And I think it's a legitimate fumble. A good alert play there by Allerman. I believe it's Allerman that makes the recovery. Eric Williams made the hit that knocked it loose. And Allen made the recovery. Hart might go right back upstairs now. Remember, Mel Gray has always played extremely well against the Dallas Cowboys. He's not in there right now, though. He is a formation that the Cardinals have been using and running from it. Wayne Morris, the ball carrier, the tight end Jim Childs, I beg your pardon, the tight end Gary Paris, lines up in the backfield and stays there. Well, that Hollywood Henderson really met Steve, the big guard, right in the hole. And Hollywood, or we should say Tomas Henderson, always looks small and skinny, but don't be fooled. He carries around 214, 215 pounds and is strong. First draft choice of the Cardinals, of the Cowboys, despite of the fact that his collegiate team won only one game a senior year. Morris. Stopped by D.D. Lewis. That was a second and nine situation, so he got about five. A lot of blitzing Cowboys that time. That might have been a one broken tackle. That was a great call. Mel Gray, there's been some doubt about whether or not he would play checks into the game. It all kind of hurts. Third and five. He was so hurt last week against Philadelphia, he went 73 yards in the third period for a touchdown. He does that very quickly. And in past years, he's done it very often against Dallas. Third and five. Jim Hart calling the signals and comes in motion with Pat Tilly. Hart outside. Otis Anderson, the intended receiver, could not hang on. Aaron Mitchell. The rookie's a good receiver, too. He just didn't put that one away. He had 21 catches coming in. 
Little gets another shot. This young man was a number one draft choice. Very few kickers have ever uh, had that distinction. Except Arkansas kickers are different. I guess you, were you a number one too? No. <laughs> this will be 41 yards. And oh. we'll be at distance on this one. As Steve Little is good from 41 and 51. Well, Archie Manning has just tossed a touchdown pass, and that's the 12th consecutive game in which he's thrown at least one. There was a drive taking five and a half minutes. The kick to Luther Blue this time. He'll bring it up to the 20-yard line. 25 and to the 29-yard line. And so the Lions down 7 to nothing. They'll have to regroup forces. And they've already discovered what a lot of people have discovered, Sonny, and that is that the Saints can hurt you so many ways. You're exactly right. They get so many weapons offensively. When you get Muncie, Galbraith, Manning, Chandler, they can get at you in so many different ways. And uh, 42 points last week. They got seven already here, and I don't think it's their last one. That was a 26-yard return that time to the 29-yard line. Here is Jerry Goldstein. He had a pass dropped in the first series that would have given him a first down. Play action by Goldstein. Very good protection, and to the near sideline, but I don't believe he's in bounds. That is Gene Washington. It will not go as a completion. They'll bring it back. And Gene Washington, who only has six catches this year, but Sunday they were telling us he is just absolutely blitzing everyone in practice. He hasn't been able in a game to really get the ball thrown to him effectively. That's right. Well, they've had problems at quarterback. He's an outstanding receiver. Always has been. Ten years. You know, you have to be a good receiver if you play at Stanford. <laughs> he caught because they throw the football there. Boy, don't they? He started out as a quarterback there. He's two times in the NFL caught over 50 passes. Leonard Thompson replaces Washington at wide receiver. Second and ten. Goldstein a little pressure. Far side. And it's caught. That is Fred Scott defending on the play as Eric Felton. And that ball took a long time getting over there. And you had the feeling that Felton might go after it. There's Monty Clark, and boy, this has been a struggle for him this year. His team in the preseason polls picked to win the Central Division, but when Gary Danielson tore up a knee in the last preseason games, it took the heart out of this ball club. I think so, and right now, one and six, uh, you can see they've come out there behind already, and how many times they've thrown the ball in the early going here. They've had to throw the ball every down just about. That was only a one-yard pickup. Third and nine, Gene Washington comes back in for Thompson. Goldstein again. Look that. He is buried by Lois Grooms. Grooms hit him full steam inside the 20-yard line. Well, you said it right, Gary. You said look out. That's what you got to do as a quarterback. Look out. You see the rush. A kind of loop on the defensive line, and you see right there, no place to go for Jerry Goldstein. Well, Lois Grooms comes in. Nine sacks. And 78. He has four this year. He's a real tough performer. As now Swider will kick from the six yard line. Swider averaging 40 yards. He's six in the NFC. And a quick look there at Rich Motti back to receive. You can see the improved play of the Saints defensive football team. Motti is third in the NFC. What a kick by Swider. Fair catch called for by Motti at the 31 yard line as Larry Swider really got into it. A 46 yard kick. And so now, the Saints with a 7-0 lead. They have possession of the football for the second time at the 644 mark. First down, Minnesota Vikings at their own 10-yard line following the clipping penalty on the good return by Jimmy Edwards. In the eye formation, the left is Rashad. Straight ahead is Chuck Foreman. Foreman digs out for about four yards, maybe five. Let's see where they spot it. Stopped at the 15-yard line. Hampton was there, and Page, number 82, the ex-Viking. Closer to a six-yard gain for Chuck Foreman. Tucker comes in with a play for Tommy Kramer. Foreman and Ricky Young are the running backs. Out to the left comes Sammy White, number 85, and Rashad goes to the right, number 28. Foreman, hop tackle right. Diving for the first down and has it. Terry Schmidt, Doug Buffone on the tackle. First down, Vikings at their own 21-yard line. Good block by Ricky Young, helping out the right side of the Vikings offensive line on the play. 
Of course, the big top in Minnesota, the big topic is Chuck Foreman. He's averaged only 2.5 yards per carry the last couple of games, and uh, we'll see when they bring Ted Brown in. Uh, Foreman has had some problems. He still catches the ball well, still a good ball player, but just hasn't been what he was in the past, and uh, everybody's wondering. Slot formation to the right. A lot of mileage on Chuck Foreman. He can still do it like that. Out to the 30-yard line. Pickup of about nine yards on the play. Hartenstein made the tackle. Another good blocking effort on the right side. And Goodrum pulling out to lead it, number 68. Yes, and Hartenstein has to come all the way from the other side to make the tackle, or Foreman would have gone for a lot of yards because he had blockers out in front, and the, the running game is going pretty good for Minnesota in this drive. They've come out from uh, behind their own 10-yard line. Again, the slot formation right. Second, just a little more than a yard to go. Ricky Young cutting back. Good filling by Fensick. Number 45 really came up, make it Plank and Fensick together. They both got up there to make a real good stop on him. It, he could have the first down, but the safeties did a real good job. There really wasn't much that Young could do there. They're using him more in the eye formation to give him a little more depth in the backfield so that he can pick his way as he goes to the line of scrimmage, much uh, the same as the Bears do with Walter Payton. But that time, there wasn't a heck of a lot of room. But Young, uh, I think, is one of the most underrated backs in the NFL. You never, you know, around the country, you don't hear much about him. But one year, he caught 88 passes. He plays, never is hurt. I think he has a consecutive game streak that's the tops in the NFL right now. He's a good, tough ball player, good blocker. Well, he blocked for uh, Walter Young, for Walter Payton down at, uh, right. at Jackson State. And, of course, I guess he's had to play in the shadow of a lot of ball players. The San Diego kept coming up with real good backs when he was there. And, of course, here he comes where one of the genuine superstars, Chuck Foreman, is kind of the main man. But uh, your point is well taken. He's a valuable man. 6'2", 195-pounder, now in his fifth year in the National Football League. Can catch it, too. He's got 22 receptions. St. Louis leading Dallas 6-3. Nine minutes to go in the first period there. Kramer, play action. In pursuit is Hampton. Hampton, and he throws the ball away. Let's see if he gets away with that one. No, he won't get away with that one, I don't believe. The flag is down. White was the only man anywhere in the general area as a receiver, and he was cutting back into the center of the field. And Kramer threw it out of bounds. He did his best to get rid of it, but actually it doesn't even have to be a receiver in the general area anymore if the officials rule that they he was trying to dump the ball. Uh, that's it. It's their judgment. And you'll see Hampton, the rookie out of Arkansas, who is improving with every game here, gets a hand on him, gets a hold of him, and then there's the spin around. He says, I don't want the ball anymore. Let me throw. Intentional grounding, number nine offense, loss of down, second down. Second down at the 22-yard line now for the Vikings. So good pursuit by the rookie Hampton, helping the Bears defensively here. Young and Foreman, the running back. Kramer has time for Ricky Young, made a good catch, but not stay on his feet, however, covered immediately by a Buffon and picked up about six yards. Maybe less, about five, and it'll be third down and still 15 to go for Minnesota. Those are the things that don't show up in the stats. That pass was completed. It'll go down as a completion, but it was a pass that forced Young to dive. The object of that pass is to get it to him so he can turn and run, and uh, he had no chance to do that. So it's not really a good pass in my estimation because there goes Young. He's got to make that dive. He has no chance to do anything else with it. He had a little running room, too, to make the turn up field. It is third and 15. Kramer for Young. No blockers there. He's on his own. Stopped immediately. Osborne was there. And number 23, Lenny Walterscheid coming up, made the tackle on him, and there was no gain. Fourth down, Vikings. The Bears go into that prevent. They're pretty tough to throw against sometimes. You get all those backs in there, and Walterscheid was right up there. The Vikings like to throw to their backs a lot, and they have a tendency to do that a lot, especially on third down situations, even if it's long yardage. Schubert awaiting the punt at the 31-yard line of the Bears. Greg Coleman at the Viking 12. Good punt. Schubert on the fly. Can't get down the sideline. Brings it to the 46-yard line. Bears in good field position. They spot it closer to the 47. 
Scott Studwell, reserve linebacker number 55, pushed him out. And we have 5.41 now to go here in the first period with the score of the Vikings, three, the Bears, nothing. No, but only five yards, and they got a 41-yard field goal then from Steve Little, who is about to root another kickoff. Springs has a 70-yarder, but this is going to go over to Wilson. And about the one. Wilson to the 26. Jim Hart on the St. Louis sideline, conferring with the coaches upstairs. Talking to Ma Bell about the next play. Tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, 60 minutes, California is about to crack down on a doctor that the state says is involved in what could be the biggest case of medical fraud ever. But the doctor is still practicing. It's frightening. You want to know how come he's still practicing? Watch 60 minutes. At the 25, they mark it down. Dallas first and 10. Cardinals lead 6-3. to three. Two field goals by Steve Little. Dorsett swings wide to the left side. Roger Worley. The first this Cardinal to hit him. Misdirection play, and there's an altercation down the field as Dawson and Billy Joe Dupree sort of elbowed one another going back to the huddle. And this was the one tip-off on the Cardinals all year. They say they, if they can't beat you on the field, they'll go ahead and fight. They are not afraid to mix it. Your friends on the Eagles told you that they were nasty. Oh, oh. from the opening bell till it was over, they were still banging people. Very glad to get through playing St. Louis. Three-yard pickup for Dorsett, make it second and seven. Balls at the Cowboy 28. Preston Pearson joins Dorsett in the backfield. Tony D in motion. And Preston Pearson on a rare run from scrimmage gets just back to the line of scrimmage. Miami 13, New England 7, second quarter. Good play then by... Uh, the defensive line. I noticed that on that 34 defense, they're pulled off the ball a little bit. That time, Dawson really plugged it up. It'll Here's be third and seven. Excuse me, Tom. Pearson had only carried the ball three times before. That was a rare carry, as you said. They have Tony Hill and Drew Pearson flanked wide to the right and Butch Johnson to the left. Preston Pearson is also in the game as Roger operates from the shotgun. Drew? No oh. catch. He tried his best to keep both feet down in bounds, and he made a great effort. He thinks he did it. Ken Stone made a real good tackle on the play. Watch Roger. Staubach does not get off a clean pass because somebody just hits him across the numbers as he gets through with it. That looks to me like it's... Uh, and I believe number 73, and there he is knocked out of bounds. And well, the official had a better position to see it than we did. Stone stoned him, huh? In good fashion. Danny White, the NFC's leading punter, averaged 50 yards last week against Los Angeles. Needs another man. Here comes Brunick. Thomas Henderson wide to the left on the punt. Return team will watch for the hang time. This one will hang pretty well. Oh, Henderson. Roy Green was the Cardinal who fielded that punt, but Thomas Henderson, who excels on Spanish. You saw it on CBS Sports Super Bowl 10. It's the Len Swan Show as he pulls down everything Terry Bradshaw throws in his direction to beat Dallas. Sunday, Dallas visits Pittsburgh in one of three regional games. New Orleans takes on Washington and Chicago roars into San Francisco. The doubleheader games feature Green Bay and Miami, the New York Giants tackling Los Angeles, and Philadelphia clashing with Cincinnati. Check local listings for the games and times in your area. You'll say... You saw it on CBS Sports. Ben Scully with George Allen, halftime, 7-0 Washington. George, give me a capsule comment on the first half. Well, Ben, number, number one is they stopped the Eagles' running game. Number two, they forced Jaworski to throw the football, which he doesn't want to do. They've been running stunts with the nickel and dogs. They've taken away the Eagles' strength. 
All right, that's a summation briefly of the first half. Washington 7, Philadelphia nothing. Now let's join Brent Musburger, NFL Control in New York. Thank you very much, Benny. Back here in New York with Jane and Irv. Let's take you right to the scoreboard now and get you up to date. Tampa Bay 14, Green Bay nothing. They're about ready to start the third period. Doug Williams ran for one pass for a second. The game you're watching is a dandy. Harold Carmichael, will this be the Sunday shutout? I don't think so. Now it's Baltimore and Buffalo. Burt Jones is quarterbacking the Colts. They're scoreless in the second. Cleveland came back on a pass of 10 yards from Sipe to Rucker. Cincinnati and Cleveland are now tied. Anderson 10 yards to Don Bass for the Bengals score. Miami stormed ahead. Uwe Von Schaumann kicked a 53-yarder. Greasy went 13 yards to Bruce Hardy. Von Schaumann connected on a 39-yarder, and suddenly the New England Patriots are on the board. The New York Jets scored on a Todd 21 yards. Wesley Walker breached 25-yard field goal for the Raiders. Chicago and Minnesota. Dan Meyer collecting, connecting for the Vikes in that game. They lead it by three in the first. And 24 yards, Archie Manning to West Chandler. The Saints lead Detroit. Dallas scored first on St. Louis to make it three to nothing on a 51-yard field goal by Septian. But since that time, Little has come back to kick to himself. Who is number one in college football? Well, fans down Alabama way let me know in no uncertain terms that I've been picking the wrong team. So we decided to check in on Bama yesterday, and look what happened. They were fumbling the ball to Tennessee. Volunteers recovered it. Couldn't believe it. Streeter throwing a touchdown pass to Ingram. And I'm saying, this is number one. Tennessee at the Bama 29, second and eight. Streeter 15 yards to Simpson. Johnny Majors has got it going. It's third and goal at the Bama three. Here comes Streeter. Left guard, Bear Bryant, what's going on down there with this football team? Well, that was far enough. Here they came. Crimson tie. Deflected pass by Streeter. Robbie Jones picks it off. Suddenly, Bama was at the Tennessee 33. Stedman Sheila over the middle. Timmy Travis for the touchdown. It was 17-7. Second half. Third and five now at the Tennessee 6. Here's Jacobs on the field. Major Ogilvy in for the score. It was 17-14. Second and 10 in this sequence. And a draw play got 16 yards and a first down for Alabama. Here's the touchdown that did it. First and 10 at the 13. Jacobs. Up the middle, and we rank Alabama number one this week with Nebraska closing in. Arkansas right there after beating Texas. Ohio State, and once tied, USC now fifth. Second five, let's go Houston, Texas, Oklahoma. That's scrambling, and they're tough this year. Florida State and Navy will tie them for 10. I mentioned Ohio State. I want to show you some highlights from that team in action. Earl Bruce is loaded. Woody Hayes handed on a team that might wind up winning a national title. What a group they've got here. Watch Cal Murray, one of the running backs. See him there? He's number 43. The eye back, full back out in front of him. Good chop block there on the corner and zip. 52 yards for the Buckeyes in their familiar red against the Wisconsin Badgers. And here's Art Schleister. He's a dandy. Four yards for the score. It was 7-0. And Schleister can also throw it. You don't see Ohio State quarterbacks throw it like this very often. Hunter, 17 yards in the score. On defense, they blocked this Wisconsin field goal attempt. And watch them force the fumble right here. The Buckeyes say, look out, Pasadena. We want a shot at the Trojans. And Ray Ellis of Ohio State intercepts and goes in for the touchdown. It was 59-0. Ohio State easy over Wisconsin. And I should point out to the fans of Alabama that two weeks ago we had USC number one. They got tied. Last week we had Texas, and uh, you know what happened to Arkansas. But I don't think Virginia Tech can beat Alabama. And the NFL today will continue on CBS after these messages from your local stations. Hi, I'm Dick Butkus. As middle linebacker for the Chicago Bears, it was my job to seek out and destroy running backs. I love playing pro football, but my biggest thrill came with my election into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. After several visits here, I am prouder than ever to be a member. Here is a modern, up-to-the-minute sports show place with something to interest every fan of every age and every team. The pro football story from its very first game right up to the present season is told in many colorful and interesting ways. 
You can spend an hour or several hours and enjoy every minute. The Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio is open every day of the year except Christmas. I hope you'll visit here soon. And when you come, be sure to see some of my pals. Gail Sayers, George Hallis, Ray Nitschke. By the way, I hope you'll stop and see my bus, too. The preceding announcement was furnished by the National Football League. 14 to nothing, Tampa Bay leading Green Bay as the Buccaneers got a resounding cheer in marked contrast to the reception they got last week against New Orleans. And the sign makers are out in full force. That's a good drawing of the Buccaneer in that helmet, John. Yeah, and there's one for Green Bay for Rich Wingo. And the Packer backers never die. He hasn't let them down today so far. No, he sure hasn't. He's been playing a fine game. <laughs> Before the kickoff, uh, John, uh, you talked about this being a big week. We're seeing a lot of rookies play. Eckwood, what significance does this particular week have, especially if you're a first-year player? This is a very, a very big and significant week. What happens is after today's game, someone is going to tell these rookie players that the season is half over. We've played eight games. Then they're going to count how many they've played. They've already played 12 games, which is more than a college season. They're ready for the and they still have <laughs> half the And they still have half the season to go. And that's very disruptive sometimes to rookies. That's a good point. There's George Ragsdale, number 23, who has outstanding speed. That is not George Ragsdale. He's There's, a rookie. He's a rookie, and he has a half a season to go. <laughs> Chester Markle, who missed an important field goal for Green Bay that would have put him on the board in the first half, will kick off for the Packers. And we're underway in the second half, and a good kick. Ragsdale five yards in the end zone. Gets to the 20. And Jim Gano, number 51, makes the tackle. So Tampa Bay on offense. Doug Williams, the quarterback, he completed four of five passes for 67 yards and a touchdown in the first half. There's Williams, second year from Grambling, a number one draft choice. The running backs. Ricky Bell, 94 yards thus far. He's averaged 6.7 yards a carry. Eckwood, 43, the other running back. Now we have three wide receivers as Eckwood moves in to a wing back position. And it's Bell. Penalty marker down. Earl Edwards, number 73, makes the stop. And it looks like a Green Bay linebacker is slow getting up. The injured player is Rich Wingo, something that the Packers could ill afford. Apparently there was no penalty marker there. As you look at the halftime statistics and look at the difference in yards passing. Packers 134, the Bucks 67. But Green Bay has only had 18 yards running. Pitch out. Bell. Or Eckwood. And he has stopped. Coming up is Gary Weaver, number 52, a fellow you're familiar with from Oakland. Gary Weaver was another, another one of those players that we had at, at Oakland. He played very well for us, mostly on special teams. At the end of the preseason, as we look at Gary Weaver there, at the end of the preseason, he had a hamstring injury, and we put him on waived injured, thinking that no one would claim him. Green Bay claimed him, and he's played very well for him. It was, a, it, was, it was a great pickup by the Green Bay Packers. Wiley Turner, number 20, the rookie from Angelo State, comes in as a fifth defensive back, third and eight at the 22-yard line. Williams to Eckwood. Gets by one, gets by two, and Jerry Eckwood's going to have a first down as he's finally driven out of bounds at the 40-yard line. He could have been stopped for a loss. Instead, he gets a Tampa Bay first down. The tackle by Wiley Turner, that fifth back. And that was all Jerry Eckwood on that play. That wasn't a, a, a great pass or a pattern or anything. It was just a little dump off. There was no blocking or anything. He just made people miss in the open field. And that's what he does so well. And again, sometimes he may fumble the ball doing that. But sometimes you have to take a few fumbles for these types of plays. That was a big play and gave him a first down. And it was all Jerry Eckwood. Eckwood leaves the game. He's replaced by Johnny Davis, number 38. A bruising running back, first and 10 at the 38-yard line for Tampa Bay. Ricky Bell hit hard, and he won't get any more. Number 53, Mike Douglas, was the first to hit him, and Charles Johnson after that. 
So Mike Douglas, who is playing in place of John Anderson, who's had that broken arm, leads the team in tackles. He has had a superb year. Packers now using four linebackers, a 3-4 at second and 10. Higgins, 81 to the top of your screen. Morris Owens, you don't see him as wide right. Bell. Wingo is back, as you saw, and he makes a good tackle there. Earl Edwards slowed him up for Rich Wingo to complete the play. We're going to see that play again, and we're going to see that the Packers are doing a a better job this half of of their backside defense when Ricky Bell starts one way they're staying at home because they know that eventually he may come back to the other side the first half they were over pursuing Ricky Bell was able to cut back with success he hasn't been able to do it yet this half Ricky Bell now is 100 yards that's the third time in his career second time was last week but he gained over 100 yards third and seven now Williams throws it's incomplete it was intended for the tight end Jimmy Giles and right there was Jim Gano the fourth linebacker number 51 and a good rush by Mike Butler number 77. He so was it, excuse me excuse me he was on Charlie Hanna and Williams didn't have a chance on on that one Butler took an inside pass rush and he was right in Williams's face before he had a chance. Odom is deep for Green Bay. Tom Blanchard will kick from the 25. Sends Odom back. And the ball will go into the end zone for a touchback. So we got a little bit too much foot and roll for Tom Blanchard. So Green Bay has a chance to get on the board after that 58 yard punt by Tom Blanchard with a couple of minutes gone by here in the third quarter. Oakland has just gone ahead of the Jets at halftime, but let's take you to the scoreboard. I'm Brent Musburger reporting live from New York right now. And around the league, we have some other things going on that we will check on. But first, let me show you the New York City Marathon. I get so confused, I don't know if I'm coming or going when we start these halftime shows. What do we got? We've got 14,153 entries. This is just a walk around the park. 26 miles, 385 yards. Who are these crazy people? 12,324 men, 1,828 women. We'll touch on all five boroughs in the city of New York. But last year, they had some trouble on the bridges, so they put down one-inch thick mats. Had to protect all of those feet today. Now, you know, there are very few hills in New York. There's no trouble at all. But beware of the potholes. See that runner right there? We didn't know who he was for half the morning. Kurt Pfeffer is his name, an unknown. He'd been training out there in the Rocky Mountains, hiding out from everybody. And he zipped, look at the rest of the pack. They're saying, how do we catch up to that guy? And who is he anyway? You know there's a runner by the name of Bill Rogers, though, and he started to stalk after him. Rogers had won the last three New York City marathons. How many water stops along the way? 21, enjoyed by one and all. The best woman runner today was Greta Waits. Now, Pfeffer has relinquished the lead, and Rogers has finally taken over. He also holds the record for the New York City Marathon, two hours, 10 minutes, and nine seconds. He wasn't looking at the clock. He was looking for Pfeffer. And there was the most enjoyable water break of all. Here he came, Rogers, with one eye now on the clock, shooting down at that record. He approached the finish line, but he's not gonna make it. 211 and 42, Bill Rogers wins the New York City Marathon. Update there, Baltimore on the board. 7-0 is the score there. Burt Jones ran in for the touchdown. And uh, Irv, what have you got for me now? Where are we here? <laughs> Down in Tampa Bay in the third quarter, the Bucks lead the Green Bay Packers by a score of 14-0. And you can really call it the Ricky Bell game because in the first half, Ricky Bell carried the ball for 94 yards, scored a touchdown, and here's one of his long runs of the day. Third and one in the Green Bay 37. Ricky Bell takes a pitch to his, along his right end, bounces down in good scoring, posi scoring position for the Buccaneers. Doug Williams knows when he has a good thing going. This time he goes in the air to number 42. Ricky Bell, touchdown. Tampa Bay leads 7-0. Doug Williams works to number 42 once again. Going on his right side, down within inches of the goal line. And Doug knows what to do from there. Quarterback sneak, and Tampa Bay leads 14-0. The Green Bay Packers tried to get back in the game when David Whitehurst, number 17, goes to number 80. 
Lofton. Looks like he's going to score here, but watch what happens. Just along the sideline, is pushed out of bounds, touches the sideline, he's out of bounds, and a parent Green Bay backer touchdown was not to be. So Tampa Bay leads it in the third quarter by a score of 14-0. Let's see. Let's show you that touchdown in the Washington-Philadelphia game. If you missed the first part of the game, Mosley kicked a field goal, but there was a penalty against the Eagles. They got a first down, and the skins kept on moving. And here he came, Benny Malone. In for the score, Mosley adding the extra point, seven to nothing. That's where we stand at halftime. Let's send you back now to Vin Scully and George Allen. Well, it's halftime here at RFK Stadium in Washington. The temperature in a balmy 80 to 85 degrees, and the Washington Redskins in a very good mood. Philadelphia very much frustrated for a half. Seven to nothing, Washington. Benny Malone scoring from 10 yards out, but of course, part of that story was the fact that Jack Pardee took points off the scoreboard when Mark Mosley evidently kicked a field goal, but then you had a running into the kicker penalty against Philadelphia. So Washington elected to take the penalty. That gave him first and goal from the 10, and Malone came firing through, and Pardee changed three into seven, and Jack is leading seven to nothing at halftime along with his Washington ball club. But for Dick Vermeil and Philadelphia, an explosive club that scored 28 points two weeks ago against Washington, they figure to be heard from yet before this afternoon is over. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer who bring you the better idea, cars and trucks for the 80s. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. And by Kmart Automotive Service Centers, where quality car products are Kmart priced. Vikings and the Bears, Minnesota with a 3-0 lead on a Rick Danmeyer 43-yarder. First down, Chicago, good field position at their own 46-yard line. Payton. Jeff Seaman was there, and coming up, Bryant, number 20, from the corner, getting him low, Seaman getting him high, gain of only two. And you have to say only every time Peyton carries for less than five. That's only his second carry today, and he was in that I formation. I'll tell you, that's a nice little tip. When you see him in that I formation, you got a pretty good idea that Peyton's going to get a little pitch out to the outside. There goes Seaman, number 50. Watch him pick his way through, gets through the blocking, and waiting for Walter Peyton as Noah Jackson couldn't get around there, and Dave Williams both were pulling, but weren't able to really get in on that play and help out much. Paul Kraus in at safety for the Vikings for the first time. Straight ahead, Dave Williams gets about four yards. James Duck White made the stop on him. It'll be third and about four. So Kraus evidently not hurt, but Grant electing to start Kurt Knopf, but Kraus is in there now. The Vikings were praying for a lot of rain. Uh, Bud Grant says the more it rains, the muddier it gets. He says that slows Walter Payton down just that much. <laughs> you can't blame him, can you? Not at all. In fact, that when they said to Bud last night, the weather forecast was good. I said, gee, sounds like a nice day tomorrow. He said, I hope not. <laughs> Third and four. Nate Wright is in as the fifth defensive back for the Vikings. Slot formation right. They got him. Mark Mullaney, number 77, taking Avellini back inside the Bears' 40. Now they're going to spot it at the 42. Let's take a look at that pass rush as Mullaney gets inside Dennis Lick, right slick and clean and makes the tackle. Good play by the Minnesota Vikings. He wasn't even slowed down there as he went to the inside of Dennis Lick that time rather than normally to the outside you find those defensive ends. Parson standing at the Bears 27. Jimmy Edwards at the 15 of Minnesota. Another big punt from Parsons. Edwards from his own 13. No running room out that side. Excellent pursuit. Bruce Heron, number 51. Reserve linebacker forced him out at the 16-yard line of the Vikings. for four in this game, 43 yards, and of course the touchdown. Giving off to Tony Galbraith, and Galbraith picks up five to the 35-yard line, Al Bubba Baker. Boy, what a story he was last year for the Detroit Lions. 23 sacks, he has six and a half thus far this year. What did he, he intimidates you, and he scares you as a quarterback. 
You know, Galbraith is really, truly a Mr. Everything for this football team. He's kicked field goals, point afters. He threw a pass last week. He caught 74 catches last year. He runs the ball. What doesn't he do? <laughs> Great weapon to have, I can tell you that. On a second down, here's Galbraith again. Galbraith to the 40, dives, and I believe he's got the first down at the 41 and a half. What are your people doing in Dallas today? St. Louis is leading the Dallas Cowboys. The Cardinals are leading six to three right now. Well, they always play Dallas tough. They do. They like to play them. That team is, you know, so many problems, yet they continue to go out and play. And they, they play against the tough teams well. They do. They beat Dallas down there in 1977. That last play, a six-yard pickup. A first down, the fifth first down already in this game for the Saints at the 42-yard line. They are moving. Mike Harris comes in motion. Manning off to West Chandler, and Chandler's going to take it on the far side. All kinds of congestion. He ducks across the 45. Over there was James Hunter. But you said it very well. You isolate him, and he just makes things happen out there. Boy, he's exciting. He ran 30 yards in and picked up five. There's Dick Nolan, a man who last year gave this organization some real stability. They finished seven to nine, the best record in the 12-year history of this franchise. And then they got off to a slow start. They've come on strong now, winning three of their last four. Six-yard pickup, second down now, four. Manning, Chandler, Chandler trying to go for the first down, and I think he may have gotten it as he dragged the tackler, Luther Bradley, across the front of that chain. Boy, I like this kind of football. Take the ball. Look, look how quickly the ball is thrown. Get it to your best people and take advantage of their individual talents, and that's the type of football, offensive football, that the Saints are playing. Five-yard pickup and a first down. You know what Chandler said at the start of the year? His goal was catch 80 passes this year. 80? Well, he might not get there, but he's going to give it a try, I'll tell you. I think Archie's trying to make it. <laughs> Manning is six for six passing. This is Chuck Muncie. Muncie inside the 45 to the 43. William Gay, 79, making the stop for the Detroit Lions. And the Lions have had a lot of problems with their defense. If you look at their defense this year, as far as rushing is concerned, people have run almost at will against them, and they were hoping today that they could force them out of that. But what do you force them out of, Sonny? You force them into their second-rated pass offense. They're, you know, you rob Peter to pay Paul. I tell you what, that's exactly right. They love to rush a passer. They have 21 sacks so far, but by doing so, rushing the passer on the early downs, they make themselves vulnerable to the run. They've been giving up 124 yards again. Muncie again. Muncie to the 37-yard line. And what an arsenal they're showing right now. Ken Fantetti again. Their second-round draft pick out of Wyoming made the stop. We have a man shaken up. That's Charlie Weaver, number 59 for the Lions. You can see the draw play right here. Just a draw. He gets a little running room. Again, the Lions rushing the passer. And Muncie makes a good run. Almost enough for the first down, not quite. We have a timeout. We'll be back with the Saints leading it 7 to nothing. Don't forget doubleheader action next week here on CBS, all preceded by the NFL today. It is first down, Minnesota. Ball at their own 17-yard line. Tom Hicks is in it, linebacker for the first time, replacing the starter, Doug Buffone. Of course, Hicks still bothered with the flu, but obviously ready to go, wants to play. Ricky Young gets out to the 20-yard line, picked up three yards on the play for the Vikes. And at the bottom of that file, Hicks is there, number 54, and Alan Page, 82. Hicks has lost 15 pounds. Watch him take on the block there and then get in on the tap. He lost 15 pounds with the flu. He's picked up about five of it. He's still 10 pounds under his weight, but he didn't look like it on that play, did he, Tim? Sure didn't. He was eager. Second down, seven yards to go. Minnesota at their own 20. Left is Rashad. Right is White. Play action. Sammy White has the ball. Is he inbounds? No. Out of bounds. Incomplete. 
And if you got to look at the uh, Bears pass rush that time, you could see Alan Page signaling off of his rear which way they were going to do a crisscross on the pass rush. Very interesting uh, signal. He just puts his finger up on his fanny and says, look what I'm going to do. There's Tampa Bay, 14 to nothing over Green Bay. Tampa Bay was 5-2 going in, so the loser of this game, if Tampa Bay goes on to win, would be three games out of first place. So this is a big game. The loser's in big trouble. Ricky Bell and quarterback Doug Williams have the touchdown. Bell on a pass from Williams. Williams on a keeper for the Buccaneers. Timeout call by Minnesota here with 3.07 to go in the first quarter. Tommy Kramer wants to talk to Bud Grant and his offensive coordinator, Jerry Burns. Next Sunday, it's a CBS NFL doubleheader. Check local listings for the games and times in your area. A super Sunday of football. You'll say... You saw it on CBS Sports. Packers have the ball, first and 10 at the 20. They're trailing 14 to nothing. Whitehurst, 10 for 13 for 134 yards and one interception in the first half. Carrying is Nate Simpson for a couple of yards. Simpson gains 16 yards. Landers, six. And once again, John, we're looking at that very important first down situation, and the Packers just got a couple. Washington at halftime leading Philadelphia 7-0. Oakland on the strength of a stabler pass. Well, it's Baltimore over Buffalo 7-0. Burt Jones, a one-yard run, and Kent Stabler hit Ray Chester 25 yards, and now Oakland leads the New York Jets at the half 10-7. Second and seven at the 23. Whitehurst to the 26-yard line. That was Simpson out of the backfield. They'll be third and about three, maybe four yards as Whitehurst goes short. I think that's the type of play, Dick, that they would like to get going on first down where they would end up in the, the second and three, second and four situation. And that's the way that, that it's a lot easier to play rather than getting in that second and long all the time but third and three isn't bad either Curtis Jordan the fifth back for Tampa Bay and Walter Tullis 87 is a third wide receiver for the Packers at the 27 and a quick toss to Lofton tries to get by and he does James Lofton has a first down for the Green Bay Packers so the quick square outs few adjustments made and you can see why uh, with the play scheme that Whitehurst is not going to the wide men. He hasn't done it that much in this game either. Well, he's hit him a few times, and I think that's a good play. You see uh, there, they were only third and three, third and four. They were able to go to three wide receivers, and they didn't have to go deep where they were getting all that double coverage. He was just able to hit, hit Lofton on a quick one, get out of bounds, but still get the first down. At the 33-yard line. Randy Crowder, number 71, is a fourth down lineman for Tampa Bay. Whitehurst goes short again, completes the pass to Lofton at midfield. In the first half, Whitehurst went three times to Simpson. That's the thing I'm sure that I'm sure that they talked about and thought about at halftime is that they wanted more mixture on first down and now they're doing it. We see here they come out and they and they pass on first down. They get another first down. They're going to have good mixture. He had three passes to Simpson, two to Kaufman, one to Landers. So most of his passes were to his backs. First and ten at midfield. Quick passes by Whitehurst. He gives now to the second back through Nate Simpson. And he's inside the 45-yard line. Good acceleration by Nate Simpson, who gained 121 yards last week against Detroit. And a gain of six, so it's second and four. And now they have a good down setup with this scheme. I think so. And you see what happens once you let them know that you will throw on first down, you will play fake and throw the ball. Now they play that run a little looser, and you get some more holes in there. Under Thompson, wide to the left. Tullis. Goes in motion, second and four. 14 to nothing, Tampa Bay. Once again, Nate Simpson carries the ball. Close to a first down, and he has it. Another Green Bay first down as Whitehurst, as you see after every play, checks to the sideline where Bratkowski from Star gives him the signal. And then as we look at Whitehurst in the huddle, he also has some plays on his wrist. And that's when, when he doesn't get a play. 
You know, as a coach, it was fun to call those second and short, but those third and 20, you'd let him call them from his wrist. Packers on a drive, first and 10 at the 38. Play action pass, and they're going to go deep for James Lofton, and it is intercepted by Tampa Bay, and they'll hold it there for a touchback. Jarris White, the cornerback number 45 on a deflection, makes his third interception of the season. And so Green Bay's drive is stalled on the interception, second key turnover for Tampa Bay today. The fans love that, but as we go here, we see again that it's a play fake. They fake a running play. They're going to throw it to Lofton to the post, but Lofton is double covered. You see, he's as we're going to see down here, he's covered inside out. He has two men on him. One gets a tip. The other one comes up the ball. I'm sure Whitehurst would love to have that pass back. That's what you get when you shampoo with Nair. <laughs> Gero Yepremian. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, he's really enjoying it here, though, isn't he? He started the year without a job, was well, picked up when Erksleben was hurt, and he went ahead and broke the NFL record for consecutive field goals. He's hit 19 in a row. He's three for three this year. What a nice guy. I was talking with him one day down on the field, and I said, how are you kicking? He says, don't look at me now. I'm kicking next to Franklin. He makes my ball look lazy. James Harrell has come in replacing Charlie Weaver, who was shaken up on that last play. Muncie diving forward for the first down. Muncie across the 35 to the 34 as the Saints continue to impress. First down. The Lions with Weaver out of there, losing their best linebacker. He was their MVP two consecutive years. At a first quarter score, Baltimore is leading Buffalo 7 to nothing. And the Oakland Raiders leading the New York Jets 10 to 7. That's in the second quarter. Did I see Bert Jones is playing? A one yard run by Bert Jones. So Jones back today for the Baltimore Colts. First down from the 33 and a half. Muncie to the 30 yard line, and that's all. Pretty good reaction that time by Ed O'Neill and James Harrell, 51. Harrell was a rookie out of Florida. They just signed him this week, a former Denver Bronco. The Lions, believe it or not, coming into today had 11 men on the injured reserve list. They've had a truckload of injuries. Second down now, seven yards to go, just short of the 30-yard line. Muncie already has gained 36 yards. Look at that. He had 151 yards in the first game of the year against Atlanta, which is a Saints record. Manning. Protection is excellent. The Galbraith again. Galbraith is just going to get back. May have lost a yard on the play as Ed O'Neill again over to make the tackle for Detroit. I think he's a, he's a little upset with himself then. He had some daylight. He elected to cut back, and by cutting back, he cost himself a lot of yardage. We have just outside a minute to go in this first quarter. 7-0. The Saints scored the first time they had the football, and they're moving again. They lost a yard on that one. It'll be third and eight. As Monty Clark looking on. I'd like to get this momentum reversed a little bit. He needs a big play by that defense. By either side, right? And wait a minute. Still eight seconds left on the clock. We're going to have a timeout called by Detroit. Detroit asked for their first timeout of this game. And so with 51 seconds remaining in this first quarter, New Orleans will have a third and eight. And that gives us time to remind you that on the CBS Sports Spectacular, next Saturday, 5 o'clock Eastern, a light heavyweight bout, James Scott against Jerry Celestine. And that will be live from Rahway State Prison in Rahway, New Jersey. And then one of our favorite shows, The World's Strongest Men, will be the last episode, part five, and get this. What are it they doing? Features the refrigerator race and tug of war. <laughs> the refrigerator race? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. What do they do? They rush to it and then eat? Or what? I, I think those guys could have a big enough appetite. <laughs> so that'll be coming up. We hope you'll join us for it. There's Ed O'Neill discussing things. The Lions this year had one of their veteran linebackers, Paul Newmoff, retire. They have a lot of young people back there. Brooks, Van Teddy, along with Cole and Harrell, all first-year men now playing at linebacker. And there is Gumbo. Did you see him earlier today? He was up here in the press box area, Gumbo the third, I should say. 
and his uh, so-called master went in to eat, and Gumbo patiently waited at the door for him to come back. Didn't well, follow to, him in. I had to stand behind Gumbo going in line to get something to eat in the press room. Gumbo was right before me. <laughs> All right, third down and eight. Weaver, by the way, we understand has a sprained right knee. It's questionable whether he'll be back. He's been replaced by Harold. Harold being thrown in there in a hurry, hasn't he? Only joined the team this week. Jumping off the Lions. What's the problem here as Manning then tries to go? Flags everywhere. I believe the Lions might have gotten back. Smart play by the center. John Hill did a real smart thing in. Anytime a defensive lineman jumps off sides like that, if you snap the ball, even though your offensive team isn't ready to go and you haven't reached a count, if you snap the ball when they come off sides, you're going to pick up five. And that's what it exactly is right now, is Dreyfus has stepped off the five yards against the Lions. That's the reason when the ball was snapped, Archie and the center were the only people that knew it. Everybody else was standing around. Ben Dreyfus and his crew, Frank Glover, the head linesman, Stan Jabby, the back judge, Pat Maletti, the field judge. You know, in a way, that doesn't surprise me because nobody but Manning really took off. That's why I thought it was a smart play on the center in Manning's part. They snapped the ball and moved. How could they be in motion if only if Manning's got the football? So they step off five Ball's yards the other way. On the offense, no snap, no snap. No snap? How do you have the ball, Ben? <laughs> he had the football. Somebody had to get it there somehow, didn't they? <laughs> Leave me out of this, will you? Okay. <laughs> hey, the ball was snapped. Well, it's third down now, close to 14 yards to go. Let's make it 13. The ball now at the 37 of Detroit. 51 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Chandler, Harris, the wide receiver. Manning to Galbraith. Galbraith. Boy, no place. Ooh. Ed O'Neill again, and O'Neill has made about three or four tackles on this series, and that's going to bring up a fourth down, and that's going to bring in Rick Partridge to kick. I think after that penalty, they got a little discombobulated or something, didn't they? Partridge averaging 41.3, his longest, look at that, 61 yards. He started the year with the Green Bay Packers, an eighth-round draft pick, was cut. And they feel he's a fine kicker. Now, Russell Erksleben's expected back next week, and they don't know what they're going to do with Partridge. Ken Calicut is back now for Detroit. He hit that one with a lot to spare. It's going to make an end of the end zone for the touchback. And Detroit will have the football at the 20-yard line. And so a 37-yard kick moves it out to the 20-yard line. And Detroit... We'll have the football for the third time as we have only eight seconds remaining in this first quarter. Boy, they need to do something offensively now to keep their defensive team off the field for a while. They need to make some plays, get a little drive going here, get a little confidence in their offense. Jerry Goldstein, who last year threw 40 passes, and that's all, with the New York Giants, then went to the 49ers in the preseason, didn't throw a pass in the preseason. He gives off. Dexter Bussey carries, and Bussey's out to the 22. Pat Hughes, a veteran right side linebacker who has three interceptions this year, in on the stop. And that is the end of the first quarter from the Louisiana Superdome. The New Orleans Saints with a 7 to nothing lead. The Saints trying to win their fourth game in the last five outings. Third and seven as Kramer has a play that he hopes will work, and it's 3-0 here with 3.07 to go first quarter. To the right go both White and Rashad. Rashad in the slot. Young and Foreman are the running backs. We have not seen the rookie Ted Brown as yet. Kramer with lots of time can't find an open man and it's batted away. And it might have been Alan Page who got the hand up. It was either Page or Hampton who got a hand up on the ball. How'd you see it, John? I really didn't see who got the hand up. I would guess uh, Hampton. They had six defensive backs that time on coverage, and Kramer just couldn't find anybody open, and the pass blocking finally broke down a little bit, and then a, a tall hand, and it might have been Hampton because he is very, very tall. No, it was Alan Page. Fourth down. Holman standing at his five. Fair catch signaled by Walterscheid at the Chicago Bears 46-yard line. 
And so once again, Chicago in good field position. They have had the advantage of that win. Parsons' good punting has backed up the Vikings, and they haven't been able to move it. But the Bears, when they get it at midfield, have not been able to move it either. Next week on the CBS Sports Spectacular, well, I take a little trip to the prison again, Johnny. I'm going to be there at Rahway State Prison in New Jersey to watch James Scott and Jerry Celestine. Should be an outstanding light heavyweight fight. Also the world's strongest men, part of the CBS Sports Spectacular next Saturday. First down, Bears. Walter Payton's going to throw. Deep is Bashnagel open. He has it. Bashnagel, touchdown. Payton to Bashnagel, and there are no flags down. Well, some razzle-dazzle for the Bears on first down. And they finally did it after all these years with Walter Payton, who can throw the ball very well. He threw this ball off balance. There's the pitch out. Bashnagel downfield. It was all by himself. Now there is holding it with one hand and just gives it a heave, and it was perfect. Bashnagel probably said, hey, please, please, let me catch it. Please, please. He got it into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago Bears. And if you don't think that's going to help Walter Payton on his end runs, I'll tell you, you got another thing coming. That is for sure. And you know, the young cornerback, Johnny Turner, had... Bashnagel downfield for about 15 yards, and then when he saw Peyton with the ball, he came up to play the run. So it worked just the way they designed it on the blackboard. Thomas's point after is good. And with 2.46 to go here in the first quarter, the Bears are in front 7-3. to three. Let's watch it again. There's Dave Williams, number 22, out in front, helped out a little bit, and there was the pass, an excellent pass, considering he had to throw that really off balance, didn't get a chance to set himself, and Brian Bashnagel, who has done very well for the Bears this year, he does great on the specialty teams, and now he's been called upon to play a lot more this year, and he'll do a good job. It would appear against Green Bay, 14-0 at the half. Doug Williams with a run for a touchdown and a pass for a touchdown, looks like it. Washington over Philadelphia, 7-0 at the half. No love lost between those two clubs, either. That game in Washington, it's the one they switched around because the Pope was around. Hart outside to Mel Gray. Aaron Kyle, the Dallas defender, but Jim Hart looks sharp. And tough coverage. That's a single bit of coverage on Gray, who used to get a 9-2. He's probably about a 9-5 man now. Good blocking on the left side as Wartman picked up Harvey Martin and company did a very good job on the line of scrimmage. What's a great catch. And Gray is down on the St. Louis sideline. Number 85 tried to struggle to his feet. Couldn't make it. Now he's up, but he had knee problems, hamstring problems, and ankle problems coming in. Jim Childs has taken his place. Second and two as Tilly comes in motion again. Pitch back to Anderson. And with that great speed, strength, and balance, gets the Cardinal first down before Cliff Harris knocks him out of bounds. There is Mel Gray. It looks like a knee problem. Especially against Dallas. As you mentioned earlier, he's made 13 touchdowns in the last 11 games between St. Louis and Dallas. He's had a really a lot of problems with the wheels the last couple of seasons. Some run by young Anderson. Baltimore 7, Buffalo nothing, second quarter score. Burt Jones, by the way, is back in at quarterback for Baltimore. Tight end comes in motion, and Hart goes straight back. Anderson will have some room to operate, and Anderson takes on Aaron Kyle with his right arm and right shoulder. Second time in a row that he's gotten through to the secondary. This time, Hart put his man in motion, make the formation strong left, and now he swings the back in behind that. You understand that with the two receivers already going deep, Anderson has a lot of room to run. I'm telling you, he attacks the defenseman with that shoulder. Good thing Kyle got low. He looks like he intends to hurt folks. He doesn't act like he's a rookie either. No, sir. <laughs> he didn't negotiate with the Cardinals like he was a rookie. They're in Dallas territory at the 44. As Tilly again comes in motion, and Anderson bangs straight ahead. Offensive line deserves a little credit too for St. Louis because they're just knocking them back on their heels at the moment. All right, you're looking at Randy White. They're in the flex. Harvey Martin gets hit by Wartman and controlled. And Anderson just steams on in and went, actually ran right by Randy White. Uh, George Collins in front of Randy White did a heck of a job. 7 7 at the half, Cleveland, Cincinnati. Collins is that, the big second year guard out of Georgia. Here is Hart back to pass. And again, he gets it out to Anderson. And he is caught by Thomas Henderson. Not many linebackers in any league could have done that. 
It looks like the Cardinals are trying to run a slip screen. Either that or the Cowboys really put pressure on. You'll see Hart has a lot of blue and white immediately. Unloads quickly. And somehow, Henderson got caught inside a little bit. And only great speed by 56 pull the playoff. Another first down for the Cardinals at the Dallas 32. They lead already 6 to 3. Mel Gray has now caught a pass, by the way. He's injured, but he's caught a pass now in 82 consecutive games. That's second behind Harold Carmichael, and we'll check and see whether he's caught one today or not. Oakland 10 7 over the Jets. Hart had it in the hands of Dave Steep. He was hit by Benny Barnes. Hart just turned to the sidelines to Bud Wilkinson and put his palms up like, what else can I do? Working the outside very well, though. And of course, the cornerbacks. Uh, some people have always thought Dallas might be thrown on, not only outside, but over the corners. Otis Anderson is out. It's very, very hot. That's Charlie Davis with the towel on his head. Anderson is out. His place has been taken by last year's Oklahoma quarterback Thomas Lott in the backfield. And you're right. He could throw. Handoff is to Wayne Morris, who is hit quickly by Harvey Martin. Talking to Ernie Stautner about Harvey Martin's rejuvenation suddenly, and they say that Harvey has finally learned to take the inside once in a while and gamble and move into the play more. You can see that that's exactly what he did out of the flex position. Boy, what a tackle. He's a superb pass rusher. Now he's really playing that run tough. Bob Young, who limped off after the first play from scrimmage, is back in for the Cardinals. George Collins is out. It'll be third down. Nine yards as Tilly comes in motion again and cuts back upfield. Hart looking in that direction and throwing. Almost caught by Jim Childs, but he couldn't hang on. Benny Barnes, the Dallas coverer. And we'll see Steve Little again. And Benny did not have very good coverage or position on Childs. If that ball had been just hung up a little bit, Childs had the catch. Benny looks like he's struggling a little bit over there today. By the way, I just got the information that Harold Carmichael so far with a streak at 103 consecutive games now in which he's caught a pass. Two off the record. Has not caught one in the first half yet. Maybe Pat Fisher came out of the stands or something. <laughs> and of course the Redskins against the Eagles. Here's Steve Little. And that one is wide right. After hitting from 41 and 51, Little misses from a 35, 46-yard attempt that time. And the Cowboys will take over from that line of scrimmage. A pretty good direction, and it wasn't hooked. Missed it wide to the right. Next week's doubleheader on CBS. First games, Dallas-Pittsburgh. That's where we'll be. New Orleans-Washington. Tampa Bay-Minnesota. And then Chicago at San Francisco. Green Bay against Miami. The Giants will be in Los Angeles and Philadelphia against Cincinnati. Patrick, is there a better quarterback around than Roger Staubach? We've been saying that for years, but he's playing better, it seems to me, as, as he does get older. Right now, the way they figure, which is very complicated, he's the best in the history of the NFL. Going deep for Tony Hill. Picked off by Carl Allen. Cardinals will have the football, but he was down as the result of contact. Carl Allen and Ken Stone both back on Tony Hill. Well, well, we have we have a new number to put into the percentile. This is his fourth interception of the year. Ball is really thrown into double coverage. The cornerback Allen had nobody to cover, so he went back just to help out. And Hill had to wait for it a long time. Coming into the game, he had thrown 62 consecutive passes without an interception. That was his fourth today, so that streak is broken. The one, the last one before this was the one run in by Darden for a touchdown in the Cleveland game, huh? Right. Bob Young is back out again, and George Collins is at offensive left yard for St. Louis. First and ten at their own 17. St. Louis leads Dallas six to three. Wayne Morris hit in the backfield by D.D. Lewis, and then he got some help from a lot of his friends. Bob Brunig, Benny Barnes converged on there. D.D. Lewis will come up and make the force, but these are good running backs. Anderson and, of course, Morris don't 
think he's too underrated. We've seen him get 180-something against Minnesota one day. But make sure tackles are don't come up at all. And, of course, he's playing in his hometown. That's right, the old SMU boy. He's a Mustang. He's got the fever, as they say, right? Mania. Mania, mania. I guess there's a difference. Second down, <laughs> seven to go. Tilly again comes in motion. And Otis Anderson heads up field and whirls for a Cardinal first down. Wow. He hurtled over two linebackers. Dede Lewis and Brunig went down low, and 32 just stepped over him like it was the high hurdles. Is this some running back? Anderson came in with 663 yards, a 4-7 average. Look at this. Leaps right by the two linebackers and is spinning as he goes down with Cliff Harris hanging on. Five carries, 44 yards for Otis Anderson. Maybe one of the best first-round choices of all time. In motion goes steep and back goes hard. Steps up into the pocket and throws. Went behind Benny Barnes. It was deflected by Thomas Henderson. Barnes was on the good coverage that time. Hey, Jimmy Hart proved that that support that he's got in the arch is working. He stepped up in and made a good movement in the in the pocket to get it off. Anderson's a little bit scary, though, for a, a rookie, Pat. He seems to know where the defensive players all are. He's looking for ways to make them miss him. You know, you mentioned before that he had that big day against Dallas opening day. Only two backs in the history of the Cowboys have ever had more than one 100-yard day against Dallas. Jim Brown and John David Crow. So that's pretty good company. Two pretty good country running backs there. Hart on a draw play to Morris. Brunig made the hit. He got about five yards. He had some help. Randy White. <laughs> Randy just stretched out a little clothesline across the top, and Morris ran right out from under it. Randy White is what they would call a consummate defensive tackle. If you had to get a prototype and carve one out, I think you'd make a Randy White. I think so. Right now, they've moved into left defensive end. You'll rush from the outside. Stalls comes into the middle. Mel Gray is back in the game. Quick healers. Hart goes back. Case. Taken down by Randy White. Now that's only Randy White's second sack of the year, but he's had about 35 hurry ups, and they're sometimes worse. He just comes right by the offensive right tackle, Big Bostick, the young rookie from Clemson. Maybe that change of position uh, liberates him a little bit, too. Well, it gives him a little bit more room to operate. There's nobody coming at him from the left anyway. But you can hear him running. <laughs> Jim Hart heard him. Steve Little, averaging just under 40 yards a kick, but very few of the punts by Steve Little are returned. He keeps him up there a long time. That one off the side of his foot a little bit. Butch Johnson fumbles it. And I don't know who got it yet. Dallas. Butch, in fairness to him, was looking into a bright sunshine, and the ball came out of the shadows and into the sunshine, and you know how difficult that can be sometimes. They want to hear 60,000 people sigh. Everybody really... This is a muff so far, and now the battle for control. Good teams seem to have the ball come right under them, though, don't they? I need to correct one thing. That was not Butch Johnson. It was Steve Wilson back there looking into that difficult sun. Perry Smith is number 45 for St. Louis coming off. Roger Staubach, the quarterback, at his own 29. Newhouse and Dorsett, the runners. Two tight end situation with Saldi and Dupree both into the game. Dorsett. Ken Green came up and hit him. And played it pretty well. Kenny Green had to take on the fullback, Newhouse, who really is a guard at about 225 and low. Good defensive play. Bears 7-3 over Minnesota first quarter score. Man, don't forget this team against the rush. The Cardinals uh, have been very stubborn. 121 yards rushing is all football teams have been averaging. See what Roger can do. Dorsett got three, so it's second and seven. Ken Stone knocked 
knocked him out of bounds. Roger snake Billy Joe right behind Kurt Alleman, number 50, the linebacker. Watch number 50 to the left of your screen, and suddenly you'll see 89 show up. He might have delayed about a count getting there. How a big man like that can disappear, I don't know. Well, the first quarter has disappeared. Whitehurst has thrown two interceptions. He's completed 12 of 17 for 161 yards. And Tampa Bay on their 20-yard line, first and 10. 14 to nothing in favor of the Bucks. Eckwood 43 and Bell 42 in the backs, and here's Bell. And Wingo tripped him up. turnovers and two interceptions both times the Packers have moved the ball their first series and in the last series ended with an interception those are the things that that really kill you you know you you can go you can have the greatest plans in the world and ideas and players and turnovers just seem to take so much out of you turnovers and missed kicks we've had that too both seven minutes to play in the third quarter Morris Owens is in motion and a Tampa Bay player moved as Ricky Bell carries outside and McCoy drives him out of bounds. But the penalty. Ricky Bell was up there in a double wing position and, and, and he was close enough. He really didn't have to move early, but he got a little anxious. He'd been running well today and he probably wanted to get a block for Eckwood like Eckwood has been doing for for him from time to time. What is it, Fred? Offense, number 43, illegal motion. Second down. Well, Eckwood on illegal motion, so it is second and nine at the 21. That was Eckwood up there. I, I thought it was Bell up there, but Eckwood was anxious to get started blocking that linebacker for Bell again. Second and nine at the 21 yard line. They haven't gone to Hagen's at all today. The leading receiver on this team. Eckwood bounces off a couple and clears the 25 yard line. So it'll be third and short yardage now for Tampa Bay. Jim Gano number 51 makes the uh, stop. So we've seen Tampa Bay normally a 3-4 team play a lot of 4-3 and Green Bay the other way around. It's just the opposite, right? Green Bay is a four-man line team, and they've been going to quite a bit of three-man line, and then Tampa Bay, in turn, has been giving Green Bay the four-man line, and I think that's good. I think mixture is good on defense also. Gano's been a good special teams performer, 51. Third and four at the 26. Williams, he's going to go to Hagen's here, and it's knocked down a fine defensive play by Estes Hood, number 38, who they've, they've been picking on him a little bit lately. Don't forget, he's come on to play for Buchanan, who was traded to San Diego. Good play there, as they had to wait for the ball to come down. Estes Hood did a nice job of being patient and waiting for the ball to come down. The ball was thrown short. Hagen's had to wait, stop, and come back. But Estes Hood also came back, got his right arm around, and was able to knock the ball down. Odom is deep at the 31-yard line. Blanchard will punt it away. End over end liner. And Odom, trying to pick up a head of steam, runs into a Tampa Bay defender at the 41-yard line. So we have now a scuffle on the field that's quelled in a hurry. Well, Green Bay has the ball not in bad field position when we return with 5.56 to go in the third. Hi, I'm Dave Jennings of the Giants. Teamwork is important in the NFL. Everyone has to work together in order to win. And quality education requires teamwork, too. Education that ensures everyone the chance to develop his or her abilities. Education, the cornerstone of our American way of life, requires the same teamwork for success. Learning takes place everywhere, in the school and in the community, all the time at all ages. Teachers and administrators may be the quarterbacks, but senior citizens, business and industry representatives, volunteers, students themselves, parents, all of us are key members of the education team. The leaders who will solve today's problems and tomorrow's challenges are in your school right now. Call your local school to find out how you can become an active member of the education team. Right, kids? Yeah! 
For more information, write Box 57020, Washington, D.C., 20037. The preceding announcement furnishes a public service by the National Football League. You're looking at Benny Malone, 27 years old, six years out of Arizona State, and he's the difference in the ball game. From 10 yards out on a handoff from Joe Theismann, he exploded up the middle and barreled his way into the end zone for the only touchdown of the game up to here. Ironically, Malone has the second poorest running average of any running back in the NFL. The fellow, believe it or not, who has run for less yardage, Chuck Foreman. M, M blocking, man for man blocking. One thing that uh, we'd like to correct, that fumble that Carmichael recovered was not for down, it was not in the two-minute drill. The rule does not apply. There's the kickoff now, and Hardiman taking it one yard in the end zone and bringing it out to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, and a good play to knock him down because he looked like he was on his way. It was Chesley who came up and submarined him, Al Chesley made a big play because he was also being blocked out at the time he made the tackle. Chesley's a rookie out of Pittsburgh. You know, the interesting thing the first half, the Eagles are minus three yards passing. Theismann, on the other hand, has had great protection and thrown the ball for 114 yards. That minus, Jaworski has passed for 33, but he's been sacked for 36. Theismann to the second man, Benny Malone, and he's hit by Hairston along with Tortolo, number 58. And those are the two who squeezed him and brought him down. Bill Berge, of course, no doubt watching this ball game, recovering yeah. from knee surgery. 58, Tortolo's replacing Berge, doing a good job. He did not overrun the play. He stays at home and makes the tackle. It's a little easier with a 3-4 alignment than with just one middle linebacker. Second and eight from the Redskins 22. It is seven to nothing Washington. McDaniel is wide left and Thompson right. Play action fake to Riggins. And Theismann now throws to Riggins, but they triple team him to the ground. Let's watch Lamaster, 55 in this play. An experienced linebacker is going to find job over the air. He reads past. He gets depth. And now inside out, they put the clamp on Riggins. Totolo, Lamaster, and Wilkes. All three linebackers coming up to nail him. There's a big down for both clubs. Third and six. The ball just shy of the Washington 25-yard line. Theismann off the hand of the intended receiver, Hardiman. He was guarded by Latimer. He was open, and Joe had time to throw. He just threw it behind him. He had a first down on that play. Mike Bragg will be coming into punt, and he has reason to kick as Joe Theismann goes out. Mike Bragg's wife presented him with bouncing twin girls Thursday. Oh, a couple of cheerleaders. Yeah, that how. So Bragg, out of Richmond, Standing back on his own nine-yard line, Wallace Henry all alone on the Eagle 40. And there's a brand new daddy waiting to kick it out. And Bragg hangs one off to the left. Henry going over to make the reception at the 32. And down he goes. No, he won't go until the 35. 4.6 hang time. The officials will have an ineligible man downfield, I believe, on that punt. That's what it's going to be. And there's John Shara talking to the officials. You know, Ben, they could call that so many times because even if a man is downfield six, seven inches, he's downfield. It's a judgment thing, and there's so many penalties, so many replays on the punting game as to whether he's downfield or he isn't downfield. I could see it happening earlier when Runniger faked as if he were going to run or pass. Yeah. That consumed. Here it was just a, a snap and a yeah. kick, and there was still somebody downfield, and he shouldn't have been there. Any delay, there's usually a man downfield. That rule does take the initiative away from a hungry player who wants yes. to get under the yeah. punch. It's, it's unnatural to t tell a man to be, don't go downfield, wait till the ball's kicked. Uh, speaking of uh, Richmond, I was in... Green County yesterday and had a great pig roast. And Mike Bragg is from that area. Illegal man down the field. 
Number 50. Wysocki. And Pete Wysocki, who made his first start today after eight and a half years in the league, so you can understand he wants to mix it up. He's he's a, an aggressive football player. He made his mark on special teams. So now it's fourth and 11, and the ball is on the Redskin 19-yard line. So Bragg will be standing on his five. And Henry moves up to his own 43-yard line. The snap and the kick. And as usual, Bragg really arrows one. Henry on his 31-yard line. And he goes dragging down as Wilkes hit him. And drop it. Monty Coleman, number 51 of Washington. You know, at the top of the show, we said it would be difficult for Henry to return the ball today the way Mike Bragg kicks. A look at Wally Henry as he goes walking off the field, and more than just a look. It deserves quite a bit of time with 60 minutes tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. California about to crack down on a doctor the state says is involved in what could be the biggest case of medical fraud ever, but the doctor's still practicing. How come? We watch 60 minutes tonight. First and 10 from the Eagle 40. Here goes Montgomery, and down he goes. And that has been the story, really, up to here. The inability of the Eagles to open up the door. Now, remember, Montgomery in three previous games against the Skins, and he looks like he's hurt himself. Montgomery has run for over 300 yards, scored seven touchdowns rushing and two touchdowns passing, all against Washington in three games, but that's history. It's what did you do lately, and Billy Canfield has had to come in for him. That's a blow if they lose him. Oh, with Jaworski on a bad ankle and Montgomery out with a bad ankle the Eagles can't get off the ground Jaworski under a rush Carl Lewis sacks him five sacks for Washington well, you see we have an opposite statistic here we have one quarterback Theismann having all day to throw we have Jaworski being pressurized and into a passing situation against a nickel defense or a dime defense where he is forced to throw. With Dave Butts and Carl Lorch really putting a one-two punch, and Lorch able to go in and make the fifth sack of the day. Jaworski, of course, has lost a great deal of maneuverability because he's playing on that bad wheel. Third and 17 from the 33. Smith inside 50 right, Carmichael left. And he's going down again, and it's Dave Butts this time. That's a half a dozen sacks well, today. There's no way he can find anybody open with the time element that he has to throw. Is that something? Six we, nothing in sacks. We once sacked uh, Gabriel when he was with the Eagles ten times. They have a chance to equal that. And the way A. Jaworski is unable to move and B. the way Philadelphia is unable to keep him out, he's been sacked for 51 yards. Fourth and 24 and Runniger kicking it down to the right side and it's going to bounce and go out of bounds inside the 40 yard line. They'll spot it at the 38. So Washington with good field position first and 10 on their own 38 yard line and Washington leading Philadelphia seven to nothing 11 16 in the third. It's a CBS Sports Special. Next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern, see the 1979 Turf Classic live. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Green Bay has played better in the second half. The interception stalled them, but their defense has certainly improved. And they're in the ball game, but they've got to get something going, get on the board. Trailing Tampa Bay 14 to nothing with just... Under six minutes to go in the third quarter. Andra Thompson, 89, flank to the left, and Lofton, 80 to the right. Play action pass on first down. Up the middle, Kaufman complete to the 41-yard line, and that's what you're talking about, John Madden. That's the thing that they have to do, is get that first down play, whether it's a run, a pass, or a play pass, get that going, make first down, make six or seven yards, Stay out of that second and third long as we as we watch the replay here where there was a good hook pattern by Kaufman in the middle. Let's take a look at Selman now at the line of scrimmage. You know, Stokes has been doing a good job against Selman. Of course, he gets some help. Sometimes we have two guys on him. But he's been doing a good job today against Leroy Selman. 20-yard play, first and 10. Simpson 
Off tackle, gets a couple of yards to the 40, maybe a yard, it'll be second and nine. So there we are back again to second and long yardage. Well, that'll happen sometimes, and I think, you know, sometimes you're gonna run on first down, sometimes drop back, sometimes play pass, but just the mixture is good. Just the fact that he did throw some on first down. Now Tampa can't sit there and think that every time they're in first down, Whitehurst is gonna run the ball. You always picked up at least seven on first down. Well, <laughs> one way or another, sometimes we lost 10. You know, sometimes we had that holding penalty. Randy I haven't Crowder. Seen one. Nope, that's right. We've, this has been a relatively penalty free game. Randy Crowder, 71, is in there. 4 3 defense for Tampa Bay. Second and nine at the 40. Whitehurst with a deep drop. And he flips it cross field, complete. Kaufman, the tight end again. Another first down for Green Bay at the 22. Kaufman again on a big play. He's made two big catches here. You know, again, many of the of the successful Packer uh, passing plays has been have been as a result of scrambles. We see Whitehurst scrambling here, but the Green Bay Packer receivers do an excellent job of scrambling the same time Whitehurst is scrambling and getting open as Kaufman did on that last play. Kaufman gets a breather, and John Thompson, the rookie tight end from Utah State, number 83 replaces him. 11 first downs for Green Bay following that 14 yard pickup. Landers for a couple. Scores around the National Football League and a game that a lot of people on our audience are watching. Chicago leading Minnesota seven to three. Both teams three and four and along with the pack tied for second place in the Central Division coming into this game. And of course we have our game right there. Tampa Bay 14, Green Bay nothing, but Green Bay has something going now and, and they're putting another drive together and they hope that they get something out of it. With Sonny Jurgensen, I'm Gary Bender. We open the second quarter play. Second and seven now for the Detroit Lions who trails seven to nothing. Rick Kane is now in at running back along with Horace King behind Gary Goldstein. He gives up to Horace King. And King across the 25 to the 26. Derlin Moore making the tackle. And I think the Lions feel they have to run the ball effectively because the Saints this year are 11th against the rush. And they're trying to establish that right now. There is Horace King. Last year may have been his best year in pro football. He was their second leading receiver, their second leading rusher. 660 yards on the ground. Third down, still three yards to go. Goldstein to throw. Pressure by Grooms, and Grooms has him for the second time. Elois Grooms with his second sack of the day. And for the year now, the Saints have 13, and Grooms with five of those. Tell you, I don't care who's playing quarterback, you've got to protect the guy back there. Jerry Goldstein is not getting time. Dorney was beaten. Grooms came in and Nerv just took the outside and pressured Goldstein and sacked him again. That's the Swider back to kick again. Motti will receive. The Saints could come away with good field position this time. Big rush. He got it underway, but a good rush put on that tie by Tinker Owens. The return by Motti, and Motti to the 44-yard line. Make it the 46-yard line. <laughs> they just keep running <laughs> back up the field. 37-yard kick that time. Out of the 13-45 mark of quarter two, the Saints with a 7 to nothing lead. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire at Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas. Cardinals had a pretty good first quarter. They have about 100 yards total offense. Hart is 4 for 10 for 37. And I don't know if uh, Roger Starbuck really has figured out that 34 defense the Cardinals have thrown at him yet. Sometimes that's such a change of pace that it's difficult to adjust to. First down, Dallas at the moment at the Cardinal 34. Starbuck has Newhouse and the man with the ball, Dorsett. Dorsett stumbles. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage by one of the Cardinal linebackers, number 59, Calvin Favron, who's playing extremely well. That's where the Cardinals have really been hit is defensively. They miss Carney a lot. They've just had about seven starters that have not been able to play, and 
in this league, if you don't have your 11 best at a time out there, especially against a team like Dallas, it gets to be long. By the way, that uh, Steve Little 51-yard field goal earlier, the first one he hit, ties the Cardinal record, which was set and held by Jim Bakken against Cleveland back in 1964. And beats your old record by, what, another yard? One yard, yeah. Well, what's a yard? Yeah. 36 inches, that's what it is. I think it is. Sawback looking for a screen pass and has it well set. Dorsett to the 20. Dorsett to the 15. First and 10, Dallas. A cowboy is down on the far side of the field, and now he's up. He's mad because he didn't make the block. Rafferty and Fitzgerald both went for the same defenseman. Now watch number 62. He's made the snap, takes care, tries to control Davis, and now they're slipping out. I'll tell you, for a 255-pounder, Fitzgerald really gets on the outside. A great block in the open field. That's some offensive line Dallas has. They call themselves four Irishmen and a Scot. That's right. It is Donovan, Fitzgerald, Rafferty, Cooper, and Herbert Scott. Fitzgerald says there are two kinds of people in the world, those that are Irish and those who wish they were. <laughs> Dorsett breaks a couple down inside the 10. I think locked him out of bounds, yes. There are a few big guards that are better than Rafferty, number 64 anymore, too. Watch the Penn Stater stay on his feet and actually let uh, Dorsett climb over his fanny and get into some open territory. There's an injured Cardinal over on the far side of the field, and boy, that's been an unfortunate but familiar sight of the Cardinals this year. They have really had a rash of injuries. A lot of teams around the NFL have been hit by injuries, but none harder than Bud Wilkinson's team. A 54-yard touchdown play, Peyton to Brian Bashnagel. And the kickoff taken by Edwards inside is 10. Edwards, good return out to the 35-yard line. Waldershy, number 23, made the tackle. Oakland leads the Jets 10-7 at the half. The Raiders are starting to come on a little bit. They're now 4-3 and three and lead this game after a kind of a slow start. So Minnesota, starting from their own 35 off Edwards return. 236 remaining here in the first period. Still playing against the wind. Let's see if they go to the air here now that they're behind. Ricky Young. Nowhere to go. Buckenstern, Hartenstein stack him up after a gain of two, maybe three yards. Attention, please. The Bears strung that out very well. The Vikings are having trouble getting around the horn on the end runs. Well, the rain uh, continues to fall, but uh, much more lightly than it did at the kickoff. And it must be blowing the other way because it's not coming in on us anymore. <laughs> and Kramer's uh, operating against about, what, a 20-mile-an-hour wind, would you say? The wind is truly the factor now. And, of course, it's killing temperatures in the 40s now. In motion comes Bob Tucker, the tight end. Kramer for Sammy White. Coverage by Schmidt. Good catch by Sammy White. First down, Vikings at the 45-yard line of Chicago. Let's take a look at the replay. As you see the fake of the hand up up the middle, there is number 54 heading for that deep zone, and Kramer just rolls out and throws it right on the dime to Sammy White, and the footing is very slippery over there. He comes down very close there with uh, the two feet. There's the, the wind may have died down. Maybe it's only 17 and a half miles per hour. <laughs> I'm White did a good job getting his other foot down. He knew he was right over the sideline, and he just tramped that second foot down to make it a completed pass. First down, Vikings. Foreman running hard off tackle right. Got about seven. Pulled down from behind by Doug Plank, number 46. We're going to give him about six on the play. Let's call it second and four, and Good hard running by Chuck Foreman. If he keeps playing this way, Ted Brown won't get off the bench. Foreman came into this game with only 167 yards rushing and 69 carries. Had his problems getting started this year. Cardinals continue to lead Dallas 6-3 first period. Second down, four to go, Vikings. Ricky Young. Flag down as Young went right behind his center Swilly and the left guard, Charles Goodrum. He also went right behind Chuck Foreman, number 44, who busted his way through the hole uh, before. 
but somebody is guilty of holding, and that's going to hurt the Vikings, put them back in their own territory. Young had the first down yardage. It's all for naught. They come back out near midfield to the 49-yard line of Chicago. Holding, number 68, offense, second down. Mm, Charles Goodrum got called for holding. Ron Yeri had three holding penalties last week, so I bet he's uh, going to be extra careful. But now the Vikings are in a throwing situation, second and about 14. No wonder that was such a good hole behind Goodrum. <laughs> <laughs> Out to the right goes Rashad. Wide left is Sammy White. Split backs. Foreman slipped. Foreman was through the hole, lost his balance. Got about four. Hartenstein forced him inside, but he just fell of his own volition. And Alan Page helped out there as he was inside and reached back with an arm to help trip him up. Let's watch Alan Page, and you'll see Hartenstein uh, below him. There's Page 82 coming in. Now he's blocked. And then now he's going to go down and get an arm down there and help trip up Foreman right there. He almost Gallia takes right. Page's arm with him. Yep, he got a hand on him for sure. Third down, 11 to go. of time. Oh. Open is white. Can't hold on. Slippery turf out there from this range and when he had to go back a stride to get that ball, he just lost his balance and lost the ball. Too bad for the Vikings because White had put on a good move as he has forced, forced the defenders down. He could put a good move on Virgil Livers there and was open. Just did not hang on to the ball. Fourth down, Vikings. Walterscheid is the deep man for the Chicago Bears standing at the 10-yard line. Greg Coleman will punt it, number eight, from the Viking 40. Coleman, real good athlete. Played for the Cleveland Browns. He can run, he can pass. Here they come. They got a good rush on him. A flag is down. It was a little too good. A short punt goes out of bounds at about the 33-yard line of Chicago. Coleman, who was flattened on Monday night by the New York Jets, gets it again. Wentford Gaines, number 36, flying in from outside in the attempt to block, made the contact with him. They had the rush. He'll come from the left side as Coleman puts his punt, leans a little bit towards that writes his right side and there he catches his foot and really Running clobbers into him. the kicker number 36 defense first down big play in this close football game time winding down first period here comes a rush up the middle no penetration there but just from the outside and actually Gaines had the right angle he came across in front but Coleman got that leg out there and uh, was able to get it hit and it's a first down for Minnesota Ted Brown, the rookie from North Carolina State, is in for the first time. In motion is White behind the ball. Brown, off right tackle. Got about five. Muckensturm, number 58, made the tackle. And the crowd applauding the appearance of Ted Brown. Brown, 183 yards rushing, a better than five yard average in his rookie season. Coming off a knee injury, he's missed the last two games. That will complete play here in the first quarter at Metropolitan Stadium with the score of the Chicago Bears 7, the Minnesota Vikings 3. Okay. Okay, let's check some scores at halftime. The Colts leading. Burt Jones back playing again. That's got to be a big lift for them. Miami, New England, what a battle that is. That's for a first surprise, place. too, isn't it? I never know what to think about New England and Minnesota, Chicago. That's always a bloodbath. You know how they get this score? Chicago, no. wall to Payton through a 53-yard pass. What a player. First down now from the 47 after that punt. A delay to Chuck Muncie. And Muncie to the 41-yard line. Chuck Muncie, he's been married this year, and they give a lot of credit to his wife for settling him down. His attitude's been the best it's ever been. First player to hit him is his own man. Watch this. He runs right into the back of him. Look out. Good draw play again. Coming into this game, Muncie was only 48 yards behind his entire output of last year rushing. So he's headed for a big year if he can avoid the injury, which has been a real bugaboo for him. Second down and four. Galbraith. Galbraith cuts back. A flag on the play. He's close to the first down. Doug English, 78, making the tackle for Detroit. Well, you got to have a little holding call here, I would imagine, don't you? 
Nice. So Ben Dry will okay. give us a preliminary indication. That's what it is. A holding call against New Orleans. Who is the culprit? You know, last year New Orleans had that offensive line completely decimated by injury. They lost Xanders and Dobler in the third game, but it's played very well this year. They've allowed only eight sacks. Offense, Offense. holding number 66. Guess who that is? <laughs> Conrad couldn't get his hands on him, huh? They were kidding Dobler the other day. He hasn't really been causing any waves. He's been playing very clean football. And he says, I may have to go back to my old style. Nobody remembers me well, anymore. You, you got to. He doesn't get any ink anymore. Second and 14 at the 49 of New Orleans. 293. 293. Archie Manning to Galbraith. Galbraith to the 50, and look at the footwork as he's to the 45-yard line. He just kind of tiptoed through that one. Back to the 45, and still going to bring up a long distance to go for that first down. About eight yards. Let's make it third and seven from the 45 of Detroit. There's Thank you. Galbraith. Looking at the team right now, the, the Saints is showing a lot of patience in running the football realizing that the Lions like to rush a passer and they keep going back and running the same play over and over the draw play Archie Manning is completing 58 percent of his passes and a little bit of trouble look at him get out of it would you up the field I guess intercepted picked up by James Hunter and Hunter's got it at the 20 yard line Manning throwing that ball a difficult pass at best and Hunter comes up with the interception, and that is his first interception of this year. And the 13th interception of Archie Manning. You can see why you like to run the football against this team. Great pass rushing team. Baker chasing Manning. He throws the ball back against the grain. Throws behind the receiver. Hunter picks it off. James Hunter, a number one draft pick, who's had a lot of leg trouble, but with the interception today. Tom Hicks continues at middle linebacker. Doug Buffon had started, but Hicks probably said, hey, I've recovered from the flu, guys. I, I want to get back in there. I feel great. Second and five, Vikings. They are at the Chicago Bears, 37-yard line. Brent McClanahan, they'll make it uh, Ted Brown, number 23. No gain on that play. It was Muckensturm again, number 58, making the tackle on the rookie. 23 is Ted Brown, 34 Ricky Young, the running backs now for the Vikings. In comes Bob Tucker with the play, out goes Voigt. And Gaines and Wallerscheid come in in the passing situation for the Bears. And as you can see, uh, Kramer completed 28 out of 48 passes last week, but he's had some interceptions, 12 interceptions this year. And here's a passing situation into a, a bear zone, obviously. One linebacker, Muckenster, and five defensive backs. The rush is on, he just gets it away, and it's incomplete. Another good hit on Rashad. This time it was Wentford Gaines with the pop. Rashad could not hold on. Here he comes, the Varishnikov of football down there, comes back, slips a little, but the ball was there before he got hit. That's two or three times that the Vikings have kind of juggled the ball just before they've been hit, and then they lose control, so they got to be more like glue. Keep that ball in there. Good play Shot by Gaines. Got seven passes against the Jets, but he dropped a couple that he normally wouldn't drop, and despite the hits, uh, Rashad usually holds on to those kind. Coleman's punt. Lands at the five, goes into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. And the Chicago Bears will start from their own 20-yard line when play resumes. 14.07 to go, first half, 7-3 to three Bears. Second and five at the Cardinal 10 for the Dallas Cowboys. Will they stick it on down, or will they try to throw this ball on second and, a half, second and five? I think they'll throw it. I think Roger will go. Tony Hills to the left and Mr. Pearson to the right. And he has Laidlaw and Dorsett as his running backs. All good receivers, by the way. He'll use Dorsett. And Dorsett gets none. Boy, talk about penetration. Roy Green the came under man. somebody. The safety man was on the line of scrimmage. Looks like the St. Louis computer wins this one. Watch where number 25 comes from to make this tackle. 
Yeah, I don't know. Still don't know where he, he looked like he was pulling with the offensive right came, guard. Came around <laughs> behind somebody. <laughs> Cardinals make some changes, and so do the Cowboys now. See, if he had listened to us, he would have thrown it. Be in good shape. Now he's got his receiving core in there, and now he calls a timeout. The core is confused. Dallas takes a timeout. So that'll mean they have two left in this half. It seems to me like Dallas is not really on all cylinders as far as concentration today. Do they seem like they're going through the motions a little bit? No, no question about it. They do not look as sharp as they did last Sunday night against Los Angeles. Of course, they have so many national telecasts that their hours are, they should get extra pay for Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night. Couple Sunday Saturday afternoon. games. Yeah. A couple of scrimmages on Friday morning, probably. CBS has a sports special coming away, the Turf Classic, next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Jack Whitaker, the host. And his usual supporting cast that do such an excellent job of reporting horse racing. And next Saturday would be something special. Roger Staubach over talking to Tom Landry. As you mentioned before, Tom Brookshire, he's 37 years old. Somebody asked him how much longer he wanted to play. And he said five more years because by the time I'm 42, Tom Landry has promised me he'll let me call my own play. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Tom Landry, he doesn't ever talk about retirement either, does he? <laughs> doesn't have to, as good as he looks. 14-13, New England has come back over Miami. And the Patriots lead by one. Sam Cunningham with a one-yard touchdown run for the Patriots. They are very much alive in AFC. That's a very key game. They were tied for first place going into that contest. Staubach does not shotgun it. Comes straight back. Cardinals blitz him. Billy Joe Dupree, a spectacular catch. Roger Staubach went down, and as you people might remember that saw the Rams game, Dallas really picks up a blitz beautifully. A lot of people try to put pressure on him. Watch Roger stand in there, and a great grab as Billy Joe, the old Michigan State basketball player, just plays with it until he gets control. Just a matter of him being about five inches taller than Ken Stone, who was trying to cover him man on man. Touchdown number four for Billy Joe. And a super individual effort. Raphael Septien with Danny White holding. It's 10 6, Dallas. Look at the touchdown catch by Dupree. You're behind Roger now. You can see the extra blocking and the big rush put on from the outside by number 38 and Roger stayed right in there. Nelson had a pretty good shot at him and that might be one of the best catches I've seen Billy Joe Dupree has. Wally Chambers taken off the field shaken up and Bill Collar number 77 replaces him and Randy Crowder 71 moves into nose tackle. They're playing 3-4 right now. Second and eight at the 24-yard line for the Packers. They're trailing 14 to nothing. Under a Thompson, 89 in motion. Whitehurst drills it. Dropped by Lofton. He had it and dropped it. Hit him right at the numbers at the 15-yard line. I tell you, they had, the Green Bay Packer line has been, has been doing a, a pretty good job of pass protection, which they did on that play. And that was as fine a throw as Dave Whitehurst could throw in that, in that thing. Just he zipped it right between three defenders, again, right into the numbers. New Orleans could be a threat in the Western Division. The Cardinals lead Dallas 6-3 to three after Dallas got on the board first. Three wide receivers again for the Packers, two of them to the left side. Five defensive backs. Curtis Jordan, 25, is in third and eight at the 24. Whitehurst going for Lofton, and it's knocked away by Jerris White. Fine defensive play by the cornerback, Jerris White, and it'll be fourth down. That was a fine play by Jerris White, as we're going to look at the play again. He was really in single cover coverage, and he was off relatively deep, but he was waiting for Lofton down there to make the cut, as we're going to see at the end here. You see, as Lofton drive, drives back, he drives back also. Pressure on Whitehurst here. He hasn't had too much of it today. 
No, he hasn't, and and the and the little pressure that he's got, he's been able to get away from. 45-yard attempt coming up from Marco, who missed one from 33 yards, and this kick is good. It just made it over the crossbar. Just made it, but it counts as three points nonetheless, and that should do a world of good for Chester Marco's confidence. A 42-yard field goal, his longest of the year. And he's now four for nine on the year. So the Packers are on the board finally with two minutes and 43 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It is 14 to three. Next Sunday on CBS, Dallas and Pittsburgh, a replay of the Super Bowl, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will go to Minnesota in another important NFC Central Division clash. An NFL doubleheader next week on CBS. Our audience very interested in the Green Bay Miami game at the Orange Bowl. And so far today, the Dolphins are leading New England. So Green Bay at Miami, Tampa Bay at Minnesota, the big games. Check your local listings for the time in your area. Now, some areas will not get two games because of the NFL blackout rule. And it will all be preceded with the NFL today, a half hour before the game in your area. 37 yards on six plays. Cap with Mark Cole's 42-yard field goal. So it's 14-3 to now, and Chester will kick it off. I think, you know, we talked about momentum earlier and, and moving up and down the field, but the important thing is getting a score when you have the momentum, and I think that was going to do very well for Chester Markle, as we see here, but I think it's, it's a lift for the whole Green Bay Packer team. 14 points, 14 to 3 isn't enough for Tampa at this point. Ragsdale at the 1. He's got excellent speed, and... He is brought down by Steve Wagner. Ragsdale has superb speed. They say Hagens and Ragsdale are the fastest on this Tampa Bay club. A 22-yard return by George. So it'll be first and 10 for the Bucs at the 25. Thus far in the second half, Green Bay's defense has been superlative. John. They have because they're starting to get some penetration now. Uh, early in the first half, or in the entire first half, really Tampa Bay had the line of scrimmage. There weren't any Green Bay Packer people in the backfield, but they're starting to get penetration this half. Eckwood is in a wing back. Morris Owens in motion. And the pitch to Ricky Bell. Eckwood blocking for Ricky Bell, but coming up strong is Wingo number 50, and he had help as well from Terry Jones number 63. And I'm, I'm really impressed with that Rich Wingo. He seems to make just about all the tackles from, from sideline to sideline as we see him move here. You know, he lines up deeper than most middle linebackers. He's back off the ball, and I think that gives him a better look at things. He's only a rookie player. You get back a little deeper, he sees, and then when he sees something, he goes and attacks it. Jim Gano, number 51, comes in as a fourth linebacker as Charles Johnson goes out. Second and seven, Davis the fullback is in there, and Eckwood carries for a couple of yards. And Wingo again makes the tackle. There's no question that Rich Wingo has made by far the most tackles on this Green Bay team today. You know, I've always believed that linebackers have to have instinct. And I don't think that's something you teach. I think that's something that they just have. Some players just have an instinct, a nose for a ball, or the feeling where it is. And those are the players that have to play linebackers. Tony Davis, number 27, is in the game. And Larry Mucker, number 87, at wide receiver. He's got good hands. Third and four. And they go to Giles, who can't hold it, but a penalty marker is down. The pass was intended for Jimmy Giles, who actually played for a while professional baseball in the Los Angeles Dodgers organization. I think we're going to see that Offensive. that pass was probably against Giles. It looked like he got downfield and pushed off on a on a linebacker there. <clears throat> if we look, we'll see if we can see it down here. But that was offensive pass interference. Now the 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 receiver. You see, we just saw the end of it where he looked like he may have have pushed just before that happened. The offensive player, of course, can't offend either. So it's fourth down, and Odom is at the 30-yard line, and Blanchard will kick again. They have 10 men at the line, the Packers do. And Gano moved. It is a high kick, penalty mark 
And Gano was offside. So that'll and be called back. Those are the kind of penalties that kill you. Instead of having the ball, now Tampa is going to have the ball. Tampa Bay gets the ball back again. It was a fourth and four, and it gives them a first down. Now, I really felt that really Green Bay was in pretty good position now because Tampa Bay only has 14 points, and I don't think that's enough yet. I think they're going to have to get some more. They're going to have to get some things going themselves, and they were going to be in good shape, and now they get an automatic or a free first down. And I'm sure... Defensive, left end, offside. It was Gano number First 51 down. who was at the left end, and uh, he is a very aggressive player, but right now he, he knows he's made a critical mistake. So instead of the Packers having the ball with 59 seconds to go in the third quarter, Tampa Bay maintains possession. First and 10 at the 36. Bell 42, Eckwood 43 of the setbacks. And the pitch goes to Ricky Bell. Doesn't get much, and Estes Hood drives him out of bounds. Tonight, 60 minutes on CBS, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. California about to crack down on a doctor that the state says is involved in what could be the biggest case of medical fraud ever, but the doctor is still practicing. How come? Find out tonight on 60 Minutes. The St. Louis Cardinals 10 and the Dallas Cowboys 6. Second and six at the 40-yard line. The clock stopped 54 seconds to go. Morris Owens, 85 to the bottom. Pitch goes to Jerry Eckwood, short of a first down by about a yard and a half. And Mike Butler, number 77, teams up with Rich Wingo to make the stop. Here's Mike Butler, who along with Ezra Johnson were the number one draft choices in 77 for the Packers. He's been bothered with an elbow injury. Johnson did not dress because of an ankle injury. Last year, Ezra and Butler combined for 32 sacks. This year, two sacks. That's right, and they miss Ezra. I think that one helps the other. They haven't gotten that pass rush. Third and two at the 44. Morris Owens in motion. Bell will not make it. And Johnny Gray, the free safety, forced the action. So it'll be fourth down. Nonetheless, Bell so far has 114 yards rushing today, and that's a career high for him. Well, the clock has run down. That is the end of the third quarter with the score 14 to 3 Tampa Bay. We now pause for a word from your local station. Well, Archie Manning upset with that interception prior to that, Sonny. He was 7 for 7. That was the first pass he had missed, and it went into the wrong people's hands. He didn't miss it. He completed it. Just the wrong color jersey. At the 20-yard line, the Lions with Goldstein at quarterback. Trying to set up a screen, but it's just not developing very well. Intended receiver, Dexter Bussey, but they just couldn't get that one set up, could they? That was a very poor acting job. The screen, it was more noticeable for everybody that it was going to be a screen. Watch, watch your Saints defensively. See, it's an acting job, and you see he's going back looking for the screen, but look at the defensive team. They get, they're going out playing the screen also. Ken Bordelon doing a pretty good job defending on that play. Well, he has quite a fan club here. They have banners all around this beautiful place to play. Bordelon became a starter in the third game, replacing Jim Merlo. Second and ten from the 20. A crossing action to Dexter Bussey, and Bussey close to the 25. Barry Bennett, second-year man out of Concordia College, which is located in Minnesota. Third-round draft pick of a year ago, and he's been a surprise for this team. There's Bowler DeLone, number 50, played at LSU, and Fetterspiel, the Iron Man on this team. Game after game, he's missed only one in his entire career, but he seems to be in on 14, 15, 16 tackles a game. Third down and five. Underrated middle linebacker. On a third and five. And the catch by Scott. Oh, it's intercepted by Chapman. It looked like Scott had it, and all of a sudden, as they went to the ground, coming away with it was Clarence Chapman with his first interception of the year. He stole the ball, exactly. He actually just took the ball away from Freddie Scott. Chapman with an excellent effort. The Saints have the football. Next Sunday, it's a CBS NFL doubleheader. 
check local listings for the games and times in your area. A super Sunday of football. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Steve Little has just kicked a 44-yard field goal to give the Cardinals a 6-3 lead over Dallas five minutes of the half in that game. If Washington could beat Philadelphia and the Cardinals upset Dallas, a three-way tie for first. That's what we've had. First and 10 on the 37. Theismann to Malone, and he runs into a crowd and gets back to maybe the 40-yard line. Well, Ben, the way the Eagle offense is stalled, it looks like it's up to the Eagle defense and the kicking game to give them field position to get back in this ball game. The Eagles have been thoroughly shut down by Washington. Not only the six sacks, they have been unable to let Wilbert Montgomery get some daylight and then just to add to Philadelphia's problems. Montgomery left limping, and as soon as we get further referred on him, we'll pass it along to you. Second and eight from the 39. Mike Forte carrying this time, and Forte gets out almost in midfield before they finally bring him down. Well, you see, the Redskins don't have to take chances. Their defense is playing so well, they can run the ball. Now, that was a tremendous second down call. They brought in Ike Forte, and they ran a draw. Second and nine. Good call. Eagles are playing pass. Frank LeMaster, the middle linebacker, number 55, made 12 solo tackles two weeks ago against Washington but they were able to move him on that play and when they moved LeMaster it meant four they could move so it's first and ten on the Washington 49. Forte deserves another carry and Wilkes and LeMaster stack him up right at midfield. Checking to see if there was a flag on the play. Meanwhile, there is Wilbert Montgomery, and they're working on his ankle. So the right ankle, unless he has his legs crossed, I think that's his right ankle. It is. The Guinness Book of Records does not have how much tape used in one game, but Jaworski and Montgomery have to be serious candidates. It'll be a penalty against Philadelphia. Yeah, they, they've been pushing back at each other, and usually the second guy gets caught. Here's the official word. A personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 46, first down. Herman Edwards put a slug on Danny Bugs, and the unnecessary roughness is called, so that moves it all the way to the Eagle 34. Started on the Redskin 37, and you see Wilbert Montgomery now testing the tape job to see if he's okay. He looks like he has spats on now. There's so much tape. First and 10 on the 34. Both backs going out. A pump by Theismann being chased by Johnson. Got by Wilkes and finally dragged down by Hairston inside the 30-yard line. And what a difference you know, in mobility. Yes. You know, Ben, uh, one of the things that Joe has improved on, when Joe first came up, in this type of situation, he would always run. Now he he'll pass over run. Here he does the right thing. Everybody's covered, and he picks up some valuable yards. But he's reached the stage in his career where he's thinking pass first and run second, and only run when the yardage is necessary. Second and five from the Eagle 29-yard line. Seven nothing Washington. Dysman pitching back to Ike Forte. And Forte picks up a couple. Randy Logan trying to come charging in as a free safety and Jeff Williams and Logan had quite a collision. Both men up and OK. Lamastro and Totolo wow. finally making the stop. Here comes 38 and 22 Harmon and Hardiman which usually equals pass. On a third and three from the Eagle 27. Theismann is 12 for 19 for 116 yards, but he's had two interceptions. One of the few negative notes for Washington today. But wide right, McDaniel left, and Theismann going left to McDaniel makes the catch, and it's a first down at the 20-yard line of Philadelphia. Well, Joe used McDaniel's height here. He was covered. Edwards had good position. Now, let's watch this. Joe loops the ball up. Watch McDaniel take it at its highest point. 
right up in there. Nice throw, safe throw. For McDaniel, interestingly enough, he was cut by Washington. Then they brought him back, and the quote was, he finally has his head together, which is a modern-day expression for Lord knows what. First and 10 on the 18. There goes Forte into a mob down to about the 15. Hairston and Johnson, among others. Speaking of McDaniel, he made a big play last week. The Redskins didn't score on it, but he broke, broke a tackle and uh, put the ball on about the three-yard line. We have seven minutes and 54 seconds left in the third quarter. Washington has surprised and outplayed Philadelphia up to here, seven to nothing. Two weeks ago, Philadelphia beat Washington easily, 28-17. Second and eight from the 16, and John Riggins must play inside the five-yard line. Well, that's sheer power. Here, here's Riggins running out of his favorite set, reverse pivot, man-for-man -man blocking, just running over people right Right at us, spinning for an extra yard or two. The best running game he's had this year was two weeks ago against Philadelphia. 115 yards, the only 100-yard game he's enjoyed. Last year, he had the highest single game total against Philadelphia, 97. So evidently, John loves to run against Philadelphia. First and goal from the four. Harmon on a wing. And it's Malone squirming for maybe a yard or two. Malone's a, a good inside slashing type of runner. They're using him very well in this situation. Straight ahead. Here comes Forty in and Malone out. So second and goal from the three. Washington started the drive on their own 37-yard line. A roughness penalty ate up a lot of yardage. That was a big help. And now they have a second and goal from the three. Harmon again goes on a wing. Forte and Riggins behind Thyssen. And it'll be John Riggins, but they hold him back. Tortolo, number 58, met the play head on, and behind him was Bernard Wilson, number 22. But Tortolo stacked it up. Then you weren't there last week. You were doing the World Series. But this is the same situation against Cleveland. They stacked up Riggins on the one-foot line. And then the Redskins came back with a field goal. A 10-yard pass from Roger Staubach to Billy Joe Dupree. And Dallas back on top 10-6. But we'll see now if Washington can avoid a Cleveland problem here. Third and goal on the one. And Dick Vermeil in that little circle watching his Eagles try and dig in. Riggins and Forte in motion is McDaniel. And Theismann on a keeper rolling. Touchdown. Dick Vermeil just turns and walks away in disgust. Well, there's there's the extra dimension that Joe uh, gives the Redskin offense. Runner, runner pass. He wants to pass, takes the ball to Forte, looking to throw. Everybody's covered. Now he uses his running ability. Goes in for the touchdown. Heads up play. Smart football. Dennis Harrison trying to cut him off at the pass, but Theismann able to beat him. And now Mark Mosley picks it up and through. He has picked 47 straight. Uh, I think he's the best thing. And they think so here in Washington. We have 525 left in the third quarter. Washington 14, Philadelphia nothing. Dallas drive for that touchdown, 70 yards, seven plays. They kept it four minutes and three seconds here. Septian kicking. Oh. That might be his best kickoff ever. Wow. Try that for distance, pal. That went out of the end zone over the white line. That's you know what Dallas does pretty 80 well? yards. And they eat that ball up. 35 minutes. They're the number one team holding the football. In civilian clothes, you just saw perhaps as we panned along the Dallas bench, John Dutton, who has not been activated yet. There he is. He's bigger without pads on than a lot of big people. Look, he's standing right in there next to young Thornton and those people. Well, look at Danny White next to him. Larry Bethea. A number one and number two next year sounds like a 
Tex Ram Gilbrandt, pretty good move to me. That is Theodos Brown, who's in the backfield for the Cardinals on that last carry. Randy White made the tackle, so they've got two rookies now in the Cardinal backfield. The Jets have gone back ahead of Oakland, 14 to 10. Richard Todd to Wesley Walker, young man who can catch it and lug it. He might be the most dangerous deep receiver anywhere. In Hart, screen pass to Theotis Brown. He's got two blockers out in front. Randy White chases, but Theotis Brown has the first down. Randy Hughes and Cliff Harris. Jim Hart picking himself up. Pretty good looking play. You want to see some different looks. Watch this. He'll fake the draw, try to hold it, make him think it's going to be a deep pass, and now slides it back out. Watch Collins, number 66, make a great block out there on Kyle, and he cuts off D.D. Lewis, too. St. Louis has a lot of talented people at the skilled positions. Be very careful with them. Banks and Collins both did a superb job of acting on that last screen pass. Most linemen are inclined to not hold their blocks quite long enough, and they give it away. Theodos Brown in the arms of Larry Cole. A lot of elbows being thrown out there. Let's talk a little bit about the Dutton maneuver. The Cowboys are noted for never giving up their ones and twos, but suddenly they thought it was a time to do it for an established great player, mm -hmm. a super player. So what do you think about it? Well, when you know how good he is or has been, and they, I'm certain, thoroughly checked his physical condition before they made that move, you got a proven player. I don't think it's a bad move at all. And when he's motivated, he can really play defensive end. Second and six. Mel Gray comes in motion behind Hart now. Takes over. Safety blitz, and you see Hart sidearm that <laughs> pass to get away from it. A little added pressure. You know, people, you're talking about Dallas giving up first-round draft choices. In the beginning, they did a lot of that. They gave up a first-round choice to get Eddie LeBaron. They gave up a first-round cho choice to get Bob Lilly. Another one for Ralph Neely. They traded Golden Richards and got in that draft choice a fellow named Tony Hill. That's not a bad trade there, either. No. Gray and Tilly split wide to the right. In the bright sunshine, Bob Young is back in the offensive line. Anderson and Theodos Brown, the running backs behind Hart. Tilly starts to stay in the block. Thomas Henderson bats it away from Anderson. Talk about a good-looking defensive unit. Cowboys that time, they double-covered every every deep receiver. Watch this move now. If your man doesn't come, you blitz. If your man comes, you go cover him. On this side, Aaron Mitchell was going ahead and blitzing. And on that side, well, I'll tell you, Henderson may look awfully easy. He said the, uh, the defense that they played in college when he was at Langston, they didn't know too much about sophistication that Dallas has. They called it 5-2 Sikkim. <laughs> They only won one game his senior year, didn't they? That's right. And that was the inter-squad contest. Yeah. Steve Wilson. Well, short punt this time. Wilson lets it bounce, and it takes a real cardinal bounce. Still down to the five-and-a-half yard line where the Cowboys will have almost 95 yards to move for another touchdown. What looked, looked like a not a very good kick by... Let's go back, Sonny, at that last play. You had an interesting point to make about this interception. I would think that because of the, the brace or the, the cast that uh, Fred Scott has on his arm, watch this. He goes up to catch a pass. He cannot put the ball away, and Chapman just steals the ball from him. And you can see the brace that uh, Freddie Scott has. I think that's one of the reasons he lost the football there. Clarence Chapman, he missed the first game of the year, had a severe ankle injury in the preseason. So the turnover gets the ball to the Saints at their own 43-yard line. Seven to nothing. The Saints of the lead. Both teams now with one interception. Manning to Muncie. Muncie to the 45-40 first down. Chuck Muncie to the 40-yard line. What a well-executed play this is. Watch your fake here. Watch Archie Manning. Very good at this. Hides the ball a little bit. Very simple play. Muncie just coming out of the backfield. Somebody went to sleep. I think they're taking advantage of James Harrell right there, who's been stuck into this lineup because of, because of Weaver's injury. Muncie this year gained about 13 pounds. He weighs in at 233 after weighing 220 the previous year, and he hasn't lost any quickness at all. 
An 18-yard pickup at the 40 of Detroit. Little problem on that one. Gets it to the 30, 45 to the 21-yard line. Did you see Galbraith fall down on that exchange? And still, Muncie came out of there. Doug Jones and James Harrell made the tackle. You're just looking at great athletic ability here. Some good blocking up front. He breaks some tackles. He breaks out of a tackle by English. Right there runs by Jimmy Allen. Doug Jones. James Harrell finally brings him down. Good piece of running. Looking back at that replay, it looks like Galbraith was going for that dive block, wasn't he? Got down there, and all of a sudden, Muncie goes 17 yards. First down at the 22. Galbraith. Galbraith inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. John Brooks, the rookie out of Clemson, a fourth-round draft pick. He was an excellent athlete. Played on that Clemson team, which produced so many football players into the NFL. That was a five-yard pickup. Dallas has jumped on top. Dallas has come back a little bit, trailing 16. Now they're up 10 to 6, huh? St. Louis 2 and 5. A lot of people feel they lose that. Their playoff hopes to go down the drain with it. We'd have to think so. New England's now leading Miami 14 to 13. That's in the third quarter. Second and five now from the 17-yard line. Galbraith cuts it back. Inside the 15, possibly the 14-yard line. That'll be short of the first down. Galbraith reading the holes and then trying to cut against the grain. That Dallas touchdown was a stall back to Billy Joe Dupree pass. What a year Starbuck is having. Third down, still two yards to go. How about this? The Jets. Boy, can the Jets run the football with that Kevin Long? Gaines. Oakland, though, has played very well the last three weeks. They're a surprising football team. Good football team. Third and two. They have Brooks Williams and Larry Hardy in now as the tight ends are in and jumping is Robert Woods. Number 65 firing off. And so instead of being third and two, they're going to have a third down now, seven yards to go. Wait a minute, Robert. you got to wait for the count before you can go in and block. Woods has been a surprise for this team. He got hurt in the preseason. He injured a knee, but they like him. He was a second-round draft pick of the Jets in 73. Tennessee State, huh? 6'4", 260. They have a lot of size up there. You have Dobler at 6'3", 255. Hill weighs in at 245. Third down now, seven yards to go. 9.20 to go till halftime. Chandler, Ike Harris, the wide receiver. Lions taking a blitz. Uh-oh. Galbraith moved on the play. Manning tried to salvage the play. Flags everywhere. But Tony Galbraith moved in the backfield. All that stunning and jumping around by the Lion defense it's caused the Saints to jump again. They're going to have another motion call here, I would think. Well, this could haunt the Saints. Dick Nolan, who... Had his team with a third and two, have a third and seven, and it may be even worse now. Maybe another five yards. It's something you have to you have to say. Now they're saying offside against Detroit. <laughs> but I did see Galbraith move. Let's see if we can pick it up. I'll tell you one thing. I'm 100% guessing wrong already. You see them jump off sides. No, they did not call him. And Archie again, very wisely. I don't think this was a play that was called. Showed a lot of football sense in taking the ball, and he picks up a first down. First down at the 12-yard line. <laughs> Manny to Muncie. Muncie to the 10. Two-yard pickup, and that's all. A lot of white jerseys that time reacting for the Detroit Lions. I'm going to get one of those penalties right soon before the day's over. <laughs> the Lions last year, interestingly enough, were with an identical record of one and six. And down the stretch, they finished six and three. They'd like to do the same thing this year and turn it around. What about this score? 14 to nothing, Washington beating Philadelphia. Philadelphia beat them two weeks ago, 28 to 17. Joe Theismann on a quarterback sneak put him up 14 zip now. Boy, that is a shocker. Suck it down and eight from the 10. Manning, Chandler intercepted. And coming away with it is Luther Bradley. 
two interceptions. So he tried to loop it over, and Luther Bradley picking off his first interception of the year. Chandler goes inside. Archie expected him to go outside, and you see the good position that Bradley has makes the interception. The third interception of this game with 8.27 to go to half. Joe Theismann has just scurried in for a touchdown. It is 14 to nothing Washington. And as George Allen said before the ball game got underway, it is so difficult for one professional team to beat another twice. And we have about 45 witnesses to that wearing Philadelphia uniform. 14 nothing Washington, 525 left in the third. Mark Mosley ready to kick off. Henry is deep. Jamona on his right. Campfield on his left. And it'll bounce at Jamona. And he's off to the races to the 25, to the 30, across the 30, and down he goes. He's the nephew of Dick Vermeil, John McDaniel, down there to make the tackle number 80. Then, speaking of Dick Vermeil, he has done an outstanding job, a great job with the Eagles. He's rebuilt this ball club. He didn't have many picks. He's got leadership. He's dedicated. He's a fine uh, family man. I just can't say enough good things about him. They do say he's a workaholic. He'll spend most of the night working to get ready. And we hope that doesn't take too much of a toll. And Leonard Tosa has supported him. Leonard Tosa has helped him in every way. Montgomery is back in there, so he's back to work. He tries to get around Wysocki. And while that battle's going on, Tony Peters decks him at the 35-yard line. But it was Pete Wysocki who jammed things up, number 50. Has... Uh, Carmichael caught a pass. His streak is in jeopardy. It's very much in jeopardy. He has not caught a pass. They've only thrown once or twice in his general direction. When you're 6'8", anything is in your general direction. There he is, Harold Carmichael, number 17. 103 consecutive games that started against Washington in 1972. He needs three catches today to move past John Gilliam in national history. Montgomery to Carmichael, to Lord. Throws it in the air to nobody. Well, he wanted to go deep. He was covered. The receiver was covered by Mark Murphy, 29. You look deep first. This is what we call a, a flea flicker, a gadget, a throwback. Worked pretty good up to that time, but nobody. That's bacon. Almost nobody got him. covered. Nobody uh, opened downfield. Now he dumps it off in. 17's area in Carmichael's area. After being sacked six times, they try a little flea flicker. <laughs> we once lost a ball game on that too, Kansas City beat us on a play like that. Third and eight on the Eagle 36. The worst under pressure throws it away. Joe Jones was coming in. Sizemore picked him up, well, but it was just enough pressure. He threw the ball retreating. When you're throwing the ball going backwards, you usually underthrow it, and that's what happened. He threw the ball into the ground. Harris had no chance to get it. Last uh, game, two weeks ago, Jaworski threw only 12 times and one handily. He has now thrown 12 times today, only three completions, but... He has completed for only 33 yards, and he's been sacked for 51. That's a minus 18. Runniger kicking. Hardeman is deep on his own 25, and Runniger drills it nicely. Hardeman making the reception at his own 17. Still on his feet, John Shara brought him down at the 30-yard line, number 21. So Washington will put it in play, first and 10. On their own 31-yard line, four minutes and 10 seconds left in the third. 14-0 Redskins. Randy Holloway has come in at right defensive end, number 75, replacing the 41-year-old veteran Jim Marshall. First down. Bears from their own 20. Payton squirts his way for about six yards, maybe seven. Backer Matt Blair, number 59, made the stop on him. Jim Marshall, I mean, that is incredible. 20 years in the National Football League. He's 41 years of age. I mean, it's just for him to be still playing is really remarkable. He's a starter on this team, just getting a little rest now. The old man gets a little relief from young Randy Holloway, second-year man from Pittsburgh. 
second and a little less than three for the Chicago Bears. Wow. <laughs> Duck White, number 72, bought that bark signal by Avellini. Did you see Noah Jackson? Uh, they may just call it against the Bears him. for pulling him over. And they do. Avellini unhappy with that. Sorry, Johnny. I was going to say, did you see Noah Jackson when the White made the contact? He fell back like he had been hit with a 200-pound, 2,000-pound truck, and he was barely touched. <laughs> well, he was we have a trying to get the call the other way. Quarterback. Avellini did such a great job with that signal calling, he got himself a penalty. Look at the right part of your screen. There it is. Oh, no, gosh, you hurt me. <laughs> they called it on the quarterback, Avellini. Second and eight. First down, out near the 35-yard line. Walter Payton, you know, this week in the Minnesota newspapers, Fred McNeil, fine linebacker of the Vikings, was quoted on playing against Walter Payton. He said, it's almost spiritual. He manages to play above the limits of the body. He's in a ballet out there. He awakens my senses just being on the same field with him. I think McNeil's in the wrong field. He should be a poet. I tell you, that's <laughs> excellent. Uh, that's that's lovely use of the language by McNeil. But he says, I still try to keep track of him out there. High formation for the Bears on first down from their own 35. Running hard, close to the first down yardage, Williams. Got at least nine, and we'll see where they spot it. Well, we've had some problems with your picture. And uh, at the moment, we don't see it either on our monitors, so we'll give you a radio description until our technicians get the picture back. We hope it's not gone long. It is just short of the first down at the 45-yard line of Chicago. Dave Williams hard running for a gain of about nine and a half. Second down. Put right is Scott. Left is Bashnagel. Williams ran into his own blocker, cuts back well. To the 50 over midfield. Down to the 40-yard line of Minnesota. Ran right into his blocker, Reeve Sori. But then cut it back the other way with some excellent running for a first down to the 40-yard line of Minnesota. Bobby Bryant forced him out there. Well, that really helps the Bears situation when the fullback can get some yards for you. Williams, uh, to, as a compliment to Walter Payton, that they use Payton, uh, everybody keys on him, and you get it to Williams, a man who can run, and you're going to get some yards. Williams got the call over Robin Earl this week because Earl has had trouble holding on to the ball. Out left comes Scott, wide right, Bashnagel. Williams has 38 yards rushing so far. Payton with 25. To give us to Payton, running to the right. Can't make the oh. turn, drop the ball. Vikings have it. It looked like James White caught that ball in midair as Peyton, trying to make the turn, was tackled, actually just hit, and the ball came right out of his hands into the arms of James Duck White. Vikings have a first down at their own 39-yard line. We have 12.25 remaining here in the first half. Minnesota will have first down from their own 40 following that fumble recovery, and we'll show it to you now. We've had some technical problems, but we are managed to get this one for you as Walter's carrying it with one hand out there, and it was Mullaney who forced the fumble, reached in and actually deliberately forced it, and there's the recovery in midair by White, and the Vikings have the ball, and here, Walter Payton, who once carried 189 times without fumbling in a row, and now he has, uh, I guess, three in the last two games. Outstanding show of athletic ability by... Duck White, the big defensive lineman, showing his agility and getting over there to pluck it out of mid in midair. It is Minnesota. First down. Play action and back the other way. Incomplete for Sammy White. Kramer really drilled that ball. Schmidt was there on the coverage just a hair late. White could not hold on to it. I would say that the Vikings have had five or six passes so far today that they could have caught. So that really hurts an offensive cause when you can't hang on to the football. White and Rashad, two normally reliable, in fact, superior receivers in this National Football League. Bears send in two extra defensive backs as Hicks goes out and Campbell goes out. 
second and ten. New England leading Miami 14 to 13 in the third period. What a ball game there. Kramer, ball was tipped. Looked like his arm was knocked as he released it, and that's incomplete. Good rush from the Bears. A uh, very good play by Kramer. Actually, he saw Muckensturm number 58 coming from his right side there, and he just got rid of the ball real quick because Muckensturm was coming on the blitz, and he just threw it and got out of trouble, prevented the sack. Third down. Play comes in with Stu Voigt. Washington leading Philadelphia 14 to nothing in the third period. It was a tough football team. Washington really having themselves a fine season, and Joe Theismann, one of the big reasons for it. Third down, slot formation right. Kramer has time. Incomplete intended for Rashad. And the Vikings having problems with the pass attack. Dropped passes. Some slippage on the part of receivers running routes on this wet turf and just uh, not a whole lot of success so far. Fourth down with 12-10 remaining here in the first half. Lenny Waldershide, the deep man. Coleman has the win behind him, gets a good kick away. Waldershide from his 20. To the 34-yard line. Jim Huff, number 51, reserve guard, made the tackle for the Vikings. The Bears will start first down from their own 34. Tom Blanchard with a good rush is punting to Odom, who forces and comes up at the 30-yard line. Odom to the 40, and Odom is brought down at the 46-yard line, and the tackle made by Billy Cesare, number 44. Scores around the league in the NFL, Washington. 14 to nothing over Philadelphia. Big battle between Dallas, Washington, and Philly in the East. Cincinnati over Cleveland, 14 to seven. The Browns have lost three in a row. Miami now trailing New England, 14 to 13. Sam Cunningham has scored in the third period on a one-yard touchdown run. Right here, it's 14 to three, Tampa Bay. The Packers have good field position following the 29-yard punt. Out of the eye formation for Green Bay. Thank David you. Whitehurst goes to Nate Simpson, and Simpson gets to midfield. So he gets about three and a half yards on the play. Tackle made by Richard Wood, number 54, who has led Tampa Bay in tackles for three years. He's a former New York Jet. Looks like Dave Whitehurst was talking to his offensive line there about some blocking assignment. I like to see that. I like to see the quarterbacks being totally involved in the game. Get involved with those offensive linemen. Gain of three, second and seven, midfield. Whitehurst flips it out once again to Simpson. He'll lose a yard. Knopfsiger, number 51, a free agent pickup. He's playing in place of Cecil Johnson as we look at the quarterback, David Whitehurst. This is a broken play. See, it's supposed to be to the right. He's waiting to pitch to the right. The backs go to the left, so he makes an option out of it. He held the ball nice. He didn't want to get hit like that. He's recovered nicely on two broken plays today, John. Well, we have an injured player on the field, and, and he sure has recovered. I mean, not only on, on that run, but also on the passes. He's done a nice job of recovering, scrambling, and finding something and getting it going. Andre Thompson, number 89, shaken up as he gets up. Now, how would you grade the quarterback so far in this game in a capsule summary? I like them both. I think that they've they've both done a fine job. I, I feel that Tampa Bay in this second half has to get something going because I don't think 14 points is enough to hold up. I think they've gotten a little conservative. I think they have to start opening up and throwing the ball a little more. And I like the way David Whitehurst has done it this second half. He's 15 for 21. Two wide receivers in there, third and seven. Five defensive backs for Tampa Bay. 3-3-5. Three, three, the pass is complete to the tight end, Kaufman, at the 35, and he has made three important receptions for the Packers this afternoon that we remember. That's right, and, and David Whitehurst will look for Kaufman on those situations. They go five defensive backs. They're really concentrating on the outside receivers, and Kaufman is able to work in the middle on the in route as he ran at that time or the, or the hook in the middle. Right now, Kaufman 
is the leading receiver on the season for the Packers as Whitehurst looks at a first and 10 at the Tampa Bay 35. Play action. Whitehurst. The pass incomplete under Thompson, who was shaken up before but recovered. Couldn't make that low grab. I tell you, he, he ran pretty. a fine pattern, though. You know, the thing that you have to do on this is you have to make that defender think he's going deep. You see how he did that, and he made him turn and run for the deep end, and then he cut back to the sideline. That was a, a great pattern. Bounced out of his hands, under Thompson. <clears throat> he hadn't been running those great patterns uh, so far this season, but uh, today he's been running them better, and that one was an example. Well, he's had some injuries, and that was as fine a pattern as I've seen run today. Second and 10, 35 yard line. Whitehurst. And that pass overthrown to uh, Nate Simpson and might have been intercepted because Tampa Bay had three defenders in the area. You know, it looks like David Whitehurst is having a little problem with his backs. I know that they've had a number of injuries and they have Simpson and Landers playing today. And it seems like they've had quite a few mix ups. And Backs going the wrong way on runs, and that pattern looked like that could have, in fact, been a mix-up. What causes these problems, mix-ups, broken plays? Not playing together, inexperience, not really getting in the flow of things together. Three wide receivers as Tullus, 87, comes in. Third and 10 at the 35. Packers in the opening moments trailing 14 to 3 of this fourth quarter. Pass. Might be complete to Tullis and they said that he was forced out of bounds it is a completed pass and a first down for Green Bay apparently he was up caught the ball and driven out of bounds and they rule it according to what we see as a completed pass Walter they're, Tullis they're marking it down there we're going to get another another shot of that but again this was another another comeback pass now you see if the receiver is in the air and he is knocked out by the impetus of the defender out of bounds, then that's a good play. And that's the way they did it. He was up in the air. He was up in the air inbounds. He was hit and knocked out of bounds. So that's a legal completion. And a good call. Mike Washington drove him out, but you're right. He was in the field of play and driven out. 14-yard pickup. A big first down for the Packers at the 21-yard line. The crowd booing. They may not understand the rule. They don't like it. Walt Landers gets nowhere, and Dewey Selman, number 58, comes up and makes the play. Selman, formerly a down lineman, moved to linebacker, and a very intelligent left inside linebacker for John McKay. Well, at the other end of that youngster with the earphones and the binoculars is his mom, who's watching the game right now. <laughs> Second and 10 at the 21. What do you think? You got any good plays? Uh-huh. Crowd still reacting to that call, and a good one by the officials. Second and 10 at the 21. Packers right now are in field goal range. And we have a, a whistle. Delay of the game, apparently. We have a delay of the game call against the Packers. They didn't get the play off in the 30 seconds allotted. That's another penalty that you hate to see. You know, you have 30 seconds and offense delay. Second down. So instead of second and 10, it's second and 15. That makes a whale of a difference. Well, and that'll happen sometimes when the plays are being called from the sideline, sometimes when you're changing from two running backs to th three wide receivers in these situation substitution. 11:37 remaining in the game as Tampa Bay counters with a fifth defensive back Curtis Jordan 25 and Dana Nafziger 51 is out second and 15. And we have another mix up number 68 great cook the right tackle move and it Looks like the Green Bay Packers uh, today, for the most part, have not been in sync, John. No, they want to get in there so bad, and I don't think it's... Number 78, second down. 
I don't think it's from not wanting to do it. I think it's from wanting too much. They get down there and they get so excited. They, you know, they move. They want to get a jump on that pass protection. You know, those tackles have a tough job. They're out there one on one on those defensive ends that are going to rush up the field and inside and outside. And sometimes they want to get an early start on it. As we see, Chicago 14, Minnesota 3 in the second period. And Tampa Bay travels to Bloomington to face the Vikings next week. Penalty was on Cook 68 and not 78 as you heard. Second and 20 at the 30 yard line. Whitehurst hemmed in. He dumps it off to Kaufman the tight end who's down at the 25 yard line. Tackle made by David Lewis who hung with him nicely. So it'll be third down and still long yardage. But the Packers nothing else want to give Mark Cole another chance to put more points up there because you said you don't think the 14 enough for Tampa no. Bay. I don't think the 14 enough and those threes add up and pretty soon they become nines and twelves and you get a seven and, a, you know, and you're up there to 20 points and I don't think the 14 points will hold up. Green Bay heavily penalized as you saw there this afternoon. Third and 15 at the 25. Tullus 87 Thompson 89 wide to the left and loft in number 80 to the right. He dumps it out to Landers. That's not the way to move the ball downfield. I have a hunch you would say that John Matt. Well that's right. You know it's the third time they've done that though. They they've gotten in that uh, three wide receiver spread them out over the field and then and then they threw the screen pass. I think once is fine maybe twice but uh, when, when you go three times that's dipping in the well maybe one too many times. And, uh, you know you think you'd like to get the ball downfield maybe get it in the end zone and get a seven point. This will be a 46 yard attempt for Chester Markle. 46 yard attempt he hit on 42 yards earlier. David Beverly is holding. The last one just made it. This one doesn't make it off to the right. It wasn't even close. And so the Packers who were driving and they had that five yard penalty for delay of the game and then the screen pass didn't work. So Tampa Bay takes over with 958 to go in the game and the lead. A lot of people smiling in Washington 14 to nothing Redskins and the skins put it in play first and 10 on their own 30 yard line. Thompson in a slot left inside Bugs. Malone is on a wing and John Riggins all alone and pays the price for being all alone as Johnson and company that hammer him down. Johnson played that perfectly. He played it like you want a nose man. He controlled the center. Kuzil got rid of him and made the tackle. Charlie Be beautiful. Johnson coming back off knee surgery the Watch end him. of last year. He's got Kuzil. Riggins cuts back. Beautiful. That's picture book defense. So second and ten on the Redskin 30. And we have 334 left in the third. Riggins staying in the block. Theisman has it bounced away from the intended receiver. And that's Gene Fugit, the tight end. Meanwhile, on the scoreboard, Cincinnati in the Battle of Ohio, leading Cleveland 14 to 7 in the third. Miami and New England look at that one 14 to 13 Pete Johnson carried in for the Cincinnati lead and New England now leading by one and you can see the Jets leading Oakland 14 10 in the third that last pass was a little bit behind Gene Fugit he should have had it but it was thrown behind him it was a delayed pattern underneath another possession type throw let's see if he goes to Danny Bucks He's third and ten. 326 left in the third quarter 14 nothing Washington. Harmon and Hardeman in the backfield. Heisman with Humphrey around him, but he got away. And he will be dragged down at the last minute by Ken Clark, number 71, after Humphrey put all the pressure on him. And then Hairston came in to make sure he stayed down. This is the first real good rush that the Eagles have had. Humphrey was in there. Here comes Clark to get him. And then there's Hairston. This is what the Eagles need to get back in this game. A big play, punt return, something to get that offense field position. Fourth and 31. The ball is on the Redskin nine. Wally Henry is back at midfield. Mike Bragg has to root it out of the end zone. 
Good snap. The Eagles are coming, and he got it away. Henry retreating, fair catch at the 45. We well, can take another look at the Eagles. Boy, they watch the ball the go through Mike's hands into his body. He still got it off. He, he felt the rush. He's only had two blocked in seven years. Well, in fairness to these receivers, particularly the Vikings have been dropping the ball. It is raw, it is windy, and it is wet. Straight ahead is Dave Williams. Running hard for the Bears. Looks to have the first down yardage. Dave Williams from Colorado. After the injuries to Harper and Skabinski. Little fumble for Robin Earl. Williams getting the call, and he's going to be tough to dislodge the way he's running, Johnny. Yes, they've been talking about getting an added dimension for the Bears. Maybe that added dimension will be the other running back. And uh, rather than the passing game, we'll see. First down, Bears at their own 45. Avalini to throw. Incomplete intended for James Scott. He was well covered there by Bobby Bryant and the linebacker Blair ranging back to help out. There's the man that the Chicago Bears would like to reestablish as a threat, James Scott, who has caught only three passes in the last three games, and he is an excellent deep receiver. And this has been the big problem. The Bears trying to establish some kind of a passing game. The Vikings trying to establish some kind of a running game. Ricky Watts is in at wide receiver, bringing in the play for Chicago, the rookie from Tulsa. He goes wide to the right. Bashnagel in the slot right. Peyton breaks oh. the tackle. Peyton all the way down inside the 35-yard line of Minnesota. Just dropped that shoulder and ran through a man on the corner. You talk about punishing the defenders. Watch Peyton there on this draw. Good block by Reeby Sorry. He slips out here. Watch Matt Blair, 59, right here. He doesn't even know where he is as he spins around, and Peyton just turns it on. Finally, Turner gets over there to push him, grab a hold of him, slow him down so that you get the pursuit, and finally, McNeil makes the tackle. Great individual running by Walter Peyton with some good blocking by the interior of the line at the line of scrimmage. That was Jeff Seaman that he just popped with his shoulder to get loose. First down, Chicago. Peyton again. Duck White thought he had him. Instead, five yards later, he's down inside the 30. Matt Blair, the linebacker, came back to get him with help from the corner, Turner. Cincinnati leading Cleveland 14 to 7. Third quarter of that game. Pete Johnson just scored for the Bengals. Second and five, Chicago. Williams, good hole. Batters his way inside the 25-yard line, has another Bears first down. Kurt Knopf, the safety playing in Krause's spot, made the tackle. Holloway came back to help out, number 75. Good hole behind Noah Jackson and Ted Albrecht. And there's the black block by Noah Jackson. As you see, Walter Payton has to come through there, right through the middle of the line, even when he doesn't carry. Bears on the move. They lead it 7-3, to three, and they've got a drive going here. Into scoring territory at the 24. First down. High formation. Williams the lead back. Long count from Avellini. Motion on the Bears line, and they wanted Peyton to throw again. But the flags and the whistle came before the play could get underway. One of those uh, interior linemen of the Bears got off a little early. I think it was Reeve Sorry, the right guard, moved a little bit too soon. Maybe somebody else uh, along with Sorry, but that puts the Bears Fast into start, a different situation. Number 69 offense. Sorry it okay. is, and Sorry he is. Sorry is Sorry. First and 15. Those end runs should really be opening up. They've had some success now with those pitches to Peyton since he threw, threw that pass. They'll looked be... like he was ready to throw again, Johnny. He had that ball up like he was going to throw the ball. And whether they come right back with that play, having uh, made it so visible, we'll see. No, they don't. Instead, it's a draw. Peyton batters his way back for about five, maybe six yards near the original line of scrimmage where James White, number 72, puts the stop on him. Also was there. Uh, also there was Matt Blair, number 59. 
He is so strong, he gets those extra yardage, and a part of Peyton's success develops over the years. He's so hard to get a hold of and bring down that tacklers sometimes become tentative. They want to make sure they get a hold of him, which makes them a little bit less aggressive, and he gets the extra yards and gets away from it. And I think that's one reason he doesn't take as much punishment sometimes as you might think he does, because the tacklers are reaching and grabbing to make sure of a tackle. Slot left for the Bears, Bash Nagel in it, Scott wide left. Second and about 12, Avellini complete to the tight end, Cobb. Cobb to the five, knocked out of bounds at the four yard line. Kurt Knopf, number 25, took both Cobb and one of the officials out downfield. And the official getting up slowly, but he is apparently all right. And the tight end comes all the way across. You saw, saw him shoot across the screen, all the way to the other side of the field, was wide open, almost got into the touchdown, but is finally brought down by Knopf. Michael Cobb, who's had some problems hanging onto the ball, he hung onto that one, and the Bears have a chance to take a big lead. That's only his second reception of the season, Mike Cobb. And that line judge who uh, took the hit down there was Leo Miles, number three. He's up and all right. We're happy to report the Bears inside the five. First down. Williams stacked up, got maybe a yard. Holloway, number 75, slicing in from right end, getting help in the middle from everybody piling up low. And there they are, piling up low. And this is where the Vikings are their strongest. They had a great goal line stand, Tim, as you know, from last week against the Jets. And yes, a lot of it is because uh, Matt Blair and those linebackers get off the line of scrimmage a little bit and can time it when the back comes to the line. So the Bears may be aware of that, and they may try and cross them up and go more off tackle or to the, to the end run. Second and goal, the ball at the four. Split backs, Williams on the left, Peyton on the right. Double tight end, and the man on the wing as well to block. Peyton in motion, Williams. Got a couple. Jeff Seaman, number 50, put the hit on him at about the two-yard line. That'll bring up third down. The Vikings crowd here at Bloomington getting behind their defense. With Peyton in motion to the outside, becoming a wingback, they went with Williams, and he got a couple yards. So now we're down to the key situation, a little over the two-yard line, and it'll be third down and two. What do you call here? Bashnagel brought the play in. Let's see what they call. I gotta like Peyton wide, that's my <laughs> guess. I gotta like Peyton, period, because <laughs> everybody does. Rolling look at, this, look at this. Trying to find an open man, touchdown! Walter Peyton becomes the pass receiver and has figured in both of the scoring plays, passing and catching. And how about this, Avellini coming out on the option and he looked and looked and looked and then a great adjustment to Walter Payton, who I don't believe was the intended initial receiver. As you see, Noah Jackson out there throws a good block for Avellini to give him time to throw the ball and there was the alert Payton into the end zone for the touchdown and Chicago leads. Good blocking for Avellini out there too. And he was especially sharp on that play. Thomas with the point after. Really nails it. And the Chicago Bears with 7.08 now remaining here in the first half at Bloomington. Lead the Vikings 14-3. to They've got a long way to go. Well, the Detroit Lions hanging on. They've picked off two of Archie Manning's passes when it looked like they're in real difficulty. They're still looking for their initial first down of the game. They haven't been past their own 33-yard line. They've got to be encouraged here because they're still in the football game. Goldstein off to Dexter Bussey and Bussey out to the 24-yard line. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Manning threw five interceptions in a game against the Los Angeles Rams, two today. And I'm sure he was very unhappy about that last one. Four-yard pickup, second and six. Interestingly enough, both of the interceptions by Detroit were by players that hadn't intercepted one all year long. Bradley and also Hunter. From the 24. Goldstein. Gives off to Bussy again. He has a first down. All the way out to the 35 to the 38-yard line. And that is the initial first down of the game for the well, Detroit Lions. Well conceived play that time. Take a look at it. You'll see it's kind of a misdirection play. He gets good blocking this time. And he comes out, makes a good cutback right here. He's cutting back against the green a little bit. Cuts back from Chapman and Myers. Picks up a first down. 15 yards. 
Last year, Bussey gained 924 yards, second highest ever in Lion history. And you see what he did against the Saints in 77. The only other man that went further was Steve Owens. The year he went over 1,000 yards. Back to throw Goldstein, a little short. And the man Washington. in his face that time, Gary, again, a Lois Grooms right in Jerry Goldstein's face. Makes him throw the ball before he's ready to throw the football. Take a look at it. You see, going outside again, beats Dorney. Little quick move, and you see Goldstein had to throw the ball. He didn't want to throw it then, had to. You know, Dorney, to give him all the credit in the world, they think he's going to be a great one, but he's having his hands full today, <laughs> isn't he? You're right. Big guy, 6'5", 265, number one draft pick out of Penn State. Goldstein on a second and ten. And it's intercepted. Ray Brown, and again, we have another turnover in this football game, the fourth interception of the day. Ray Brown's first interception of 1979. That's the man they feel. I don't think David Hill was expecting this throw. He kind of goes down. He comes back up, and Brown takes the interception. You believe that? We've had four interceptions in the second quarter of play. Hunter, Chapman, Bradley, and now Brown. And so that will set it up with the 47-yard line of Detroit. Monday night on CBS starts with it's the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown, then it's Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids Halloween special, followed by MASH and WKRP in Cincinnati. And Ed Asner stars as Lou Grant, all on CBS Monday night. All right. Ike Harris in motion, Chuck Muncie. Muncie stays on his feet inside the 45 to the 43. You got a team that's three and four and one that is one and six. Well, and you that's know the Detroit reason. came in here with 21 turns. Mike Strawn has replaced him. There's Galbraith again moving around in that backfield. Second down and six. Here is Galbraith. Nothing doing. Good reaction that time by Detroit. Bubba Baker, number 60. It's going to bring up 10 yards to go. Doug English also in on the stop. Boy, Cleveland Elam and Conrad Dober really going at each other up front. Well, what a slugging contest that is. There's the stats on Manning, those two big interceptions. Loss of two. It'll be third down now. Eight yards to go. Almost nine. Coming in now is Walt Williams defensively for the Lions. They get five defensive backs in. On a third and eight, Manning setting up in a hurry. Pressure by English. Gets it off to Galbert with the first down. Galbert to the 25, to the 20. Giving ground to the 15-yard line. Archie Manning was hit as he released the ball by Doug English, but he found his man for the first down. Boy, he did. He came wide open on a crossing pattern coming out of the backfield. That's the second time they've thrown this. Watch Manning as he throws the football under pressure, just gets it off. But you see, Garbeth is wide open and goes down the sideline. Ed O'Neill chasing him, can't quite get a hand on him, cuts back. Big play for the Saints. 30 yard pickup to the 15 yard line. Galbraith last year was 74 catches. game for 101 yards of delay to Muncie who's back in look at that cut to the 10 yard line roars his head and he's to the eight boy what footwork that time by Chuck Muncie outstanding football player hard to coach this this is just good athletic ability cutting back the way he does good run puts a lot of pressure on that defensive team Second down, they still have three yards to go to get a first and goal just outside the five-yard line. They've moved the football every time they've had it, Gary. The only people who stopped them have been themselves. The two big interceptions. There's now Chandler and Ike Harris go out, flanked left and right. Muncie, Galbraith, the running backs behind number eight, Archie Manning. Three, 59 to go till halftime. Galbraith up the middle to the five. And that should be a first and goal. William Gay making the tackle for Detroit. First and goal for New Orleans. That's the 30-second clock, you see, between the uprights of the goalpost. 
They have to get the ball snapped before that time eclipses. In the third quarter, the Cincinnati Bengals are leading the Cleveland Browns 14 to seven. First and goal at the five. Three, 22 remaining in this game. And it's a seven to nothing football game in favor of the Saints. He scored back in the first quarter on a 24 yard touchdown pass from Manning to Chandler. Galbert. Good reaction that time. Well, fine play defensively by the Lions that time. Luther Bradley, in particular, number 27, was over there. Got an assist from Jimmy Allen. And it's going to be second and goal. They lost a yard. Back out to the six. They did. Good play defensively. Good hustle. Well, the Detroit Lions have denied him twice down there. They're going to try to do it again as Manning brings him out on a second and goal from the six. Last week, the Lions took the opening kickoff, drove the length of the field, and then had the drive end inside the one-yard line. Here is a play action. Manning rolling out. Got to try to take it in, and he just gets to the three, and that's all. Jimmy Allen again over there. So it's third and goal. Well, you got to give that line defense a lot of credit. They strung the play out, really played it well, had the people covered, forced Manning into running the football. Doug Jones, number 46, a former Buffalo Bill and Kansas City Chief was in on that tackle. And now just outside the three. And there's your time, the two-minute warning. So the two-minute warning here at the Louisiana Superdome. The Saints with a 7-0 lead, and they like to build on it. We'll be back in just a moment. Pat Summerall of Tom Brookshire at Texas Stadium in Dallas. Look at this score. Joe Theismann just scooted in from one yard out, and the Redskins are anything but dead. 14-0 they lead. They weren't that far off the pace either going in. They could tie the Eagles if they can win. Their record was 5-2. Philadelphia, of course, tied with Dallas at 6-1. Cowboys lead here 10-6. Drew Pearson comes in motion. Dorsett slants up the middle for two or three, but he's hit very quickly. This time by Alderman. Good Alderman's playing extremely well in there, having to call the defensive signals. Tommy Bettis signals out on the field, the defensive stuff. And, of course, Rogers always looking to that Dallas side where Coach Landry has his hookup upstairs. Mr. Oh, Ermel Allen and people, huh? And... Fullback Scott Laidlaw and Robert Newhouse are bringing in the plays. Keeps them lean. They like it. Second and eight. At the eight. Pitch back to Laidlaw with Dorsett blocking out in front. Laidlaw gets coupled, but no more. Cardinal defensive units playing tough. Eric Williams led that charge. This time the left guard stands up like they're going to go straight ahead and sort of a delayed outside toss off this. Laidlaw, the young man from Stafford, really doesn't have anywhere to go. And you're right, they're trying to put a tough defensive series on and then maybe block a punt or at least get good field position. And the kicking game is becoming very important in this league. A lot of evidence that that's true right here. Two field goals for St. Louis, one for Dallas already. And that big punt by Little. Here is Staubach operating out of the shotgun with Pearson back there with him. Back in his own end zone. Uh, up by Jay Saldi. And Saldi has a first down Dallas. Perry Smith on the coverage. And Watt Jankowski, number 78, come and put the rush on Roger. Go right over the blocker. And Roger stands right in there and throws the completion and then goes down. Let's see if it's 76 or 78. It might be Charlie Davis that gets there. Whoever it was, he got made good contact with Roger. Preston Pearson got a good block on Mike Dawson. Rare that he's kept in the block. At that time he was. Ball is all the way out to the 20 where Dallas has a first and 10. They lead 10-6. Door set back against the grain. Breaks out of the pack. He got about six yards, five perhaps on that play. Roy Green, the tackler. Must 
be something that they dug out of the movies. I'm talking about Irmel Allen and people like that for Dallas. That's the original play, the first play that Dorsett ducked out and made the big gainer on. And there's something they picked up where somebody overcompensates, either the nose man, and they were looking for it to happen. That time it just didn't quite come off. You look at a play like that develop, and I'm sure you're right about them figuring it. But there are very few backs who could make that maneuver. <laughs> Second and five. And Drew Pearson will come out of what looked like a short punt formation in motion. So back with good protection this time. Has Tony Hill and has it. Tony Hill does a little... Pretty good play. Roger fakes it. Dorsett does not set up the block really seriously. Roger has time, and this is the six pattern all the way across. And what does he have on his license plate? I think Hill has dial 80. And I'll be there. <laughs> he is some kind of a receiver. He goes out. Tony Hill does, and he is replaced by Jay Saldi, who lines up right behind the other tight end Billy Joe Dupree. You saw the sign Cowboys looking good. We hope that's what CBS looks like. Fumble. But I think Newhouse might have been down. Yes. Keith Simmons was the first to hit him. Pretty good looking drive considering that little punt bounced deep into the territory. Some teams would have been content just to run one first down and then punt it back out and play even in the middle of the field. Not the Cowboys. They figured well, we've got to go 93 for this one. You saw Newhouse go out. That means that Laidlaw is in the backfield now with Dorsett. Six out of nine for Roger Stalbach. 97 yards. Touchdown pass to Billy Joe Dupree. Rafferty in front of Dorsett, but he never got a chance to use that block. Keith Simmons, number 70. And the red was the first one to take him down and good defense. St. Louis is really attacking from the defensive spot. They're coming off the ball and penetrating, which is sometimes dangerous, but always exciting. And for the Cardinals, they can they continue to just rip and hit, don't they? Nothing they must, easy. They must have made enough of a defensive change to confuse somebody because nobody even touched Simmons as he came off the ball. And he was on Dorset quickly. Tony D, 10 carries. Coming off uh, three games in a row of 100 yards plus. Ron Springs and Preston Pearson. Now in with Roger Staubach shotgun formation. Cardinals fake a blitz. some pass protection that time against the nickel defense Roger had time to dribble the ball three times take a jump shot and then pass it excellent pass blocking look at Rafferty 64 and Cooper 61 there's Pearson helping him out now it's under control and Butch makes his third catch of the year looks like he's healthy again some player will you ever forget the catch he makes in the Super Bowl against Denver that's the one that really broke it open First down, Dallas at the Cardinal 30. They lead 10-6. Newhouse and Dorsett, the backfield tandem. Dorsett tried to cut back, tried to spin back to the other side. Mike Dawson cut him off. You talk about what a good year Starbuck is having, and he is, but you take a look at the receiving core he's got. Hill, Pearson, Pearson, Johnson, Dupree, Saldi, and they're fresh. I looked at the injury report the league puts out. Dallas Cowboys, no injuries to report. That's frightening. They have a third tight end that they think very highly of named Cosby. It rarely gets into any action except on special teams. Go back to Dupree. It again. He's hit by Carl Allen and knocked loose. I'll tell you what, they Billy Joe wants them all. He almost made this catch. I don't know how. Here he blocks, checks through, actually goes through the offensive line. Talk about battling for a five yarder. Look how many times he does it before Allen shocks him and knocks him out from underneath it. 
52nd consecutive game for a tight end. Tampa Bay 14, Green Bay 3. Here now in the fourth quarter. Marco, a 42-yard field goal. Preston Pearson, Ron Springs. Stall back in the shotgun. Comes out of the shotgun. but Starbuck might have struggled to that first down. The former Navy quarterback wanted to hit Butch Johnson, but he's covered. This is the one thing that Tom Landry says he doesn't like, that Roger still thinks he can run with it. Who is that? I think Dawson chasing him, right? right? What an effort. What an effort. as he stumbled it was what did it and that can only be done by a fine athlete first down Cowboys. new house on a misdirection spins he's hit by Alderman right they pull like they were going to sweep to the right with a misdirection and sort of run behind it and again uh, Newhouse comes out of that sun kind of like one of the sunspots you might not even see until he's already on you. The Cardinals are tough against that run. Buffalo Bills have tied Baltimore 7-7. Joe Ferguson, a 21-yard TD pass to Brown. Chuck Knox is still building. And he'll get it done. Second, they need eight. Laid long to about the 10. And it's Alleman, number 50. Two teams trying to find themselves. The Bears and the Minnesota Vikings. The Bears lead it 14 to 3. Bob Avellini with a two yard touchdown pass to Walter Payton. Cowboys face a third and six, and they have their receiving core in now. Dorsett goes out. Wide to the left comes Butch Johnson. Wide right, Drew Pearson. And the rest of the ones that can catch it. Drew Pearson hasn't caught a pass yet, has he? Not yet. for Tony Hill and catch number 31. Roger straight drop back both receivers running the deep sideline into the end zone. Boy he just ran by Lee Nelson who was the up back supposed to take the inside away. Where did Roger Worley go? I didn't see the cornerback. He must have been man to man on somebody else. They had five receivers. Operating on that pattern. Raphael Septien with Danny White holding. Cowboys lead the Cardinals 16 6. Change that to 17. And the touchdown again. You're from behind the St. Louis defense. Remember, you don't have much time to put pressure on. So now Rogers throwing dummy scrimmage stuff. Tony makes sure he gets three feet down. Whitehurst and Zeke on the sideline, John. I think Whitehurst has really done a fine job, and I think he and Zeke are talking about what they want to do next time. Once something's over, it's too late to talk about. First and 10 at the 28-yard line for Tampa Bay. Second back through is Ricky Bell, number 42, who has gained 113 yards. Before that play, Robert Barber, number 70, makes the stop. Ricky Bell, 21 rushes for 113 yards, and I'm sure his running back coach, George Chomp, who's not here today, will be very happy with Ricky's performance. George had a gallbladder operation. He's out. He's watching the game on television. We all send him our best. Second and five at the 33. Doug Williams had a fine afternoon in his own right. Engineer two scoring drives. Bell again 
changes direction nicely and goes outside and is out of bounds short of midfield. Mike McCoy drove him there, but that's why you get a talent like that, a brilliant running back from USC, who has the ability like OJ did to make that kind of a move. He sure did. You know, some of the times he would start up, cut back to the other side. This time, he started up and bounced out to the wide side. We'll see him here. Watch John McKay. John, you got to take him on with your left shoulder. John just stands there and takes a little. Oops, there he goes. John can't take too many of those hits. 11 yard pickup, first and 10 at the 44 yard line. Tampa Bay used up almost eight minutes in a first half drive. Morris Owens in motion, first back through Johnny Davis, and he is stopped head up. Charles Johnson and Mike Douglas were there. Davis, second year out of Alabama, and as John said earlier, has a bright future with this club, and you'll probably see him more and more, although it's been an Eckwood Bell season running up to this point. That's right, and someday it's going to be a Davis. I had said he was a rookie earlier. He was a rookie the last time I worked in a draft, and that was <laughs> two years ago. They look good in Florida. Second and 10 at the 44. 8.35 remaining. again Ricky Bell wending his way for a first down let's see where they spot it he apparently has it Jim Gano linebacker makes the stop we have seen a lot of 3 4 for Green Bay and Ricky Bell has really worked hard today I'll tell you Ricky Bell has worked hard and run well but watch Davis out in front on this lead block he's he's really the man that made that play go because he he drove into the linebacker and took him back about four or five yards it made that possible for Ricky Bell they're going to measure right now, and I'll tell you one thing. When you have a talent like Ricky Bell, you've got to have a good blocker, and that's, I think, what you're talking about when you mention Davis's future. That's right, and, and Davis has done that in this game, and Eckwood has also done it today. They're short by less than a yard. Ricky Bell, by the way, now has broken the single-season rushing record of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 138 yards, the old record was by Jerry Eckwood opening game against Detroit when he ran for 121. So a big day for Ricky Bell, second and one at the 46. In motion goes Bell, carrying his Williams, he has enough, first down. Williams carried for the second Tampa Bay touchdown in the second quarter, and he hit Bell, who was all alone on a nine yard scoring strike in the first quarter. It was 14 to nothing at the half, Mark Hall, after missing a field goal from 33 in the first half, gave Green Bay their only points with a 42-yard field goal. And when's the last time Tampa Bay's thrown a pass? 1976. I don't know. No, no, That's a good I, point. No, I don't remember. It seems like this whole half has, has been running. They haven't thrown many passes even in the first half today. First and 10, 45. Bell, and he almost came close to breaking one fumble. And the Packers recover. Ricky Bell fumbles. He was hit by Johnson and Wingo. And now Williams and Johnson on the field. I think they're going at each other pretty strong out there after the whistle blows. Well, come on, we're going to see that again. Again, it was a it was a cutback type thing where Bell was going to go to the right side and he and he cut back to the left. And just as he was going down, he was stripped. The ball was stripped out of his hand. Wingo hit him, and Johnson stripped it away. And Green Bay has the ball with 7.06 remaining in the ball game. The Philadelphia Eagles come into this game with a five-game winning streak. That's the longest since 1961, Sonny Jurgensen's first year. The Eagles have not won six in a row since 1960. That was their last championship season. And Joe Theismann getting a left side sprayed, and Washington leading the Eagles 14 to nothing with 244 left in the third. First and 10 on the Eagle 45. Jaworski has been sacked six times. Can't throw one way, does throw the other, and he's got Smith for a first down at the 45. A great job by Jaworski. A heck of a job. He was almost sacked. Now watch him. Takes a snap from the eye formation. He wants to go downfield. They're covered. Now he wants to go to the back, and he's covered. Now he throws downfield. Charlie Smith making the reception. So it is first and 10, and they'll spot the ball on the Redskins 44, and the Eagles 
have not been able to score today. Carmichael wide right and Smith left. Jaworski quick out and he's got his man Smith again and he would be awfully close to the first down. Wysocki and Parrish bringing him down. Well they have to get the ball to Carmichael to keep that streak string going. I believe he needs two more games to break or tie the record then. Well they better just worry right now about getting in that end zone. 14 to nothing and Jaworski as you can see he has passed for 53 yards he was sacked for 51 yards he has a second and one the ball is just inside at about the 34. And they really have only inches so they give it to Montgomery and he picks up honey to the 30 fumbles and I believe Philadelphia got it back they did. Keith Crepley the tight end is the man who saved it. As he fell on the fumble, that's about the fourth time yeah. that Montgomery has had the ball fly out of his hands, much to the and dismay it, of it, Dick Vermeil. Yes, and it looks like, as we see it again, the replay, he didn't have good possession of the ball. Now watch him as he comes in here. Ball's knocked loose before he reached the line of scrimmage by Talbot. First and ten from the 30. And they maybe pick up a yard or two. Not much of a play as Jaworski trying on a keeper on a yeah. bad handoff. And Wisely electing to hold on to it himself, but that's a wasted play. Second and eight. Jaworski likes to run a bootleg in here where the backs go one way and he goes the other, but that wasn't a bootleg. That was just poor ball handling. Monty Coleman came in the game for the Redskins. Second and eight from the 28. Jaworski trying to find the combination. He has Carmichael left. Smith right. Smith's been successful. Carmichael has not. Jaworski looking over towards Smith and it's picked off by Lamar Paris. And Paris has run out of bounds well, across the 30 yard line. Well, his we, seventh interception well, and the tenth turnover in his last nine games. Well, if we can see that again, he telegraphed where he's going to throw the ball. Watch, he's looking at him all the way. Threw the ball a little bit late. Paris got the jump. No chance. Throwing the ball to 85, Smith. Parrish read that all the way. The timing was was off. Beautiful play by Parrish. First and ten on the Washington 33. The seventh interception of the year for Lamar Paris. He's number one in the NFC. Eisman <laughs> pitching back to Ike Forte and dragged down slowly, but he keeps going for a couple. Hairston tried to get him and slid down his leg as time is running out. So that's the end of the third quarter with the score Washington 14 Philadelphia nothing. We now pause for a word from your local station. Telegraph. There's your friend. Oh whistling Ray. He got me in trouble one day by shooting a cardinal. Remember when he shot that bird? Yeah I do. Here's Septian's high kickoff. Chasing Roy Green back into the end zone about five yards deep where out he comes. Out he goes. This might be an all-time record. He was five yards deep in the end zone. No flags anywhere. 105 yards for Green, who came in average. It seems to me I remember Ollie Matson going one time just about that far. Here it is. Here's the kickoff and run back. We commented how Septian was kicking so deep. 107 by Terry Metcalf. A couple of good blocks by Terry Metcalf. 107 yards. No, no, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. I stand corrected. Longest kickoff return. Down. Frank Sino had one for 105 yards back in 46. Ollie Matson in 56. I was playing in that game. It, so that ties. That ties Ollie Matson's. We'll see what they officially rule it. And if anybody ever deserves any oxygen, it's Mr. Green. 17-13. Did he get into overdrive at about the 50? Wow, he got a couple of good blocks, too. Midway through the second period, Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris at Bloomington, Minnesota. The Bears in white to our right. Minnesota in their purple uniforms to our left. 
14 to 3, Avellini's two-yard touchdown pass to Walter Payton. This is Jimmy Edwards, number 32. Edwards, good run with a flag down. He got all the way out to the 44-yard line. The Bears went 66 yards in 10 plays. An outstanding drive with varied play calls. Holding is the signal against the Vikings on the kickoff return. They used up 452 on the clock as well in taking their 14 to 3 lead. And the ball is marched back to the 22 yard line. Another Viking mistake. Holding number 82, receiving team. First down. Number 82 is Robert Steele, a reserve wide receiver. Guilty of the holding. You know, the Bears have not beaten Minnesota up here since 1971. Seven consecutive victories at home by the Vikings over the Bears. First down, Vikings. Ted Brown. Straight ahead. Brown got about four yards to the 25-yard line. Gary Campbell and Jerry Muckensturm pinching in from the outside linebacker spots made the tackle. And Tom Hicks was in on that tackle. He was trying to yank the ball loose, a la Dick Butkus. Now the Bears will be uh, alert for the pass, and their Kramer has a job. The Bears use all kinds of zone defenses. Across the front, Hampton, Osborne, Page, Hartenstein for the Bears. Slot formation right now out of the slot goes quite in motion. They come back to the short side. Ricky Young with two blockers in front. Ricky Young has a first down out to the 38-yard line. A flag is down. Ron Yarry blocking on Tom Hicks, and that's where the flag was dropped. Let's see what the call is. Young had the first down yardage on a good play, screening back against the grain. Referee Fred Wyant with the call shortly. Let's see the play. I think it is going to be number 73. Now here comes Young out on the screen. It's set up nicely. It was a two-man screen. Let's watch 73, Jan Yeri, and see if he does indeed hold. Holding number 73. Off well, there. we can't really see it Second on the down. replay, but the call was there, and the Vikings will be penalized, and uh, the first down goes all for not. That's four for, for Yeri in last game and this game. Yes, he had three against the Jets Monday night. You know, I always hate to question uh, the, the veteran players getting up in age and... Maybe, uh, you know, they, they just got to do that a little bit more against some of the big younger guys they're facing and can become a problem for some of those vets. He's in his 12th year from USC. One of the all-time greats in this league at offensive tackle. Kramer nearly slipped and fell. Got the pass off. Incomplete intended for Young. Flag down in the backfield. Buckensturm and Plank on the coverage. Another drop by the Vikings. This may be against the Bears. Kramer took a pretty good pop back there, and he nearly fell down on that slick turf. Made a good effort to recover and get the ball away. So the Vikings get a penalty back after taking the one to Yarry. It may have been against Dan Hampton hitting late. Personal foul, roughing the passer, first down. Well, they didn't say on who, but it looked like him. We'll see on our replay, hopefully, who was first in here. And there's 99 coming in. Can't really tell, but I can tell this, that he put his hands out here and could not quite hang on to the ball. Here's a better look. Maybe we'll find out now after Kramer releases the ball, and they're going to call it on Hampton. Yep. He came in there and gave him a pretty good shot. All right, back live. Ted Brown. Good play, Muckensturm. Sliding off the block, pulling down the rookie running back. Gain of about four for Brown. You're exactly right, Tim. It was a, a real good play by Muckenstern because he had Goodrum coming out on him. There's the Viking. Look at that. How'd you like to get a horn like that? They might send him in here the way things are going. <laughs> Let him be the least blocker and put his head down. Second down and six. 14 to three. The Bears lead it. 537 remaining here in the first half of play. Vikings have been unable to get a sustained offense going. There are three points. Came off. A turnover, an interception on the Bears' first offensive play by Kurt Knopf. Deep uh -oh. for White, he's open. Sammy White, touchdown. Beautiful pass from Kramer to Sammy White. 
And the Vikings jump right back into it. Well, he didn't drop that one. That pass was right there, and he took it in. Good pass protection for Kramer to throw it, and it was perfect as he got a step on Virgil Livers. He actually beat double coverage. There goes the ball, and there he goes. There's Fensick on the short side underneath, and he is gone, and Livers cannot hit him in time. The Vikings are back in the ball game, 55 yards. Super play, Tommy Kramer to Sammy White. White can beat a lot of secondaries, and he was in full stride, and Kramer put it right on the money. Dan Myers, point after is good. So, striking quickly, having difficulty getting any kind of a drive going, they go to the big play and come up with it. Kramer to White, and it's 14 to 10. Next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, see the light heavyweights. Plus, the battle of the super heavyweights, the world's strongest men competition. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. James Scott at Rahway State Prison in a light heavyweight bout, and the world's strongest men concludes with the very popular tug of war. Don't miss it next week. Cincinnati leading Cleveland 20 to 7 in the third quarter, and the Browns have slumped. The Jets over Oakland 14 to 13. That's been a seesaw game in the second quarter. Minnesota narrows the gap. The Bears lead it 14 to 10, and New Orleans, they could be a threat, leading Detroit 10 to nothing. First and 10 at the 42 yard line. David Whitehurst. Packer still in the game. His pass is complete to Kaufman, and he has a first down. Kaufman caught the ball, was dragged back, but his forward progress is enough for a Packer first down. He's, I've really been impressed with, with Kaufman. You know, he, he not only, only works to get open, as he's doing here, but once he gets open, he goes for the ball, and then he doesn't want to go down. You know, he's just going and twisting and turning, and. I don't know if they ever did get him down. His old man's <laughs> restraining him. <laughs> That's exciting, TV. though. That's great. I'll tell you, Kaufman has really been the top offensive performer for the Packers today. First and 10 at the 46. 6.20 to go in the game. 14 to 3, Tampa Bay. Simpson changes direction. Fumbles. Tampa Bay recovers. He was hit by Lewis, lost the ball, and the fumble was recovered by Nafziger, and so the pack coughs it up. I think that Tampa Bay needed that. They had just given up a turnover, and they had to get it back, and they got it back on a turnover. You see here, sometimes on a, on a play like this, the back is, is better just to take the ball and, and just run it up if you have a loss and you get a, a yard or two. And then play second down, tee it up again. He tried to reverse his field and uh, fumbled the ball. So the Buccaneers have it at the 47-yard line in their own territory, first and 10, leading 14 to 3. Three big turnovers that the Buccaneers have capitalized on. Johnny Davis takes a couple to bring him down, doesn't it? He's still up. And finally, Johnny Gray brings him out of bounds. But great effort by Johnny Davis. It was a great effort, and I think we have a penalty on that. It looks like it's going to be holding against the Bucks, and that's going to put everything back, I'm sure. Well, they start in good field position, so right. that'll send them back. That's one of the, the first holding penalties I think we've had today. We have had a clip on Green Bay, but we haven't had many major penalties. Let's pick it up. Offense, number 75, holding Dave Revis, former Pittsburgh Steeler, the left tackle, was holding. So it's first and 20 now at the 37. George Ragsdale, number 23, replaces Ricky Bell. And now four linebackers in there for the Packers. Pitch goes to Ragsdale. He's got good speed if he can get away. He's tackled at the 40 by Jim Gano. Clock continues to run. 5.45 to go in the game. Tampa Bay trying to break their two-game losing streak and maintain a two-game lead in the Central Division of the NFC. Ricky Bell back in the lineup. 
I mean, Tampa Bay has they have great running backs who can do some things on their own, and maybe they don't need the pass as much. Audible apparently being called at the line by Williams, second and 17. Ricky Bell up the middle. First down to the 46, and it was Johnny Gray who brings him down. They have second and 17 there. You would think that's a passing situation, but when you have running backs like Ricky Bell here, that's that's time to do it. I guess you can go all the way. They'll be short by a couple, John. Yeah, they're going to be short by two yards and have a third and two, but uh, <laughs> again, you get that long yardage situation, and most teams are going to pass the ball. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers give it to Ricky Bell. He's rushed 25 times for 154 yards. That's that's not bad. He'll take it. He'll take it every week. It's about three games worth <laughs> for most of them. 14-yard pickup on that play, so it's third and a long two. <laughs> Davis tried to go wide, couldn't get anywhere. So the Packers, with Mike Douglas pursuing and forcing the play, hold right here, and it's fourth down. I think he stretched that one out a little more than you really want to on on short yardage on a short yardage play you like to get it turned up upfield get your shoulder square as soon as you can and not spend too much time going laterally Odom is at the 10 yard line and Blanchard will kick from his 40 under four minutes remaining in the game come the Packers Blanchard gets the kick away. It's outstanding kick into the out of the end zone. So Green Bay will take over on the 20 yard line. So they have 336 now and they're trailing 14 to 3. Well, our director in this game is John McDonough. He has a lovely wife, Muffy, and she gave birth to John the Third. Mother and son are doing very well in New Jersey. Here is what is now the NFL record kickoff return by Roy Green. 108 yards. Al Carmichael with Green Bay and what, 56 out of 106? And Nolan Smith from Kansas City. Henderson State rookie. You're right, he got some good blocks that broke him out. But 108 yards, and that's a new NFL record. Spike it. He was back behind the lettering. It says Texas Stadium back in the back. And our word from our main man here, Dallas Doug Todd, is that it was 108 yards. And that's where he started from. An all-time NFL record. Rookie from Henderson State, Roy Green, has put the Cardinals back in it. Ron Springs now from one yard deep. Cowboy and so he makes it back to the 20 where his feet are really cut out from under him by Thomas Lott. One more look at a record. And One more time. It. Let's see if we can pick up some of the blocks, Patrick. Pretty good one on Cosby right there. I believe that was by the Otis Brown. Was yes. it the fullback? Yes. Septian gets wiped out here. That was by number 36, Rod Phillips. Fullback that used to play with the Rams. From now on, it's just hit the tape cleanly and hard. What a play. Really, if you stop and think about it, that was a high kick from Septian. Most coaches would have told you not to bring it out of there. They might have been yelling not to. All back with his cowboy lead now down to just four. Lofts it high and intercepted by Ken Stone down the sideline and the Cardinals come roaring right back they'll have it at the Cowboy 21 Tony oh, Hill hurt himself making the tackle that time Roger did not want to throw the ball he wasn't sure whether he wanted to run it watch it indecision indecision and Stone by the way in the last 18 games for St. Louis has 18 turnovers that's his sixth interception this year used to play with Washington and has really made himself a reputation in St. Louis. Great play. Pass was intended for Jay Saldi, I guess you could say, but it was a pass that possibly or almost certainly shouldn't have been thrown. 
the Otis Brown and Otis Anderson, the running backs, and Hart goes right to work. Caught up the middle by tight end Gary Paris. Inside the 15. Some throw by Hart. Talk about the fastest gun. We've seen him throw sidearm, under rush. Now he's got a bad arch on that left foot. Watch him slip this one sideways, right in like a handoff. Classic quarterback. Over talking to Bud Wilkinson now. As we go into the fourth quarter, it is all Washington. They have completely shut down the Philadelphia Eagles, and from the looks of things, Jack Pardee will have caught Dick Vermeil today. They will each be six and two. Then, of course, it depends on whether St. Louis can upset Dallas. Second and five from the Washington 38. The second man is Ike Forte, trying to go wide and succeeds, gets out across the 45, and picks up a first down. Frank LeMaster making the tackle, but ever since the game started, the Eagles have looked flat. That's, that's right, Ben. Uh, the Redskins came out, as we said at the top of the show, as if they're getting ready for the Dallas Cowboys, and they hate the Dallas Cowboys more than any team in football. It must have been also very difficult for Philadelphia to get up, knowing that they had handled Washington so easily two weeks ago. Well, the Eagles still have a chance, but they're going to have to play a lot better football to get back in here. First and 10, the ball just across the 45-yard line. John Riggins trying to go outside a block by Forte, and on his own, he brings it into Philadelphia territory. John has natural strength. As you said, he made that on his own. He picked up four yards on his own. They dogged uh, 41, Randy Logan, on that play. To, they're taking chances. The defense is trying to force something to get back in this ball game. Second and four on the Eagle 49-yard line. The Redskins with 13-49, and they're leading 14 to nothing. So all the heat and all the pressure on Philadelphia. Slot left. Bosman's going over to the left to Danny Bugs, and Herman Edwards drives him out of bounds. About the 46-yard line. So they picked up three. It should be about third and one. bosman has been working over on Edwards quite a bit. Throwing in front of him. Danny Bugs, who played for the Giants when he joined Washington, in 1977, the first start he ever made was against Philadelphia. That's when Charlie Taylor was hurt. Yes. So third and one, the ball on the Eagle 46-yard line. Theismann to Riggins, and there he goes. He just won't go down. And they finally bring him down inside the 15 in the battle with Herman Edwards. Well, they're, they're doing the right thing, giving the ball. Let's watch this. Just a re reverse pivot. Now watch 46. Herman Edwards trying to tackle Riggins. Got to charge car fare for that ride. Picked up 10 yards after he was hit. Well, first and 10 on the Eagle 13. How about this comparison? Riggins has rushed for 105 yards. Wilbert Montgomery, 31 yards. going to Harmon and he stacked up immediately by number 65 Charlie Johnson. But there's no way Herman Edwards is going to bring John Riggins down by no. the necktie. That's that's the best thing Riggins does is power running not fooling anybody just take them on big strong legs keeps them moving. So Theismann is holding all the cards Herman Edwards has a few cobwebs shaken loose after that long ride. Second and eight from the 11. Thompson in the slot left inside McDaniel. And it'll be Ike Forte fumbled. Forte tried to make the cut and left the ball behind him, but Washington recovered. Roger Staubach has just picked up another touchdown, a 10-yard pass to Tony Hill. Dallas 17, St. Louis 6. So it looks like a two-way tie for second. Dick Vermeil's Eagles 
and Jack Pardee's Redskins. And of course, they're both in a great spot for a wild card spot. They yes. could very well be playing each other a third time in December. They could, Ben. Now here's Bugs and Hardiman in there. Passing situation. Third and six from the nine. Bugs goes right. Harmon and Hardiman set up behind Thysman. Too long. It'll be a delay game. Thysman taking a little too long as they made the substitution. We have 11.20 left in the game. And it would appear, should Washington punch over from here now, they would ice this thing. Even if they get a field goal here, they're in great position. The Eagles haven't uh, threatened all day. Delay the game. Number seven, offense, third down. So the Eagle five game winning streak the longest that they have enjoyed since 1960 and that's very much in jeopardy and the skin have everything in control right now and of course the Eagles have Jaworski and Montgomery both banged up third and 11 from the 14. Theismann going to the right side to John McDaniel. He took it away from Wilson and goes out of bounds at the six-yard line. Well, the Eagles dogged him to put a little pressure on him, get some rush. So it made a one-on-one -on -one situation. Fourth still, and three now on the six. He still has time to throw. Knocks him out of bounds. Mark Mosley who has kicked 13 out of 16. He kicked one from 34 yards out and they canceled it. So this spot now, the spot of the hold will be at the 13 yard line. It's a 23 yard field goal attempt. Theismann holds, the kick is good. No flags on the field. So with 11 minutes and 13 seconds left in the game, Washington a resounding 17. And the Philadelphia Eagles scrabble. They're tied for that NFC lead, and you know who they're tied with? Who's Robert that? Montgomery. Washington's doing a job on Montgomery today. Philadelphia has no points in the third period. Well, the stats in this game all in favor of the Saints, not only the scoreboard, but Sonny, rushing-wise, the Saints have 103 yards, the Lions 34 passing, New Orleans with 101, and the Lions have a minus two yards. Minus well, two yards passing? 12 first downs for the Saints, one for the Lions. Muncie now has 72 yards on 13 carries. And it's a third and goal now, just outside the three, almost the four-yard line. Seven-nothing, New Orleans. Good down conversions. That's interesting. Very well done thus far by New Orleans. Manning off to Muncie. He's not going to get in, and it's a fourth and goal. And Gary Premium only coming in. You got to give the Lions a lot of credit. A lot of credit. I'll tell you something. You just read those stats and saw what a mismatch it was in the stats, but the Lions are still in this football game. They keep hanging in there. Things could happen for him. Here's your premium. Now he has hit three of three this year. He's hit 19 in a row. He broke the record in Candlestick Park. He kicked an 18 yard field goal. He's hit one of 18, 32, and 38 yards. And this is going to be a 21 yard attempt. Ed Burns will hold. John Hill will snap it. The premium's kick is on the way, and this little guy has hit 20 in a row over the course of the last two seasons. What an acquisition he's been since the injury to Russell Erksleben. And so it's a 10 to nothing lead now for the Saints. We understand that Erksleben will be back next week. What are they going to do with your premium? I think they'll keep him. The thinking <laughs> is now and have Russell Erksleben do the punting. But they have a fine punter in Rick Partridge. Seems like every year New Orleans has a lot of decisions to make in their kicking game. Last year was certainly that case. They went through all kinds of field goal kickers. With this type of offense, you don't need a punter. Pick up first downs. Ten to nothing after that 21-yard field goal. Boy, Garrow must have been squirming earlier this year. He had the NFL record tied and had no place to kick. All of a sudden, the job opened up, and he's taking advantage of it. Four for four this year. In the third quarter, Gary, Baltimore and Buffalo are tied at seven apiece. 
The Bears are leading Minnesota. That's in the second quarter. 14 to 3 now. Here comes the man who makes neckties your premium. Checking off deep and Calicut will take it to the four. Ken Calicut out to the 20, to the 25, to the 27 yard line. Tripped up that time. Brooks Williams is a reserve tight end. And so the Lions, who are very gritty on that last play, hanging on to allow only three points at 106 to move the football. And a minus two yards passing thus far. That was a 25 yard return. Where they have to get untracked offensively. Well, looking ahead now, next week, as we go into the second half of the season, how about that Dallas Pittsburgh game, a rematch of the Super Bowl? And Pittsburgh's getting healthy again. 11 NFL doubleheader. Mishandled snap. Goldstein gets back on top of it. Let's look at some of the other games next week, Sonny, in that NFL doubleheader Green Bay, Miami, Chicago, San Francisco. Hey, Philadelphia Cincinnati will be a good football game. That's got to be Philadelphia. Be sure to check your local listings for the games and times in your area. Goldstein back to throw. And Rick Kane let it hit his shoulder pad and get away from him. Hit him in a bad spot, Jerry. What do you say to somebody like that when they do that to you? I'd rather not say on the <laughs> air here, but uh, you know what you try to do. I'd come back and throw to him again. I'm, I would have tried to embarrass him into catching one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Kane has had trouble hanging on to football. He's fumbled a lot, but he's a very tough goal line runner. They've used him a lot inside that five-yard line. Third down now, 11. When they come back in a huddle after that, you said, did, did I throw it in a bad spot for you? Goldstein to Kane. Kane's going to try to redeem himself, and he's not going to make the first down. He's out to the 35. Joe Fettersfield over there. That brings up a fourth down. Lions will kick. I tell you Wait what, I think we... the Saints going to stop the clock here because uh, they'd like to get a possession again. They get a good return. They're going to have a chance to get on the scoreboard again. Well, the Saints had three timeouts to use, and they have used one of them. With 38 seconds remaining in this first half of play. Look at Ed O'Neill now. I don't know what his problem is, but he's discussing something. Ben Dreith indicating the timeout against New Orleans, very wise timeout, Sonny. I think so. You know, they they want to get the football again. They get a good return here. They'll have the ball in pretty good field position. Maybe a chance for your premium field goal. There's Dick Nolan. And he's saying, hey, watch for what? The fake punt. Did you see that? Well, one of my ex-coaches down there, too, Ed Hughes. Swider, who will come in, has three punts thus far for a 39.3 average. But you saw Nolan thinking they might fake it. And so the Lions, who finally got out past their own 33-yard line, they're out to 35. That's about their deepest penetration. They've had a tough time getting that ball out of their own into the field. Here's Motti back for this punt. He's third in the NFC and return. Boy, they're coming after him. They might try to block it. Big rush put on by Gray. Motti at the 30-yard line. He'll try to get out of bounds. No, he's going to be dropped at the 31-yard line. And so the Saints, with 28 seconds left, will have the football, a 36-yard kick that time by Swider. And there's our score. Saints leading at 10 to nothing. They got... They got time. 28 seconds may not seem like a long time. With this football team, there's always time. Well, they can pick up a big first down here. Maybe get the ball close enough. Chandler, I care, is flanked out. Archie Manning from the 31 yard line. Big rush put on, setting up the screen to Muncie, and Muncie's hit immediately. Doug Jones is over there. And Jones not been there, Sonny. There was all kinds of room over there. Yeah, but that was a big play defensively. Good play that time by the line defense. And now the Saints may be content to just let that time get away. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to be content to take a 10 to nothing halftime lead into the dressing room. So New Orleans has won three of their last four. Who would like to move to the 500 mark with a win here today. With a 10 to nothing lead, a game of turnovers thus far. We've had four interceptions in this first half, two each. At the 14, Otis Anderson. 
Inside the 10 to about the 7. Randy Hughes, the safety man, made the tackle. The great thing they say about Anderson from the eye is his change of direction. Watch him shuffle right here. Little skip move. Jimmy Brown and about two other backs are the only people I can remember that had that ability to make the movement in the hole. And the Bears have had a big play. Peyton passing to Brian Bashnagel, 54 yards for their first touchdown. Dan Myers kickoff. Taken at the eight-yard line by Walterscheid. Coming straight up the field. Walterscheid gets out to the 35. We've had good kickoff returns by both teams today. Kurt Knopf, number 25, made the tackle. And all touchdowns today have come via the pass. Who would have thunk it before today? Dallas has gone in front of St. Louis, Johnny, 17 to 6. Roger Staubach with two touchdown passes. Billy jo Joe Dupree and Tony Hill in the second period. They've got 2-12 remaining in the first half. First down, Bears at their own 35-yard line. Kramer, short drop, quickly out to Bashnagel. He picked up about seven on the play before being forced out by Johnny Turner, the cornerback number 27, Matt Blair. Good call, first down pass. Out there where they had a one-on-one -on -one situation, if Bashnagel had gotten by Turner, he had nothing but running room. So the Bears had a situation on first down where you can more or less dictate the type of coverage. You're gonna get more honest coverage on a first down passing situation. Second. One yard to go for the first. Peyton Williams are running backs. Williams does not have the first down. Slicing through the left side defensively, James White. Hold him down and uh, no gain on the play. Might have lost a half a yard. Well, let's call it no gain. Still third in the yard. Cobb and Latta both in. Double tight ends here as they try to get this short one for the first down. Avellini has it. First down, Bears to their 47-yard line. 4.20 to go here in the first half. James Scott and Ricky Watts come in at wide receivers. One of the tight ends will leave. Latta goes out. Dallas, we just gave you their score with two touchdown passes by Staubach. Roy Green of the Cardinals has just returned a kickoff, 108 yards. It is now 17 to 13. 108. Dallas front. Avellini. Going for Watts, it's overthrown, missed everybody. Hannon was back there deep on the coverage. Mullaney putting the rush on for the Vikings at the line of scrimmage. Did you say 108 yards? I guess he started way back. Yeah, I guess so. Two yards from the end line and he decides to go. It's a good thing he scored. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> thing he scored. He might have been uh, playing for uh, somebody else. The Chicago Bears brain trust. That is Neil Armstrong in the middle of your screen talking to rookie wide receiver Ricky Watts, number 80. Armstrong, of course, former assistant here under Bud Grant. Second and 10. Mm, drop play, but Peyton has met right at the line of scrimmage. The Vikings really came off the ball. Make it uh, Williams. And uh, they were in the backfield almost at the time Williams got the ball. This is what you call an unsuccessful draw. Let's see how the Vikings did it. Boy, Sutherland was in there. Everybody. White was there. The play did not work. <laughs> <laughs> There's Bud Grant. I wonder if he went hunting the other day. Yes, he did. He was out hunting yesterday, Saturday's hunting day, after the morning meetings and so on. Right out uh, near Metropolitan Stadium here. Got some ducks, he told me, and had some for dinner last night. Third down. Little oh. Statue of Liberty, Peyton, and he is just, oh. look at this guy get out of that. I mean, there was nothing but purple shirts all around him, five yards deeper, and he wound up gaining a couple of yards. Blair finally the man to pull him down. They tried a little fancy do here, kind of a Statue of Liberty, and 
Hayton gets away from one, two, three, four, and finally goes down. It's just, uh, he's uncanny, uncanny. It still brings up fourth down as the Vikings came up with two strong defensive plays. Edwards, the deep man. Parsons hits it from his own 33. Short punt against the wind. Bears bounce over the 20-yard line to the 18. It'll be spotted there. Walterscheid and Tim Baylor got the uh, elbows up against each other a little bit. No harm done. No harm, no foul. The Viking looks on. So Minnesota will start first and 10 from their own 18. 2.11 to go here in the first half. Bears lead it 14 to 10. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris with the action from Bloomington. The rain has stopped, or if it's still raining, it's such a fine drizzle that we can't see it affecting the play here. It is still windy and cold. Ted Brown met by Tom Hicks, the middle linebacker. Got a couple on the play. Brown, 5'10", 200-pound rookie from North Carolina State. Coming off, coming off a bruised knee. Missed the last couple of games. The two-minute warning is sounded with the Bears leading 14 to 10. Scores 14 to 3, Tampa Bay. And you're looking now at nose tackle Bill Cole. You remember him from a Cincinnati game, don't you, John? I sure do. He's he's an amazing player. Uh, one day we were getting ready for Mike Reed. We are worried about Mike Reed at Cincinnati. And, and Kohler just killed us that day. And now he's killing other people. Intercepted by David Lewis, number 57. Reached up and intercepted the Whitehurst pass. Third time today, Tampa Bay has picked off a toss by Whitehurst. And for David Lewis, it is his first interception of the year. We're going to see that. And of course, we talked earlier about the turnovers. You know, when you get some opportunities, you have to take advantage of them. And that really wasn't a very well thrown ball. It was intended for Kaufman, the tight end. And Lewis made a fine play getting back there. He was in the, in, in the, in the zone. He has great range. And, and he's a fine athlete from, from University of Southern California. 14 to 3. Clock. With 3.26 remaining in the game, first and 10 at the 21. Ricky Bell going outside. He has a blocker in front of him in Greg Roberts. And Ricky Bell is out of bounds. Greg Roberts, number 61, was the Outland Trophy winner as the outstanding lineman from Oklahoma. That was the deal that sent Dave Pear to your Oakland Raiders. He was the nose tackle. They got a number two draft choice, which was Roberts, and number three, which turned out to be uh, Rick Burns, a running back. And they were able to switch Hannah, and they've changed the whole story on the Tampa Bay team. I think that was one of the trades that really helped both teams. Dave Pear has helped the Oakland Raiders, and I think the trade has helped Tampa Bay. It's been a good trade. Two tight ends, Jim Obradovich and Jimmy Giles here at second and three at the 14. Davis inside the 10. The bruiser from Alabama was tackled by Wingo and Douglas, two linebackers. I think we had talked earlier, and we see here the, the turnovers in this game, four to one. The Packers have had one fumble, three interceptions. The Bucks have only had one, and I think that that's really a big difference in this game. First and goal at the eight, and John, we go back to the top of our show when you talked about the turnovers. This time it was the other way around. Green Bay committed them. Tampa Bay had committed them in the last couple of games. First and goal at the eight. The Buccaneers can wrap it up and seal it and put a ribbon on it here. Look at that cut inside by Bell. Penalty marker is down, however, inside the five-yard line. Earl Edwards makes the tackle, and Ricky Bell we have a holding penalty against Tampa Bay. We'll nullify it, but I'll tell you, he is looking like a vintage O.J. Simpson at times today. Well, he looks like a vintage Ricky Bell. You know, when he was at USC, he was a, a great running back. As we listen to the referee, Fred Silva, here is going to tell us something in a minute. I'm sure it was a holding penalty. Offense, number 73, holding. First down. Charlie Hanna. 
Now playing up front at right tackle. He was a defensive lineman before, and so he's playing the same position his brother John plays, at least the offensive line at New England. His brother John's a left guard, and he's one of the most impressive offensive linemen I've ever seen in my life. I remember when we scouted him at the at the hula ball, I thought he was the best player in the game. Previous spot foul. So the ball is at the 18. First and goal at the 18. Obradovich is out, so Giles is the lone tight end for Tampa Bay, leading 14 to 3 with 2.29 remaining. And on a reverse, Mucker, wide receiver Larry Mucker, short of the end zone, driven out by Gary Weaver. So it was Ricky Bell who handed off to Mucker coming around. And Tampa Bay is within a couple of yards of another touchdown. That's something that's been set up all day. They've been running from the I formation and flipping the ball right and left to Ricky uh, uh, to Ricky Bell. And he's been running on those sweeps on this play. They just flip the ball to Bell. He starts out and he hands to Larry Mucker on a reverse. And it was a it was a great play. It was greatly timed. And it was a fine call in this situation by coach John McKay. Oh, Mucker made a great catch against the Giants earlier this year, a couple of weeks ago. Second and goal at the two. Davis won't make it. He has Mike Douglas and Johnny Gray surrounding him. So it's third down. This Davis, is a, one of the leading ground gainers last year in his rookie season for the Bucks. This is a situation that I always like to play pass or or some quarterback option type play. Tampa Bay is taking time out. And Doug Williams is coming over to the sideline to talk to Coach John McKay about what to call in this important third down play. Washington leading Philadelphia 17 to nothing. 11-13 left in the game. And how about this bulletin in the St. Louis Dallas game? Dallas had scored to lead 17-6, and Roy Green must have taken the kickoff in Clayton, Missouri, because he returned it 108 yards for a touchdown. Meanwhile, Wally Henry would love to bust one and get the Eagles off the ground. And here comes the kickoff. It's high and down the right side. Henry from the six to the 20, 25, and down in the heap at the 27-yard line. Fritch, among others, down there to get him. So the Eagles, who have been unable to do anything, will put it in play. Jaworski, five for 15 for 53 yards, but he has been sacked six times for 51. So the Eagle passing game is a plus two yards. Montgomery is averaging less than three yards in 11 carries. Jaworski has had to scramble on a bad ankle three yards, three times for 22 yards. First and 10 from the 27. Jaworski deep down the left side to Carmichael, and he just led him by less than a foot. Tony Peters right there with him. They're covering him long and short all the time. That's one of the reasons they haven't screened the 17 over there. They have a man right on him, covering him front and back, long and short. He was open. The ball was just a little too, too far. Next week, Washington will play the New Orleans Saints. And you can see New Orleans polishing up its act, leading Detroit 10-0 halftime. That game will be here at RFK Stadium because the Skins have been on the road four straight, winning three of the four. Second and 10 from the 27 for Jaworski. And Jaworski has Crefley, the tight end, and he's at the 40, and Kenny Houston drags him down just across the 40. Well, you know, Ben, there their only chance right now is to to get put the ball in the air get some big plays need a lot of leadership on offense and need a break or two to get back in this ball game. that's just enough for the first down that completion to Keith Crepley the first and 10 with 10 28 left in the game and it's 17 nothing Washington. Jaworski over the middle and he has Harris and Harris is tied up and he won't go down. Olkowitz had him but he needed help and finally Monty Coleman drills him to the turf. 
Jaworski deserves a lot of credit because no question he's playing in pain. He's staying in there. He's taking a pounding all day. Shows good leadership and character on his part. So second and six for the Eagles on their own 45 yard line. 17 nothing Washington. Carmichael right Smith left. Jaworski unable to hook up with Carmichael all day and this time he overshoots Montgomery coming out of the backfield Monty Coleman right there with him and all the while Tony Peters is covering Carmichael like a stepladder. Well it would have taken a perfect pass to to hit the receiver that time watch Monty Coleman's right on him. good inside position on him all the way. So it is third and six for Jaworski on the Eagle 45. He is seven for 19, has had one interception. And the tip off is his attempt. Two weeks ago, he only had to throw the ball 12 times. Carmichael in a slot inside Fitzkey right. Jaworski has Charlie Smith. And he's to the 30, 25, and to the 20-yard line. Mark Murphy brought him down. Now well, that's one of the big plays they needed. And Smith, who was shaken up after making the catch, goes limping off the field. They gave Jaworski good time. Look at the protection he has right here, surveying the field. They know he can't run now with that bad eye. Yes. And Smith runs well after the catch. Well, they're spotted at the Washington 21 yard line. First and 10 Eagles, 850 left in the game. 17 to nothing, Washington. Jaworski going to alley oop it to Carmichael. No good. He caught it twice. Tony Peters was there. He had it on his hands, went up to catch it a second time. Couldn't do it. They had the right play. They had a one on one situation with Tony Peters. Just a matter of execution. This is what they used to try to do with Pat Fisher. Ball was thrown just a little bit behind him. That's what you want. Six eight against five eleven. <laughs> so there is six eight. Number 17 Harold Carmichael. He's the hungriest man in town. He's been outside the candy store all day. He has been totally shut out. Second and 10 from the 21. Carmichael inside Fitzky in a slot left. Jaworski on the heat from Lorch and he fumbles. And I think Coy Bacon recovered it. Yep, Coy Bacon is on the ball and Washington takes over. That ought to do it, Ben. If they scored in there, they had a chance to come back. Another frustrating moment in the life of Ron Jaworski. Lord knocked it loose. First and goal, Cardinal. At the eight, Hart fumbles. The big red gets it back, but just barely. Keith Workman put the big hulk on it. And the Cardinals burn a timeout. They have one left. It broke the old record of 106. Held by Green Bay's Al Carmichael against Chicago in 1956 and by Kansas City's Nolan Smith against Denver in 1967. So I only went down under one kickoff in my life and it was Buddy Young went 103 and they <laughs> took me right off the team. <laughs> I couldn't get off that team. <laughs> The Otis Brown and Otis Arm uh, Anderson, sorry, Armstrong. Another good runner. Knocked away from Pat Tilly at the last moment by Benny Barnes. You don't call that guts. If a cornerback makes that play in the end zone, you call it courage. You've got to forget your man and go ahead and swat it away. And the one thing Barnes has always had is really raw courage. Great play. He illustrates that so often on the special teams. He even scored a touchdown this year, picking up the fumble and first of his career, wasn't swivel it? Swivel hipping down the sidelines. Against Minnesota. Is he from Stanford too? One of four on the Cowboy roster. Amazing. 
Third down coming up. 11. Ball at the 11. And a rush from Randy White. Hart had no chance. Jim Hart was really popped. Looked like Randy White came right through where Bob Young and Workman were trying to take care of the defensive stunt. Watch the center of your screen and see where 54 comes. He goes to the outside, and Young gets cut off. You can see Harvey Martin cuts off Workman. I think Jim Hart is really hurt. If Randy White grabs you like this, it's expiration time. That is tough. The other Dallas rusher, uh, rusher was the rookie, Bruce Thornton. And if Randy White hadn't been there, I think he might have. Jim Hart. Remember, he had a separated shoulder last year. There, that's it. He's moving around a little bit. That turf is not cushioned very much, very hard. Looks like now it's encouraging. He's just got the wind knocked out of him. Next week, the Cowboys against Pittsburgh, a Super Bowl rematch. New Orleans against Washington, Tampa Bay, Minnesota. Chicago at San Francisco, Green Bay at Miami, Giants at Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Cincinnati. There's Jimmy Hart, Southern Illinois. He's been in the same town in the same uniform for a long time. He's six for 15 for 55 yards today. And he wasn't supposed to play all week. They said he might not play at all. Steve Little. With Roger Worley holding just outside the 30. So it'll be just over a 40-yard attempt for Little. Block! The ball goes into the end zone. I believe Thornton got it, number 77. Boy, does he have enthusiasm, doesn't he? He would indicate that he got it. You can usually tell who has it because they have the stitches, the imprinted on their arms or hands. I believe it's Thornton. He thinks he got it. And he goes way up. It was either Thornton or Doug Cosby. Cosby, of course, is the 6'6 tight end who goes up over the back of maybe Thornton, uses uh, the broad back. And Cosby does get credit for blocking it. So Dallas will take over back at the original line of scrimmage just outside the 20 in Newhouse. Ducks under Keith Simmons and Kurt Allerman. It's illegal to assist and get somebody. Uh, I can remember when one time the Rams put Don Burris up on somebody's shoulders, remember? And they walked around like they were on stilts. On top of Big Daddy Lipscomb, wasn't it? Blocked it, too. Almost carried the skinny defensive back through the upright. We're higher than the goalpost. That is illegal to assist, right? It is now. It didn't used to be. That'll be the final play of the first half, and what a first half. Cowboys lead the Cardinals 17-13. Back live in New York, I'm Brent Musburger. Roy Green has just returned a kickoff 108 yards for a touchdown for the St. Louis Cardinals against the Dallas Cowboys. Here's what's going on now around the league. Tampa Bay snapping back after losing to leading the Packers 14-3 in the fourth. Key game in the NFC, 17-0. The Redskins are going to hand the Eagles their second defeat of the season. Baltimore and Buffalo, Burt Jones started, ran in from one yard out. Ferguson came back, 21 yards. Curtis Brown, they're tied in the fourth. Cincinnati snapping back, leading Cleveland 20-7. Anderson has passed for two scores, 10 yards to Bass, 9 yards to Curtis. Pete Johnson, one yard out for Cincinnati, their third touchdown. New England leading Miami 14-13. The Dolphins had gone ahead by 13 points, and then back came the Patriots. Horace Ivory from a yard out, and Cunningham from a yard away. The Jets leading Oakland by the narrowest of margins. As Ken Stabler continues to march the Raiders up and down the field, but can't get them into the end zone, Wesley Walker has caught two scoring passes, 21 and 22 yards away. Chicago 14, Minnesota 10. Walter Payton 54 yards, a pass to Brian Bashnagel for the touchdown. Avellini hit Peyton for the other one. And New Orleans, of course, leading Detroit at the half, the game you're watching by 10 points. Now the contest I mentioned, 17-13.
the Cowboys over the Cardinals, but the story here is a return by Roy Green, coming right up the middle for the Cardinals from eight yards in. Coaches usually will say, anything beyond three, forget about it. Let's take it on the 20. And he made a great move there near midfield and then simply outran the rest of the pursuing Cowboys. So the Cardinals continue to play the Cowboys very, very tight. Irv, you've been checking the record book on this story. Have we got a record on that return? Can a you find that? The old record was 106 yards set by Al Carmichael from the Green Bay Packers versus Chicago Bears October 7th, 1956, was 106. The new record now for kickoff return is 108 yards, and you just saw it. Al Carmichael, what a great <laughs> name for the pad. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Raw, windy day in Bloomington, Minnesota. The weather was quite pleasant yesterday. It was supposed to be fairly nice today, but uh, turned out wet, rainy, windy, altogether unpleasant. And that has been a factor somewhat for the Minnesota Vikings' pass attack in this first half. Several dropped balls, but Kramer connecting to Sammy White for the big one to pull him back to 14 to 10 here in the second quarter after their offense had sputtered to that point. They have first down at their own 19-yard line formation play action Kramer sideliner incomplete for Rashad Livers on the coverage may have got a hand on the ball it was slightly deflected by Tom Hicks going back into his drop zone or he deflected the pass or it would have been incompleted it would have been completed I should say as Tommy Kramer waits for the play to come in the Vikings, as you mentioned, Tim, used their tight ends. So we have a third down and eight situation. And let's see what the call is. Will it be a mod, Sammy White, or the draw? Ted third Brown. And eight. Exactly. I think I gave them uh, an extra down. It is third down. They had the two-yard gain prior to the two-minute warning. Vikings have yet to convert a third down in this football game in seven tries. Let's see what they oh, can do here. Open. There's see Rashad open. wide open. Loose ball. Vikings recover. So it appears we'll wait till they dig it out. Rashad made the catch and then dropped it on the hit. It is picked up by Jim Huff. Alan Page almost had it for Chicago, but Huff came in there and outfoxed him for it. Boy, was Rashad open. Make A lot it. of room there given by Schmidt there as he was going back into his zone. Here comes the hit as Virgil Livers knocked the ball loose. Wes Hamilton, number West 61. Wes Hamilton got it, but it was Alan Page who almost recovered it for the Chicago Bears. First down for the Vikings, slot formation right. Wide right is Rashad, in the slot is Sammy White. 135 remaining first half. Kramer. <laughs> Intercepted, Schmidt, yes. Terry Schmidt picking it off for the Bears, intended for Rashad or possibly Sammy White. He kind of split those receivers and wound up hitting Schmidt with it. And Schmidt was as surprised as anybody because you can see the two Vikings and the ball was thrown right to Schmidt. Terry Schmidt got it, said, I'll take it, give it to me. As White and Rashad uh, make sure of the tackle, but there was a cross up there. It was either just a terribly thrown pass or somebody didn't turn the right way. Maybe he expected Rashad to do a hook rather than turn to the outside, but Regardless, it's the Bears' ball in Viking territory, and that's a big play. Schmidt made a real good catch. It was nearly grounding, but he managed to keep that ball off the grass and make it a good interception. So the Bears with first down at the 48 of Minnesota. Complete out the left side to James Scott. He'll be short of the first down, a gain of about eight yards to the Viking 40. Timeout called. Fred McNeil made the tackle. There's the play. 121 remaining in the first half and we'll see second down and two yards to go following this timeout the ball at the Minnesota 40 yard line wide right goes Bashnagel Lada is in at tight end number 88 split left is James Scott Payton has the first down and then some to the 32 yard line. Hurry up offense. Matt Blair on the tackle. Bears keep it going. Time ticking to 108. Avalini 
looking downfield and oh. intercepted. Tom Hannon. Hannon returning well. Look at him run. Hannon, one man to beat it. Albrecht made the tackle on him out at the 37-yard line. Outstanding running by Tom Hannon. One of the young defensive backs who worked his way into this lineup. It's his third year out of Michigan State, a third pick in 1977. Boy, he showed some broken field running. Yes, he did. The pass was intended for James Scott. He came off the coverage and then did a nice job of running, and this game has turned around. Now the Vikings have a chance to get on the board. As Hannon cuts back, Scott goes for the arm tackle rather than flying for him for the tackle, and Hannon almost broke this. He's hurt down on the field. Albrecht was the man to stop him. Had he got by him, he might have gone the distance. Okay, now let's check. Avellini had plenty of time, but he couldn't find anybody open. And finally throws, and you see Hannon drop off with, with uh, Kraus coming from the other side. Kraus could have intercepted if Hannon had not. And then here is where an offensive man is not used to making the tackle. As you see, that missed tackle. And there's one uh, little hand shot by James. Come on, James. And finally, Ted Albrecht makes the tackle. Boy, it was that second shot, I think, that got him in the back with a helmet that yes. uh, was one that really rocked him. But he's up. Tom Hannon heading for the Minnesota bench, albeit slowly. But he made an outstanding catch, an outstanding run. And I think an ill-advised pass from Avellini there, Johnny, that there was traffic down there deep. But, of course, you're at this point, under a minute, you're not expect to that kind of a return even on an interception. Hannah made a big play because they've still got lots of time, 52 seconds. And part of it is the Bears have to learn how to throw the ball. They're going to go through some uh, problems. They're going to have some interceptions. Avellini has been prone to the interception throughout his, his career, but they have thrown so seldom this year, uh, especially since Vince Evans uh, uh, got hurt or had the sickness that he has that uh, they're going to have to learn how to pass in these kind of situations and they're going to have some interceptions in the process. Now it's the Vikings' turn. Slot right. Sammy White in the slot. Levels for Shad. Kramer swings it out for Ricky Young. Drop the ball. They have had a lot of drops today here in the first half. The Vikings, 47 seconds left first half. The, the receivers nowadays depend so much on their hands. He had enough time there to shift his body and catch it in the stomach because any time you depend on your hands, if it goes through, there's nothing to stop the ball. And uh, it was thrown kind of hard, but he had a man-for-man -man situation out there. He had one man, Muckin Sturm, to beat if he catches this pass. But he just puts his hands out there, and it's gone. Use that stomach. I don't know why. You, have you noticed in the NFL the last three or four years, more and more drop passes? Johnny, there ought to be more you old wide receivers on these coaching staffs. <laughs> Terry LeCount is in, number 80, wide receiver for the Vikings. Kramer under pressure from Hampton. Out of bounds. Hampton got a hold of that jersey, and Kramer could not get upfield. He really just wanted to get out of bounds once the heat was on to stop that clock. 41 seconds remaining. The ball at the 32-yard line now. Loss of about five, maybe six yards on the play. Dan Hampton, their number, Bears number one draft choice, number 99 out of Arkansas. And he's just a growing boy. He's 21 years old. He's already weighs about 260, 6'5", something like that. And he hasn't even matured yet. Well, and they also have another rookie, uh, Al Harris, out of Arizona State. Second pick this year they think very highly of. Chuck Foreman is back in, so two fine young defensive ends for the Bears. Goes well for the future. Kramer on third down. Uh-oh. Right there. Kramer, incomplete, intended for LeCount, number 80. Terry LeCount. Fourth down, and Minnesota, with 36 seconds left in the half, will punt the football. We're hitting a lot of action in that last minute and 121 seconds. 14 to 10, the Bears hold the lead. Lenny Waldershot is the deep man. Greg Coleman standing at the Vikings 18-yard line. <laughs> Coleman with the wind. Good punt. Waldershot from his 24. Hit immediately. Scott Studwell, number 55, got him at the 29-yard line. And the Bears, with 27 seconds left, will get a couple of more shots at another score. Tonight on 60 Minutes at 7 o'clock Eastern Time.
California is about to crack down on a doctor whom the state says is involved in what could be the biggest case of medical fraud ever. But the doctor is still practicing. How come? Well, I'm curious too. Let's all watch 60 Minutes tonight at 7 Eastern Time here on CBS. First down, Bears. Scott goes wide right. Bashnagel left. Mike Cobb is the tight end left, number 87. Williams off left tackle behind his left tackle almost straight ahead got about four yards before Dave Roller number 76 put the hit on him and the Bears are going to be content to let the clock run out and satisfied to go in with a 14 to 10 lead at halftime Greg Latta brings in the play for Avalini and the time is going to wind down before the play gets off so the voice of Frank Gleber you can hear in the background Perkins. Boy, was he a good one. Oh, he didn't hit that hole very fast, did he? They've already introduced George Andre. From 1965, and at wide receiver. Check the next one. The all-time leading Cowboys receiver, number 22, Bullet Bob Hayes. Standing ovation time. With the score, From Dallas 17, St. Louis 13 at the half. We'll return to Texas Stadium after this word from your local state. Irv, how about some highlights now? You talked about Ricky Bell in Tampa Bay. Ricky Bell, as you indicated, has carried the ball 25 times today so far, gained 154 yards, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers lead the Green Bay Packers late in the fourth quarter by a score of 14-3. And here's one of Ricky's plays earlier in the game in the first quarter. He scampers around his right end for a nice gain, setting up a scoring opportunity for his club. And Doug Williams, number 12, goes to Bell again. This time from the air, touchdown, and Tampa Bay took a 6-0, 7-0 lead. Doug Williams pitching out to Ricky Bell, number 42, going around his right end, gets down near the goal line, doesn't quite make it. Doug Williams goes in on a quarterback sneak. Boom, he's in. 14-0 Tampa Bay. David Whitehurst tries to get the Packers back, and it looked like they might have had a touchdown here, but watch what happens. Throws the ball to James Lofton, number 80, who goes right along the sideline. He's pushed there and touches the sideline, so he's out of bounds. So an apparent Green Bay touchdown was not to be. So late in the fourth quarter, the score right now is 14 to 3, Tampa Bay, and they're going to make have their sixth victory in a couple of minutes, Brent. Irv Cross, George Allen just said, you've got the game won. Don't make any big mistakes. Just hang on. You know who he's talking about, the Washington Redskins. They're going to wrap up a victory today over the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's call it the home court advantage in the NFL. Watch here. Benny Malone crashing across for the first touchdown for the Skins. John Riggins got off a marvelous run in this game. And on this one, it was brute strength. Crashing down to the four. And two plays later, Joey Theismann with Dick Vermeil looking on. Theismann scrambled in against Vermeil's defense. And Dick not happy about the fact that somebody over there in the corner didn't come up and cut that play off. Let's send you back to the remote. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer who bring you the better idea. Cars and trucks for the 80s. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. And by Kmart Automotive Service Centers, where quality car products are Kmart priced. Bob Hayes and I come from the same part of Florida. I watched him develop in high school. I was around when he went to Florida A&M. I watched him become the world's fastest human, Bullet Bob Hayes. Uh, become the all-time leading cowboy receiver. I think everybody knows just about what has happened to Bob, but I don't think anybody's really delved into why you think it happened. Well, Pat, it's just a, a mixture of, uh, uh, of people, I would say, but it was kind of a very unfortunate situation. Um, it was, you know, it wasn't directly, you know, basically a, a victim of circumstances, and, and it happened, you know, when you're, you're famous, you got a big name, these things will happen. But I, I looked at it uh, from every angle, and uh, I, I know that I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a big boy, you know. I, I, I've grown, to, you know. I've, I'm, I'm past that now, and that uh, I'm just waiting to get out. And when I get out of here, just do what I can do best. 
Bob, uh, I've uh, heard one quote by you, or supposed to be by you, that said that you thought you tried to help and please too many people, and that was one of the problems. Well, that, no, no doubt about it. You know, I, I'm kind of a guy, I have a weakness when it comes to folks being happy or being sad. I'd rather see someone with a smile on their face than sad. And as I said, you know, we're just a victim of circumstances that I did try to help a guy, and that uh, in the results, you know, I, I ended up going to prison. In prison, uh, what is the life like? Uh, most of the inmates I know are, are younger than you are. How do they react to you, the name Bob Hayes and the, and the fact that you are their senior a little bit? Well, you know, I'm about basically the older guy on the farm, and those guys, the little boy, they respect me very highly. And, uh, of course, during this part of the year, the season is going on, all the eyes are on me because, you know, thanks to you, thanks to Tom, all you guys, my name come up quite a bit. And that uh, this gives those guys, I, I left, you know, plus I work with them every day in the gym, you know, giving them, you know, rec teaching them different uh, games, racquetball, uh, ping pong, weightlifting, basketball. And they get a chance to, you know, not only read about, you know, a, a famous guy, but also just go there and, and, and can touch him, you know, and they feel a part of me. So they have given me the utmost respect. Do you ever get down? Do you ever get to the point where you think that life has, has been a little bit unfair? I, I do. You know, I get the blues, you know, uh, especially, you know, missing my, my wife and missing my two kids, you know, missing my friends, uh, just the free world, you know, in, in general. But outside of that, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing well there. Mm -hmm. What about uh, plans for when all that comes to an end? Uh, what's Bob Hayes going to do then? Well, I have a buddy of mine here that owns a computer company, mm -hmm. and uh, I have been offered a job through Coffee Track, and uh, this firm, it caters to law firms, mm -hmm. and uh, when I get out of here, a lot of lawyers around the country will be <laughs> seeing me because I'm going to be knocking the doors down. <laughs> you ever think about writing a book? Sure, I'm into that, too. We're going to get a book going. Uh, I'm gathering all of my materials now. Uh, we hoping that uh, we have been talking to some people going into a mini TV series of you know the pros and cons of Bob Hayes and and everything is looking up. We 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 in the, we, in, we, mm -hmm. we we got the right step forward. Bob, one thing finally, what would be your advice to a young man growing up in these times? Well, I think the young man, first of all, he got to get an education and be familiarized with basically everything around him. I think he got to be matured enough to know to make a decision from right and wrong. And uh, I honestly feel if a kid could stay out of trouble, get a good education and get the best, just doesn't go there and make a C group. You know, go and do the best you can. There's opportunities out here and the doors are open. I feel if you're qualified, you can get the chance to become a successful individual. Bob, we've seen you climb the mountain once. Climb it again. I am. Thank you so much. Thank you. The remarks of Bob Hayes. Makes, makes all of us stop and think a little bit, right? Well done, Patrick. By the way, he is eligible for parole in February. And he is, of course, very hopeful. Here is Tom Landry, the only coach the Cowboys have ever had. In darn good shape still. The old-timers, or the ex-players, I should say, have been introduced. And now we'll hear some remarks from a remarkable man, Tom Landry. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a, it's a rare privilege that I've had through all these years to coach all these outstanding players who represent hundreds of athletes who have meant so much to the Dallas Cowboys. And I have to say that I've been pretty lucky to have stayed here long enough to coach them. But I do, I do want to take this opportunity, though, this few minutes, this few seconds that I have to pay tribute to all of these players for the Dallas Cowboys that have done so much to make the Cowboys you know, what they are today. For all of us who have spent our life in football, we recognize that the bottom line in professional football is what takes place right here on the playing field. So I believe that any applause that is to be given for the Dallas Cowboys and their success belongs to the players that have played for the Dallas Cowboys. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dick Butkus. Just a few years ago, I was the middle linebacker for the Chicago Bears. I love playing pro football. 
But my biggest thrill came with my election into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'm very proud to be a part of this up-to-the-minute sports show place, where the total pro football story is told in many exciting ways. The Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, is open every day of the year except Christmas. I hope you'll visit here soon. I'm Rocky Blair of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I'm here with some new friends at the University of Florida. You know, a lot of people talk about alcohol abuse, but these young people are doing something about it. They started a club called Bacchus that helps them learn to make responsible decisions about the proper use or non-use of beverage alcohol. You can start a Bacchus club, too. For a free booklet that tells you how, write ECS Box 1197, Washington, D.C., 20013. Get a Bacchus club going, and everybody comes up a winner. Yeah! The proceeding was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. Ten nothing, our halftime score. The Saints with the advantage. As really in this first half of play, Sonny Jurgensen, the Saints have lost some very good opportunities. They had the ball down there a couple other times and didn't come away with any points. That's true. And on the other hand, uh, the Lions have not been able to generate any offense at all. They're going to have to do something. We may see another quarterback change in the second half. In this first half, Goldstein didn't really have the kind of day. He wanted two of nine for 16 yards. And for a while, they had a minus two yards passing. As you look at the stats, quite obviously, New Orleans dominated that first half of play. Well, he did. But, uh, you know, Jerry Goldstein didn't get a lot of help offensively either. He was under a lot of pressure. Dorney had a tough job tough job in blocking uh, Lois Grooms who uh, was pressuring him throughout the first half and also he had a couple of passes dropped so you can't put all the blame on Jerry Goldstein. They had two sacks in that first half the Saints did both of them by Lois Grooms and in the first down situation the Lions didn't get that first down till way late in the second quarter of play. Right. Right. They didn't have the ball out past their own 33 yard line for some time. Time in possession can you believe that. <laughs> About that. 22 minutes to seven a minus two yards pass and they just have to get on un untracked offensively to give their defense you know they got to inspire their defense to play better they're still in this football game they can win this football game that's Benny Ricardo we haven't seen him he'll be kicking off it's been a very fine field goal kicker for this Detroit Lions team I ran into his parents they've traveled down here to see this game they live in the San Diego area the furthest the Lions win in the first half, Jimmy Burns, our statistician, tells us, 35-yard line, their own 35. Back deep, Motty, Wayne Wilson, and Jack Holmes. And Holmes is going to bring it up. Holmes up to the 20-yard line, to the 24, and New Orleans will set it up there. We had four interceptions in the first half. Two by the Lions, two by the Saints, and there is the rushing in the first half. Muncie was 72. Chuck Muncie off to a great year. He set a record for the Saints of 811 yards in 1976, and he should break that easily if he continues the way he is. He came in here with 527 for the year. And you're talking about they stopped themselves in the first half. The Saints did. They're a fun football team to watch. I like their offensive uh, concept. Those stats would be very impressive if Archie hadn't thrown those two interceptions. I Harris in motion. From the 24, they give to Galbraith, and Galbraith runs into some company, doesn't he? That company provided by William Gay, number 79, a former tight end. He was a tight end last year, he drafted by Denver, and now they've moved him to defensive end. As a tight end, he was Bill Gay. Now he's turned to defense. He's changed his name to William. Boy, he makes a good play here. Also, help arrive from Cleveland Elam, number 72. Loss on the play, second and 12. There's Tony Galbraith, 20 yards. He's had to work hard for him. Mike Harris comes in motion. Manny, play action, bootlegs it. He cuts up the field, and I don't know. Do you think that was the way it was drawn? <laughs> nah, he didn't fool anybody. Gay came, did not. Uh, he forced him. He got good penetration. Watch this. You'll see. Arch is trying to fool everybody. He does a pretty good job of acting, but he doesn't fool Mr. Gay. Look at this. Whoops. Uh-oh. Got to add lib a little bit. Ducks back up and has to run with the ball. Oh, well, it's third down now. 11 yards. They gain one of those two back. Manning in the first half was not sacked by the Lions, who last year had 55 second best in the NFL. Back to throw. Manning again. Breaking down the protection intended for Muncie. 
And Manning is buried back inside the 10 yard line by Doug English. Or do they ever like to rush a pass? And they did then effectively. They had 21 sacks coming into this game, but one reason the sacks are down, Sonny, is they're triple teaming Bubba Baker a lot because one of their fine outstanding linemen, John Woodcock, has been out with a back injury. Good defensive football team. Calicut will go back, and the kick will be Partridge. He had one punt in the first half for 37 yards. He hits another fine kick. Calicut coming up on the gun, and it's a 43-yard line. He had it full steam when he was catching the football. Good field position for Detroit. In fact, their best field position of this football game. A 38-yard kick, setting it up at the 42-yard line. We got a different quarterback coming in. I think Jeff Comlo is coming in to play the second half. Comlo has done a pretty good job. Let's remind everybody now, tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes, the award winner. And then laughs are on the house at Archie Bunker's place, followed by one day at a time. The comedy continues on Alice, followed by the Jeffersons, and then Trapper John M.D. So the quarterback is Comlo. Ninth round draft pick out of Delaware. Gives to Horace King, and he's straightened up by Grooms. Hey, Grooms playing pretty good football game. You know, he's had an outstanding day. Not only rushing the pass, but playing the run also. Let's talk about Comlo a little bit. There's his stats. They say the one thing that is really interesting about him is his poise. He never seems to get rattled back there. And he is the guy that they figured they'd bring along slowly. And then all of a sudden, Danielson and Joe Reed go down, and he's it. Monty Clark is just is that grasping for stars, trying to find someone to generate a little offense for the Lions. So from the 42, second down and 10, scrambling out of there is Comlo, and he had it picked off. Who got it? Dexter Bussey. No, he was out of bounds. David oh. Hill couldn't hang on. Bussey caught it on the rebound, but he was out of bounds when he did it. Oh, what a play this is. Watch Comlo. Again, a good pass rush. Alois Grooms goes back in. He jumps outside of the pocket, throws the ball, makes a good throw here, bounces off the chest of Hill, and look who's there. Dexter Bussey comes down with it, but they say he's out of bounds. One foot hit that sideline. One other thing, if you ever go out of bounds and come back in, you're an ineligible receiver. That's true. We've been told that Charlie Weaver, the right side linebacker, sprained knee. He will not return for the remainder of this game. He was hurt early in this game. Comlo on a third and ten. Washington, and he tries to catch the rebound. <laughs> Never seen so many balls bouncing on passes up in the air. He threw that ball a long way. He did. Very difficult throw because the ball has to travel so far, almost intercepted. He didn't get a chance to take a real good stride in throwing the ball. Didn't get a lot on it. He made an accurate throw, though. Almost picked off. Eric Felton was the guy that had a chance at the interception. And now the kick will be Swider. Four punts, 38.5 average in the first half. Pablo kind of creating some fireworks. One of those passes should have been caught by David Hill. Big rush put on. Fine kick by Swider. Motti at the 15-yard line. And he's out to the 23, and the Saints will have the football there. So Comlo coming in, stirring him up a little bit. I'm sure giving Monty Clark and the Lions some new hope as they trail in this game 10 to nothing. <laughs> two-minute warning is history it is now third and two for Tampa Bay trying to wrap it up they lead 14 to 3 pretty safe in this game but they're trying to add more points on the board play action Williams flips it, it touchdown to Jimmy Giles and Tampa Bay has scored their third touchdown and that is Giles fifth touchdown reception of the season. That's what I always liked is that type of play down here where where they're expecting run they're all tightened in there and you fake to the back inside holds the inside linebackers and then Williams rolls out to the right 
then he has the option to either throw to Giles in the corner of the end zone or run it in himself. I think that's the best play that there is on the goal line. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just ran it to perfection. O'Donohue will try the point after, and despite the fact that two of the three Tampa Bay touchdowns have been by virtue of the pass, it has been the running game that's told the story. The point is good. 218 yards rushing. Ricky Bell has about 156 of those in the turnovers. Green Bay coughing it up for interception and fumble to Tampa Bay, the story of the game. That is, and we're going to see this touchdown play from another, another angle here. We'll see again the, the fake. He fakes the trap in there to Eckwood. Now, he runs out here in the option, and, of course, he had the option to run or pass. There was no reason to run because there was no one covering Giles. He's happy. Pretty good slam. Not bad. Good <laughs> follow through. Looks like those pitchers in the World Series as they followed through. I wonder what the velocity was on his ball. Well, they didn't have the gun out for him today. They have that gun that Earl Weaver liked so much. 97 miles an hour he threw that one down. So 13 touchdown passes for Williams on the season, and Giles has caught five of them. Don't forget, next Saturday, 4.30 Eastern time, live from Aqueduct Racetrack, the Turf Classic, a CBS Sports special. Neil O'Donohue will kick off and Steve Odom is back inside his five. 21 yards six plays and it was the interception by Lewis that started it all for Tampa Bay. Here is Odom tripped up up to the 31 yard line. So Green Bay trailing 21 three has it first and 10. Danny Reese was the man that stopped Odom. The Packers next week go from the frying pan to the fire. They have to face the Miami Dolphins at the Orange Bowl. And Tampa Bay will now be 6-2 and two on the year and will have a two-game lead over either Chicago or Minnesota will go against the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota. Five defensive backs for Tampa Bay. Three wide receivers for Green Bay. Whitehurst. Pass is complete. Waller Tullis to the 43 44 yard line. Green Bay's line are, are going without a huddle now. They're going to be in the same formation that they that they ran last time and we see David Whitehurst audibleizing at the line. Whitehurst completes this to under Thompson who has a first down. At the 44 clock moving the Packers have all of their timeouts remaining and they line up because they need a few scores here they can't use any of those timeouts yet they need more than one what they have to do is get one quick one and then go for an onside kick and try and get the ball back and get another one his pass almost picked off by Curtis Jordan and if he had grabbed it he could have walked in. Intended for Andrew Thompson. Clock stops, 52 seconds to go. I think we're going to see that. You see that one again. And again, it was the same type of pattern. It was just a, a sideline. And the one thing that impresses me about David Whitehurst, of course, he came close to throwing an interception here, but he really stays in that pocket. He doesn't get panicky, he doesn't get fidgety. He stands in there and waits for something to happen with his wide receivers. He waits for him to get open. You see the time remaining in the game. The Packers need three scores. Hit from behind. Selman gets him, and that is an incompleted pass, I believe. And an injured player. Is that Greg Cook? Number 68, Cook, got hurt. As we're we're going to see what happens to him here as he starts to as he starts to cross over. It looks like he gets he gets thrown down on that play. And again, Tampa Bay has the ball now, and and uh, of course they don't. I'm sorry, Green Bay still has the ball. But they need three scores in 47 seconds. That's not that easy to do, is it, John? No. <laughs> Third and ten, up the middle. Kaufman, the intended receiver. Incomplete, hit hard by linebacker Richard Wood. 
So it's fourth and ten. Packers will line up and attempt another play. They can smile in Tampa Bay. They weren't smiling last week, but today's a different story as the Buccaneers have beaten the Green Bay Packers. So it's always good to break that losing streak. You right, didn't have too many of those, did you? But no, nice but they should, be, they should be proud of this team. This team is 6-2, and two, leading their dif division. They've done a great job, and they've come a long way. They're very impressive. Fourth and 10. Whitehurst incomplete going for Kaufman, so they'll turn the ball over to Tampa Bay. And the big point that you mentioned at the start with the real Tampa Bay Buccaneers stand up. The 5-0 and are the team that lost two. You don't know if it's the unbeaten club. You don't know if they're that good, but we know one thing, that this club is a definite division contender for the playoffs, which is a great story. They sure are, and today they played like the 5-0 and team that, they, that started the season. I think that's what John McKay, that's what the team wanted, that's what the owner, Hugh Culverhouse, they all wanted to get back to that. We're going to see a new, number one. new quarterback, Chuck Fusina from Penn State, who hasn't played much and hasn't attempted a pass, hasn't played at all this year, is taking over with 36 seconds to go in the game. Chuck Fusina from Penn State. And the give is to Rick Burns, number 36. One of those players uh, acquired in the draft in that Dave Pear deal. So you're looking at Fusina from Penn State who led them to that great year. They almost won the national championship last year. Alabama beat them in the Sugar Bowl. They sure did, and he's not going to get much experience in this situation. I think they can put out the fire and call in the dogs the hunts over. Clock running down. We will not have another play. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, as John McKay trots onto the field, have swept both games from the Green Bay Packers this year, winning up in Green Bay 21 to 10. And as Bart Starr goes across to his sideline and to his clubhouse, 21 to 3, the final score. We will be back at Tampa Stadium in just a moment. I would hate to see a tug of war today. Carl Lorch and Coy Bacon have been playing tug of war all day with Ron Jaworski. And Bacon recovering Jaworski's fumble after Lorch put on the pressure. First and 10 on the skins 27. And John Riggins having a big day, grabbed from behind by John Punting. And down he goes just shy of the 35 yard line. So Washington has done all of their objectives. They have shut down Montgomery. They have sacked Jaworski. And they've been able to more or less push Philadelphia offensively around. And you mentioned Lorch and Bacon. That's what they do well, rush the passer. Wilbert Montgomery, outstanding running back, but not today. Averaging three yards a carry. Riggins has carried 15 times for 110 yards. And it's second and three from the 34. Second man, Ike Forte, but he runs into a group. He barely got it back, maybe to the line of scrimmage. This is all the Redskins really have to do now is keep the clock moving, run the football, don't take chances, don't give them a break to get back in here. You got the game won. Here's Joe Lavender talking to Peters. That shows good togetherness. That's what the Redskins have. That's why they're winning. One of the reasons they're winning. Lavender missing the ball game with a bad knee, and Tony Peters has done a marvelous job as his replacement. At halftime, it is Dallas 17, St. Louis 13. Third and one now from the 36. And it's Ike Forte trying to get outside Logan and does and runs out of bounds. Randy Logan came up from his free safety spot to try and get him, and he just ran out around him. So it'll be first and 10 at the 38-yard line. In case you're wondering about the last time the Eagles were blank, it was September 25, 1977, when the Rams blanked Philadelphia in Los Angeles. It was 20 to nothing that afternoon. It is 17 to nothing today. First and 10 from the Washington 38. Play action fake to Riggins. Theismann deep to Danny Bugs. No good. Herman Edwards along with Wilson there to pick him up going down. Well, that's a pretty good call safe you got a bomb it's either incomplete or a long game this is a better eagle team than that 
one that was blocked out by the Rams. This, this, is, a, this is a good football team. Uh, they're not playing their game today, and the Redskins have dominated them on every aspect of football. Offense, defense, special teams. Atlanta had beaten the Eagles 14 to 10. And from the looks of things, Washington will beat them today. Houston beat Washington, and the Eagles beat Washington. They're going to wind up the day each 6 and 2. The second and ten from the 38. Play action fake and a keeper by Theismann and he spun away from Jerry Robinson, the rookie. It didn't make any difference. Robinson was picked up by the rest of the team at the 40-yard line. Well, that looked like a broken play. Uh, they don't want Joe to be carrying the ball in this situation. There's an old pro, one of our captains over the years in L.A. and where the Redskins calls all the defensive line stunts. Studies prepares himself Good by the man. name of Dyron Talbot. Dyron Talbot, number 72 from the University of Texas. So third and eight from the Redskin 40. They have their passing backfield, so to speak. Hardeman and Harmon in there. McDaniel is right and Bugs left, but they go on the ground this time. And Hardeman spins almost up to the 45. So that's the first time they have run the ball with Hardeman and Harmon in the backfield. Another frustrating story. Harold Carmichael. He has caught a pass in 103 consecutive games, but not today. And there's only 5.54 left in the game. Mike Bragg will be kicking. Wally Henry will be deep, standing on the Eagle 15 yard line. Monty Coleman looks like the man on the right side, and now he's being called back by Don Hobart to line up. Looked like he was going to be the one sprung to get down after Henry. We need him and hold everything. A busted play, and we'll wait for the call. We have 5:30 left in the game. Washington 17. The the game. Offense, Eagles nothing. Number four. That's again good football. Use as much of the clock as you can. There you can see the Redskin defensive unit. Lord 65, Talbert 72, Brooks 69. Lord 71, but 65. Boy, have they put on a show. 77, Joe Jones. That's a good defensive line, man. What a job. They're all experienced. The only other fellow who should be down there, we haven't seen him, is Coy Bacon, but he's probably resting off in the corner. Looks like the Eagles are going to try to block it. Fourth and eight. Bragg will be kicking inside his own 30. Henry standing on the Eagle 20. Five and a half minutes left in the game. And a usual high punt, fair catch by Henry. The ball caught at the 25, and that's where they'll put it in play with this flag on the play. Twice today, we have had an ineligible man downfield, and it might yet be another. So we we'll wait. Chuck Heberling. Ineligible receiver, number 66, down the field. That's Ted Fritz, the veteran snapper for Washington. You would think of all the people yeah. on the line, the snapper would be the last man to be first down. Well, uh, the Eagles faked a block and then came off. And everybody else got, got hel held up, figuring they were going to put the punt block on. And no, nobody, nobody touched Ted. Normally, he's not... Ineligible man down the field, number 66, offense, fourth down. The well, fourth and 13, the ball is spotted on the 35 yard line. Normally, Ted's not the first man down the field. Well, Mike Bragg kicking to Wally Henry again. And another one up in the sky, and it makes Henry retreat. No fair catch at the 15, however. And he bumps into his own man, and down he goes at the 20-yard line. He bumps into Larry Barnes, and down they went. So with five minutes and 11 seconds left in the game, Washington 17, Philadelphia nothing. <laughs>
So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have beaten the Green Bay Packers 21 to three. Green Bay is now three and five on the year. And Tampa Bay at six and two know that they will have a two game lead over either Chicago or Minnesota. Depending on who wins that game, we'll get a score for you if we can. And of course, Tampa Bay plays Minnesota next week. Story today, I guess Ricky Bell in the rushing game of Tampa Bay, maybe number one. Well, you know, we talked uh, earlier about Doug Williams and, and what he had to do. And I know I said one thing, if the running backs do the job, if, if Bell and Eckwood uh, uh, run well, then then that'll help him in doing his job a lot. And I think that did help Doug Williams today. He was able to, to hand to Bell, to hand to Eckwood, to move the ball, to control it, and they did a fine job. Conversely, I think uh, Green Bay had the turnovers. They had some opportunities to go and to get some points. And then when they'd get down there, they missed a field goal. They, they had the interceptions, the turnovers. And I think that's what happened to them. Well, you're right about that. Ricky Bell gained 167 yards. Whitehurst, three interceptions. The NFL on CBS will be back after this word from your local station. And Mike Bragg's punting average today is 44.2, and he hasn't been forced to kick a ball out of bounds. And Tremendous you can job. understand when you see how high he kicks and why Washington's coverage is so good. 4.7, the last kick. First and 10, the ball in play on the Eagle 20. 17, nothing Washington. 5-11 left in the game. Montgomery and Barnes are the running back. Jaworski gunning it to Carmichael, and that keeps the string alive. If nothing else, they get it out across the 45, and they made it look so easy. You wonder yeah. why that didn't happen 15 that, times That's today. right, but it seems that way. This is a crossing pattern. Jaworski has the time to throw. Puts it right on the button, right in stride. Let the big guy run with it. You know, I'm amazed. That's the first time that Carmichael ran a crossing pattern all day. Yes, it is, man. Uh, first and 10 on the 46. Four and a half minutes left in the game. Both backs go out, so Jaworski on his own and completes it to Charlie Smith. He beat Lamar Paris at the 40-yard line. You know, I like Charlie Smith, 85. He's a good receiver. He's got the speed to go deep. Uh, I think he's a, a player that has been underrated. He does his job. He doesn't get much acclaim. We always felt that when we played Philadelphia, we had to stop Carmichael first and Smith second. He was waived by the Rams as a free agent picked up by the Eagles in 74. Six-year man out of Grambling. First and 10 from the 40. Carmichael left and Smith right. Back Flair. And Jaworski tried to alley-oop it to Crefley, and he stumbles, but he's going to go in. Keith Crefley, wow. the tight end, touchdown. Well, this 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 shows me something with Jaworski. He took something off on this. Instead of trying to rifle it in there, he laid it up and over. Watch that ball. And watch up Kenny and Houston over. stumble after yes. the catch. And Kenny jumped for it because of the perfectly thrown ball. He had no chance to get it. So the Eagles avoid the blanking with 417 left. They get on the boards to make it 17 to 6 Washington. Tony Franklin is 16 out of 17 in points. He missed a conversion opening day against the Giants. Barefoot, the right foot. The spot, the hold, and the kick is good. So with four minutes and 17 seconds left in the game, Washington 17, the Eagles 7 as you look at the barefoot kick of Tony Franklin. Next Sunday, it's a CBS NFL doubleheader. Check local listings for the games and times in your area. A super Sunday of football. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. 42-yard kick that time by Swider. Hang time, four seconds, and look at Tampa Bay. Boy, Doug Williams is back 21-3 to three now. That's in the fourth quarter, too. They're trying to go 6-2 and two for the year. The Saints with the football, a first down at their own 24. They lead it 10 to nothing. Ken Fantetti was hurt on that last play. He's been taken out. We have Brooks in there, along with Harrell and O'Neal at the linebacking spots. Here's Muncie going wide, giving chase was William Gay again. Muncie's forward progress out to the 28-yard line. Well, I tell you, the line defense is 
play in the run. They're 14th in the league, but in the conference, but they're doing a good job here because their defense and a, a strong offensive football team, a team that does run the ball well, and they're playing it defensively quite well right now, don't you say? I would say that was a pretty good move, moving Gay to defense. He gets around out there. They want him to gain some weight. He only weighs 225, 6'3", and that will come in time, but you can see the quickness he had yeah. on that play. He did then, chasing Muncie down. Gain of four, second and six. Manning, play action, far side, got Chandler. Chandler to the 30, 35, first down to the 37, and is he quick? Well, what an exciting player, huh? Very simple pass. It's a little quick screen to the outside receiver. You see how quickly Manning throws the ball, makes a low throw, but he comes back toward the middle of the field to pick up blocking because all his blocking's coming from that in that direction, and he picks up enough for the first down. Nine-yard pickup. Out to the 37-yard line. We saw Chandler earlier this year, Sonny, catch a 52-yard pass, one of the most remarkable grabs of the year. He seems to come up with one or two of those every game. When you get somebody that quick, you'd like to get the football to him, let him do something with it. He has five catches today for 49 yards. Double fake that time by Manning. Time to throw, deflected by Gay. That was number 79, Gay, who reached up there. That ball was up for grabs. Or he had 45. Henry, excuse me, Gary. He had Henry Childs wide open this time. Look at this. It's kind of a casual type throw, isn't it? A little play action fake. He just he's just gonna kind of drop the ball over. Look how easily he's standing there throwing that thing. But the ball gets deflected. Up for grabs is right, almost intercepted. That was Harrell 51, along with Ed O'Neill converging on the football. Second down, 10. Gay at six foot three had those hands up high. Kind of a gritty lion team. They've been backed into a corner all day, but they're coming out fighting. And they're hanging tough. Manning on the second and ten. Over the middle. Hunter. Hunter to the 45, the 50. First down to the 48 yard line. Luther Bradley. And John Brooks converged to make the tackle, but Muncie just very quickly had that first down. Boy, the back's coming out of the backfield, crossing pattern. You see Galbraith going one way, Muncie coming the other. They cross. The linebackers got confused by the Lions. They pick up another first down. 16-yard pickup. Ball just outside the 47 of Detroit. Ten minutes remaining in this third quarter. I think they've completed that play about four times, that same pass play. The Lions have yet to stop. There's Marty. I'd like to see him shut this one up. Now the Saints getting some field position. Far side, Ike Harris. Hit immediately that time by James Hunter, but Harris with the catch. Ike Harris, one of those guys you don't hear a lot about. He had 17 catches coming in here. But when he played with the Cardinals, he had 52 catches one year, 40 catches for the Saints. Very consistent, reliable receiver. I think we're going to have a Washington-Philadelphia score coming up. It's 17-7 to in the fourth quarter now. Philadelphia finally getting on the scoreboard. Boy, is that going to be tight in the East now if they it hang is. on there? It is. There you see the score. Looks like they were trying to work on James Hunter that time because he's a free safety playing cornerback today, but he made a good play that time. Second and six. Manning, big pressure put on by Bubba Baker. Trying to hit Muncie. He got Muncie, but Muncie's drilled immediately by John Brooks. Boy, Bubba Baker hit Manning, and he's all the way back at the 35-yard line. Oh, what a good play defensively. A little screen pass. You see Muncie checking across, number 42, checking, going to the screen, but Baker was in hot pursuit of Archie Manning. But Brooks made a fine play defensively. We've been told by Jim Silman, our director, there's two minutes left in that Eagle Redskins game. All right, Washington. That would be what? Five and two for both of those teams. Six and Six two, and two. I'm sorry. Yeah. Third down, nine, a gain of one on that last play. We have played eight games after today. Back to throw, Manning. Muncie. Muncie puts a move on to the 45-yard line, but it's going to bring up a fourth down. Doug Jones, James Harrell over there. Lions are flying around out there right now. Boy, they're playing good defense. All they need to do is get something generated offensively. Still in this football game, long way to go. Archie discussing things with Dick Nolan on the near side. He's 
He's had to do a lot of running in this game. <laughs> For his life, too. Luther Blue and Ken Calicut go back to the 10 yard line. This is Partridge. Oh, spiraling kick. He may get a corner out of this, too. He's going to get a very good roll. It's inside. Hey, they didn't kill it, though. I believe it made it into the end zone. It did. They had every opportunity to keep that ball in the field of play. It got away from them. And so they'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. A good opportunity goes by. 4-17 left in the game, 17-7 Redskins. Tony Franklin missed a field goal attempt earlier, remember, from about the 37-yard line. And now with his bare foot, we'll see whether it's an onside kick or not. 4-17 left, and the Eagles down by 10. Nope, he'll thump it. It'll be handed on the one-yard line, and Hardiman taking it out to the 15, to the 20, across the 25. Blackmore finally pushed him down, grabbing him up around the shoulders. Did you notice Hardiman hesitate on that like he... Yeah, he looked at the see whether he was in yeah, the end zone. Down it. I wonder how Franklin will kick in zero weather. I was wondering this. Why and how in the world does anybody learn to kick a football well, barefoot? He's kicking that ball with the, uh, the ball of his foot. But even so, why not the ball of your shoe? Yeah. First and ten. On the Redskin 29, 405 left in the game. Thompson is inside Bugs and slot right. Here comes Ike Forte with Dean blocking ahead of him, and he picks up a couple. Here's where you want two hands in that football. The defense is going for the ball, trying to dislodge it, force a fumble. No mistakes in here. Offensively. Danny Bugs comes out. John McDaniel comes in. Second and six on the 33. Safe plays. Very little ball handling. Keep the clock running. Eisman brings him up with Riggins and Forte. McDaniel and Thompson in a slot right. And Warren is shaken loose to tight end wide left. And Riggins fighting his way shy of the 40 yard line. But John making sure Robinson finally brings him down. John's been the difference today. John's ability to make yardage when he's hit, when there isn't a hole, has allowed Joe to throw and keep the threat of a run, cut down the Eagles' rush. He needed 15 yards today to move past Ken Willard into the 12th place on the NFL history list. And of course, as he really moved on, one, on 15 yards, he has 112. You know, an interesting thing, then, is that Riggins is an excellent pass receiver also. And it has, I don't believe he's caught a pass this year. If he has, maybe it's just one. Well, we just tell you, Coach, in reception, John Riggins, I hate to shoot you down. One. He's caught ten. Ten, oh. Yep. Well, uh, they don't use him much anymore. They use Malone and, uh, I mean, uh, Harmon and mm -hmm. uh, Hardiman. Hardiman. In there. Third and one from the 38. 319 left. 17 to 7, Washington. They will wind up with identical records of six and two if Washington can win the game. And of course, they're just taking all the time in the world to eat up the clock. Harmon on a wing. Forte and Riggins the running back. And it'll be who oh, hit that Riggins oh. take right at the line of scrimmage. I don't think he made it. Oh, what a crack. See, what, what contact. Charlie Johnson. You could hear it way maybe, up here. That maybe, was a hard one. Maybe we can see that again. They knew who was going to carry the ball. Third and one, you only give it to one guy. Watch Charlie Johnson, 65, get rid of the blocker. In Allie's fact, there. it was Jerry Robinson who hit him first, oh. and he's the rookie. Yeah, Jerry Robinson from UCLA. Yeah, big play for him. Oh, they diagnosed that perfectly. Someone else. So there goes John Riggins. He was belted on that carry. And fourth and one, Mike Bragg will be kicking from his own 25. Wally Henry trying to bust one or at least give Philadelphia excellent field position. And we only have 233 left in the game. And Bragg hangs it up in the sky. And Henry makes the reception, gets by Harris for the minute, slowed down by Fritz, and down he goes at the 26-yard line. 
So Harris was first down, and again the center, Ted Fritz, was number two man on the scene. He got down here in a hurry. Well, it's the great pumpkin Charlie Brown who'll be here in a hurry tomorrow night on CBS. Then Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids Halloween special, followed by MASH, WKRP in Cincinnati, and Lou Grant. All on CBS Monday night. What a job Mike Bragg has done today, Punny. That's that's the type of, of kick you like to cover. Everybody can be down there on Ed. I'm surprised. Ed Wally Henry, he looks at Bragg's front as we look at Mike, and then has to gamble to hold on to the football. And he's been able to do it, but no real return. First and ten on the Eagle 27. Jaworski to Crefley, his tight end. And they push him back to the 35. He was awfully close to a first down when he made the reception. And then they hammered him back. Well, the Redskins are playing loose and deep. Mark Murphy made the tackle on that one. And there's Benny Malone getting the feel of the leather. Malone, of course, scored the touchdown early in the game. As we come to the two-minute mark, Washington 17, Philadelphia 7, and the Eagles have a first and 10 on their 37. Chuck Muncy has been having a big day was shaken up on that last series. Looks like he's checking his left side some way. Muncy looks, like has, in, looks like he's in a little pain there doesn't it. Excuse me Sonny Muncy has 76 yards in this game on 15 carries. He's also caught five passes for 28 yards at the 20 yard line the Lions with the ball. Forrest King comes out of there. Lions have had some very good play by their defense. Now their offense has got to start producing. Derlin Moore making the stop. There's Comlo. He is the man that started the second half as Jerry Goldstein went the entire first half hit only two of nine passes. Like Goldstein was I mean uh, Kamala was putting some uh, notes in his socks there or something huh. I think he's got some I think he has some notes or something that or maybe a rosin bag like you use in baseball. Kamala coming in here hitting forty nine percent of his passes six touchdowns eight intercepted second and seven. Dexter Bussey and Bussey very close to the first down. Came out of there in a hurry. Ray Brown, the strong safety. Looks like you're going to be about a yard short of the first down. The flex defense of the Saints. They found a little gap in it right here. Some good blocking right there. Good blocking up front. Give Dorney and Terry a lot of credit. Moved him out of there then. Picks up a they're very close to a first down, aren't they? Bussey moved ahead of Mel Farr to become third on the Lions rushing list. Third down, a yard to go. They like to run right behind Bollinger and Dorney. That's the best side of their offensive line. Pablo rolling out. A surprise play. David Hill's got it. And he's out of bounds at the 40. And boy, that is kind of a surprise on a third and one. And they got away with it. Ah, good call. I like the call. But they haven't had a lot of success running the football. Third short yardage. Good time to throw the football. Everybody gets in very tight. They had a lot of pressure on him. He makes a good throw on the move here. And if he just steps out right there, if David Hill does not step out, he's got a long run down the sidelines. Out to the 41 yard line. So Hill, who dropped one earlier, catches one. He now has 23 with that one. This guy had 53 catches last year. You know who was tied with him in that department? Henry Child to the Saints. They both had 53. <laughs> Play action by Kamlo. Far side, wide open, and out of bounds of the catches for Ed Scott. And that will be another first down. And Kamlo has put some new life into this Detroit Lion offense. And boy, did he make a good throw then. You see, he, he was reaching down again. I think he's got notes. <laughs> we have a final now, Sonny. The Redskins defeated the Eagles 17 to 7. Big win for them, being a conference game, a division game. And it puts them in a tie again. And Washington will be playing host to these very same Saints at RFK Stadium next Sunday. We understand that Chuck Muncy sustained a bruised midsection. He should return. There they are. They're taking him. The Lions on the move now, trailing 10 to nothing. Kamlo back. Pressure put on. That one's going to be the right Tommy Myers, the foot race is on. Here has three interceptions, picked off his fourth. He took it in. A big turnaround in this game. 
Well, he saw it perfectly. He plays it. It's a screen pass. You see the pressure Kamlo was under. Myers comes right across, picks it clean. It's all over with. What a good play by Myers. Excellent play. That's his fourth of the year. Good pressure on Kamlo that time. That made it possible. He's trying to find Bussy. They had the blitz on. He was in the right spot at the right time. Well, the last time the Saints returned an interception for a touchdown was by Myers last year of 97 yards against Minnesota. As a point after by Gary Premian makes it a 17 to nothing game. As Kamlo was pressured by Bettersfield threw that ball up for grab, and Myers, he took over from there. The only team in the whole league that has a tougher schedule is Cincinnati. Well, this time he's nine yards deep, and he will not bring it out. That's Roy Green, who returned one 108 yards in the first half. He had a chance to break his own record in the same afternoon. Now, wouldn't that have been something? They probably had a big ball and chain telling him not to come <laughs> out of the end zone. I'll bet you, Thomas, it'll be a long time before that record is broken. The other, the other one's lasted a long time. 25 years almost. Let's see if this offense now has decided to come out and, and run the football on a steady basis. They're not, they're only down four points. Good field position here. What 20 yard line's all right. Wayne Morris and Otis Anderson, the running backs. And here's Anderson. Burroughs ahead for three or four. You know, the Dallas defense is starting to shut down the run more each week. So the average now is 4.2 coming into this game, a try. And in another week or so, it'll probably be down around four or less. And by playoff time, it'll be where it usually is, about a 3-5 or so. And don't forget the acquisition that they made. Mr. John Dutton. Dutton will help. Wayne Morris trying to get to the outside. Cannot. Dallas Thomas Henderson. I don't think there's any way of uh, explaining how what a great loss uh, personally and, and of course as a team player that J.V. Kane was. He was one of the most talented tight ends in football, the former Colorado Buffalo. And, that, of course, is the black armband that the Cardinals wear, but he was not only a great person, but a splendid athlete that would give Jimmy Hart one more big piece of attack. It'll be a third down now. Ball at the 24-yard line. And they need six. And Hart, who took the lick the last time he went back to pass, probably remembers. Chili in motion. Hart this time with good protection out to Anderson. He gets away from Mike Hegman. He does not get uh -huh. away from Randy White. And Benny Barnes also helps out. Talk about Prometheus Bound. You should see what Randy White did. He moved the defensive left in on the three for the rush. He bounces off two or three players. Watch the left part of your screen. You'll see 54 sort of bounce in like a big bowling ball. There's 54. Now he forces the throw. Hart unloads it. Now watch 54 come over and somehow get into pursuit of a halfback who can run a 4-4-40. Watch 54 come up from behind and make the tackle. First down, St. Louis, just outside the 30. Hart again will throw under the pressure of Randy Hughes and Thomas Henderson gets the sack. Well, we've been blitzed in the booth up here. Got a, got a look at a... Right around here is the camera. camera. This is Charlie Waters, the great, strong safety man. Okay, you want to talk about this replay, huh? How about working on television? Well, the key is the key to us beating the Cardinals is to is to get the pressure on the uh, on the quarterback, and here it is. Third down plays, Cardinals are great at it. We're good at defensing it. I think we had a little blitz on here. Yeah, that's Thomas making the trap. Boy, he can blitz too. Of course, he's a very quick person, huh? No, he's he's a great blitzing linebacker, and we utilize him in that respect. His heart tough though with the quick drop and all that he well, normally. Well, timing, you know, one, two, three, and throw. That's what he thinks. There it is. Good demonstration of Jimmy Hart in action, huh? There's your buddy Cliff Harris that made the tackle on Gary Paris. From the end zone now. He's got a strange defense. You had Aaron Mitchell in there, number 34. What's he playing? One of the upbacks is a nickel? They move him in on the in the 4-0 situation, obvious passing downs and, and uh, take out two linebackers, and so we have a bunch of defensive backs in there. 
It'll be third and five as Jim Hart has his Cardinals up to the line of scrimmage at their own 35. 11.49 left to play third quarter. Cowboys lead it 17-13. Tilly in motion. Side handoff. Anderson. Uh, the ball is gone and the Cowboys have it. Was, was, was that Benny Barnes with the recovery? Somebody with very quick hands and that would be Benny Barnes. We're talking about this great running back. What about young Anderson, Charlie? Now, Boy, you didn't get a chance to try to tackle him earlier. What about him? He's tough, and sometimes when you get that second ex uh, effort like that, you're taking a chance on getting a fumble. That's what happened there. That's the first break I think we've had. You know, they've got all the braces. <laughs> Stadium in Washington. This is Ben Scully along with George Allen. The Skins leading the Eagles 17 to 7. The Eagles in possession first and 10 on their own 37 yard line. It's been a bruising ball game. The bulk of the work has been done on the ground for Washington. 112 yards all alone for John Riggins. Joe Theismann has passed for 136 and Tampa Bay has passed by Green Bay our first final of the day 21 to 3. First and 10 from the 37. Jaworski getting a little time throwing off the hands of Peters and out of bounds. Tony Peters almost had an interception. Yes. The pass intended for Keith Crepley. Well that's that same type of crossing pattern with a tight end and Peters had position on him. That, that ball should have been intercepted. Crepley of course caught the pass that led for the only touchdown. And there's the sign saluting Tony Peters and he's done a fine job. Peters picking up the slack. Joe Lavender out. And Pe Tony Peters five years out of Oklahoma. He got a big sack last week against Cleveland. So second and ten from the 37. Talking about sacks. Jaworski has been sacked six times today. Lobbing it. It's picked off by Peters. Well, they tried it again and Keith Crepley brings him down. Same. So the first time it got off Peter's hands, the second time he caught it. Same same pass. So we show the sign again. If Peter's in 23, the Skins will win. And they certainly have locked it. For Jaworski, he has thrown two interceptions and he's been sacked seven times. See, no chance. He had him. Good position right in front of Crepley. Then 26 Harris had him deep so they had him covered front and back. So Tony Peters picking it off. And the Skins have it now first and 10 on their own 44. And a minute and 44 left in the game so 44 Riggins will carry it to the line of scrimmage and maybe a yard. That interception was the first by Tony Peters. Lamar Parrish picked off one today to give him seven. Our thanks to our producer Perry Smith and to our director Tony Verna to Dr. Bob Woods keeping the stats and for all those folks who have helped to bring you the ball game and bring you Washington's victory over the Eagles with 117 we have 17 to 7 Redskins leading a minute and 12 left in the game. So Theismann taking all the time in the world. It'll be Riggins and he is met immediately at the line of scrimmage. Charlie Johnson Charlie number Johnson. 65 hitting him. He's played a good game but it's not enough. One of the big keys in contrast would be Washington's rush of the passer yeah. and the Eagles non-existent rush. No, no question about it. Uh, they, they did a great job of stopping the Eagles running game. They shut it off completely. They could play pass defense. Run stunts and dog and Jaworski has been on defense. The crowd saluting the Redskins third and seven from their 47. Theismann gives to Harmon almost too late. Charlie Johnson was almost there to take the handoff. There's Charlie. Boy did he burst through. But it's too little too late. 
You've got 12 seconds left. The Reds can say let the clock run. That'll do it. So it is history. It was all Philadelphia two weeks ago and it is all Washington today. And the Redskins and the Eagles now have an identical record of six victories and two defeats. And as George Allen said and the words really hang in the air it is so very very difficult for one team to beat another twice. Darren Talbert showing how happy Washington is. The NFL on CBS will be back after this word from your local state. This is a final score. The Redskins beat the Eagles 17-7. So they've tied the Eagles, and we'll see what happens to the Cowboys. Puts the ball right here in the court, right in Texas, doesn't it? All the more 14-13. You saw that score. At the 41, there's Jay Saldi. And they operate this time with three tight ends, and Dorsett cuts back inside to about the 36, stopped by Eric Williams. Is Newhouse at 100%, do you think, uh, Jolly Waters? Uh, is he really back 100% yet? I, I don't think so. He got hurt in the first game with the Cardinals, and he, he is yet to come back at, at full speed because I haven't seen him break the tackles like I've you know, seen him break them in the past, and I, I just don't think he's there yet. Well, Coach Landry really loves to use those double, those tight ends. He loves having three tight ends on his offensive attack. Especially those that look like giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> like Cosby, you mean. He's lined up on the right side. Second down, they need six for a first. Laidlaw on a misdirection will have it just about. He'll be very near a first down. How about Charlie Waters? How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, uh, considering I'm getting better. Uh, looking to the future, 1980. We heard that your bride was trying to get you a job just to get you out of the house. Now you're around all the time. I'm driving her crazy. I'm glad you guys had me up here to talk about football. She said, well, I didn't think I'd have to listen to it since you weren't playing. <laughs> we also heard a rumor that you might uh, consider retiring. Did you give that any thought? Well, uh, it depends on whether I heal or not. You know, if I heal up and get myself ready, then I'll, at, in around April, I'll have to make that decision. Mm -hmm. Take it from a couple of us that have done it. Uh, don't do it till you have to, but when it's time to walk away from it, you can find a way, just like the old timers that came back. They look pretty good, by the way, didn't they? Yeah, they're looking good, trotting out there. Look prosperous. Fastest I've seen Jethro move in years. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first down, by the way. Dallas leads it 17-13, and Newhouse, the motion man. Dorsett, the spin back. He spun away from a couple. Stallback was out where he was in a position to block, but they did not over-pursue that time. And you know, it points out that if you have these kind of people like Dorsett, you can put in these kind of plays. It starts out to the right. The man of motion's already gone. Now, you, what do you call this? Uh, 38 naked out of the eye? What, do you, what is the terminology it, on this, Charlie? I think it's just taking full advantage of Dorsett's quickness. Uh, and you got to love Coach Landry for having a wide-open offense like that. He, he comes up with tricks like that every week. It's, you're right. There's something different just about every week. New Orleans 17-0 over Detroit. We had heard that Dick Nolan might be in trouble with New Orleans, but it doesn't look like it now. That was a bad throw. Drew Pearson, the intended receiver. We have 9.41 left third quarter. And uh, we've got a chance to visit with Cowboys All-Pros safety man Charlie Waters. You and Cliff Harris came the same year, didn't you? 1970. End up having to compete for the same job. We enjoy playing, though. Sure do. It he shows. still does enjoy playing. So it'll be third and ten, and they operate this time with Roger Deep, shotgun. Ron Springs and Preston Pearson operate alongside. Cardinals blitz. Roger almost lost his head through an interception. Looked like Springs was supposed to go inside, and if nothing came, then come back out and take the outside blitzing, the dogging linebacker. That was of course, as a rookie, you can't expect everything, right, Charlie? Well, he's a, you know, he's a super ball player, and we utilize him an awful lot, but it, it, I guess it's just an obvious rookie mistake. He's supposed to pick up that blitzing linebacker to the outside, and you see him taking a shot on Roger right there. I bet Roger tells him about it just nicely, like, <laughs> uh, come on, Rook. That was Fabron, the linebacker from the Cardinals, that almost took Roger's helmet with him. So Raphael Septien from 30, call it 38 yards out, 48 make it. He hit one from 51 earlier. 
That used to be your job, that of the holder, didn't it? Yes, sir. A lot of distance. But wide right. Tampa Bay got a big day from Doug Williams, who passed and also ran for a touchdown. Chester Markle kicked a 42-yard field goal with two minutes left in the third. That's all Green Bay got today, a final score. Tampa 21 and Green Bay 3. Baltimore and Buffalo. You know, Buffalo has suddenly fallen upon four times. They've been having trouble scoring. There they are on the fourth, and this time, Joe Ferguson passing for a touchdown. Buffalo moving out in front on a field goal by Mickemeyer, and they now lead Baltimore 13 to 7 in the fourth quarter. Cincinnati and Cleveland, and of course that game has everybody in Ohio up in arms. Cleveland now leading by 8, 28 to 20 in the fourth. It looked like Brian Sipe was going to have a particularly big day. So far, he's holding his own. Miami and New England. On a 15 yard pass from Steve Grogan to Roy Jarris, New England leading Miami 21 to 13 in the fourth quarter. Miami actually led in that game 10 to nothing. The New York Jets with a handy lead of 28 to 13 over Oakland. The last bit of scoring, a field goal by Jim Breach. 28 13 Jets leading Oakland in the fourth. Chicago and Minnesota. They have moved into the third quarter and Chicago leading 14 to 10. Their last touchdown for the Bears was a pass from Bob Avellini to Walter Payton. 14 10 Bears in the third. New Orleans and they'll be here at RFK Stadium next week to go against Washington and they're getting ready. New Orleans 17 Detroit nothing in the third so Archie Manning Chuck Muncie Tony Gilbreth and company having a big day and in a wild one at halftime. Dallas leading St. Louis 17 to 13 despite a 108 yard run back by Roy Green of Houston. Washington 17 Philadelphia 7. You look at the skyline of Tampa Florida here it is a beautiful afternoon and for the Tampa Bay Bucks a beautiful game we're going to take a look at some of the highlights of this game as the score was 14 to nothing at halftime. Williams hit Bell, as you know, with a touchdown in the first quarter and went over from the one. In the third quarter, the Bucks finally got on the board on a 42-yard field goal by Mark Hole, who had missed one earlier. That's right, and I think that this was a, a point that helped the Green Bay Packers and, and maybe got them started, but they couldn't continue to do anything the rest of the way. You talk about the turnovers. You mentioned it at the start, and this is what perhaps hurt Green Bay more than anything. This is Whitehurst. And this was an interception by Lewis. David Lewis from USC, number 57 on a poorly thrown pass by Whitehurst, brings the ball back. And now you're looking at the, the only end around we had today, Mucker carrying. The reverse again, Ricky Bell had gained so many yards, had been so successful today, they were keying on Ricky Bell. He started on a sweep to the left and then handed the ball to Mucker coming back in the opposite side. And the play we saw before, this was on a rollout and the tight end left all alone. Jimmy Giles, his fifth touchdown reception of the year. That was a play we we're just talking to Doug Williams about. It was an option play where he faked the run into the middle of the line of scrimmage. Then he rolled out to the right and he had the option of either taking it in himself or passing the ball. The, the outside man came up and forced him so he threw the ball to Giles in the end zone all alone. All right, let's check some other scores in the NFL. New England was trailing at one point 13 to nothing. They lead now 21 to 13 in the fourth quarter and the Patriots could be six and two, Dolphins five and three after today's action which would put them in first place in the AFC Eastern Division. New England can put points on the board. So do the Jets today against your Oakland Raiders, 28 to 13. And, you know, Oakland had been driving. A lot of people thought that the Raiders were really on a roll. They were. Well, they had run. They had won three in a row. They've been going with two tight ends, Raymond Chester and David Casper, and they've been very successful. You know, in the last three weeks, they hadn't had a turnover, and those are the three games that they won. So the Jets beat Minnesota on Monday, coming back, and maybe they're reverting to the form people thought they'd get. Chicago, 14 to 10 over Minnesota in the third. The winner of this game will go into second place, undisputed second place in the Central Division, and will be two games still behind Tampa Bay. If it is Minnesota, that'll be a big clash next week with the Bucks and the Vikings. So and Chicago leading Minnesota. Both of those teams are probably watching the scoreboard or have been watching the scoreboard to see what was happening here.
both of them would have been very happy to see the Green Bay Packers win today. I'm sure they would have because you want to see that first place team knocked off. Here's a club that I think has a chance to not only get in the playoffs, which they would by winning a division, New Orleans, 17 to nothing over Detroit. They stunned Tampa Bay last week. Detroit has had their problems, but I think when you look at the Saints and the Falcons, three and four to the Rams, four and three, and the points for and against New Orleans may be the best bet. Well, you know, they do because they're so explosive. They have so much uh, talent with, with Chandler outside and Childs and, and the running backs of Muncie and Galbraith and, and Archie Manning. They have, they have great talent. They, they were ahead 17 to nothing. Detroit scored uh, seven at 17 to seven now. But New Orleans has one thing. They can put a lot of points on the board in a hurry. So New Orleans leading Detroit 17 to seven. Dallas in a tough ball game with the Cardinals. 17 to 13 in the third quarter. Dallas scored first. The Cardinals had the lead. St. Louis can surprise as they did against Houston. But the Cowboys have to win because they know that they're getting a fight that they haven't had in recent years from Philadelphia and Washington. Well, you know, a lot of people uh, surprise Dallas. They get ahead early. But it seems like Dallas always finds a way to win. You know, at the end of the season, the Dallas Cowboys are going to be there. They're going to be there in that a division playoff game and in that championship game and I would think they'll probably be in that Super Bowl game. All right and one more score to show you here in the National Football League today and that is it. I'm sorry Dallas 17 and uh, St. Louis trailing 17 to 13. There's the final 17 7 both those teams tied for second place right now in the NFC East with six and two records pending the outcome of that St. Louis Dallas game. You were just pointing out, Sonny, I mentioned that was the first interception return since last year by a Saint. That's the first touchdown the defense has scored for New Orleans this year. Right, and you got a lot of, a lot of touchdowns all offensively. Ken Calicut will bring it out now for the Detroit Lions. Out to the 25, the 30, to the 33-yard line. There's a flag on the play. Well, we got a second, Gary. You know, we, we've had another record set today, and Roy Green in the Cardinals he ran a kickoff return back like 106 yards 106 or 108 I think at 108 yards 106 was the record right right and he returns one 108 yards against the all people Dallas who it's prides themselves on their special team so green a rookie and there is a halftime on it 17 13 Al Carmichael of Green Bay had the old record along with Nolan Smith, remember him, the kid for Kansas City. Personal foul, blocking below the waist. 58. 58 would be Joe. Well, wait a minute, on the other side. I'll tell you something, 108 yards, you think of that. Wonder what he's thinking when he's coming out of the end oh, zone. I, I bet you everybody's know. motioning at him to stay in the end zone. That's Dennis Franks, by the way, that was guilty of that foul. Moving the ball back now to the 19. Pablo going to try it again. Got his man wide open. David Hill, the big tight end, and Hill trying to get the first down. Hill's forward progress out to the 29-yard line. Big, strong guy out of Texas A&I. Fourth-year man. There's a rosin bag. That's what I accuse him of having notes, and he puts it down in his pants, in his sock there. It's pretty smart, isn't it? It's a little crossing pattern. Hill coming underneath. You see him right there coming underneath. Underneath the linebacker coverage after the other receivers had cleared the zone out and he makes a good run with it picks up a very close to a first down just short of it second down less than a yard to go. Horace Kidd trying to get it and he got the first down out to the 30 yard line Barry Bennett 63 making the stop for the Saints so King getting the first down. Let's look at a final now. Tampa Bay. They're now six and two after defeating the Packers. Well, they'd lost two in a row last week. Tampa Bay staying on top in that central division of the NFC. And I'm sure every time Detroit sees one of those wins, they think about what their season could have been this year. Well, that's right. They yeah, saw him down on the field. That quarterback, Gary Danielson. Combo. Play action. Time to throw. And Gene Washington on the near sideline. And that will be another first down. The ball out to the 44-yard line. Kamlo makes a good throw here again. He's made some good throws. He had that costly interception, though. 
It stopped the drive the last time they had the ball in their last possession. Very accurately thrown ball in. I'm impressed with this guy. Even though he threw that one interception, he has great poise. He's throwing the ball with authority. 19-yard pickup to the 44-yard line. He led his team, Delaware, to the college division title. Six foot two, 200 pounds. That's Scott in motion. Scott's going to have the pass thrown to him to the 50-yard line, and he drags the tackler for what might be a first down. Eric Felton hanging on, and that will give them a first down to the 45-yard line. They got a little offense going here. They send Scott in motion. As he ducks in, he'll just run a real quick out pattern. Ball thrown very quickly. Catches the ball, almost breaks his tackle completely. If he does, he may run a long way with it. Fred Scott, who's trying to obtain his medical degree from the University of Michigan in the offseason, played at Amherst. Cleveland having a struggle with Cincinnati. Where they are, they've come back. And they lead 28 to 20. Brian Sight hit Ozzie Newsom. 27 yards for the last down now at the 45. Combo. Boy, he's shaking him up. He has Washington down the middle. Pass interference. Clarence Chapman tangled up with Gene Washington, and that's a play that Gene Washington used to make for the 49ers so many, many times. They're going to have a pass interference call here. I think it was unintentional also. Here we have an isolation of Washington. You see the pattern. They're doubling the outside receiver. Felton and Chase, watch your contact. Right here, there's going to be contact as Felton goes for the interception, trips him, almost makes it a great interception, but he made that contact unintentional. A big play for the Lions. First and goal at the five-yard line. The Lions trailing 17 to nothing, but now with a chance as Kamlo stirring him up. He's come out throwing, and he's thrown the ball with authority. And other than that long interception return of 52 yards by Tommy Myers, he has been almost picture perfect. Done a good job. He's coming exactly what Monte Clark needed, someone to generate some offense. Crowd here not liking that last decision, the pass interference at the five-yard line. Combo's going to throw it. Wide open Hill. Touchdown, David Hill. And the Lions are on the scoreboard. Well, what a good play this is, isn't it? Little play action fake here. Hill goes across the middle. Another good throw. You see what a catch he makes. David Hill, underrated tight end, a very fine tight end. And so the Lions have jumped back into this one. That was an 81-yard drive and five plays. And you watch when that defense comes back on the field. They're going to be fired up coming back. Well, they were fired up a while ago. They have played well in the second half. The Lions have come out of that dressing room, a different football team. Here's Ricardo's point after attempt, the flag on the play. Let's see what that's all about. The kick was good, but a penalty flag thrown by the head linesman. I think it's on the defensive team. Defense offside, penalized on a kickoff. That's the point. So the extra point, of course, is good. And the Lions now down 17 to 7 with three minutes, 17 seconds to go, third quarter. 21 to 3, the band still plays here in Tampa Bay as the Buccaneers won 21-3. Let's take a look at scores around the National Football League. Final score, Washington, 17, Philadelphia, 7 for the Eagles, their second loss of the year. So right now, Washington, Philadelphia are 6-2. In the fourth quarter, Baltimore leading Buffalo 14-3. Baltimore has won only one game. Burt Jones started for the second time this year. And a wild scoring game, the Browns, who are trailing 20-7, leading 28-20. And the Browns uh, trying to end that three-game losing streak. That's something in Cincinnati is something they beat Pittsburgh last week, and then they then they started off and started off well today, and they still may beat that one. All right, we're going to be back in Tampa with more scores from the National Football League and a look at some of the highlights of today's game in just a moment. <laughs> See that uh, 38 to 36 in offensive plays, things pretty even as reflected on the scoreboard. In the yards rushing department, 119 for the Bears and 102 yards passing. And we mentioned that the scoring 
two of the three touchdowns came on big plays. Peyton to Bashnagel, 54 yards. Kramer to Sammy White, 55 yards. And as you can see by the stats, uh, Kramer six for 22. Now that's not very good percentages. The Bears are six and 12. So the Bears have a big edge in most every category except the number of offensive plays. And rushing Minnesota only has 53 yards. Time of possession, fairly close. But so far, Chicago has the edge on the stats and that reflects in the score, the edge 14 to 10. And Tampa Bay is beating Green Bay 21 to three. So, as I mentioned earlier, the loser of this game, especially with Tampa apparently winning, there's going to be three games out of first place, and there's not probably not going to be a wild card from this division because the Eastern Division of the NFC is so strong. Dallas at six and one, Philadelphia six and one, Washington five and two, and Washington's beating uh, Philadelphia. So there will be no more than two losses in the Eastern Division. Well, Walter Payton picked up 65 yards rushing in the first half, and that means that he has vaulted into 11th place in all-time career rushing. He needed 63 yards to do that. That has moved him ahead of John Riggins, Ken Willard. And he's... Brian Bashnagel is a deep man. The Bears to our right as Dan Meyer kicks it off. The Bears in white, the Vikings in their purple home uniforms. It's taken by Watts at the 10-yard line. He's hit by Tim Baylor. Number 47 of the Vikings at the 24-yard line with a solid hit. Ricky Watts, number 80, the rookie wide receiver. So it is first down for the Bears from their own 25-yard line. So we start the third period. Cobb is the tight end in. Bashnagel goes wide right. Scott is wide left, they come out of the eye formation. Walter Payton. Good work by McNeil, fighting off the blocker to force him back inside, and the Vikings shut him down after a gain of about a yard, maybe two. You were right when you said McNeil did good work, but so did Williams out in front. But there was great pursuit from the inside. You'll see 22 blocking on McNeil, but Peyton could not cut back because of the pursuit there as Kraus forced him in. And then, of course, the tackle, the Vikings there with a gang tackle, about four of them on defense. Second. And they've got close to eight yards to go, a little more than that. Play action well, for the tight end. Latta overthrown incomplete. Seaman back on the coverage with Greg Latta. Third down, Chicago. 14 to 10, the Bears lead it. Walter Payton passing to Bashnagel for one touchdown, catching a short pass from two yards out. Avellini on the throwing end for their 14 points. Five defensive backs in on third and long. The veteran Nate Wright joining the secondary of the Vikings. The Bears may opt not to throw too far downfield and depend on a short pass to one of the backs out on this play. Williams and Peyton, the running backs, they've gone all the way. Sideline. Uh -oh. Intercepted. Uh -oh. Nate Wright. Knocked out of bounds at the four-yard line. Reeby Sori and Bob Avellini in on the tackle. Another big play by the Vikings. And they should have opted to throw to one of the running backs because it turned into the interception as Avellini is throwing from one side of the field over here all the way back across the field, across the hash mark on an out pattern, which can be dangerous as Wright comes in for the interception against Ricky Watts and takes it down for a big play as Revi Sori finally knocks him out of bound. But when you throw that pass across the field that far, it's very, very difficult. First and goal at the three-yard line for the Vikings. They trail by four. Young and Brown are the running backs. Oh. Ted Brown, the rookie, battles to the one. Good defensive play by the Chicago. Doug Plank, number 46, coming up. Hartenstein, Livers all there with him. Got about a yard, maybe two. They spotted at the one. We'll call it a two-yard gain, second and goal. And they're bringing Foreman in as Brown goes out. They want that experience down there near the goal line. And what a big play that interception was. To 
get it so early immediately in the third period down by only four points it has put the Vikings with a chance to go ahead. Foreman fell over his own blocker the tight end Tucker and lost a couple of yards stacked up by Hartenstein and Hicks and Fensick getting up into it. Third and goal. And now they're in a situation where it's not an automatic just run it right up the middle and push it over. It's uh, it's a questionable situation. Three yards to go. The Bears defense, if you win football games, this is where you got to stop them. This kind of a play. And the Vikings have got to come up with a little something here, whether they would roll out Kramer or what. We're going to have a chance to see. Double tight end plus an extra lineman. Frank Myers in there on the third and short. Play action. Open a two boy touchdown. Good play, Vikings. Kramer. The Stu Boyd, it was wide open. They had a run look, and they snuck out the tight end, Stu Boyd. Yes, you see Voigt there making contact. Just a short rollout. He stops and throws it real quick, and he is wide open and catches it right on the numbers. Easy touchdown for the Minnesota Vikings. There's the fake of the handoff. He just rolls out partially, called a Q6 rollout, and there was just nothing the Bears could do because they're up there tight trying to stop the, the run. So the hometown Vikings are ahead. Dan Myers' point after is good. And with 12.36 now remaining here in the third period, Minnesota has gone back on top, 17 to 14. They led this game 3-0 early and then fell behind at the half. Sure, you've heard us say this before, but that big hole in the roof Texas Stadium, when it's a bright, sunshiny day like today, causes us problems. Boy, I've been wondering where the, the girls were. They're don't, the don't Dallas cheerleaders. You, they don't cause some problems yeah, sometimes, too. I was going to say. <laughs> They'll first, blind you. First down. <laughs> Chilly in motion, Hart back. Hart chased by Larry Cole, has to hurry and throws away, intended for Tilly. Charlie, most dangerous receiver you have covered was it is it Mel Gray when he was having the running through there like a leopard is that when it was he was uh, he ranks up there as one of the, the tough ones uh, of course you know Harold Jackson he had a good career against me and uh, Paul Warfield was a great one but Gray when he's healthy of course he always says he's not healthy coming and play us he just he's notorious for doing that he always gets well so it'll be second and ten Dallas leads St. Louis 17-13 it's Anderson who juggled it coming into the line. He almost lost another one. Boy, is he strong, though, huh? He still kept control of his body underneath it until he got the ball put away. Randy White on the tackle. Charlie Wallace, I've been trying to tell people for years that there's nothing like the position of cornerback. I mean, really, it's, uh, it's like you're alone under the polar ice cap, huh? There is no way to try to describe it to anybody else, any layman out there, any fan that's watching the game. You've got to get out there and experience that one-on-one, -on -one, that gut check feeling that you have at corner. And, and your pass defense should be centered around helping your cornerbacks at all times. <laughs> Second and six. They double Gray and Tilly wide to the right. And now Tilly goes in motion, and two Cowboys go with him. two away from Dennis Thurman. Charlie Waters, thank you very much for stopping by. Enjoy the chat. Thank you, Pat. Thanks Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Looking for next year, 1980. Okay, Charlie. I'm wondering if uh, if Mel Gray didn't break his pattern off. Here's the pass rush. That's Martin now. He's going to work with Wartman. Getting doubled as Anderson helped. Good blocking. And actually, Hart had time to load it up. And now we're going to see a little kick right into that sun, into the light. Steve Wilson back by himself. We'll return it if it's returnable for Dallas. Steve Little chasing back in the end zone. Concedes the safety. That'll be two points. That ball cleared everything. That's a pretty good center if that's Brahaney who snapped it, and it is. The veteran, and Little did the wise thing. Be a free kick from behind the 20-yard line. But we've said it before, a safety usually ends up being nine points somewhere along the quarter. If he tried to recover it and didn't and lost it, and the Cowboys recovered, of course, it would have been a touchdown. There 
there's a penalty flag down I think because he kicked it. And that's an illegal kick that he did but the penalty flag. I'm, I'm just not sure about this situation. <laughs> game losing streak defeated Green Bay 21 to 3 that is a final Doug Williams passing for two touchdowns and scoring one at the 10 yard line it's taken by Willie McClendon reserve running gap running back for the Bears got out over the 20 yard line to the 22 stopped there by Nord at number 49 we have another final score in the NFL, the Washington Redskins of Jack Pardee beat Philadelphia 17 to 7. And boy, that division is really something. Philadelphia will be 6-2. Washington will be 6-2. Dallas is beating St. Louis by four in the third period. So Dallas could end up at 7-1. That division is having quite a year. Tampa Bay has moved to 6-2 and two now. The Packers have fallen to 3-5. And, and this game, of course, obvious in its importance to two, three, and four teams. First down there. Mike Phipps is the quarterback. Williams straight ahead got a couple before he was forced back by the middle of that Viking defense. And Mike Phipps has committed quarterback to replace Avellini. James White, the first man to hit Williams. Second and eight. Following the interception, three plays, two yards. For the go-ahead Vikings score. Not big figures, but seven points big, huh? Second and eight, Chicago. Payton. Cutting back inside. Doug Sutherland, number 69. Bulldogged him down after a pickup of a couple. Blair was there as well. And it is third down and about seven. There's a score, 28 to 27, Cleveland over Cincinnati. That game is still on as the Bears send Mike Cobb in to send a pass to Mike Phipps. I guess they're trying to change things. That, uh, that uh, interception probably did it for Avellini as uh, Coach Neil Armstrong is going to try and change the course of this game with Mike Phipps. Five defensive backs in on the passing situation for the Vikings. Nate Wright. The nickel back. Incomplete. Intended for Williams. He dropped the ball. Would not likely have picked up first down yardage. There were two Vikings there had he held the ball, and he still needed another three yards. Blair on the coverage. The Viking crowd alive here as we show you this score. New Orleans, 17. The Lions, 7. Detroit starting Jerry Goldstein at quarterback today as they have had their problems since losing Gary Danielson and Joe Reed right at the beginning of the season. Parsons to punt for the Bears. Jimmy Edwards from his own 34. He can scoot. It's out to the 47 yard line. Minnesota with good field position and a three point lead. Lee Coons made the tackle, reserve linebacker number 57. 10.45 remaining third period. Vikings lead it 17 to 14. The free kick, you got good hang time. You sure did. Tony Hill. Field and Tony cuts back and still stays on his feet. He's to the 50. 
And out of bounds in Cardinal territory. Ken Stone made the tackle. But the Cowboys will be in Cardinal land when they start with offense. They tell me that when the upper body, the upper body of, of Hill gets up to the legs, that he's going to be one of the strongest players on the team. He's working on the weights and all now to build up the upper body. But look at the leg movement. He shifted his whole body out from underneath the upper part of his torso to get to the outside. He is extremely dangerous. Apparently, there was no penalty after Steve Little kicked the ball out of the end zone. We thought it was an illegal kick, and there was a flag thrown, but no penalty assessed. We'll check into that a little bit more in detail. Scott Laidlaw and Tony Dorsett, the running backs, and Dorsett swings out wide to the right in front of Slavak. And the throwback is right straight up in the air and up for grabs. Slavak had the ball slip out of his hand. They were trying to throw the ball all the way back across the field to Laidlaw. Remember he used to do that. Number 12 used to jump up in the air and throw it back into a center screen. But Pollard was chasing him so quickly to the far side that he really threw sort of a slider. It looked like uh, even a, a wet pitch, a Vaselino. And it wound up being a jump ball. Almost the third interception. Sometimes you get a little too fancy. They haven't come back with Tony Hill running the football like they did on the opening play very, very many times. Dorsett and Newhouse now the setbacks. And Dorsett will get that play this time. And get there about eight yards. Dorsett had 66 on 13 carries before that one. At Tilly and Mel Gray and Jim Hart in audience. And look at this score. Cleveland coming back against Cincinnati, 28-27, fourth quarter. The Jets over Oakland, 28-19, and that's the final. New Orleans, 17-0 over Detroit, third quarter. It'll be a passing situation. At least that's what the Cardinals think. They'll rush three men. They have four linebackers. Four defensive backs. And they blitz that shotgun. Starback has time. Tony Hill and a well-timed defensive play by Roy Green. Good play by Green. He waited till the ball touched up and then drilled him. I tell you, I'm impressed with the St. Louis defense. They have given away very little. Two touchdown passes by Roger Staubach, one to Billy Joe Dupree and one to Tony Hill. Field goal by Septian and a safety. Look who's going back to run this back. Ken Green. What an active young player, huh? Roy Green. Roy Green. And Danny White punted one time, averaged 42. The leader in the NFC averaged 50 against the Rams last year. I was about to say he will run with it. Angle oh. for the corner. And Benny Barnes makes the catch on the fly. Benny Barnes is down there. I don't believe I've ever seen that before. Like he was running a turn end pattern on the three yard line. 7 17 left third quarter. Cowboys 19, cards 13. Didn't take very long as Comlo throwing the football and eventually scoring on a five yard touchdown pass to tight end David Hill. Ricardo to kick off. Little guy from San Diego State. Last year had an excellent year, scoring 92 points, which was third best in the NFC. And an onside kick. And the Lions have it. The Lions have the football at the 48-yard line. All right. What a play, huh? Boy, that is a surprise. Did the surprise. ball go far enough? Did the ball travel far enough? That's what. Well, he fell on it far enough up the field, but he may have touched it before he got 10 yards. He may have touched it prematurely. So what you have to do is the ball must travel 10 yards before the team kicking can touch it. Now, did he? Let's see. Let's see if the ball goes 10 yards before it is touched. Boy, it's close. I see the line. He actually made contact with the ball before it went 10 yards. Therefore, they're not going to get the football. You know, the same thing happened to New Orleans earlier this year in a game against Green Bay. A game that turned around on him. So illegal procedure against Detroit. Are you going to have to kick it again, huh? Yep. 
But that really surprised me. I didn't any more anticipate that than anything. I think they uh, think it surprised the Saints too. Good play. Monty Clark's pulling out all the stops, isn't he? Well, when you're one and six, what do you got to lose, <laughs> That's huh? That's right. So Ricardo will try it again. I'll say one thing for him. He really disguised it well. And now I'm sure he'll kick it off this time. You wouldn't try another one, would you? Well, I don't know. I tell you what, they, I think they're prepared for it this time. So he'll tee it up. 17 to 7 our score. Myers with an interception for a touchdown. The Lions have come back to score their own touchdown here in the third quarter. The enthusiasm in the second half really remarkable, especially by Detroit, as opposed to the first half. Rich Motti. Motti to the 25, 26 yard line. You can see how fired up the Lions are. A little pressure coming on the Saints offense now. They had to get a drive going, keep the ball away. Manning's got to get him on track. There's Archie Manning throwing those two interceptions in the first half. We had four interceptions in the first half. We've had one in the second half. Mike Strawn now is back at the running back spot. Muncie, who we told you earlier, suffered a midsection injury standing on the near sideline. He may return, but right now Strawn and Galbert are the running backs. From the 27, a first down, 3.05 to go, third quarter. A 10-point lead for New Orleans. Strawn with the football. He runs into some people. Boy, Ken Fantetti, who was hurt earlier in the game, was the guy that met him helmet to helmet, number 57. Watch this defensive play here. And they don't, they're not supposed to be able to play the run well. Well, they do a good, good job here. Doug English made a fine play. No running room. Van Teddy, they really had high hopes for him. He hasn't had that kind of year that they wanted. They used to call him the Sandman at Wyoming because he used to put people to sleep when he tackled them. <laughs> the Sandman. Second down and seven. Pretty good pressure put on. Manning, long pass. Hunter with the interception. I Karras. That's three interceptions now for Archie Manning today. And the second interception of the day for Hunter. <laughs> Dick Nolan trying to steady down his offensive core. That ball will be at the 29 yard line of Detroit. As it looks like Hunter was shaken up on that, Sonny, when he came down with the interception. He's had all kinds of leg problems. That was the thing that bothered him last year and also this year. And there's Archie Manning with three interceptions. Archie a little upset about himself. Uh, he, he made a good throw, but he, he actually had overthrown. I don't know if the receiver would have made the catch to begin with. Threw it a long ways to Ike Harris. Well, on that, we've had some people inquiring about the onside kick. What happened was, and I think we mentioned this earlier, is a Lion player touched the ball before it went 10 yards. That's interfering with the ball, and you have a five-yard penalty after that. That's right. It, ha it has to go 10 yards, and uh, we saw it on that replay where the ball was touched beforehand. But anyway, the Lions got it back. Oops. And they, oh, <laughs> I'd like to be on the bottom of that. You've been on the bottom of a few pileups, haven't you? <laughs> not that, not that kind of pileup. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter now, he's uh, coming off slowly. He's quite a football player oh, out of Grambling. Man. He started his career as a cornerback. There's Monty Clark giving him a pat. And then move to the free safety. They may move him right back out there after today. Were well, you looking at Kamlo's stats? He's done a good job since coming in. Only that one play. That interception to Tommy Meyer. 2.19 to go, third quarter. Kamlo is coming right back out and throwing the football. He's in trouble. Steps up. He had to get rid of that. Scott, the intended receiver, but he ducked the rushing lineman, got an additional second or two, and threw a bullet. 
Boy, Barry Bennett really put some put some pressure on him at time. He had to duck and come up throwing. We have a final. Baltimore defeated Buffalo. Isn't that something? Buffalo's uh, offense has been shut down the last couple of weeks. Well, Burt Jones is back, and I don't think you need to see any more. It's a different football team with him. And the Jets over Oakland. That's a surprise. That it's is. Jets having to come from that short week after winning on Monday night. Two big wins for them. Second down and 10. Combo with big pressure again, and he's going to be blocked by Don Reese. Reese, who has one sack this year, but really who's maybe their best pass rusher in a lot of ways. He's always back there. We're talking to Pat Hughes for the game, says he has a nasty disposition. He is, and they said he's a leader. He gives a lot of enthusiasm to the team. You see right here, Boyd makes a good rush from the outside, a play action fake. And Mr. Comlo didn't have time to get set up to throw the football. That's the third sack today by the Saints, two by Grooms, and now, of course, one by Don Reese. And we're coming into this game, they'd given up 17 sacks to begin with. Saints have only had 11, so they're picking them up in a hurry. But you know that the Lions are going to throw the ball, so they're coming right out after him now. Third and 16. I give up the middle to Rick Kane, and Kane breaks it out. He's come up to the 40, and that should be a first down. Rick Kane, they crossed him up. Nobody expected that, and they get out of a hole. Well, they, they knew they were going to be throwing the football here. They thought so, and that's why the draw play is a good call. It is a calculated risk, but it worked perfectly here, and they do pick up a first down. Good, smart call. You know, it's a, you make it a smart call when it works. Yeah. If it doesn't work, it's not such a bright call, you know? 19-yard run to the 40-yard line, and the Lions, after that sack, able to come out of the hole. This is Kane again. Boy, he's running hard. Across the 45 to the 46-yard line, kind of limping, though, as he gets up. You, you see the tack, they just a little playoff tackle. He breaks it. I think he takes a little uh, bruise here because he comes up limping after this play. Gain of seven. We understand that James Hunter, his injury is a bruised leg. He shall return. Leg cramp, I'm sorry. He suffered a leg cramp. And now from the 47-yard line, the Lion, second and three. Dexter Bussey, a lot of congestion, and it's going to bring up a third down. Saints didn't let anything open up on that play. Well, you can see what's your charge right here. Good defensive play. Fetterspiel coming through. Closing down the hole. No place to run. That's the way the flex is played perfectly. Well, they had a lot of good black shirts waiting on him there. Yeah, good execution that time. And that's going to be the end of our third quarter with the score. The New Orleans Saints 17, the Detroit Lions 7. We now pause for a word from your local station. Well, the New York Jets, who beat the Vikings on Monday night, had themselves another win today, 28-19 to over the Oakland Raiders at Shea Stadium today. Impressive win for the young Jets. First down, Vikings, after Parsons' 41-yard punt against the win. Nowhere is Ricky Young met right at the line of scrimmage. Might have lost a half a yard on the play. Hampton was there, so was Gary Campbell, number 59. Let's take a look at Alan Page, number 82. You see Dan Hampton, number 99. And there's Page spinning out. He's great at spinning out and getting in on the action. He was there, as were several other Chicago Bears. And his wife, Diane Page, by the way, just ran the marathon, the Chicago America's Marathon, in three hours and 25 minutes to finish fifth among the women. And that's not bad. Diane Page is running down in Chicago while her husband's playing football in Minnesota. That's terrific. Great performance. Kramer. Oh. Catch Bob Tucker. First down and forced out. Nearly drops the ball. Now it's stolen from him at the 32 yard line, and it is Chicago ball. Do you believe that one? Well, we'll have to take another look at that one. They had him stop for quite a while before he fumbled the ball. Yeah, but he was still up and still trying to go forward. Okay, let's take a look. The play action pass as Tucker goes back against the grain. As you can see, the linebacker's trying to stay up with him. That's uh, Muckensturm. He makes a nice one-handed catch. And here's Virgil Livers with the hit right there. Trying to right lateral. There. He was trying to lateral. Yes, he was. It's a fumble. The Bears have the ball. Minnesota still leads 17 to 14 in the third quarter. Well, the Turf Classic next week on CBS, followed by the Sports Spectacular, and that will feature the light heavyweight fight, James Scott and Jerry Celestine. 
Here's the end of that play again, Johnny. Yes, as Livers will make the tackle, he is stopped here, but he keeps his legs going, and then there's Tucker trying to, to lateral off to Ricky Young, and Livers makes the recovery. Another big play in this ballgame. Looked like Tucker almost thought better of it and tried to take the, the lateral back, but he popped it up, and it's Bears' ball. And it looked like it's so loose again it's there. Fumble. First down run by Dave Williams. Let's see who comes up with this one. They may have blown the whistle dead before he fumbled. This is all judgment by the officials. And it uh, remains the property of the Bears. Pickup of two on the play. Jim Marshall, Jeff Seaman made the tackle. Other scores around the NFL. Baltimore beat Buffalo 14 to 13. The slumping Bills and Baltimore, what a season they've had. They win their second game against six losses. Second and eight. Picks. He's got a man open, Scott. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line of Minnesota. Paul Krauss made the tackle there and a big first down play from Phipps to James Scott. And a good block by Walter Payton on McNeil as Scott ran the flag back to the sidelines and it was a perfect pass by Phipps. Krauss makes the tackle. The Bears are down at the 41-yard line. Well, Minnesota has had two interceptions today. Both came off Bob Avellini. Peyton has uh, fumbled once for the Bears. And the Vikings have coughed it up on Bob Tucker's fumble. So we've had turnovers and interceptions again today by both of these teams have been struggling with them. And flags, whistles, et cetera, are down as Peyton trying to go wide. He threw it to Doug Sutherland. Peyton, the play was over with, so Peyton says, here, you can have it. It doesn't count anyway. <laughs> You know, those are the kind of things, though, that get the players upset. So there's... I'll start 65, offense. Noah Jackson is number 65. Okay, let's see how that play went, as the call was good on Jackson. Now, here it is. And Walter, it's a little flip. He says, you take it. I don't want it. <laughs> Sutherland doesn't know what to do with it. <laughs> uh, Sutherland is going to remember that, though. <laughs> Bit of a surprise, having that ball staring the goal line in the face. Yeah, look, Ma, look what I got. First and 15 on the five-yard penalty. <laughs> 17 to 14, Vikings by three. Phipps coming in for Avellini here in the third. Payton gets mm. four of the five penalty yards back and is stacked up by a host of Vikings. The safety, Hannon, came up to put the arm wrap on him. McNeil was there, number 54, the linebacker. Second and 11, a long 11 for the Chicago Bears. Cobb brings in the play, and New England defeated Miami 28 to 13. That's final. So New England takes over the Eastern Division lead of the AFC with a 6-2 record. Miami is 5-3. Logan had a touchdown pass in that game today. Phipps. Oh. Complete to the tight end, Cobb. Cobb bulls his way, trying to get the first down yardage. He'll be close to it. Good effort by Mike Cobb, his second catch of the day. And a good effort by Mike Phipps, too. He comes back, fakes off to, fakes the hand off to Peyton, comes back the other side. He can't find his primary receiver, and then drills it over there, and Cobb shows his strength here and his size. He's a big tight end. He gets away from Matt Blair, who tried to hit him high. That can be a big mistake. Look at that. There was the low tackle, and down he went. You got to hit those guys low, especially if they're bigger than you. Tom Hannon, number 45, the man who submarined him, and Johnny Turner got him from top. And now, the measurement to see whether his extra effort got him the first down. No. Nope. Just missed. Inches. The ball just outside the 30-yard line of Minnesota. Mike Phipps moving the Bears upfield smartly. Play comes in from the sidelines. Last time in this situation, they had the quarterback sneak straight ahead. There's Neil Armstrong and his players. Uh, that's Bob Avellini, number seven on the left. Ricky Watts, number 80 on the right. Dan Jiggetts, number 62 in the back. And James Scott saying, hey, I can catch more passes. Now it's a third down situation. We'll see if they quarterback sneak. And we'll watch Matt Blair, 59. He likes to get way back and then fly at that line. 
Double tat in. Bash Nagel set on the wing. Power formation here. And they're going to throw. Good play. Ho! Oh. At the five yard line. First down. Walter Payton sneaking out of that backfield. And you got to love that call, Johnny. That's an old Green Bay Packer call. A third and one situation. The fake of the, uh, the handoff to Williams. And down the field, you take the chance, and it can get you great dividends. And Peyton is very sure-handed. Finally, Turner makes the tackle. But the Bears are on the five-yard line with a chance to take the lead. Great play by the Chicago Bears. First and goal at the five-yard line. Vikings send in Holloway and Nate Wright defensively here as they try to stack them up in deep. Bob and Latta are the two tight ends for the Bears. Peyton trying to get outside, and good defensive work by the Vikings. Nate Wright just went right out there with him and held him to maybe a half a yard at the most. The percentages are good if you run Walter Payton, but his pulling guard fell down, and there was Nate Wright out there. Walter still carries that ball with one hand sometimes in those situations, but a good play by Nate Wright. But the key to that was that the guard didn't get out. Reeve Sori, I believe it was, slipped and fell on that soggy turf and didn't make it out there. Yeah, where they spot the ball, it comes out to be a half-yard loss. So good defensive work by the Vikings. Second down. Scott and Bashnagel, the wide receivers now. Bashnagel left, Scott right. One on Kitten one. Wants to throw, Bashnagel incomplete. Bashnagel saw that sideline in the end zone coming up, tried to stay in and stretch for it, couldn't do it. There's Turner the, on the coverage. There's the bird's eye view. You see the ball coming into the screen. He makes the dive. He had a step or two there and just a little bit overthrown, but he had beaten Turner on a one on one situation. You'll get that down that close to the goal line, and anytime you got one on one, the offensive man's going to win it. If he can't, he shouldn't be in the NFL. Latta brings the play in. Cobb goes out. Third and goal. Vikings lead it 17 to 14. This drive coming off Virgil Livers' fumble recovery. The drop by Bob Tucker. Can the Bears capitalize? Bashnagel. Oh. Does he have it? No. Incomplete. Had it in his hands. Took a bump from Turner. Could not hold on. Fourth down. He almost made a fantastic grab as he went down on another situation with the one-on-one. -on -one. Brian Bashnagel, you've got the same view coming right at you. He had the turn on this. He got his hands on it, but I think he dropped it as he came down to the turf. I mean, really, that could have been a spectacular catch, and Turner might have swiped it out of his hands as it was falling down, and it was really ended up being a good offensive play and a good defensive play. Turner saved the touchdown. Bob Thomas will attempt the field goal. From the 12 yard line, make it the 13, a 23 yard kick by Thomas is good. And we have a tie football game here at Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington. As the Bears converted on the fumble recovery, getting themselves a field goal to tie it. And we have 6.43 remaining third period. crowd watching the Cowboys lead the Cardinals 1913 at the moment with seven minutes 17 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Pat Summerall and Tom Brookshire. That's the final score. Baltimore 14-13 over Buffalo. Cowboys automatic some kind of a defense. And whatever they automatic to was successful as Larry Cole is on the bottom of the pile along with some other members of the Otis Anderson the number one pick is now at about 62 yards and not holding in 11 carries. Again, he had the longest run ever from scrimmage against Dallas in that opening game, the 73-yarder. Here you can see Brunig signaling to the gang, don't get trapped. Look out for a trick. <laughs> and they try to trap <laughs> on Brunig. Randy White smothered it. Hawk hit Morris. Looked like the official in the middle might have gotten gotten in the line of sight between Hart and Morris. Again, Hart's looking right back into the sun from that angle. You'll see how long the shadow is. Here's the quarterback. Harvey Martin coming up the middle. Randy White going to the outside. You're throwing off that blue end zone. You get it off. But the official did get in the way of Morris. No place to go for the man in the striped shirt. And the ball just appeared all of a sudden. 
Third and seven situation for Jim Hart and the Cardinals. Deep in their own territory. Line of scrimmage, their own six. Chilly in motion. And Mitchell goes with him. Hart almost comes up with an offense. A diving attempt at an interception by Benny Barnes. Didn't come up with it, but Hart did well to evade another safety. And Harvey Martin must be on some kind of wheat germ. Watch this move. Gets rid of Wartman, goes right on the inside. That's the new move that Ernie Stautner said the fans gave him. The back inside? Back inside to the fans that, hey, Harvey, start getting some sacks. And Harvey started working at it. He's some player. Back out at midfield is Steve Wilson. Steve Little. Back in the back side of the end zone, right under his own goal post. Haney will take a look this time. And we'll check out the hang time. See if the Cowboys try to block it or if they're going to try to set up a return. Line drive kick and a good one. Wilson breaks away a couple of tackles. Flag is down and Wilson sticks out his arm to get it in Cardinal territory, but penalty flag is probably going to indicate that there was a clip against Dallas. Lee Nelson made the tackle on Wilson. Did you see that one quote by Dick Vermeil of the Eagles? The, the thing that amazed him the most about the Dallas program was how Landry and his staff got all the information to the players when they got the time to do all this, Coach. It is so complicated. No flag. Play was legal as it, as and, it ran. Uh, no as flag. No flag is the indication. A little applause, too, by people that admit an honest error. You look at <laughs> the number of coaches that Tom Landry has on his staff, and it's below the average. If they stay a long time, they That's, get with him, and... Well, <laughs> they, get, for the most part, have a pretty good little incentive at the end. Playoff and Super Bowl funds. Just inside Cardinal territory, Staubach gives to Newhouse. And Newhouse this time whirls for about seven with those little short digging steps. Eric Williams and Cal Calvin Favron the tackle. Only the fourth carry for Newhouse, who had 108 yards rushing against St. Louis in the opener. There he goes. He and his he and his lovely lady had twins, you know, and they said. It's not easier to raise two than it is one. <laughs> They're working 12 hours a day with those two twins. <laughs> Scott Laidlaw in the backfield. Doug Cosby, the double tight end, second one. Dorsett diving for a first down. The ball was down. Dorsett, Eric Williams, the tackle. A good tackling Cardinal defense. They get a hold of you there. Doing a good job of tackling. Linebacker looks like he's hurt there on the ground. That's Eric Williams who yep. made the tackle. They have been hit hard at that linebacker position. Property fake inside, and then Laidlaw is supposed to seal off. He might go through on the inside linebacker. Rafferty on the outside, and a good tackle. He sort of gets pinched in behind Rafferty, it looks like. Mm -hmm. He's in pain, too. Like Worley might have fallen on top of him as well. Both ends of the doubleheader. So check your local listing. Third and two. Dorsett. Hit hard at the line of scrimmage. It's near a first down. If he's got it, it won't be by much. Is that Allerman, the linebacker, really stuck him helmet to helmet? That kind sends off a flash inside your head like something from Studio 54 or something. Watch this. Helmet to helmet. That is Alleman, linebacker. That does hurt. You feel that one Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday morning. We've seen Danny White do everything but punt at times. We've seen him pass, right? I asked him before the game, you know, he broke his thumb. I asked him if he had any problems with his thumb. It's still taped. And he said, none at all. Everything's fine, so he can throw it. He took a look the last time. He punted. And I think he had some ideas about running. The lay of the game penalty against Dallas. Less likely to run now. The information we've been able to get. Our producer Bob Stinner was in contact with uh, the NFL office in New York. Is that any member of the kicking team 
can kick the ball out of the end zone in a situation which occurred just a minute ago. So it was not a violation. It was a mistake. Glad you explained that one. Really worried about that for a while. <laughs> Danny White really hits up a rocket. Benny Barnes is going to be down there again. And the Cardinals hit him. Henderson does his handspring in the end zone. And the Cardinals kept Benny Barnes away from the ball that time. Perry Smith really racked him up down on the two yard line. And the officials are all looking at one another like maybe this is illegal, but nobody dropped anything. Is that Green that did that, or is that? That uh, is Roy Green. That is Roy Green that made the shot. Look at Benny. He can't figure out who had the ball. <laughs> he didn't signal for a fair catch. We start the fourth quarter of play. Gary Bender with Sonny Jurgensen. As the Saints have a 17-7 lead, but the Lions with a third and two from their own 48-yard line. They have climbed back into this game and they have stirred it up and they have the Saints a little bit concerned. On a third and two, Horace King, he's not going to get it. New Orleans reacted well and he got back to the line of scrimmage and that's all. Well, I thought they were going to throw the ball in. They were successful. Remember the, in the third quarter they threw on a third and short yardage situation. This time they went for the run. Didn't work. Played perfectly. Fettersfield coming over, finally making the play. Stats in this game starting to even up a little bit. Still, the Saints dominating 109 to 80 yards, passing 124 to 57. 14 first down for New Orleans, nine for the Lions. A Swider back to kick. Rich Motti will be receiving. Swider hit it a mile high. Boy, did he get that up in the air! But it's going to make it into the end zone for the touchback. We understand that Clarence Chapman has a similar injury that James Hunter had, a leg cramp, and he should return. He had a hang time on that of 4.8. We'll be back in a moment. We are back here at Tampa Stadium, and the capacity crowd here going home in a great frame of mind and I, we only touched on a little bit the Doug Williams situation of last week and it shows you how great the game could be uh, John Madden where one week uh, the crowd may not be happy with the quarterback and vice versa this week they had to love Williams and the point you were making before with the running game going Williams had only to throw 10 passes today completed six of them and so that was the kind of offense Whitehurst threw some uh, 30 p passes and that's what he did in the first game too against this team. Right, and today he was forced to do it again by the turnovers and by the fact that when Tampa Bay ran the ball, they were very successful doing it. They were able to run on first down and second down and, and get that, create that second and two, that third and one situation. And Doug Williams didn't have to pass. There were times that were very impressive to me when they would end up after a penalty with a long yardage situation, and he would still hand the ball to Ricky Bell, and he'd go 10, 15, 20 yards at a, at a crack. Interesting thing, an aspect of this game are the defenses. We saw the fact that the Giants used a 3-4, New Orleans used a 3-4, something that Tampa Bay hadn't been used to. And today we saw the teams use kind of the reverse. We saw the Packers in a lot of 3-4 and the Buccaneers in 4-3. And maybe we'll see a lot more of what normally has been a pattern for one club of one way or another. I think we're going to see that. You know, I've always said that the important thing on offense and defense is mixture. And I think we're starting to see that where the four-man line teams are using three-man line in situations. The three-man line teams are using four-man line in situations. And I, I think we're seeing that all over the National Football League. But as you said, it was Doug Williams engineering it today for Tampa Bay. A certain contrast to what the performance was last week. And Ricky Bell, there's Ricky Bell down on the field. He's getting hooked on because we're going to be talking with the two stars of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in just a moment. Ricky Bell from USC with a glorious day and Doug Williams, the quarterback. We'll be back in Tampa in just a moment. You are looking at the strong visage of one John Riggins, 30 years old, nine years out of Kansas. Going into the ball game, Wilbert Montgomery's name was on everybody's lips, and coming out of it, it's John Riggins. 18 carries, 112 yards. John, congratulations. Thanks, Vince. Uh, I can tell you right now, though, that uh, a lot of those yards I owe to the offensive linemen. We had a little bit different scheme today than we had two weeks ago up there. I, I suppose you notice we run the veer play where we start like we're going to go outside and then we cut it back. 
And that play probably got as many yards as, as all the rest of them put together. Well, two weeks ago, you ran for 115 yards, beer or no, against Philadelphia. Right. Uh, makes you think I'd want to play Philadelphia every week, but that isn't quite true. They got a good defense. But the 34, I suppose, if you go at it right, you can make yards on the ground, which we were fortunate enough to do today. And going back through your own personal history books, you also ran for your highest total, 97 yards in one game last year against guess who? Right, the Eagles. <laughs> yeah. I load up with Buckshot for the Eagles. I, I tell you what, you're going to have your picture on the walls of the post offices at Philadelphia. Yeah, I don't know about that. Now, let's get back to that 3-4. George Allen is right here. John, I know he'd like to talk to you. John, congratulations. Heck of a game. Thanks, George. I haven't heard this voice for a while. Yeah. What? What? You look like you're in good shape. What are you weighing? Uh, just right at 230, maybe a little under. I was sick this week, and so I lost a couple extra pounds because of that, and I had planned on getting my weight down a little bit. I had been over 230 by just a little bit, and I'll tell you what, the condition down here today, I imagine it was 80 degrees plus, yes. and I'm glad I didn't have the extra weight. Well, your running really made the difference. I think your, your ability to run the football and pick up yardage allowed Joe to fake to you with the play action and then throw the football and not be rushed. Yeah, well, uh, that's the way, I'll tell you what, though, ideally, I think we'd like to get our half back to get a few more yards, so it would take the pressure off myself and Joe as well. Although, uh, in the second half, it seemed, I'm not sure, Benny was doing a good job, and Ike Forte came in and did a heck of a nice job for us. So, if we can get the half back running and get as many yards as the fullback, uh, we're going to be tough down the stretch. Well, that's, John, that's your right. totals were 120 yards in 19 carries. Benny Malone, 24 yards in 12 carries. But what's your high? Do you keep track of how many carries you have in a game? Well, my high will probably come in about another hour after the ball game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll have a few beers out in the parking lot, I'm hoping. Don't blame you. 19 carries, even though you were feeling poorly at the start of the game and on a hot day. Yeah, it was. It, it's a terribly muggy down here, and I suppose the heat isn't as bad as the humidity can be sometime. And it, being in Washington, this is a humid area, and uh, it took its toll. And I think that even the Eagles felt a little bit of this heat today. John, I, I brought out that I felt you were one of the best pass receivers in the league as a running back, as a fullback, and that uh, you hadn't caught many passes this year. Right. Well... The way we're working it now, and uh, believe it or not, I kind of like it. I get to come out on third down, and on a day like today, I particularly appreciated it because if I'd have had to go the whole game, you may have to be doing this interview from the trainer's room while I'm going to pack the ice. <laughs> hey, John, maybe this is an unfair question, but after all, it was in the headlines here in Washington and maybe in Philadelphia as well. In preparing for this game, Jack Pardee was accusing the Eagles of holding in the line. Then Vermeil said, oh, Jack doesn't have any class, or I thought he had more class. They were talking about holding uh, elbows. And we were trying to figure, well, maybe Pardee was just trying to pump you fellas up. And then the first holding call on a running play was against Washington. Right. Well, that's what they call psychological warfare. And I don't know whether it worked or not. I'll tell you what, nine times out of ten, when you start something like that, it happens just as you said. You point out the other team's faults, and you end up getting caught for what you was hoping they were going to catch them for. Well, that's well, what that's what we brought out, uh, John. Was it a very emotional game? Going in, Pardee said playing the Eagles is like playing Dallas. And in the first sequence, there were a couple of punches thrown right away. Was it more so than usual? No, I don't think so. I think we had a quiet type of confidence amongst the team where we didn't need to uh, get ourselves so roused up and, you know, be inclined to, say, start throwing a few fists on the field. I, I would like to think we went about our job as uh, 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 bricklayers or whatever. We were very methodical. We knew what we wanted to do, and we tried to do it, and from the score, I think we did. George said that it's almost impossible to beat another team twice, and that certainly held up today. Especially at home. And, uh, of course, we lost the game up there, and I don't know. I guess all the experts always figure that home, fo uh, home field is worth seven points. Well, our congratulations yeah. to John Riggins. Our thanks for the visit. Final score, 17-7, Washington. Thank you. Well, you're looking at Ricky Bell and Doug Williams, number 42 and number 12, respectively. Dick Stockton here at the booth. And a great game. First of all, Ricky Bell, you know, you set the all-time Tampa Bay rushing record. And a great afternoon. Tell me about what the plan was, Rick. Well, what we decided on was just to run the ball at the... Uh, Green Bay defense. Uh, we went down there a few weeks ago, and we had uh, multiple type offense that worked pretty well. But today, uh, coach decided that we were just going to keep the ball on the ground most of the time and just try to punish them. And pretty soon, in the third and fourth quarter, they began to wear out. You were wide open, 
on that first touchdown pass. Tell me about that play. Well, that's a 91 pass pattern. Doug usually looks for the out receivers on that. And uh, usually the linebacker has one-on-one -on -one with me, and he just went down with the tight end, and I turned and waved my hand at Doug's, and he threw it right in my chest. There was no way I could miss it. A perfect pass by Doug Williams. Doug, let me ask you this question. It's great to come back after perhaps a nightmarish week last week. The fans love you today. It shows you the fickle situation of football, but you'd rather be on the right side of things. Right, Doug? Right. You know, you learn each week, you know, and this is one of our good weeks, and I just hope that we can keep rolling on. Well, this was an important victory because people wanted to know which Tampa Bay club was it? The 5-0 and team or the club that lost two? So I know you feel good because you've got a tough game in Minnesota next week, and you go up there thinking, well, today we played like the 5-0. and Right. I, I definitely think that we played like the 5-0 team we were earlier in the year. I just hope we can keep it rolling. Uh -huh. Doug, let me ask you this question. What kind of adjustments yes. go into playing a team the second time <clears throat> from the first? You played Green Bay, beat them 21-10 the first time. You didn't throw, the, well, you actually threw more passes in that game. Ricky gained about 97 yards. What did you notice in the films that <clears throat> Ricky hasn't said that you could tell us about now that you've played him twice? Well, one thing I know, you know, up there in third down situation, you know, we were pretty successful against him. And I knew today that they was going to try to take what we did away up there, you know, for third down. But uh, today, you know, we just kept pounding at him on the ground. Ricky was having a great day, and the offensive line just did a super job blocking John Madden is in the booth, and he can hear you, and you can hear him. John, I'm sure you have some questions. Well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate both Doug Williams and Ricky Bell for their fine performance. It was, it was great. It, uh, Ricky, it, remember, it reminded me of those, uh, of those days as the, the Trojan tailback. Yeah, well, yesterday I saw Charles White rush for 261 yards, and uh, I decided to come out and add my little uh, two cents to it today, John. Uh, I think that uh, we're an upcoming team. I think that we can... Uh, pretty soon in the next couple of years uh, try to dominate this uh, league especially with the young players we have and we're just really excited about it. Well you're sure on the right track now and again I'd like to congratulate you and Doug those were uh, the things we talked about at the airport the other night I was telling everyone that I saw you at the airport and I was impressed with your your presence and your physical size and 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 today you went out and did the job I think which is a, a great thing being able to a, a come back from from adversity and it and it really didn't seem to bother you well coach you know uh, all my life you know I grew up with a, in a competitive family you know everybody tried to outdo each other and I just you know put in my mind a day to go out and do the best job I possibly can Doug I think it's great that your coach John McKay uh, has, has stuck with you and he knows that you're the quarterback of the future of this club plus the present we shouldn't forget about that but also the people know that they've been drop passes and not only is it always a quarterback problem, and you know what, we've seen it around the league. I've seen it in New England with Grogan, and he's been in the league five years. Fans sometimes want the other guy, but you have shown tremendous poise, and I know that what you said this week after you made some comments was really a credit to you, and I think you might have won these people forever, no matter what you do on a football field. I say in the whole so, Dick, you know, uh, I, like I told Coach McKay last year, you know, you go along in life, and as long as you live, you learn, and you know, that's one thing that I learned. John, any questions? Yeah, on that on that touchdown pass that you threw to Ricky Bell, were you going to go to an outside receiver on that, Doug? It looked like they were double covered. Well, well, coach, you know, all week we worked on it, and um, they usually play uh, a two, but today, you know, they uh, played in and out, which we call eleven coverage. You know, and the linebacker just turned and ran, and Ricky was wide open, waving his hand. You know, I couldn't help but to see him. That was great, but that takes poise too, because quarterbacks don't always hit the open guy, and we're going to look at a shot of it. Right now, this isn't the same shot. This was the the option play down there on the on the goal line. That uh, uh, who called that play anyway? I noticed you went over to the sideline in the two minute warning and talked about that one. That that fake trap bootleg uh, right. a pass to Giles. Well, well uh, Coach McKay and, and uh, Coach Nelson, you know, they got together and called it. You know, because Rick had been having a great day, so we feel like if you know we could fake the ball to Rick up the middle, everybody would be keen on him. But uh, their defense kind of picked it up pretty good, but Jimmy was wide open in the end zone. Yeah. Ricky, I got a question for you. One of the great things you did today were the great changes in direction. I remarked to John, I said, it reminds me of vintage OJ, and he says, that's actually vintage Ricky Bell at USC. <laughs> well, uh, for the last couple of years, Dick, I've been uh, hampered by injuries, and now I'm a third year in professional ball. I'm, I'm getting to the point where I have guys around me like Doug Williams, Jerry Eggwood, and Johnny Davis to compliment me. And uh, I'm a lot healthier now, and that offensive line is blowing those guys off the ball, and uh, there's nothing but wide open holes, and you, 
you have a little uh, time to do do a, a couple of uh, twists and turns sometime. Ricky Bell. Ricky Bell and Doug Williams, congratulations. I know you'll be in a great frame of mind and you're atop the Central Division of the NFC past at the midway point with six and two. Thank you very much. The stars Thank you. of the game. Thank you. And we'll be back at Tampa Stadium with more in just a moment. Washington beat Philadelphia 17 to 7, but that's history now. And talking about history, George, I'm sure you can't come to RFK Stadium without thinking of the past. If I said to you, Washington, RFK, is there one game that comes to mind? Yes, Vinny, immediately. Uh, we beat Dallas when they were world champs, 26 to 3. Dominated, held them to about 140 yards total offense. Kilmer had a big day, Roy Jefferson, Charlie Taylor, and, and our defense, and put us in the Super Bowl. I imagine when you come back here, the ghosts of Christmas past, so to speak, are all over the place. Well, these fans are great, and they give the team a staying ovation, and... Uh, there's something special about RFK Stadium. Well, among other things, a sellout, 92 consecutive sellouts. And as you said, it was apparent from the beginning that Washington was sky high and Philadelphia was flat. So I guess the fans in Washington should get another tribute. They certainly had a part to do with the victory. Well, they stopped the Eagles running game, and that was the, the core of the defense. That's about the story from RFK Stadium in Washington. The final score, Washington 17 and Philadelphia 7. The NFL Today is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer, who bring you the better idea, cars and trucks for the 80s. Anheuser-Busch Incorporated St. Louis, brewers of Michelob beer. Weekends were made for Michelob. And by Avis, the We Try Harder car rental company. The NFL Today is a presentation of CBS Sports. Today it was Tampa Bay 21, Green Bay 3, so we have reached the halfway mark of this NFL season. I'd like to know your observations that we've reached the eight-game point. Well, I think that, you know, again, down here in Tampa Bay, I, I think they're in very good position now, being having the two-game lead that they have after, after the eight games. I think, I think in the Western Division uh, out there, it's still going to be Denver and San Diego and, and Oakland. That's going to be a very interesting race. They have a very interesting uh, race in the Eastern Division. I think, I think the whole National Football League is, is very something to look forward to. All right, John Madden, enjoyed working with you. Bill Barnes has been our producer, John McDonough our director, and it was the day for Ricky Bell, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He scored a touchdown and established a new rushing mark for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers today as he rushed for 167 yards. So the final score, 21 to 3. For John Madden, this is Dick Stockton saying so long from Tampa Stadium in Tampa, Florida.